messed up. Oh, sorry. Does it, does it blow your mind that I sometimes listen to your Thursday streams? Yeah. Fuck, why are you eavesdropping, <laughs> mofo? I thought you're like, Sitch listens to me. Oh, my God. Just, oh, I know, so I know you secretly pressed live. I know we're I secretly live right did now. did not do anything like that. I don't know why you, why would you think that? Hexadecimal Delirium says boomers are here. Hey now, it's your boy PSA Sitch here the Sunday, Sunday live show with everyone's favorite boomer. And, yeah. And uh, what's the word, guys? Su boomer boomer associate. Boomer associate Suandre uh, Sitch aficionado. Technically not a boomer. Technically a Generation X, but whatever. I see. I see. Whatever. Who cares about detail, right? <laughs> we need we need pictures of Adam saying. Who Sitch, cares about you, nuance? <laughs> Sitch, you baka desk listening to my Thursday stream. Oh, who cares about nuance? No one. Nobody. Let's Nobody get into cares. this video. What's going on? This video is 52 minutes. I got shit to I do. I got places to be. I got places I know. to go. I know. Let's yeah, get you know, busy. You know where those places to be? They're right here, right now. Nope, not true. Let's you go. There's places to go. To go to Crazy Town, thanks to Cody. I got to bust Today. this video out. <laughs> Come on, let's Today, get to it. You do not have access to Super Chats. Wait, what? YouTube. What are you talking about? Today. We'll be watching Cody's insanely stupid, clueless, moronic take mm -hmm. on CRT. It's baffling. Should really. be great. Yeah. Did you watch this video? I have not watched one second of this video. <laughs> not one second of preparation. I was working on the comic oh for the last God. five days straight. Are you kidding me? That's true. That's true. Working 10 hours a day on our comic. It's going to be spectacular. Mm -hmm. Link in the mm -hmm. description. Yes. Um, something weird's going on here. Oh, it is? Should I press play on the video and you can figure it out? I mean, I see uh, Super Chats coming in, so. No. It seems like Super Chats are okay, working. Okay, whatever. We'll press play. We'll just go. What is wrong with it? Let's do it. it. We'll do it live. <laughs> do it live. I'm sorry. We don't have time for pleasantries or cutesiness or sight gags or wordplay or the welcome you to Cody's shoddy baloney we sometimes do. I'm not going to find a time sandwich and talk to the ghost of dinosaur me or eat a stick of butter or any of... So, Mr. Cody! Get the f*** out of here, you... I is this a comedy show? It's a comedy <laughs> show, Adam. It's a comedy show. I just want to mention something here. People gave me a really <laughs> hard time when I said we run a comedy show. This does appear to be a comedy show we're watching. Yeah, look, this is like it's okay for Cody to just say completely stupid wrong things because it's a comedy show. He's got puppets. We don't got puppets. Mm -hmm. Well, we try to say true things, even though we are a comedy show. That's so, true. Yeah, that's true. We try to keep it real. Wait, I don't for you because we have a serious crisis on our hands people apparently there is an insidious force that is currently infecting nearly every aspect of american life it's assaulting our brains our bodies our souls our whatever you hold dear it's invading our homes our corporations even our military and even more sadistically it's polluting the minds of our children by completely consuming our schools it's it's like a virus but like one they care about who are they you ask what the f am I talking about? You followed up on with me. Well, in case you didn't see the title of the episode, it's Critical Race Theory. Critical Race Theory. Critical Race Theory. Critical Race Theory. Ah, yes. Is this, this is so fascinating because this just completely shows the two movie situation. Like everyone on the left thinks Critical Race Theory is just teaching history. And everyone yes. on the right sees critical race theory as literally teaching racism <laughs> in school. <laughs> now, there's the, the left is really concerned about racism. You would think that they would be, you know, over the moon that conservatives were worried about teaching racism in school, it's a, right? It's the wrong type of racism, though. W what do you mean? It's racism against the white people, Adam. <laughs> okay. okay. We don't care about that. We only care about the racism against the poor, oppressed oh minorities. My God. I guess you're right. I guess they really don't care about no. racism, well, do they? I mean, and even though it's true, I would argue that a lot of CRT is racist against black people and all people. 
too by yes engaging in this cultural Asian people are getting a lot of hate. <laughs> yeah, well, beyond beyond that, just this idea that like black people shouldn't have to live up to white standards like that's super racist. Totally, <laughs> like, yes, hell? yes, it's racism on all levels. Did you see there was a story where uh, what's oh my god, what state was this? I don't remember what state it was. There's a story this week where this woman asked the principal to put her stu- her her child into a specific class with a teacher that she knew and liked. Mm-hmm. And the principal said, oh, well, we can't put your student in that class because that's a white class. No way. And then because then the mom is black and her child is black. What? And she says, what? Are you t-? And, what? She says, <laughs> and she says, what are you talking about? She says, well, we have special classes for the black kids and special classes for the white kids. What? And 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 here's the twist: the principal saying this was black. What? <laughs> and she was doing it under like CRT, like we need to separate no. the black and the white kids so that the black kids get their own proper education. <laughs> oh my God! I can hear so the now conservatives she's... now saying that the Democratic Party is going back to their roots. Yeah, there <laughs> the, you go. The party of segregation is back. They- there you go. And now she's suing the school for uh, discrimination. So obviously. Do they even know that there are laws against this? <laughs> like we've spent the last 40 years making anti-discrimination laws. They're breaking the law. Yeah. I, this, oh, this is in Atlanta. Okay. This was in Atlanta. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. She's suing her under, um, excuse me. Yeah. She's yeah. suing her under a federal, a federal, uh, federal yes. discrimination law. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you can't keep blacks out of your classroom, okay? No, it's crazy. It's crazy. But so, it's but so funny. The fact that it's being done under, you know, anti-racism. Oh my nope. God, <laughs> we're living in 1984 here. What's what's going on with the language these days? What are we talking I about? I know. I'm I just can't... glad. I'm I'm glad that she's suing because it's this is what we need. We need Lawsuits. more parents yes. to just be like, what the hell's happening here? Yes. Yeah. Totally. I'm. This is crazy. We've, we've reached crazy town. I can't wait to see Cody's reaction to all this, though. It's, oh, he has, let me guess. It's just like, oh, it's just history. We're just well, they want to teach history. I'll, I'll give you a little spoiler. Okay, so he does make that argument, but then at the end he takes the mask off. Really? And he's like, he's like, critical race theory might bring about the Marxist revolution, and that's good. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> Cody, no what way. <laughs> what you're yes. kidding me i'm not kidding holy not kidding. shit it's a little crazy you're like wait a minute i always forget that this guy's a communist but he's like no. a full full blown commie yep 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 how can you be a full blown commie and do commercials for this, raycon for raycon <laughs> headphones the same exact product that ben shapiro pimps i know i know right well, look, it's conse- consequentialist, man. I don't care if you live up to your principles. I don't care if you sell out. As long as in the end you promote Marxism. Yeah. Wow. That's all that matters. Critical race theory. The latest boogeyman being ridden by the GOP to hell, I guess. See, that's a, they just characterize it as a boogeyman. It's a complete straw man of the argument. The, how yes. you how do you even have a conversation about this when they're not even willing to accept what your position actually is? You can't. You this is a problem because anything you say is like, oh, you're just fear mongering. Oh, you're it's a moral panic. You know, whatever. There's like a million different ways to yeah. dismiss yeah. this. Who's starting the moral panic here? I've heard something about white supremacy everywhere, <laughs> Sitch. Well, that's that's the irony that he gets into. He's like, he goes into how this is a fake moral panic. It's like, and it's like, wait a minute, you've been pushing the left has been pushing this moral panic about racism, specifically, is really heated up in the last four years, like crazy. Didn't you hear about the coup attempt by the white supremacists on January sixth? Sit. I did. I did hear about that. Yes. The white I supremacists are taking over. I saw it on TV as it happened. I was, <laughs> My I was God. Watching. The latest cancel culture outrage triggering of conservative snowflakes. The latest thing we have to talk about. See, because this is so triggering for me, man. 
conservative know, snowflakes. <laughs> How would you feel if people were teaching racism to your children? There's a there's a mother, a black mother, suing the school in Atlanta because her child is being segregated to black only classes. But look, <laughs> it's just conservative snowflake triggering. That's all it is. It's all fake. How do they how do they not see these stories? Like mm-hmm. how do they not see the viral clips? Like the 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 information silo has to be so strong. Well, no, he has a very good ad hom way to dismiss all the clips. Really? Okay. Yes, oh. he gets into it. Yeah. Oh, great. About in order to model these oversensitive whiners, we don't want to, but they make us. Republicans are always able to manufacture controversies out of whole cloth and force the entire country to talk about them. Weeks of Dr. Seuss, every year, the war on Christmas, the threat of Sharia law in America. See, all, all these I kind of agree with him on. The Dr. Seuss sure. thing was a huge nothing burger. The war on Christmas is always a huge nothing burger. Yep. 13 states introduce useless bill to ban Sharia law. Yeah, Why? that's just virtue signaling. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But the thing that's ridiculous is like this is this is so much of what all politics is. Oh, is totally. Their side virtue signals some dumb nonsense crap. Yeah, to get their voters to the poll. Right. And so to just have this one side, like, well, the Republicans are manufacturing all this stuff. It's like, yeah, sure, sure they are, but so yeah. are the Democrats. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. All, all, all this fear of the white supremacy and the racism taking over our country—it's all manufactured, Cody. Okay. Yes, but when you, but, but when you actually entice the enlightened centrist to join the debate, we're having a real substantive debate right. here, right? Right. This, there's something real going on with this critical race theory stuff. Like they're well, literally teaching racism in school. I mean, are we wrong about that? Are we the ones that are, have no. I smoked, have I dabbed once too much this week? <laughs> well, I mean, probably. it's, it appears yeah. to me, I'm looking at, I'm looking at several, like, I mean, this story that you bring up about the, the, you know, the whites only classroom in Atlanta. Right. Uh, I mean, that kind of gets my, my racism senses. My hackles are up a bit. It's interesting how this video is structured because even though Cody is a a commie, a dirty, dirty commie, the whole thing is structured like the rep- it's all it's all Democrats versus Republicans. It's all the Republicans are complaining about this, so it must be fake. Like that's ninety percent of his argument is just oh Republicans bad. Repub- if the Republicans are complaining about it, bad. It's very little is actually. Uh, substantive in this in this entire 50 minute video that's that's i mean oh my god i feel like we need to have a substantive debate about this that's what i'm worried about that we just we're in a position where we can't even have a substantive debate about it no we can't well the problem is and we've we've had we've tried to have i've tried you and me have tried to have i know with aaron a debate and, a substantive yeah. conversation about this several and times it's always it's always the same thing. That's not CRT. <laughs> what do you mean that's not a critical race theory? Here's an example of a big critical race theory. Well, critical race theory is a very broad <laughs> group of scholars. They don't all necessarily agree. And you're like, but this is a foundational belief by a foundational scholar. Well, I'm going to change the subject to something else. <laughs> Let's <laughs> not talk about it. Yeah, it, it's. It's we can impossible. have a conversation about this. What the fuck are we doing here? We're, the this is, is the conversation. Right. The problem is, and I've talked to like actually non-socialist mm-hmm. and non-internet people about CRT. And they'll, and they'll come at first and they'll say the, the line like, oh, this is just the Republicans complaining about teaching history. And I'll be like, no, it's not. And I explain what CRT is. And they say, oh, well, I'm against that. <laughs> exactly. But then they'll still retain the idea that, like, well, I'm against that, but I don't think that's what's being taught in schools. Like, they still they still can't believe it because the the media is so oriented towards promoting this tribalism. So as long as the Republicans are pushing against it, they're like, "Er, must be good then. It is kind of unfathomable what is actually happening. Like, it's so right. beyond the pale that I think it's hard for normies to digest. Like, literally, the whole idea that there's a whites-only class in Atlanta seems ridiculous. That seems sure. impossible to even imagine in our current environment. I mean, you could be right. Um, 
I think for a lot of people on the left who are not socialists or liberals, it is hard to imagine when you say all this stuff, it's hard for them to, especially if they're not kids, they're not living it. They're in like their forties or fifties. Yeah. They're just like, Oh, that's, that's not happening. That's that could never happen. Yeah. They remember well, public school from their days. Exactly. Right, right. No, public school has been totally racialized now. <laughs> you have no <laughs> idea. Yeah. Don't you know? Chemistry class is, you know, 50% critical race theory. It's like, what? God, I had such a good <laughs> chemistry teacher. God, I keep, I had so many good teachers in public school that really, you know, taught me a lot. I learned a lot in public school and I just, I wonder what, what people are learning these days. It's, I talk to my nieces and nephews and I think, oh my God. Don't you people learn anything? <laughs> My chemistry class was so depressing because everyone signed up for chemistry because we all thought we were going to get this one teacher who was like the blow off teacher because mm -hmm. um, he was their, the normal chemistry teacher. And then that year they hired a new chemistry teacher, mm -hmm. but he was super awesome. The first day of class, he's blowing shit up. Oh, really? He's like, yeah. Like he had, he's like blowing up like uh, explosive chemicals. He's like, just like really into the science. Yeah. But it was, but even though he was really like motivational, it was still work. Yeah. And so like ha most of the class didn't want to do the work because they signed up for this thing. It was a blow off class. And so they basically were so obnoxious to this teacher that they drove him out of the school. Oh my God. And he got a new job somewhere else. And I was like, this is oh the most depressing God. thing I've like ever witnessed. Cause oh I like, this teacher God. was so awesome. Oh my God. It was, yeah. I couldn't believe it. It was so disgusting. Look at you. It was so gross. America, Benghazi, Barack Obama's citizenship, the caravans, oh, the caravans. Of course, there was the gay agenda. Now there's the supposed transgender agenda. It's weird because most of this is bullshit, but the caravan stuff's real. I, I know. know. That's why I was <laughs> like, hey, about... you missed one, Cody. The caravan actually came. What are you they, talking they, about? They... They just had a didn't they just have a leak of uh, someone in the Biden administration talking about how there's like way too many people coming across the border? Yes, and also, I mean, the caravan, the whole kids in cages thing came out of the caravan, and that was <laughs> exclusively right. the fucking left. You're right. That's so weird. Yeah, what the fuck it's is so he talking bizarre. about? The caravan wasn't know. real. If the caravan wasn't real, then the kids in cages definitely weren't real, Cody. Touche, motherfucker. Agenda, which granted way catchier. We had to talk about whether or not 3 million illegals voted in the 2016 election, an election that they won. Unlike the one they just lost, stolen by communist Joe Biden. They recently made people debate whether or not Joseph Robinette Stalin. That's a pretty awesome photo. I'm not gonna lie. Of Joe Biden? <laughs> look at it, it's like Joseph Stalin. That's a great, like, <laughs> oh. look at this. The person that drew that, that's, oh, that's great. That is good. This is Joseph Stealing. That's like grade A propaganda. It is. <laughs> yeah, Cody, up your game. That is amazing propaganda. Stalin Jr. is planning to ban hamburgers. Do you remember when the United States House of Representatives cafeteria changed their French fries and French toast to freedom fries and freedom toast for years because Fox News and conservatives got mad that France didn't invade Iraq as good as us? Do you remember these things? Yeah. First of all, it wasn't because they didn't invade as good as us. It's because they didn't join us in the yeah. coalition. Okay. Secondly, this is isn't this all your favorite thing in the world, Adam? Oh yeah, what about ism? I know. It's all what about ism. Yeah. What about? What about? What about? See, but this is indicative of the propaganda campaign. Okay. And the propaganda techniques totally. that Cody and some more news is doing. Character the entire Yeah, well, we're two minutes and 30 seconds into the video. And so far we've got nothing of substance. It's all been, well, the critical race theory complaint is fake because here's a bunch of other completely unrelated things that Republicans have complained about that, yep. that I think are fake too. Yeah. One of them, which is real. One of the one of them. <laughs> sure. But it's like, you could take, you could go through the last five years and you could pick a hundred things that Republicans have complained about and a hundred things that Democrats complain about. You can cherry pick all the things that turned out to be bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And put them in a list and then say, see, now whenever they complain about something, it's all bullshit because they've complained about things that were bullshit in the past. 
the lab leak hypothesis is one. Go. But that's and that but that's exactly what people are doing. They're like, oh, they're wrong. You know, they were dishonest about the lab leak hypothesis. They were dishonest about the fine mass people originally. hoax. Right, fine people hoax. You could just that's what I'm saying. You could just make a list of it's so nonsense. Russia it shows, <laughs> Yeah, it shows how dishonest this propaganda is because what he he's what he's talking about has nothing to do with the merits about whether CRT is being taught and whether it should be taught in schools. We should use this angle. We should just say, listen, Russiagate happened, so therefore CRT <laughs> is totally, totally legit, right? You guys lied about Russiagate. Exactly. Now you're exactly. lying. Uh, now you're lying about CRT. This. Yes. I, that's why I don't like character assassination. Is just nonsense because it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Like the person could be the most despicable person in the world, and they could actually be correct. Like it mm -hmm. does. Like. There's a truth claim behind all of this nonsense. So the, the lab right. leak hypothesis is a, it's a perfect example, right? You know, Joseph that Stalin could come out and say, you know, it's probably a lab and was probably leaked from a lab in Wuhan. And you're like, oh, my God, he killed millions <laughs> of people. It can't be correct. Well, no, it's a it's a factual statement that he's putting out there. Right. Right. Like just because he's a piece of shit. And just because I'm clairvoyant and know that he said this. I know Joseph well, Stalin's not here anymore, but who's a, who's a despicable person? I don't know. T a Tariq Nasheed comes out <laughs> in favor of the lab leak hypothesis. Right. It's sad because this is just the way we're wired to think. It's like, okay, I don't know who to trust. It's too difficult to get to the bottom of it. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to, instead of trying to figure out whether the facts are true, I'm just going to trust a source or not. And if it's a source yeah. I trust, then I'm just going to say it's true. That's basically that's basically as much as people you know think about a lot of stuff. I trust no one, no one at any smart. time ever. But an actual American flag, now that I trust, I'm oh, saluting yeah. right now. An actual American flag for twenty dollars. I'm crying. It says here's to another fan freedom freaking tastic stream. You two, let's all laugh at this disheveled turd. I know. He is quite disheveled. He is quite disheveled. Disheveled is his look. Is that a good look? What does that say about your audience if your look is to look as disgusting as possible? As disheveled as them? <laughs> like, obviously, there's some level of disheveledness that's like, oh, you're cool. You know, you just give a fuck, right? But this mm. is beyond, like, I don't give a fuck. This is like the dirty homeless <laughs> look. <laughs> like, the he deranged is wearing a tie. Man. I'm not wearing a tie. Yeah, but, but he he's like... This is like the deranged man aesthetic. Like he's just wandering the streets, yelling at people like the microphones. I need a Cody hairstyle that I can put on you. Like I put the Tim pool hat on. Just the crazy. <laughs> I yeah, need the crazy. Go. I need the crazy hair for <laughs> PSA Sitch's avatar. Uh, oh no, guys. We have a very special guest in the chat, everybody. Do we? Cody Johnson's Raycons. Oh my what? God. It's Cody Johnson's Raycons for $20. All oh, giving us some of that Cody money. Thank you. It says Cody may endorse, but I certainly don't endorse this crazy communist. How do I get out of this contract? Well. Exactly. You just got to call him up. You got to call him up and say, listen, fuck you. Don't talk about Raycons <laughs> anymore. You're hurting our brand. I'm, do you really think there's that many people watching Cody's videos that are like, I'm going to get me some Raycons? Aren't they guess, like 300 right? bucks of, of a set or something? Yep, I think they're yep. completely obnoxiously priced. And not only that, I, don't, I saw a stream where Deb was talking about wireless headphones, and I just, that Bluetooth is a high frequency radiation. I just, I don't even you like want to that hold Bluetooth this next to your ears. I all don't. Day? Next yeah. To your brain all day. Oh. I don't. I don't really. I know. I know. Me neither. Me neither. Wiring is not, is not great either, but having like, oh, it's better than, I would imagine. It's better than Bluetooth, Bluetooth aimed at yeah. your yeah brain all day. So check it out, Dev. Look up some of the videos. See the Geiger <laughs> counter. Put the Geiger counter next to your blue poop. It ain't pretty. <laughs> was this was this the frame you used for the thumbnail? No, but that's a good one. That's a yeah. pretty good one. I like that. 
And now we are forced to talk about whether or not critical race theory is destroying America and should be canceled, cast out of the marketplace of ideas, very un-American of our GOP representatives for shame, but whatever, let's do it. This is so dishonest because it's, no one is saying you should not be allowed to talk about critical race yeah. theory. Okay. The question is whether it should be taught in school Cool. That's not a little different than saying, oh, wait, you're sh- well, suddenly in favor of cancel culture now. It's like, no. Okay. We're not saying actors will be fired for talking about CRT. We're not saying you'll get kicked off social media for talking about it. We're just saying, what should be taught in fucking school? Yeah. That's all. Hugely, That's all. hugely different. Yeah. Little different. Little different. <laughs> but let's, let's hear them out as apparently we must, what is so bad about critical race theory? You're hearing a lot about critical. So I'm gonna skip his montage because it tells you nothing and it's not his, it's some other companies and I don't wanna get cut. Oh my God, Sitch had to spend all last week editing (laughs) a 10 hour stream. Yes. Around the copyright debacle with HBO, just a few guys. Uh, weren't aware that's right if you guys yeah. missed it uh, i finally was able to get up last week's stream if you'd missed it live mm-hmm. it took forever but it's finally there hbo was very obnoxious about copyright if you want to see the unedited version you can look click the podcast link in the description there right. is a podcast version too why didn't cut anything out i would just voice over the video right but i think the so. i think the podcast link is unmolested if you yes, want to hear all the podcast all link is unmolested true you won't be able to see it though and we did do <laughs> i did get some complaints from people who were like you keep talking about ben shapiro's fuck you face and i can't look at it it's driving me crazy <laughs> but that looked like that was the most amazing thing ben <laughs> shapiro's like what the fuck <laughs> i did i did uh, an update i did go back mm-hmm. and i listened to the whole the whole uh show the whole hbo wow. show and mm-hmm. oh. at the end of the show they see they didn't seem to be they seemed to be like had already made up by the end of the show which was a different an interesting thing that i didn't i completely realize. disagree with you well nance is on social media basically calling ben shapiro a nazi right and left yeah so, well no i yeah. watched the whole hbo show too and he was Nance is being first of all part of the part of the hostility, which I didn't realize, was earlier in the show Ben Shapiro was talking about how Malcolm Nance was trying to get him canceled off of social media. Yes, yep, that's part of it too. <laughs> so this is this is what a piece of shit this guy is. He's talking to Ben Shapiro, being super obnoxious, to him, and before the vi- before the show, he was trying to get him fucking canceled. Yeah, Nance Discuss- is a at- Nance is a piece of shit. Total yeah. piece of shit. Total piece yeah. of shit. Or a victim and dumb as a bag of hair. Did you skip already? I guess you did. Yeah, this is the end of it. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, okay. That that all sounds really bad and true. Kids coming home, saying they're being taught to hate themselves and their nation, and question the wisdom of our many dear. What, 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 what was in the clips again? Just. It's just a bunch of Fox News hosts and Republican politicians saying CRT is bad. It teaches kids to hate themselves. It just kids to hate their country. You know, all the standards. Puts, puts, sets up an oppressor oppressed dichotomy between blacks and whites. That's, that's basically what it's in, in. But the, the, is Fox News at all correct on this? I feel like there's definitely some truth in what they're saying about. Sure, of course. The whole idea, and maybe we should, I don't think we've mentioned mm-hmm. for CRT, is that the the premise behind CRT is that the civil rights movement was a big disgrace and that n- all, of the, all of the perceived gains in the civil rights movement are just fictitious and really society is structured mm-hmm. well, to, to, to take resources from blacks and give them to whites. That's basically the... That is thing. that is sort of what they're saying. Mm-hmm. I would be careful using the word disgrace mm-hmm. because the CRT people are very careful, okay, mm-hmm. in saying like, well, we're not saying that Martin Luther King Jr. or any of the patron saints of the civil rights movement were bad or wrong. Mm-hmm. We're just saying that they kind of totally failed in what they were trying to accomplish. <laughs> right, yes. 
So they're kind of trying to have it both ways. They're trying they're trying to still revere them as the legends, but say that they didn't really accomplish their goals. So imagine going into a classroom, you know, sixth grade, and they start teaching you that the civil rights movement was a huge failure, that all of society <laughs> is structured to oppress black people at right. the behest of white voters. Yes. <laughs> so that, yeah. That's basically what they want to that's, teach. That's what they want to teach. Yeah. Right. So, Cody, maybe we could have a conversation about whether or not that's acceptable. I mean, Sean it seems had like... A, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, Sean had a good video about one of these racist privilege camps that people send their kids to uh -huh. that cost oh like $500 oh for a God. week oh to have their God. kids indoctrinated into the, the being like white people are automatically racist. And they did the stupid little privilege line where it's like, oh, if you're this privileged, you have to step forward. And one of the questions they asked for the privilege, li for the privilege line was, you're taught about the your history classes teach you about the history of your people mm -hmm. and of course all the white people step forward but i'm like wait a minute that doesn't make any fucking sense because that's only if you're being racist and assuming that because you're white you share some sort of cultural heritage with all white people mm -hmm. i'm assuming most of those kids that step forward are not of British ancestry. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think their parents came over here on the fucking Mayflower, mm -hmm. but yeah, they all totally. step forward because they all buy into this nonsense that all white people have some magical shared culture. And none no, of the black sucks. people step forward when it's, I think it's more likely statistically that if you, if there's a black American that they've probably been in the country uh, generationally longer than most white people in the country. Right. Yeah. This is what we have to come up with a shared American history. I know, we do. It's terrible. I thought we I thought the civil rights movement was working on that. It I was. thought that was the whole goal of the civil but, rights uh, movement. But but you know it, it wasn't working fast enough so we have to throw it all away and try something completely different. AKA right. socialism. <laughs> oh my god. Well that's kind of a break from American history, <laughs> isn't it? Just I don't know bit. that America has ever been a socialist nation. <laughs> No, That's no. definitely not returning to our roots. No. Oh my God. Leaders being told it's okay to be racist to them, sobbing, pleading to not be white anymore. The teachers shove them, pointing, cackling, white, white. Plus, a lot of the teachers are white. They just, they've been spitting on them and stuff. Anyway, let's hear from the parents. Here with more are three parents from Loudoun County, Virginia. We have Jessica and Fred and Patty. We've got this mother of two criticizing a Colorado school board over the impact critical race theory is having on students. For another example of everyday Americans fighting back for their liberties, Keisha King is a Florida mom who took a bold stance against critical race theory, claiming that the teaching of race is in fact racist. Joining me now is Loudoun County parent Ian Pryor and Kim Klasik, president of Red Renaissance. Our next guests were both there, father of three and U.S. Army vet Joe Mobley and a teacher at Douglas School in Loudoun County, Jeremy Wright, both joined me from the Commonwealth of Virginia. Guys, good morning to you. You going to deliberately teach kids this white kid right here got it better than you because he white? You going to purposely tell a white kid, oh, the black people are all down and suppressed. How do I have two medical degrees if I'm sitting here oppressed? Sandra, the Florida State School Board has now voted to ban critical race theory from being taught in public schools in the Sunshine State. It comes as more parents across the country are pushing back against so-called woke curricula being taught in classrooms. Bridget Ziegler is a mother of three girls and a Sarasota County school board member. She joins us now. I'm joined now by Carrie Lucas, a Virginia mom of five, and her 13-year-old daughter, Meredith, currently a Virginia public school eighth grader. Here to react is Alexandria Little League parent and an informal advisor to the 2016 uh, Trump campaign, Barry Bennett. Wow. What an amazing outpouring of hold up. Can we run that last clip again? Here to react is Alexandra Little League parent and an informal advisor to the 2016 uh, Trump campaign, Barry Bennett. Did he uh, say that guy was an informal advisor to the 2016 Trump campaign? That's um, that's, that's a weird coincidence. How Barry Bennett, the concerned coach that Fox is interviewing there, also happens to be a political operative and lobbyist for the Republican Party. Ha! Huh. I mean, surely that's just one. And the rest of these parents and teachers are. So you already see the direction this is oh going. Oh my okay? God. Oh my I'm God. I'm going to get a bunch of clips of parents complaining about CRT. 
Uh-huh. And then I'm going to get one where this guy was some, whatever an informal Operative, advisor yeah. means. I don't even know what that means, but <laughs> an informal advisor Trump can't and say, see, it's all fake. It's all just an AstroTurf campaign. I just, it's so dishonest because it's yes. like all those totally honest people telling their completely honest stories. And then the fact that he went and cherry picked all of the clips Yep. To put yep. this to put this other guy in. Yep. <laughs> it's so oh, this is so bad. But so but this look this is so bad. We're six minutes into the video. Okay. Yeah. So far, Cody has made two arguments. The first is that Republicans have complained about stupid things in the past that weren't true. And these parents are really Republican operatives. Yeah. So We've had nothing but whataboutism and ad homs for the entire beginning of this video. Character assassination again. I keep thinking of uh, Stephen Michael Davis's video on the left and character assassination. Right. It's like all they know. It's like, do you have any sense of decency? You're throwing these people under the bus. You're literally calling these innocent parents, you know, trying to protect their kids in public school, a uh, political operatives. Yeah, what the fuck, Cody? Well, and it's just, it's disgusting that this is, this is the tactics. This, this is how you know it's propaganda. The opening tactics are this dishonest emotional manipulation. It's not about the facts of what's going on. It's not about whether CRT is being taught or whether that's a good thing or not. It's all, look at the Republicans. Look what the Republicans have done. The black, it is. The black doctor with two medical degrees. Who was super pissed about his black kids being it's, taught it's, that they could never succeed in school. He's like, hey, but oh Adam, my God, that guy works for some kind of pact or some sort of political organization. So Citation needed, Cody. What the fuck? But what no, the he, fuck? He has no, that guy supposedly does work for some organization or something. But does he really? Yeah, he brings it up. But here's, okay. but here's why this is so stupid. How do. You have all these people that supposedly work for these these organizations or groups. Mm -hmm. Why am I supposed to believe that they didn't join this group because they don't like the critical race? Because of CRT? In the yeah, in the exactly. First place? So exactly. you have some parent who says, "Oh, I don't like that my kids being taught this in school." So they join a group that's against that. And then After says, the fact, See? yeah. Right. So then Cody says, "See, they join. They're part of this group. Therefore, they're really a political, you know, pundit." Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. I got it's you. totally yeah. nonsense. It's totally like nonsense. as soon as as soon as you know they're teaching critical race theory to my kids, you know I'm sending a thousand dollars to the Republican Party, right? Like that's how you're going to fight it. Republicans right. then, are the only ones say, fighting oh, it. You sent money to the Republican Party, therefore, yeah. <laughs> vis a vis ergo ad procto ad hominem, you must be a political operative. Like, how? Do you, uh, how? How? What is the who? <clears throat> thank goodness. There is a party standing up to this shit. Otherwise, we'd be totally up shit creek without a paddle, right? That's the thing. That's what's wrong with one-party systems. In communist right. China, they're like, no, we're teaching critical race theory. Shut the fuck up. You want right. to visit the Uyghur camp? We got a, a plane ticket for you. Keep your mm -hmm. mouth shut. Are, what's that, finger? You love where I've been putting you? Oh, and every single one of them is a political activist or operative or lobbyist. And in fact, of those people I just showed being interviewed along with the Trump advisor, there were multiple right-wing talk radio hosts, several GOP consultants and professional commentators, the founders of multiple conservative super PACs, a conservative author, and the former senior domestic policy analyst. So, so he's picking clips based on whether or not they contributed to the Republican Party or whatever. They're part of no. What what he did was he found some media matters article mm -hmm. okay okay that had a, that had done all the research for him because that's all right. Cody does it's, it's funny because when i was watching this video and doing research for it i would check for he like he would display the art like the name of the article that he's talking about and i'd read it and he's just literally plagiarizing everything the article says right in his Th this they're writing his script well it, his his whoever writes the show basically just steals he, like they don't do any research on their own. They basically mm -hmm. just steal information from other articles. Right. So what he did was they just found this media matters article that was, did, did all this legwork that said, Oh, we found a bunch of people that complained about CRT on Fox news. And they're not just normal parents. They work for various political organizations. And right. now he's just regurgitating that. 
Okay, I gotcha. That's all that's happening. I'm but curious you're right what the political that, organizations are. Right, which is a you know, they he's just him and media matters because that's where he's getting it from. They're just cherry picking clips for mm-hmm. those kinds of people in the first place. Right. Yeah. B, is it really that surprising that the people that show up on national cable Fox News are going to be operatives. more likely to be not just your average individual? <laughs> yeah. Person? Exactly. Most people are like, yeah, I don't want them teaching racism to my kids at school, but I'm not f- going to make myself a target by going on Fox News, right? Right. Obviously. Or how is Fox News? My Fox News isn't going to care to interview them. They're going to interview like the person that's like somewhat Speaking famous. Speaking out, political. yeah. Yeah. Because, and two, I mean, this is all bullshit. This is all ad hom. This is all ad hom. Because we've all seen, there's like, there's dozens and dozens of clips of parents who are at these meetings and teacher? There's a teacher that just there's a video just quit. circulated yeah. of a teacher who just quit. But she's like, on Fox she's, News now, so obviously we can't trust her. Sitch, what are you talking about? Well, she was yeah, but that's the thing. She was interviewed by Fox News. It's just her crying because she's so distraught that after teaching for ten or fifteen years, she's quitting because her school's mandating all this insane racist shit. Yeah. But you know, it's all fake. It's all just it's a, she quit after fifteen years of teaching because it's part of a political stunt, right? Yeah. That's what people and, normally do, Sitch. They they <laughs> quit their their lifetime job for a political stunt. It's so sad and depressing that this is happening. And that, that our country is so tribal that it's just this is the argument. If the right is complaining about something, the left's complaining about something, you just have to take the opposite side. That's all that's happening in this, yeah, it's garbage. this video so far. And no nobody cares about the truth. When it comes to the critical race theory stuff, I have yet to see a single person who's defended critical race theory say, oh, let me go, let me find examples of things that, that are being taught in schools that they don't like, and then show that it's not actually CRT. Mm-hmm. No yeah. one's ever done that. <laughs> ever. Yeah. Like, um, like pull, pull out some thing that they're teaching that the right finds objectionable and and point to how this is like contradicted by crt and not actually any kind of crt scholarship right so either how a it's not crt or b that it's actually good right yeah no one does that they all just do this fake this is just the fear mongering it's not being taught in school like they none of it is actually going into the substance of this conversation well they do they do say that like Malcolm Nance was saying this, like we have to teach, you know, the history of the Ku Klux Klan in the South. Otherwise, <laughs> I, he's basically saying that's CRT. CRT is teaching the history of the right. Ku Klux Klan in the South. Right. I laid out CRT in the very beginning. It wasn't about teaching the history of the Ku Klux Klan in the South. It's basic. CRT is saying that the Ku Klux Klan in the South actually won mm-hmm. and, and still secretly exists today. That's CRT. Uh, Derek Drummond for $50. Thank you so much, Derek. Says, I used up all of my extra free will and I will need some more. Please and thank you, Wolf. You're in luck, George, or Derek, because mm-hmm. you get 50 free units of free will. Free will is great. Thank you so much, Derek. Uh, Shoddy Viceroy for $20. Thank you, Shoddy. You're not shoddy to us. Says, I'm new to your channel and I'm really enjoying your content. Thank you. Also, what are your all thoughts on solar? I work in the solar industry, so I just want to hear your thoughts on it. Solar, uh, I, don't, I don't know much about. I know yeah, in Southern neither. California, there's a lot of solar panels. I know my folks mm-hmm. have solar and they love it. So, yeah. The uh, And I've also read that there's some newer innovations coming up in solar that could be like game changers, like shingles on the roof and also a, a paint a type of paint that you paint your house and like wow yeah put in little solar connectors and it's like a low voltage solar that you actually that would be a freaking game changer so Here, yeah. here's what i don't understand here's what i think would make it a game changer at least where mm-hmm. i live because you know if we have storms or whatever you can get you know you can be without power for days or maybe even weeks and i was like wait a minute why can't i just get like a solar panel Mm-hmm. so that if if i don't have power i can just use that but supposedly most of the solar panels you buy you you can't actually use them if you run out of power and to me that's like 
That would be really? the primary reason I'd want to fucking have one in the first place. Well, you can get a battery. The Tesla battery is ba basically solar charged stored energy. That's the whole thing. Right. You have to do some weird thing where you have to, but even, but most of the solar panel companies I was looking up, they don't even offer this, which is so bizarre. Cause to me, this would be the primary reason I'd want one, at least where I live. Yes. Would be, yeah, you have to buy like a, like a, not only do you have to get the solar panel, but you have to get some kind of generator or battery on top of it. And it's kind of like an extra hassle to do. Yes. I don't yeah. know if that's just a limitation of the technology, but to me, that would be the big, the big change. Solar you could just... is the future, though. You do the math on how much energy sure. is being put out of the well, sun, and it's like, and all I'm plants are solar energy. Plants. I'm not sure if solar is going to be better than nuclear going forward, just because. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. If they can get the new generation nuclear power mm -hmm. plants up and running that use their own waste. And they're way more efficient and way safer. I think it's that's still going to be way better than solar in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, just because also solar is create, creates a lot of battery waste, doesn't it? I don't know. I mean, I think you're right that it will be the future eventually. I'm just not sure how far off that is. Obviously, yeah. House Republican Policy Committee, amongst many other things, and multiple conservative activists and think tank members, including one with connections to Turning Point USA, literally. Oh my God! <laughs> no! Oh, Holy shit! What? Links to Turning Point USA? No! <laughs> my God! Sitch! <laughs> oh my God! They so they're so fucking toxic. These people. It's I like, know. It's, is this so pathetic? Remember in that other video where we totally uh, character assassinated uh, Turning Points USA and Charlie Kirk? Now we're gonna use it in this video. <laughs> oh my God! Cody's linked to Marxism. <laughs> so to, I know. I know. Zero of those people were fresh off the street, non-politically tied individuals expressing their concern about critical race theory and their children. Yes, it turns out that a lot of this grassroots concerned parent movement sure feels like it was put there artificially. Like, See, this would be so easy to debunk just by getting a couple of parents that were not, <laughs> which seems pretty easy to do, right? I could probably go yeah. to the local school board and, oh, shit. But People are yeah, sharing but, it on like the the ring thing. I see people going, "This is what's going on. This is racist against white people." <laughs> it it doesn't matter because this is all just political propaganda. It's it's to train his audience's mind into automatically disregarding any time they see someone complain about CRT in schools. Yes, that's yeah. what the point of this is. Yes, it's to create. Uh, it's to create cog. I want to say cognitive dissonance, but it's not. Well, it's not really dissonance. cognitive dissonance. It's just confirmation these, bias. That's it. yes. It's to create bias, confirmation right. bias. Yeah, exactly. And make that confirmation bias stick. You just heard Turning Points USA. We know what to do when we hear Turning Points USA, right? You shut your brain off. <laughs> right, right. Like some sort of artificial grass or fake turf, if you will. So while it's important to not hand wave every single parent or teacher as some kind of operative for the GOP, it does seem as if- Is, it, is that helpful? I don't know that that's helpful. Claiming, I mean, both sides do this. I hear the AstroTurf argument on both sides of the political aisle. They say everything that they're doing is complete AstroTurf. The right says it just as much as the left well, does. Every and, single progressive yeah. movement is astroturf. Right. I don't. It's like, I understand well, the reason for that. They want to say that because, oh, you know, normal people aren't for this. We're the normal people. It's the, the elites that are basically making this happen. Well, he, he, here's the here's the red pill. Okay. Anyone complaining about some movement being astroturf is wasting their breath and their time. Because all movements are fucking astroturf, you fools. Oh, really? You know what normal people are doing, Adam? Working. They're working. They have <laughs> jobs. Okay. They get home from their job and they're like, yeah. you know, I'm kind of tired. I don't have time to go to a fucking school board meeting. I don't have time to go march on fucking Washington. It's I'm true. fucking lazy. I'm watching Netflix. I'm playing video games. That's what 
quote unquote normal people yeah. are doing. I'll vote in the next. I'll get this in the next election. Yes. I'll, I'll pull my fucking... ballot out, my mail-in ballot, and take care of this shit. Every movement that's large on a, on any sort of scale is being funded and astroturfed by fucking someone. <laughs> this is it's such a stupid argument. That's I guess that's a good point. The right the right always wants to say it's the intellectual Marxist elites that are creating the astroturf. Right. And the right always wants to or the left always wants to say it's the business elites. Well, here's here's the real the real argument that's being seeded into the astroturf. The implication is they're saying some rich person somewhere Paid, is yeah. paying a bunch of people to protest something that they don't really believe in or care about. Right. Yes. But that's not really what happens. No. What not happens at all. is you have all these various people who want to protest someone mm -hmm. or protest something or they want to do some political thing. And so they hook up with some wealthy person to bankroll them. Totally. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's what happens. They basically say, that I, I want to be an activist because this horrible right. thing is happening, but I don't have the resources to do it. And the big fat cat says, well, I think that's a terrible thing that's going on. Here, let me give you the resources to, to fight right. it on my behalf. There's, there's all these rich people in America wandering around looking for right. political uh, organizations or movements to sink their money into. Totally, yeah. yeah. It, it's such a ridiculous... It's just a fucking waste of time. It's a horrid waste of time. Yeah. And it's just completely an ad hominem. Wasn't Look he Young at... Turks funded by Katzenberg? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But just look at the actual argument. I don't care who's funding the person. Okay. Mm -hmm. I look at the actual argument and talk about that. But you already spoiled it. Cody's never going to do that. <laughs> Does Cody even know <laughs> the argument? Does Cody oh, understand the argument? There is the most golden thing in this video. Oh, really? He yes. does know the argument. He does. Well, actually, there's, oh. there's two. There's two super gold. No, no. Cody. One of them shows that he. One of them is what I already told you about, where he lets the mask slip. Right. One of them shows that he literally and his staff are so mind-numbingly stupid they literally don't understand any aspect of CRT or, or the conversation around it. Oh my God. That's it comes up very shortly. It's you, amazing. You can't. I mean, if you're just getting your news from left leaning media, there's no way you're going to understand this. No, no, this. no, no. I mean, their well, no. whole thing is gaslighting about what's actually mm -hmm. going on. That is, that's true. That's true. Uh, Doge Whistle for $20 says A team steals the highlights magazine from the dentist office and makes s'mores. With saltine crackers. What? Oh my God. In the I cannot think of anything worse than a s'more with a saltine cracker. That's pretty that's disgusting. A, that, that's a crime against humanity. <laughs> that is. That is. Though, I mean, everyone knows Adam does not steal the Highlights magazine. Well, I was going to say, I, I notice how I didn't okay. say anything about that part. Because <laughs> Adam just... doesn't go to the dentist's office. He steals the Highlights magazine from the haircut place. <laughs> Come on, no, Adam. No. Those are for children. No, I go to the dentist's office, and every every dentist has it coming in my book. You guys know no, that. Okay. I'll steal all their fucking magazines. <laughs> I'll steal them all. Those they owe me. Are for children, Adam. They owe me. Don't worry. One day you'll figure out how to get through the maze. Okay, you'll get that little mouse through the maze to find the cheese. <laughs> One day. One day. The most vocal of these concerned Americans, the reasons this is a thing anyone's even talking about, aren't simply everyday people suddenly concerned with their kids' education. Like this Florida mom named Keisha King. This is so fucking ridiculous. In I Los know. Angeles, people, literally half my friends have moved once mm -hmm. they are having kids so they can be in a good school district. <laughs> people literally fucking sell their entire home and move to a new home based on the school district. That's how yep. fucking, how yeah. much people care about their education. And Cody's trying to make it sound like these people don't give a fuck about their but kids' education. They're not on Fox News, Adam. So how do we know that they really exist? <laughs> I guess you're right. I mean, Checkmate. they're just suing They're just suing the school district of Atlanta for <laughs> discrimination, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm sure she's actually a secret Republican operative, too. 
Oh my God, Cody's going full. That woman's black, Cody. What are you doing? <laughs> That's a black woman. <laughs> Cody's committing racism. Who was in that montage I showed? Well, she made a bunch of headlines for being a black woman standing up against the evils of critical race theory. But when you just sort of scroll down, most of these articles end up noting that she's the co-founder of one chapter of a group called Moms for Liberty, an organization that has branches fucking everywhere in the country. And if you Google the words Moms for Liberty... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Moms, okay, L listen to how dishonest this is. Listen to how dishonest this is, okay? Mm -hmm. He's saying, oh, she's she co-founded a chapter mm -hmm. of this group called the moms for liberty but what does it mean to co-found a chapter of an organization that well it's a like a franchise chapters? sitch it's it basically like, like in your local community you're gonna yes. basically yeah. yeah it's like it boy, that... she, she's not the founder of the boy scouts of america just because no. she like did a local chapter of the boy scouts of america in her town yeah that's a that's a great example that's like saying if a parent says you know there's no Boy Scouts in this area, and I think there should be. So I'm gonna co I'm gonna found I'm gonna a found chapter a, of the Boy Scouts. A troop. Okay. Scouts right. troop. Right. Does that mean that that person is the voice of the Boy Scouts of the America? Co-founder of the Boy Scouts of America? <laughs> no, of course not. Yeah. Oh my it means god. This, this woman was like, I don't like this being taught in my school. Oh, here's an organization that would support me and give me money to fight this. I'm going to co-found a fucking local chapter. So me and the five other moms that we meet with in our, in at Shelly's kitchen on on Wednesdays can I do know, it. I know. But no, that means it's AstroTurf. That means it's a fake organization. <laughs> She's the head of the she is the head of the world, Sitch. <laughs> this woman is George Soros. <laughs> No, Koch brothers. The, she's, this she's, woman she's, is the Koch brothers. This woman is the Koch brothers. Yes. I'm sorry. Both I got my, I got my sides mixed up for a second you're there. Right. Oh my you're god. Right. Do you think the, the Koch and, brothers and and George Soros like go out for coffee and like have a big laugh? No, 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 no. The Koch brothers and George Soros obviously go out for virgin sacrifices <laughs> and swapping their blood out for the blood of the youth. Okay, that's that's where they meet. Probably, maybe yes. so theory you'll soon discover that pretty much every article about a concerned parent will eventually note that they are a member of this group a group that before they were so worried about critical race theory were out protesting mask mandates in schools back in april a group that was founded by two ex-school board members one of whom has been accused of physically disrupting classrooms and the other was voted out mm. <laughs> accused okay this is first of all this is all what about us this is all ad hom. Mm -hmm. Okay. None of we haven't eaten. We're like eight minutes in. We haven't gotten anywhere near the actual subject matter. But his big critique against these women is that they used to be a school board members. <laughs> Isn't that what you want? Yeah. If if you have an organization that's about changing things that you think are bad in school, yeah, you join the school being... board. That's the first thing you do. Yeah, I, this is like so that's like insane. square one. <laughs> Square one. And then he says, she got in trouble for physically disrupting a class. What does that mean? Yeah. I was that could be anything. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? She could have she could have run to a class where they were teaching that black people were inferior and said, This is racist. You're wrong and racist for doing this. Right. That's physically disrupting a class. Like, what does it mean? Well, Mask get... mandates in school. We're not going to get April, any answers. Right? A group no, that was founded no, no. by two ex-school board members, one of whom has been accused of physically disrupting class. Beachland teachers accuse ex-school <laughs> board member of disruptive actions. Well, that doesn't even mean she disrupted a class. Disruptive hey, let me go, actions? Let what? me find this article. Yeah. VeroNews.com. Disrupted. We're, Cody, we're on to you. We're fucking, we're full time fact checkers here. Don't give us your bullshit, okay? Oh, that's not a good. Oh, okay. At first, when I clicked the link, it wasn't. It wouldn't even go through. Oh, really? Cody's just making uh, shit up. Let's see. County public school administrators are investigating an incident. Oh no! It was an elementary school in early April, in which former school board member was accused of angrily disrupting classrooms and flouting the board's mandatory face mask policy oh it was a, a face mask thing yes that's why she was getting upset 
two Beachland Elementary fifth grade teachers last week begged the school board for help coping with the fallout from the parental rights advocates confront confrontational behavior during the week. Uh, Does it say if she was pro mask? She might have been disrupting because people weren't wearing their masks. No, no, she was. I'm assuming she was anti mask. Let's see. Oh, okay, here the lady Tiffany Justice and her fifth grade son refused to wear face masks as required by school board policy. I thought, I thought they said this was in Florida. Hmm. And Justice angrily dis- disregarded educators' directions during her April seventh visit to the school. Well, she has to be wrong about CRT if she disagrees about face masks. Such, don't you know all these things? You didn't know that CRT was related to face masks, but it's intimately related. So, so what, so wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Beachland Elementary allowed Justice and her fifth grade son to sit in his class without a face mask. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. I she was sitting in class with him now. I don't know. Maybe it was like, take your parent to school day or something. Take your mom to work. <laughs> Is that a thing? Take your mom to work without a mask day. So, okay. So, so here, here's the, here's the, here's the level of disruption was that her and her child went to school without a mask and they said you need to wear a mask and she said no (laughs) there you go there you go but it could have been a super spreader event we don't know who knows knows? so there you go she disrupted a classroom (laughs) cody targeting people i don't get it (laughs) I don't get it. What a bully. This is ridiculous. Classrooms was voted out after opposing pro LGBT guidelines and then getting shit mailed to her. Like lit- like literal actual shit. <laughs> They're just bitter, ousted, and toxic people trying to reinvolve themselves in schools. And yay. So she's anti LGBT. Supposedly. But I, what does that mean? We have to wait. I know. You have to look up the article. You have to look up the article. But they're well, opposing pro LGBT guidelines and then getting shit mailed. There it is. This is this is uh, l- uh, let me already guess the opposing pro LGBT guidelines is I don't want you to teach this transgender ideology to my kids. Maybe. Yeah, that's I'm sure that's what it is. And she or, got and, she, and the fucking trans activist mailed her shit in the mail, which is no, something okay, they would totally do. Here's my guess. It's not going to be that. It's going to be about bathrooms or something or sports. Something Mm. about trans sports bathrooms. Trans sports or bathrooms. Hmm. Yeah, that's my guess. It's so funny how they just paint that as LT. You'd think she was against gay marriage. She's probably a gay marriage supporter. That's what they always do. Everything gets lumped under the broad label of LGBT. Yeah. I can't believe they allow queer, which is just a way for straight people to claim <laughs> lgbtq because like queer doesn't even mean you're same-sex attracted okay here's the article she said it came from pennsylvania someone stamped the priority mail envelope for the bag of what appears to be green brown poo waste oh my god oh my god no uh, I, she said, I may contact the police, but I'm going to do my research first. <laughs> what does that oh, mean? Don't do it. Maybe don't. this lady is crazy. Someone told me that, oh, someone told me there's a company in Pennsylvania that will send out animal poop. <laughs> That's pretty disgusting. <laughs> there are online companies that charge to send animal dung through the mail anonymously or as a joke or as an insult. I thought I thought that was illegal to do, isn't it? To send poo to people? I'm pretty sure that's not allowed. Yeah, of course. Pretty like, sure. That's like a biological weapon. Come on. Yeah. Because uh, I know, like, I've had to send, like, blood tests and other, like, bodily, ex- you know, waste product tests, like, to be uh, tested across the country somewhere. And they're like, it has to be in a special package and it has to be, like, super sealed. And it's like some guy's just sending poo in, like, an envelope. <laughs> like, come on. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, oh my God, Adam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am fucking psychic. Okay. Uh, the, a document detailing the policies circulated on social media in early March, drawing the ire of local politicians and conservative group, including the ladies group. Um, the policies included provisions allowing transgender students to use bathrooms and play on sports teams in line with their gender identity. There we go. Yeah. There you go. There she, you go. This is so fucking dishonest. This is so dishonest. 
This is so dis- that's another legitimate uh, debate that we need to have. And if you're on the opposite side of that debate, oh my God, you're anti LGBT. Yep. What a fucking sure. dick. Uh, Brian dick. Townsend for $20. Thank you so much, Brian. It says, good afternoon, fellas. I just got a promotion at work. So I supported your comic and thought I would spread the gravy train to everyone. Have a great stream and a great day. First of all, congratulations. Congra- I know. Awesome. Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations on the promotion. And also, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the support. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. To her, like literal actual shit. They're just bitter, ousted, and toxic people trying to re-involve themselves in schools. And yay, they succeeded. But also, how is someone mailing you shit make you the bad guy? Yeah, the bitter, toxic <laughs> person. Exactly. I think the person mailing yeah, this shit I is know. the toxic person. If literally. You're, if you're shitting into a <laughs> Ziploc bag and and putting postage on that shit, I got news for you. Okay, <gasps> you're the fucking shithead. Yes. You're the shitter, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. We're getting ourselves. The question is, what is critical race theory? And is it being taught to our children? There you go. It only took us eight minutes mm-hmm. to actually address a point without setting up all the bullshit problems. You gotta poison the well first, of yes. course. You gotta yes. you gotta take every single concerned parent in America and throw them fucking way under the bus and right. back it up and you know, peel out on their skulls. <laughs> all that shit. It's like so so dishonest. You have to throw them all in the well, poison the well I know. and pour concrete in yes. the well. <laughs> This yes. is this is this is the party of empathy, ladies and gentlemen. The party right. of <laughs> of empathizing with other people. Right, right. Who have children that they're well, concerned about. You can't empathize with people that have the wrong opinion, Adam. <laughs> Evidently. Very briefly, the basic tenets of critical race theory, or CRT, emerged out of a framework for legal analysis in the late 1970s and early 1980s created by legal scholars Derek Bell, Kimberly Crenshaw, and Richard Delgado, among others. Less briefly, critical race theory argues... I like that that brief explanation gives you tells literally nothing. nothing. Yeah, nothing. exactly. Who came up with it? Yeah. Does not tell us what yeah. the fuck it is. Right. Yeah. Is that racism is not just a matter of personal prejudice or explicit legal discrimination, but can be found in everyday social practices and is embedded in our legal system. It places specific emphasis on history and context with relation to discussion of race in legal discourse and seeks to understand how white supremacy was created in our legal Wait, system. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. places specific emphasis on history. It's important because some of these quotes he doesn't read. Read. Yeah. An important CRT theme, the absolute centrality of history and context in any attempt to theorize the relationship between race and legal discourse. Well, that sounds like garbage. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? In context, which in to discussion of race in legal discourse and seeks to understand how white supremacy was created and how it is maintained. Wait a minute. I thought... You never saw the word white supremacy in oh, academic know. literature. I know. What's happening? I know. I've read one I... fucking CRT paper and it's in the first paragraph. I thought Vosh told us on Tim I Pool know. that you just never, you know, academics never use the term white supremacy. That's not That's not used. That's not used. And to examine its relationship to professed ideals. So- Are you going to read that? Should we read it? He, he, he's saying it. He's saying oh, he is. It. But, but okay. listen to, okay, we should pause here for a second because mm-hmm. he's reading this like it's not a big deal, but if you like thought about it for two seconds, it is a big deal, okay? The the paragraph says, or the sentence says, the first is to understand how a regime of white supremacy and its subordination of people of color has been created and maintained in America, okay? So we're currently living under a regime of white supremacy. And in particular, to examine the relationship between the social structures and the professed ideals such as the rule of law and equal protection. Mm -hmm. So he's reading this like it's some innocuous statement when it's saying 
that the concepts of rule of law and equal protection are white supremacy. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that, Cody? <laughs> That's pretty fucking horrifying. Okay. I don't know. It's but, pretty but, crazy. But notice how he's reading it in the, this is all normal voice. So people are like, oh yeah, yeah of course. This is totally normal. <laughs> yeah. Why? I don't, what a bunch of snowflakes. I know. <laughs> we don't it's need crazy. legal recourse. Mm-hmm. We don't need equal protection under the law. What the fuck? No. No. Such as the rule of law and equal protection. See, even finger quotes. <laughs> finger quotes rule of law and equal protection but here's what's he reads this out but he doesn't he doesn't like go Respond. into it he doesn't, exp, he doesn't say like yeah whether yeah. he agrees with this or not he just reads it out like it's a totally innocuous idea he can't take a position on this I would his whole audience is against it. his whole audience is against what crt actually is it's that's the irony of all of this well i don't i don't agree with you i think his whole audience is in favor of what crt actually is that uh, teaching the oppressor oppressed dynamic. You think that? Yeah, that's. The I case? think most of his audience are the online socialist types. Really, you don't think they're buying into that's just teaching history, and the Republicans are just against teaching history, and their Republicans are racist. I think they do both. They believe they I do. Like this I, you weird... can't tell though because they they never talk explicitly about the actual argument. I know, but I this is okay. It depends who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think like the normie liberals just say, oh, the Republicans are just racist. They don't want to teach history. But I don't think the normie liberals are the people watching Cody. I think the people watching Cody are the bread tube internet leftist types. I don't, who... I'm not certain of that though. Well, I mean, he's got a, a huge audience. They got, sure. he's got to have like a bunch of young Otis contra points. Yeah. So do a lot of bread tubers. So does Vosh. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some. I'm sure there's some internet lefty normies that are watching this and buying all the nonsense. But I think at least a substantial percentage of his audience is simultaneously arguing and believing the contradictory position that CRT is just teaching the history of racism, but also they do believe all this nonsense about we live in a white supremacist society. Yeah. Yeah. It argues. The race is not only a social construct, but a legal construct. And that while the biological reality of race is false, there is a very real material dimension to being raced in the United States of American society. How, I mean, how is race a legal construct if the whole idea for law is to be colorblind? Wait, repeat that? Uh, so they're they're saying in the CRT stuff that he's reading that race, mm -hmm. they're saying race is not only a, a social construct, but it is a legal construct when it seems like the whole point of equal protection under the law is to make race not like a, not a legal construct at all. Well, that, but that's right. But that's their position is that the law not just specific laws, but like the law in general, the system of mm -hmm. how we create laws and determine what is legal and what is not legal was all created by the white supremacy in order to maintain the white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Boy, so it sure would saying. be great if they would define what the fuck this white supremacy thing is. Well, they don't all they it's very simple because all they do is they say, look at the outcome. OK, we live in a racially disparate society therefore that must prove that the society is white supremacist that's their argument. so there are so therefore their argument is that there a white supremacy supremacist society is one where there's any racial disparity yes wow well i don't i don't it, get it because listen mm -hmm. If you're talking about strictly numbers, that means that the black community can only top out at 13% since they're 13% of the population. But look at Asians, they're like 5% of the population, they're like 50% of the doctors. It's like they didn't fucking stop at 5%. They were like, fuck, we're gonna be 100% of the doctors. Right, right. You get what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. Why would you put a ceiling on your community like that? Well, they don't, yeah, but that's the thing, they don't, I think that's what's happening, but they're obviously not perceiving it that way. Yeah. 
there were, I'm trying to remember. I was just listening to a video. Oh no, it was it was your Thursday stream, mm-hmm. wasn't it? Where V Radio was talking about how you know he grew up. He was like the only white kid. Yeah, in an all black white school. Kids yeah, in like an all like a mostly all black school, and how. If you did well in that school, sometimes you get beaten up by the other students. Yeah, you got beat up for being, yeah. For being smart. For being good, or yeah. For not even being smart, but for engaging with the system in the first place. God, I, I didn't tell him that I went to an all-black school for, but it was a Catholic school, so I don't think it's the same type situation. It's a different dynamic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had to literally wear like a tie and slacks, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not, how can you be any more white than like wearing a tie and slacks to school? Mm-hmm. Although it was all like an all black, I was one of three white kids at this school. And one, one of the right. kids was like an Asian girl. All the girls had to wear plaid, uh, those like red plaid dresses. Yeah. Catholic school yeah. girls, you know what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Well, I just want to say it's, he doesn't. Well, maybe I'll, I'll save. I'll save this part for for when we get into it later. But there was something I wanted to read, which is that the first quote he gives of CRT, mm-hmm. he he doesn't read what comes right after it, and the section right after it is them saying that there can't be neutral or objective scholarship in the area of anything relating to race or law, mm-hmm. because everything is inherently built into. Uh, maintaining racialized white supremacy power. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the section that he that he reads right before the section right after it says there's no such thing as objectivity. <laughs> mm-hmm. That might be a little. That might be an important thing, Cody, to to include to your audience. Maybe this is why people are against CRT. You know, I I I always wonder if because there is a power differential in the fact that any majority has power in a democratic nation so the power that the whites have is that they have the numbers for any any policy that comes down the line sure but but casting it in the way that they do is just not helpful at all they're not really talking explicitly about that power being a democratic one well yeah they're not talking about it being majority power but then on top of that the purpose mm-hmm. of a lot of Western, quote, Western sy- systems, okay, of science and law is that they're supposed to at least attempt, even if they fail at it, they're supposed to attempt to be objective and neutral. Yeah, that's what I was that's saying. The goal, right. That's the goal. And the CRT people are saying that objectivity and neutrality is impossible and should not be attempted because it's really a trick in order to give the majority people power over the minority. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The majority of people already have power over the minority. Right. They have it in the form of democracy. Right. Yeah. I don't it's so weird. And that this dynamic because like if you are like a black racist like a totally racist person and being born into a country that you're in a minority and you're surrounded by people that you're racist against, that's got to be a completely crazy feeling. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a, that's the a situation that I see when I see these black supremacists. I mean, you, you can see them on YouTube. They have channels where they just, I mean, they fucking hate white people. Hate. Sure, sure. Hate. But that's because they're fed all this shit, this nonsense. You think so? Or you think yes, they're just... Yes, 100%. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Super I mean, weird. You know, I was a minority. I obviously it's different. You know, being Jewish is different than yeah. being black, but I was a minority. And I learned about, you know, the Holocaust and you know, all the anti Semitism that happened in Europe and even in America. Mm-hmm. I mean, there there was I remember my parents were talking about how, you know, my parents told me about how you know, they had to recite Christian prayers in school. Yeah. How oh my God. My mom said that when she was a teenager, someone asked her where her horns were or where her horns were. What? Because people used to think Jews had horns. What? And the person that asked her this meant it like legitimately. Seriously? She, oh yes. She, did, she wasn't saying it to be mean. She literally was like, my pastor told me that Jews have horns. <laughs> oh like, my God. And this was a teenager. This wasn't a little girl. This was a teenager. That's so- uh, my. My, my dad who <coughs> excuse me who grew up in new england 
told me how like someone would chase him down the street, calling him a dirty Jew boy. Like, so yeah, like obviously, but that doesn't, but just that doesn't make me hate America or say, well, everyone's racist because my parents had this experience. Oh my God. Have, have you seen that clip going around about of, of Vosh debating Doug Tenapel and he's talking about women's penises? No. <laughs> just when you said the horns thing, I was thinking now kids are going to be like, oh, where's your where's your penis your female penis oh my what's God. going on here oh i thought women had penises i'm disappointed uh, i thought no everyone one. had a penis no one for a hundred dollars thank you so much no one thank you uh says yo sitch it's worth it to me to say that i can explain why solar can't work compared to nuclear if if I can come on and explain real quick myself as an electrical engineer technician, S class is the best class. We can't derail the the middle of the show, but I do thank you for the super chat. If you want to come on a Thursday stream sometime and and educate me on solar, I'm happy to hear it. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Sure. I'm always down for learning from my audience. Mm -hmm. The only thing mm -hmm. that I'm a little it's difficult is. I don't, I, I'm in a bad situation if someone comes on purporting to be an expert and I know nothing about the thing because they could be giving me a total snow job. And then everyone in the comments is like, Adam, you didn't push back. You didn't do anything. Oh my God, right, they're completely right, right. wrong. And so you're, you're at a, if it's something I'm not interested in that I don't have a, any expertise in, I'm forced to do a lot of research. Sitch will do that research. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, I'll do Adam it if I care a, about the subject. Adam but, is a little lazy on doing the research. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, you can, if you want to have no one on Thursday, I mean, he said it real quick. It's not going to be like mm -hmm. the whole show is going to be about that. He just, I assume he just wants to give his piece on, sure. uh, on it. Hit so, me up. Send me a DM. Yeah. Dynamic has been produced and sustained by law. It finds fault with the ideal of colorblindness, which ignores effects of centuries of documented racism. And it's so there you Instead go. He's, he's using your favorite mm -hmm. bullshit definition of colorblindness. Is did it was it it went so fast? Was it is he talking about colorblindness or is he calling it is he talking about racism blindness? Because there's two different things. Like colorblindness is a colorblind society. Racism it sounds like he's talking about racism blindness, where we don't see the racism that's taking place in society. I know. It I is, realize it is racism blindness. He's right. just he's redefining colorblindness as racism blindness. Right, which is fucked up. And I think we should, as you know, as a team, we should point this out that no, that's racism blindness. They're two. They're two separate things. I mean, mm -hmm. I realize that you're you can call racism blindness colorblindness, but when people are talking, generally, people in favor of colorblindness, no, always people who are in favor of colorblindness are not in favor of racism blindness who the fuck would be in favor of racism blind listen you can't do color blindness if you're in, if you're in favor of racism blindness the whole point of color blindness is to avoid racism but this is really important listen to what he says and then i'm going to read what he actually displays on the screen because it's very different okay let's hear it and that this dynamic has been both produced and sustained by law. It finds fault with the ideal of colorblindness, which ignores effects of centuries of documented racism, and instead embraces the notion of race consciousness. It uses concepts such as white privilege and intersectionality to better understand the dynamics of the social, material, and legal inequalities throughout our society. It aims to it Okay. Yeah, better understand. Ha so ha. So he, he brings up race consciousness, which I've talked about on the stream a lot yeah. in the past. Okay. So let me read you the entire paragraph that he drew this from. Okay. In Gary Peller's depiction, this mainstream civil rights discourse on, quote, race relations was constructed in this way. And they're talking about colorblindness, by the way. Mm -hmm. Liberal colorblindness. Was constructed in this way as a defense against the more radical ideologies of racial liberation presented by the black nationalist and black consciousness movements of the 60s and early 70s and their less visible but intellectual blah 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 in the construction of quote racism as the irrational and backwards bias of believing that someone's race is important the american cultural mainstream 
neatly linked the black left to the white racist right, oh according God. to this oh quickly God. coalesced consensus, because race consciousness characterizes both white supremacists and black nationalists as if they're both racist. Okay. Oh my God. The resulting center of cultural common sense uh, thus rested on the exclusion of virtually the entire domain of progressive thinking about race within colored within colored communities. All right. Mm -hmm. And then now we get to the paragraph that Cody put up that he didn't actually read. With its explicit embrace of race consciousness, critical race theory aims to re-examine the terms by which race and racism has been negotiated in American consciousness and to recover and revitalize the radical tradition of race consciousness among African Americans and other peoples of color, a tradition that was discarded when integration, assimilation, and the ideas of colorblindness became the official norms of racial enlightenment. So he basically put up a thing of uh, supporting black nationalism. Yes! <laughs> Cody. Cody Johnson oh. is so fucking stupid oh that God. he puts up a paragraph that if you look at the last sentence of it, is in favor of anti-integration, is anti-assimilation, is pro-black nationalism, is pro-black pro separation, and he's just reading it off like it's no big deal. Yeah, Cody, we have to know, are you a black separatist? Is this, are you a black nationalist? Are you, are you in favor of race consciousness, which is basically black, which is black nationalism <laughs> the black kkk <laughs> is that what you're into I, it's it's mind-boggling to me this well here's i'm watching this and i'm like is he really this stupid like he has no like he just sees words and he he's like this is complicated i don't understand this okay which is fine i understand it if you haven't actually read the entire chapter or gary peller's paper on, on race consciousness you might skim this and you might not understand what's being said yeah, totally. But well, then, I, I mean, they did lay it out pretty clearly about the white supremacists versus the black nationalism. Well, see, I mean, but I don't it seemed think, clear enough. Right, it, it does. But here's, I don't think he even read this. I think he has some no, fucking he researcher read who, any of this. yeah, he just clips it out and gives it, or they clip it out and give it to Cody and he just goes blah, blah, blah. He reads from his stupid script. But do we know if Cody's in favor of black nationalism? I'm curious. I don't know, but that's the question. Are you anti-integration, Cody? Yeah. I don't know because you're reading the anti you're reading this anti integrationist part from the argument. The intro yeah. First of all, this is all from the introduction of the book, by the way. Okay. Really? He's reading, oh my God. He's, he's reading the anti he's reading the anti uh, integrationist section of the introduction of critical race theory book. And he seems to be totally like, there's no problem with what's being talked about. What's the matter with teaching black nationalism in, in public schools in K through 12 such, I mean, we're just teaching history here. We're just teaching history. This is just history, Sitch. Don't you understand? Oh my God! Can you do you want if even I don't know if you if you're black and you have black kids in public school, do you want them taught black national? I'm sure some people do, definitely. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that we Butter can just Anvil, <laughs> teach Butter that. Anvil, Butter Anvil in the chat says race consciousness. Thanks, Nick Fuentes. That would be oh, the yeah. masterful troll move if Nick Fuentes started using the term race consciousness for his white nationalists. They, I'm sure they have used that term, to be honest with you. Maybe, maybe. That's like, that oh term God. seems straight out of Richard Spencer right there. It does. It does. Uh, Pete for $20 says, thank you, Pete, says, Cody exemplifies the freaking pandemic of sophistry that plagues the culture today. When is Moderna going to develop that vaccine? Yeah, no shit. Get vaccinated, Cody, immediately. It's interesting. I was thinking about this the other day. There, there seems to be two main forms of propaganda. There's what I call the dark propaganda, mm -hmm. which is kind of the classic uh, propaganda you see in movies like Waiting for Superman, where, you know, they play the clip of someone talking and there's like the music is like, bum, 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 bum. right. This person is bad. And, you know, and they, they give you very little information, but they keep pepper peppering in like interviews with people saying things and they're very sad. So then your emotion of sadness basically manipulates you into believing whatever the, that, this the movie is, is telling you. This is Chris Rufo's videos, which I am a little disappointed about. Because yes, he, Chris Rufo does do that. Yes, yeah, yes. big time. Um, 
It's like, but Chris, there... you have the facts on your side. Why do you have to go to the fucking dark? I know. Propaganda Sad. place. But then there's this thing that I've labeled smug propaganda. Oh, which this, is what Cody this, does. yeah, Cody is smug yes. propaganda. And it's it's like everyone's trying oh to God. be Jon Stewart, basically. Dark. I can't believe only Sitch would come up with two definitions of propaganda and name them. <laughs> name them both. Well, because it's important. I think it's important for us to to have labels so you can no, I know. quickly throw like, oh, that's dark propaganda. And everyone goes, oh, that is. I know exactly what you're talking about. Or you say, oh, that's smug propaganda. Where it's that you have the person smugly reading off all this fake information while making disparaging comments about the subject in a very smug, quote unquote, comedic way. Oh, my God. If you fell for what the Republicans are, the Republicans are casting this as black nationalism. Here, let me read a quote that's from a black nationalist <laughs> for you. I'm I so know, smug. Crazy. I'm so smug. It's Here, so let me crazy. sip my tea. As I'm, I know. I know. Because I'm giving you this smugness. People aren't going to know, though. Every, so many people just, they, the tone of the way he does it is all you need to, all you need to know. No, I heard a quote. It totally mm -hmm, made mm -hmm. sense about how Republicans are insane. Uh, Christopher Myers for 3434. Thank you, Christopher. Says, first time sending a super chat. Oh, wonderful. Love all the work you do. Shout out to my man Eric and all my fellow Sargonauts and the Sargonini. I like that. The Sargonauts. I saw the Sargon Sargonauts. in the chat. What's up, Sargon? Yes. What's up, Sargon? What's up, Aiden? I saw Aiden too. Yeah. Yep. What's up, yep. Aiden? uses concepts of white privilege and intersectionality to better understand the dynamics of the social, material, and legal inequalities throughout our society. I like that he's got the thing that's anti-integration, anti-assimilation, and he's like, it's about white privilege. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah. All right, Cody. Yeah. I mean, hmm. We fought against the anti-integrationists in the South, remember? Yeah, they were that was the whole civil racist. rights movement. <laughs> that was the whole civil rights movement. Hey. Remember when uh, the federal government and the president had to send in like a hundred troops, yes. National Guard troops yes. to protect like the five black students so they could go to school and be integrated with the white students? Remember when that happened? We yeah, remember when remember when civil rights workers went down to Mississippi and were actually killed by the fucking police? Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. But we no. fought hard for this shit. Yeah. yeah. I guess, but that's it the thing. I mean, I wish Cody would actually say if if he believes that all that was a mistake, if all that civil, all the rights the civil rights workers fought for was a mistake. Because I mean that that's basically what he's implying by reading these quotes and whatnot that integration is not good. Like he'd rather well, go back to segregation. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I wonder is is how much is he is he like aware and being dishonest, or is he just this stupid? And I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. If you're in favor of segregation, you can't. There's no way that you can make the argument about white flight. Like, there's all these arguments that they make, of course, that, that they just can no longer make. And, and mm -hmm. it's odd because I feel like they make. I guess they obviously they make arguments on both sides because some people are in favor of segregation. It, 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 your skin color doesn't determine whether you're in favor <laughs> of segregation or not, right? I guess your moral intuitions. Or what determine that? Like, if you f feel uncomfortable around people that don't look like you, you're going to be for segregation, right? Yeah, m most. But we can change that through culture somewhat. I feel like we have to expose the real dimensions to the meritocracy mythology. It is a political practice, a progressive activist movement, and an intellectual identity. Okay. For we, yeah, we might have to back up a bit here because it, it aims like, to expose the what's racial. A meritocracy mythology now that's what we're calling meritocracy and mythology <laughs> right but but let me read the actual quote because he oh. doesn't read it because it would sound much worse to his audience it says okay what liberal proponents of affirmative action seem unwilling to do is to move toward a direct critique of the hidden racial dimensions of the meritocracy mythology that their conservative opponents have so deftly used to control the terms of the current debate. Right. Okay. And this is important because, as what all these dishonest peddlers of CRT do, is that it's very clear, especially when you just read the introduction to this book, 
how anti-liberal it is, mm-hmm. completely anti-liberal it is. And that's what yeah. they're saying right now. They're saying the liberals are unwilling to do this. They're getting suckered into these conservative arguments about meritocracy. Well, I thought meritocracy was like the enlightenment, liberal value. No, no, no. Meritocracy is a lot. Meritocracy doesn't exist, Adam. Okay, so we live in a white supremacist Wait, society. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> like, mer- does merit like meritocracy? No, that's an enlightenment value, Sitch. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, but they don't. They don't believe that meritocracy is real. What is uh, in place of meritocracy? I mean, white I, supremacy. Okay. Well, I, I've. <laughs> I've read some pretty harsh critiques of mer- some persuasive critiques of meritocracy. Mm-hmm. They're not this, okay? <laughs> this is not uh this is not a persu- meritocracy delivers the fucking modern world to you. Like we don't have the kind of extension of life and and medical interventions available to us without the meritocracy. We don't have the kinds of diversity of products and services available to us without the meritocracy. Right. Yeah. Like we don't have we don't have good law enforcement without a meritocracy, right? Not everyone is cut out to be in law enforcement. No. no. Yeah. Hmm. But again, they don't believe in meritocracy. They say that that is a myth that white people use in order to keep black people down. <laughs> That's their argument. Oh my god. And it's so oh, funny because so Cody is sitting here. He's putting this information up on screen and he doesn't talk about it at all. I he know. He reads it off like it's all on its face. You just accept it like it's true. You and I, I think, could talk probably for an hour and a half straight about meritocracy. We could talk an hour and a half straight about it, like any one of these single passages he's put up. Totally. And he. this is how awful his show is. The first 10 minutes is all just fucking ad hom and propaganda and nonsense yeah now he's finally getting into the meat of it and he's not even going into it he's just saying it and you just i guess they have to accept it or something there is a, a book called the meritocracy trap isaac of all people was like you got to read this book i checked it out it's a fascinating book the problem with a lot of these books is i can't recommend them because they tend to drift into fucking blatantly commie <laughs> arguments right, right <laughs> blatantly right. communist arguments i think the last line of the book is like a karl marx quote or something oh, i'm no. like way to fucking just shoot yourself in the foot the guy makes a pretty compelling case that there is the the you know people with more resources are more equipped to engage in the game that we call meritocracy yeah but like who who's arguing against that okay like that's, no one that's, yeah. yeah but that, we that's need a problem. we need a fairer okay. playing field for for meritocracy but the whole idea that meritocracy doesn't exist just because there is in unfair, unfairness right. embedded in the meritocracy system i mean having a conversation about limiting that unfairness as much as possible is something we should have a talk about right right but that's the distinction only a complete moron would think or argue mm-hmm. that having money and wealth and being raised, specifically not just having money, but being raised by a wealthy family, okay, yeah. is not going to grant you more resources to do better in life. Okay. Right. No one's I only a fool would argue that. No one actually believes that. Okay. Mm-hmm. No one believes that. That's the whole that's when when you're raising, when you're trying to provide for your family. And you have kids, the idea is, oh, I'm going to make things better for my child by accruing wealth for them. Okay. That's part of the whole logic of it. Yeah. So obviously, everyone knows that. But as you said, the real question is well, just because there's no, we don't live in a perfectly mer- uh, merit based society, because obviously, a lot of it is what kind of resources you have. A lot of it's just the luck of your DNA and your personality and how that comes about. A lot of it's the luck of your IQ score. A lot of it's the luck of just not even luck. But a lot of it's just who's willing to suck up there, to what there, boss in what way. There is some systemic issues, though. Like, of course, me- there are. Me- we could uh, imagine what would happen if medical school was free. Medical school, we need doctors. We should have a super abundance of doctors, right? Why not? But if medical school was free, <laughs> mm-hmm. then 
the the wealthy wouldn't have a lock on medical school degrees. A lot of people would flood in to medical school. A lot of more doctors would drive the price of being a doctor down. All of a sudden, wealthy people don't necessarily have a, a, a lock on this portion of the economy. So there is some, well, there is some minute, bias and some flight. That's true-ish, but there's a problem with this. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you made medical school free mm-hmm. for everyone, mm-hmm. you would have a huge influx of people, obviously, trying to get into medical school. Correct. Yes. And there wouldn't be enough medical schools to main to hold all the people trying to get into medical school. Okay. Well, so become the, a super- there would there would be a, a meritocratic limit because yes, you would have a lot of people that went into med- medical school and flunked out like in the first year. So you well, would see, but, you would have to have like good SAT stores. You just but wait a the minute. financial okay. thing wouldn't be right. there. But here's the okay. So that's a much that's a much well, first of all, that wouldn't if you said medical school is now free, but they're going to maintain all the high GPAs and SAT scores that you need to get into it, that wouldn't change the that wouldn't create a giant influx of new doctors. Mm-hmm. So I don't need so the argument that that would have any effect on the price of medicine is is dumb. How do you know? How do you know how many because people most don't of these medical, schools, medical are already, schools most of the because most med schools, especially the ones that are private, they're already at capacity. Mm-hmm. They want to always be at capacity. Right. Well, I, I'm talking That's about gen- making I medical mean, school free and increasing capacity to the point where you have everyone who is capable of becoming a doctor can become a doctor. Yeah, but I don't know how, who could ever figure, that's like a, I don't know how you could ever figure well, that out. Well, you'd figure it out by, by increasing capacity to the point where you satiated the population that wanted to be doctors and were able to be doctors meritocratically. But do you okay. hold on? I mean, do, you under, do you understand that? I don't there think is, that would make. Do you understand think, that there is a uh-huh. market for doctors that is being constrained by financial limitations because it takes so long and costs so much money to be a doctor? There is, but I don't think it's that many people. What do you mean? Because we, the amount of people that that have the grades and intelligence and motivation to get into med school. Mm-hmm. I would imagine can get mostly can get scholarship most scholarships right. stuff. They stuff. they can get they can get student loans and financial aid, but there's still there's a there's a risk in that that some people are unwilling to take. They don't sure, want I just to go don't think into, that that's that many they don't want, people. Well, you don't know though. Well, I don't know, but I'm guessing was there. So, but the only the numbers. only pe- the only people that have access to that are the people that have money, and because they have money, it lowers the risk. I understand that. And I'm sure there's lots of people in med school that only got there because they had the money and they probably don't really deserve it. Yeah, based on exactly. Their grades, they sure. don't even have the grades. Exactly. I just don't think that there's this huge wealth of people in America who have the grades and motivation. It's not just the grades. They go, also, they go into very this. motivated to go to med school that just can't afford it. We don't know, though. We don't. But the only, the for, only for reason that, the only reason that I'm, me, the only reason that I'm bringing this up yeah. The only reason that I'm bringing this up is to say that there are smart, intelligent debates you can have over meritocracy. They don't involve meritocracy is impossible and doesn't exist. I see. I yeah. see. I encourage you to I read don't think the that book. I just I don't think that's a good argument. But I understand what you're You don't what do you mean? Point. Well, because we do the whole reason that we have scholarships is to, to you, help those people that can't afford it. That's the entire reason they do that. Right, but programs. there's a limited number of scholarships and I'm pretty sure they're all doled out. There has they are. to be people who they want are. a scholarship and can't get one because they're all gone. Right, but I don't I don't make just if say, someone first of all, it's wants not to be a doctor and has the ability to be a doctor, money can stand in the way. You agree with that principle? I agree correct? with that. I just yeah. don't I don't know how feasible it is to just say med school is free. Like I just I don't know if that's something that could exist well i'm just doing a i'm doing a i are you you seem a little triggered by this thought experiment oh no i'm not i'm not triggered i just i don't think my god you're making medical school free adam what have you done i'm just saying i'm saying that there are certain positions in society that are high status like doctor that 
various people are kept out of. I mean, who? I mean, I don't know. You know the difference between tokenism and, like, tokenism subverts the meritocracy. Tokenism believes that anyone can do any job. So you get p people, you know, basically being in a job because of their skin color. I, I don't know if you listened to the last talk between John McWhorter and um, Glenn Lowry. Glenn Lowry. But no, John McWhorter basically admits this. John McWhorter said, when I graduated, I was not, there's no way I had enough knowledge to live up to the title everyone was giving me. He said, I had an amazing imposter syndrome and I worked my ass off to get to where it was. And there were people that were much smarter than me that deserved their right. title. And I knew that right. I didn't look, have look, look. Just, to, just to put a pin on this and then move on in the video. Mm -hmm. I just, I do think that there are, and I talked about, there are good examples of where I think meritocracy fails mm -hmm. in our society and that they need to be addressed. So I agree with that. I just don't agree that that's necessarily the best example. Okay. Mm -hmm. where, can you give one example where meritocracy I, I gave like a I just what do you mean I give a bunch of examples very often the person who moves up in a company is not the person who's the most capable person it's the person who's the best at sucking up to the boss right totally playing okay. politics yeah so, I mean it, there is they are climbing a merit hierarchy it's just not a merit of competency it's a social, or whatever. It's a social intelligence hierarchy it's a social inter intelligence merit uh, which is Sitch. but I'm excellent at climbing that hierarchy why don't you shut <laughs> the fuck up <laughs> Why don't you just why don't you just shush it? Shush it, okay? <laughs> Mentions to the meritocracy mythology. It is a political practice, a progressive activist movement, and an intellectual identity for scholars of color that takes the form of left intervention into race discourse and race intervention into left discourse that addresses the law's treatment of race from a self-consciously critical perspective. It believes that reform is- He has no clue what he's saying. He just, he's just- He's just- <laughs> He's totally fuck. He's like a read. He's like a reading machine. He's just basically a reading robot. I can't imagine saying like, someone says, "Sitch, what is CRT?" I'm like, "Well, let me const let me take like six different paragraphs uh, from the CRT book and just tie them together and just read them to you with no context or understanding, and tell you that's what CRT is." I like, thought that's we really helpful to your audience. I thought uh, as a com like a science communicator's job is to dumb things down, like a political commentator's job is to dumb things down. Cody, I mean, you got your dumb outfit on. Dumb this shit down for us a bit, right? Well, I think, I, I think there's one of two things happening. I think he's intentionally uh, being as complicated and dense as possible, right? So that either a his audience doesn't understand what CRT is because CRT is awful. Or B, because the next point he's going to make is, see, this is very complicated. That's proof that it's not being taught in elementary school. Too complicated. Yeah. Yeah, they dumb it down to like, <laughs> racist on this side of the class, non-racist on this side. Yes. Well, how do we tell, teacher? You tell by your skin color. The white kids are racist. <laughs> the black kids are the non-racist. Right? Required within right. the legal system itself, law schools and courtrooms. Critical race theory is not only concerned with understanding the ways in which our history of racist laws and social practices have- I like that he's they've gone back to the same quote from the beginning for some reason. They, um- <laughs> They couldn't even get another quote. I just- They the same quote from the beginning. Fucking doubt, doubt. <laughs> CRT is not concerned with understanding anything. Anything. Well, CRT the, under, already understands. Yes, they come to the table. Right. We understand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they already have their, the understanding is already there it's yeah. because of racism. That's they the want, their, they, their whole thing is to, you know, justify their understanding. Right. Created racial inequality and how white supremacy is maintained within our society and through our legal system, but critical race theory. Hey, I'll be right back. ...is an intentional and explicit effort to change this dynamic. So, is this being taught to our elementary, middle school, and high school students? Yeah, see, that's... This is the rub here. Okay, this is why this is so gross. Cody, or whoever is writing this, is like, oh, I don't actually have to explain what critical race theory is in some way that the audience that watches the video can understand because I want to make the argument that this isn't being taught in schools. So 
It's okay for me to give this very long bullshit explanation of CRT where I just Frankenstein stitched together a bunch of gobbledygook paragraphs with no context because that proves that it's too complicated to be taught in schools. This would be like if, imagine someone making the argument where they're saying, hey, evolution is not being taught in schools. And you're like, what are you talking about? Of course, evolution is being taught in schools. And they say, no, 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 no. And they pulled out some high level uh, textbook on evolution and they stitched together all these different paragraphs that went deep into explanations of DNA and genetics. And they just read them out as a bunch of scientific gobbledygook jargon and said, see, that's not being taught in school. You're not, they're not learning about these things. Therefore, that proves evolution not being taught in school, guys. Slam dunk. Got them. The short answer is nah. And if you are skeptical of this claim and are a parent, ask your child to watch this clip and then get- Oh, I have to wait for it. This is the most amazing part in the video. I'm back. Oh, you don't have back. to wait for shit. What'd I miss? Well, I was gonna read a super chat. Kalavar for $20. Thank, thank Kalavar. Says, Adam, I figured out Sitch's secret identity. Oh no. Really? Oh, my God. He is bald. S-Class is the top tier superhero, and there's a man named Sitch that runs the Hero Academy. Sitch is one punch man. That's true. Shh, don't That's tell true. anyone. That's true. We would never rip off one punch man. One punch I, man is God. I got, I got bored slaying monsters, and so I have to slay the internet monsters. That's very true. It's very true. We love one punch man, so. We do. Uh, A-Rog for $20 says the entire thrust of CRT is the Edward Longshanks position from Braveheart. The trouble with Scotland is that it's full of Scots. Mm. Basically. Uh, team as class forever. Thank you. Thank you, Rog. Sweet. A-S class. Okay. This is the part. Mm -hmm. This is the most magical part of the video. Okay, good. Okay. You gotta, like, you gotta really pay attention. Because I'm going to test you and the chat, see if you can figure out. I'm ready to pay attention now. Okay. I was about so chat, to pop. Now I'm ready to pay attention. Okay. I'm fully okay. focused. Good. Focused on that gross. Who wears a wool tie? Oh my God. Is it wool? I can't. It looks like tell. wool. It could just be the lighting reflecting off the. Oh, man. system. Like... But critical race theory is an intentional and explicit effort to change this dynamic. So. I might need to back it up a little bit because what's the dynamic? Oh, you can. I, I have to go to the bathroom. You back it up like a couple seconds. Okay, I'll re-listen. Is white supremacy courtrooms? Critical race theory is not only concerned with understanding the ways in which our history of racist laws and social practices have created racial inequality and how white supremacy is maintained within our society and through our legal system, but critical race theory is an intentional and explicit effort to change this dynamic. So. Is this being taught to our elementary? Change this dynamic how? Yeah. By teaching it to elementary school children? Hmm, maybe? Middle school and high school students. The short answer is no. Nah. And if you are skeptical of this claim and are a parent, ask your child to watch this clip and then get back to me. Critical race theory has certainly connections to cr any kind of critical uh, intellectual discourse, but it's also connected to critical legal studies, which was not committed mm -hmm. to sort of inheriting all of the all of the kind of uh, 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 Gramscian and Marxian sort of ideas that you're talking about. And again, Correct. even the type of Marxism you're talking about is a very narrow, thin sort of crude Marxism, or even what we call vulgar Marxism, which uh, alleges a relationship between economic base and cultural superstructure that is one to one. When in fact. What most Marxists have argued, and what certainly most Marxists post uh, the, the mid part of the 20th century have argued, is that it's a much more complicated dynamic than even Gramsci himself argues that in the prison notebooks about this idea of hegemony and how it happens along a compromise equilibrium, whereby some people, or, or, or whereby on the one hand, we absolutely are, 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 are hostage to the economic conditions around us, but on the other hand, uh, structures and states and institutions also appeal to our own desires and, and our own interests and our own needs. It's a much more dynamic and complicated relationship than you're talking about. And as far as sort of structures, that, the, the, again, you're, you're making a connection between structures in terms of institutional structures that I was talking about and the particular type of structures that, say, a Saussure would be talking about in terms of structure. There's a, a part in there where he says, 
that we're constrained by economic our economic situation yet the state caters to us a bit that i'm a little confused by because mm -hmm. yes well, oh you're back you don't need to, well here, here's i'll give you a hint mm -hmm. the, the deep specifics that he's talking about don't matter mm -hmm. okay obviously he's just fucking he uh, like, like all of this is i'm gonna dick measure in front of james Lindsay here show him all, all, i know all this Right. Check out the big brain on Brad. That's exactly what's going on here. <laughs> yes, yes. Check out the big brain on Brad. He's read yes. Grumption's prison notebooks. Like, I fucking, I'm a stoner artist from California, okay? Mm -hmm. I've read Grumption's fucking prison diaries. Oh, really? Okay. I'm bored. I put it on. I listen to it. I'm like, mm -hmm, eh, mm -hmm. this seems this is, this seems like nonsense bullshit. I'm just, I've never read Grumption, but. I mean, I've I've read tons of stuff like Mises and shit like that in the same sure. kind of way. Like maybe I'll sure. read Grumption just for the fucking fun of it, right? But did you? Uh, I all this is so basically you're in agreement that all this is just gobbledygook. Well, it sort of is and it sort of isn't. If you because well, he I, said you, he I, had a contradiction in there. Did you catch that? Who did? Uh, Mark Lamont. Mark Lamont. Yeah, he 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 said that we're constrained by because th this is the thing that there's a there's a clip from the book Identity by Francis Fukuyama that I listen to mm -hmm. all the time. I was actually contemplating memorizing it because it's so important. It's the the philosophical question has always been which is more powerful, economic conditions or philosophy. Right. And he says in the book, he's like, well, it's really a trick question because your philosophy can inform your economic conditions. A perfect example is like, you know, the, the people in subjugation <laughs> need a pretty strong philosophy to endure that. Like the slave, it's no, it's no mystery why the slaves adopted christianity it's a story of fucking struggle it's a story right. of the slave people right so that philosophy definitely informed their conditions but also your economic conditions inform your philosophy you know if you're fucking rich and you might uh, gravitate towards something like libertarianism everyone is you know can be self-sufficient right because right. i'm self-sufficient why can't you be self-sufficient so there is a back and forth play, but he mentioned something about that, but it seemed like, I don't know if he was, where he was going with it. He just kind of right. threw it in the middle there. Right. Well, let's keep going. Let's see if you can figure out what's happening here. Structuralism, that's not actually what I was talking about. And that's not what most people are talking about when they talk about systems and structures. Again, that's a very tight correlation you draw, but and if we were- He also said it's like one-to-one, -one, which I was like, is it one-to-one? -one? He said it's not one-to-one. -one. He, he said it's, yeah, but- uh, he said it's not one to one, but he said his opposition is trying to claim that it's one. Yeah, to he's one. saying James Lindsay's claiming it's one. -to -one. It's one to one. Yeah. yeah, right. What would that one to one be? What's he? He's talking about the cultural influence versus the philosophy. Well, the 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 con no the conversation what he's referring to is uh, James Lindsay was talking kind of he he was talking about uh, the Marxist theory about economic you know, how conditions. everything is. Yeah, and kind of the cultural Marxism and Gramsci and all this stuff. And Marx, he was relating it Marx to... argued that economic conditions were superior to philosophy. Right. It was, I think, um, Hegel or some other philosopher that was saying philosophy is more important. That's Those are the two debating. Go ahead. Sorry, oh, it might have been Gramsci. I don't remember. But but he was relating the, Gramsci's position on cultural Marxism and this stuff kind of directly to critical race theory. And he's saying it's not exactly one-to-one. -one. Right. Okay, but, so he's got a different, a yeah. nuanced take on which is more superior in this debate. So much but of this stuff does revolve around that debate. That's why I find it interesting. Right. That correlation, then sure. But it, it's not only that we're not accepting it, it's actually not what we're talking about. And postmodernism, yeah, again, about plays this, upon actually. a range of things. <laughs> I'm sorry? I said you know a lot about you. this, actually. That you know a very... You know, yeah. a very so did your kid get all that? Did you get all that? Did James Lindsay get all that? Did Cody get all that? My guess is no. <laughs> so, okay. Fucking no. So Cody got zero of that. But let me go back a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you figure out what just happened? 
Okay. He's basically talking again. about the same thing Cody's talking about. No. System, okay. but critical race theory is an intentional and explicit effort to change this dynamic. So, is this being taught to our elementary, middle school, and high school students? The short answer is no. Nah. And if you are skeptical of this claim and are a parent, ask your child to watch this clip and then get back to me. Critical. Okay. So, mm -hmm. the purpose of Cody showing this clip is to say, if you think your child is learning oh, CRT yeah, yeah, in yeah. school, watch this clip and get back to me. Right. Okay. There, he's basically saying that it's beyond a child's comprehension. Right. Yeah. But. Did I get it? Did I get it right? Well, you got. Woo! The, no, no, no. Wow, my God. You this only got game show it right. is so hard. You only got half of it right. Okay. 50% is still a failing grade, Adam. Well, I know. You what? got. You only got half of it right. Let's see if you get the second half right. Okay. What's the, race what's the theory question? Has certainly connections to cr any kind of critical uh, intellectual discourse, but it's also connected to critical legal studies, which was not committed mm -hmm. to sort of inheriting all of the all of the kind of uh, 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 Gramscian and Marxian sort of ideas that you're talking about. And again, Crit okay. so critical Did legal theory that? didn't inherit all of the Marxism that Marxism has, Marxism possesses. So Mark Lamont Hill is saying, well, it critical... inherited some of the Marxism, sure. obviously, if it didn't inherit so, all of them. So Mark, so Mark Lamont Hill is saying, mm -hmm. critical race theory did not is, is based off of critical legal studies, mm -hmm. and critical legal studies did not inherit these things specifically from Marx, Marxism and Gramsci's Marxism. Not okay? all of them, right? Not all. Okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Do you do you understand? So do you, do you, is that enough of a hint? Do you understand what's happening here? Well, he's saying part of he's saying critical race theory is partially Marxism. But remember, relate it back to what Co what is the point of Cody playing this clip? Because Cody wants to illustrate that this is too intellectually high a caliber mm -hmm. for for children to understand. And it's Marxism. I don't know. You're going to have to spell it out for me. Okay. It's evidently over my head as well. Well, I ha I don't know if you care enough to it. There's like five to 10 seconds from the original clip before this of Mark, Mah Mark Lamont Hill explaining what he's talking about that will maybe make it a little clearer. Mm -hmm. Or I guess I could just tell you if you don't care. Try to figure it out. No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm into the trying to figure it out. Okay. Do you have let the me, Mark? Me, are you bringing I up the Mark it. Lamont clip? Yes. Are you really? So we're at, yeah. So we're at we're at ten minutes and fifty 10 seconds. Ten fifty two. Okay. Welcome back to Black News. Let so, me skip ahead to the section. Oh my so, God! This is great. Uh, this is better than Trivial Pursuit. Kind of Look, this is. You know, here at the Sitch and I'm Show, <laughs> this is better than trivia. I'm I don't want to just tell thing. you what to think. I want you to learn to think for yourselves, okay? I'm thinking. If you give a man a my, fish, Adam. If you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, he hold eats on. for a lifetime. My fucking pencil is out of lead. So we, so oh. guys, a team, a team, assemble. We need to get this. You got, you fucking, got to get this. Our reputation is on the line here. Okay. So two, two smart four kids. That's remember. That's the most important point. Two smart for kids. Cody's entire point. Two smart for kids and CRT, Marxism. That CRT is too complicated to be taught to children, and his proof of that mm -hmm. is this clip that he's about to play. Okay. Okay. Marks as interests of Corey. So actually, we don't have agency under critical race theory or any of its philosophical right. antecedents. That's correct. They so I wish we had more time to, to unpack your critical theorist, which is an incredible irony because you actually have to sacrifice all of your agency to think otherwise, which is how it chills freedom of thought and freedom of speech, because you have to be 
critically conscious agency or you have false consciousness and are therefore not acting out yourself you have no actual agency okay false so consciousness. And of course we're running out of time but i'm going to respond just so the audience and the people who watch this on clips don't think that Please. i don't have a response first of all sure, the, sure. The, 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 your your counter is predicated on the idea that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between critical race theory and critical theory as sort of produced from the marxist tradition from the frankfurt school etc when in fact critical race theory has certainly connections to any kind of critical uh, intellectual discourse, but it's also connected to critical legal studies, which was not committed mm -hmm. to sort of inheriting all of the all of the kind of uh, 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 Gramscian and Marxian sort of ideas. Well, we've heard this about. already, so and I don't again, know if I'm going to. OK, I'll just I don't know if I'm going to get this. Too no smart one can for get it. Kids, no Marxism, it. agency, Fine. false consciousness. Marxism Fine. is too smart for kids. Is that no, no, where no. you're going with this? OK, so this. And I understand it's it's difficult unless you watch the entire conversation between James Lindsay and Mark Montmont Hill mm -hmm. to understand the context. I what have watched this. I fucking I know, but yeah. you watched it a while ago. You didn't watch it like I watched it yesterday. Okay. Okay. So Cody says mm -hmm. CRT is too complicated to be taught in school. Mm -hmm. And my evidence for this is to have your kids sit down and watch this clip. And unless he here's what is about to be told in school, then you know CRT is not being told in school. Mm -hmm. However, he plays a clip of Mark Lamont Hill explaining all these ideas that he says are not fucking in CRT. Okay. That's the entire point of this section is Mark Lamont Hill saying, James Lindsay, you're saying that, th that you're making this one-to-one -one comparison between CRT and this Marxist stuff. But it's actually not. And he goes on to explain the entire explanation he gives are things not in fucking CRT. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Cody is saying, listen, he's playing a clip saying, I'm, so I'm playing close. a clip of a guy who's explaining all the things not in CRT as evidence that your kids are not being taught CRT in school. Oh, okay. Okay. So it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. <laughs> He's basically he's basically saying that this isn't CRT, therefore, obviously, it can't be being taught in school. Yeah, it's it's no. Listen, listen. Cody's playing a clip of Mark Lamont Hill Sa giving saying a this, long this is not CRT. Yes, of something that is that he is saying is not is CRT. not CRT. Yeah, exactly. And Cody's so fucking. Stupid stupid and doesn't understand crt at all that he plays a clip and says if your kid's not hearing this then they're not being taught crt in school but, right. it's the but mark lamont hill is basically opposite. saying that this is not crt yes so exactly. even if they were teaching crt in school this is not what they, they would wouldn't be yes yeah i and got you yeah and cody's so dumb or whoever's mm -hmm. doing the research for his show is so dumb that they don't realize what they're playing a clip of right it's not, oh, that is, that is pretty bad. So Mark Lamont <laughs> Hill is saying, this isn't CRT. Right. Yeah. That's the entire point of everything he was saying. Was, yeah. is, he's going on this long explanation of how this is stuff that he's talking about is not CRT. Right. Yeah. The Marxist stuff that, <laughs> the Marxist stuff that uh, James too. Lindsay is talking about is not CRT. Right. That's the right. whole one-to-one -one thing. Right elementary middle school and high school students the short answer is nah and if you are skeptical of this claim and are a parent ask your nah is like the weakest way that you could possibly say no right it's uh most people would be like hell no <laughs> fuck no child to watch this i'm gonna get it this time through i swear this clip and then get back to me critical race theory has certainly connections to cr any kind of critical uh, intellectual discourse, but it's also Wait, connected critical to critical race theory. But it's has not. Connections. <laughs> but what you're but talking about is not CRT. Yes. Critical yeah. legal studies, which was not committed mm -hmm. to sort of inheriting all of the all of the kind of uh, 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 Gramscian and Marxian sort of ideas that you're talking about. And again, Correct. even the type of Marxism you're talking about is a very narrow, thin sort of crude Marxism. See, see I'm looking too close. Cause it's like so obvious. Yeah, you were you were, you were trying. I'm to, trying to get. I'm trying to wiggle into the details. You were trying to yeah. listen to the details. When Wait that's a not, second. You don't even need. To. <laughs>
<laughs> You're looking he's at the trees with the forest is on fire. He's basically saying, this isn't CRT. Yes. We're not even talking about CRT here. The if entire... You think, if you think your kids are being taught CRT, watch this clip of this guy talking about what CRT isn't. And tell me, <laughs> are they not teaching this not CRT in your school? Hell no. No one's smart enough to teach what the, to teach this not CRT in school. It's it's insane to me. It is bad. Like, this is yeah. so fucking dumb. This yeah. is so dumb. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. I'm fo I'm really focused on the what. I'm still my everyone's brain is caught in the what. What is CRT? What are we talking about, Cody? <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about here? or even what we call vulgar Marxism, which alleges a relationship. I'm just, I'm stunned that there's a vulgar Marxism. Right. Who talks about the vulgar Marxism? Well, just just let, let it play through so everyone can really see how he's explicitly saying that this is not CRT. Okay. ...of this claim and are a parent. Ask your child to watch this clip and then get back to me. Critical race theory has certainly connections to cr any kind of critical uh, intellectual discourse, but it's also connected to critical legal studies, which was not committed to sort not. of inheriting <laughs> all of the all of the kind of uh, 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 Gramscian and Marxian sort of ideas that you're talking about. And again, Correct. even the type of Marxism you're talking about is a very narrow, thin sort of crude Marxism, or even what we call vulgar Marxism, which uh, alleges a relationship between economic base and cultural superstructure that is one to one. When in fact. What most Marxists have argued, and what certainly most Marxists post uh, the, the mid part of the 20th century have argued, is that it's a much more complicated dynamic than even Gramsci himself argues that in the prison notebooks about this idea of hegemony and how it happens along a compromise equilibrium, whereby some people. So <laughs> he just going in to this entire thing about compromise. let me get deep into this conversation about structuralism and and Marxism and how it differs from critical race theory. So I believe the point has been made. No. Or, or, no. or whereby, on the one hand, we absolute own interests and our own needs. It's a of structures that say a saucer will be talking about. What are you doing? Sure. But Do it, you want to listen not... to the whole thing again? No. I don't want to listen to it again. That you know a very, you know, oh, yeah. very well. So okay. did your kid get all that? No. Wait. Did you get any of that, Cody? Yeah, I know. That's the thing. Cody got literally Look zero. At, you've got like, the perfect screen grab for Cody there. He looks stoned out of his mind. Cody, yeah, get what they're talking about. It's not that was not CRT. It's literally the opposite. He He's literally right. said in the very beginning, that's not CRT. It's it's like Cody heard him. Oh my god, you're right. This is fucking this is about epic. Marxism and was like, this see is guys. Epic. Your elementary school kids aren't learning this, therefore they're not teaching CRT in school. Checkmate, conservatards. <laughs> this is so funny. I'm so glad you pointed this out. <laughs> this is hilarious. I just, I couldn't. It, I, I watched oh, the video the three look on times. His face right there. And I was just like, this isn't real. <laughs> oh my god. Not only this, like this passed by Cody. This passed by all his writers. This passed by whoever the fuck edits this. Video. No one who watched this was like, wait a minute. <laughs> What is the guy talking? You know, here's the here's the thing. Are your kids make, learning this not CRT in their classrooms? Hell no. <laughs> you know, maybe it's just me. I don't know if you do this, Adam. Maybe it's just me. But when I used to make videos, uh -huh. okay, when I would have a clip of someone saying something, it would to be would it would usually, be to make my point. Yeah. Well, not only would it be to make my point, but usually, usually, I would be like. I got to understand what the person is saying in the clip before I put this in my video. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's pretty important to understand the context and what's actually being said in the clip. But I guess, you know, the people at Some More News, they're just like, eh, just throw it in. It doesn't matter. No one cares. No one's going to notice. It doesn't matter. Now I see why you were saying the CRT is too smart for kids. Because he's, <laughs> ma he's making the argument that the CRT is too smart for kids, and this isn't CRT. This is not what they're teaching. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. It would be like if someone was saying, they're not teaching evolution in school. Evolution is too smart for kids. And then he plays mm -hmm. a clip of someone explaining, like, creationism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's and like, he, see? And he they're goes, not... there you go. Exactly. You go. Exactly. See? Yeah. see? And you're like, uh, all right. A little confused here, but <laughs> uh Culivar for twenty dollars says A team reigns supreme. 
while S-Class's mother was a hamster and their father smells of elderberries. Oh, my God. Yeah. There you go. You should do something about that. Sis. Classic Monty Python. Mama insult. jokes. Yes. yes. Well, A-Team does Did you supreme, that? so that part's No, true. That's, that's fake. <laughs> did James Lindsay get all that? Oh my this, he did. This that's why he like, literally said oh my you know God. a lot about this. <laughs> oh, my God. And the smug, the smug propaganda <laughs> continues. It, oh, he's, he's so, so smug about how he gets it, but he doesn't get it. He's so smug about being so fucking stupid. My God. It's insane. It's totally insane to me. Did you get on Light that? reading, folks. This shit is highly sophisticated and intellectually rigorous. It's the kind of thing you study with a dictionary at the ready. Saying that children are learning critical race theory in our schools is like saying kids are learning quantum physics because they started learning about atoms and molecules. Critical race- Okay, I'm so glad mm -hmm. that he's so dumb mm -hmm. that he used this example. This example destroys his entire argument. He said, this would be like teaching quantum physics or believing that they're teaching quantum physics because they're teaching about atoms and molecules to children. Mm -hmm. That is the perfect metaphor. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's true. Yeah. They're not teaching high level CRT arguments to children. They're dumbing it down. <laughs> but what are they teaching them? They're teaching them all the base suppositions that they would have to believe in order to believe CRT down the right. road. Right, yeah, totally. Okay. And that's, start, that's where you start with the atoms and molecules so that you can right, teach them Cody. quantum physics uh, down the road. Get them you, all, they're all on the CRT prep course. That's right. They're teaching them all the white privilege, the white supremacy, the white oppression. Blah, you know, oh, yeah. we shouldn't hold black people to quote unquote white standards and white cultures. They're teaching them all these base presuppositions so that then when they get to college, then they can lay on the CRT. Yeah. Because it builds off of all lay this. on the high level stuff. You got to get them ready. Get so them thank ready. Thank you, Cody, for being so dumb that you use an example that destroys your entire argument. <laughs> Race theory. It is being taught in college, primarily in law school, and involves critical thinking and debate, where students are encouraged to examine the ideas involved and ask whether or not they hold up to scrutiny, something critics of critical race theory and proponents of debate should like. Wait, wait. He's conflating mm -hmm. critical thinking and critical theory, which are completely different things. Of course. Critical theory assumes racism is present in all manifestations of life and mm -hmm. critical thinking is most people think of as like empiricism logic right right <laughs> which critical theory is skeptical of empiricism and logic critical theory <laughs> is literally skeptical of critical thinking <laughs> right it's but that's what they all it's like the opposite <laughs> it's the opposite day that's what they all do. It's yes. ridiculous. So, yeah. but I just, I hate the fact that he sneaks in, like he sneaks in this, we're all in favor of critical thinking, right? We're all enlightenment thinkers here, right? Right. Well, then why are you fucking promoting CRT, which is anti-enlightenment? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What? Why? I, I also, because he said that he did the whole, this is being caught primarily in law school line, okay? Mm-hmm. Let me, let me read you a sentence from the opening paragraph. The mm -hmm. opening paragraph of critical race theory, the key writings that form the movement that he was citing. As we conceive it, critical race theory embraces, embraces a movement of left scholars, most of them scholars of color, situated in law schools, whose work challenges the way in which race and racial power are constructed and represented in American legal culture, and more generally in american society as a whole mm. yeah so whenever someone says it's, it's only critical, about legal studies. only about law yeah it's like well the first paragraph the opening paragraph of the biggest crt book says it's about american society as a whole okay yeah more than just law but no it's just it's just the law just a lot right 
So as I, the short answer to, is this being taught in our public schools? No. Nah. The longer answer to this question, it's longer, but before we get to that longer answer, we should take a moment to examine where this moral panic came from in the first place. So it takes him mm -hmm. 30 minutes to answer that question. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, he says, yes, it is being taught in our school and it is going to cause social socialist revolution. What? <laughs> at the end of the video. What? <laughs> it's crazy. It's insane. After this whole setup of poisoning the well, he totally 180s. You'll see. It's what? Bananas. How is it that a decades old obscure academic term suddenly does this in the Google search results? And it really all starts with a man named Christopher Rufo, not to be confused with. Rufio! Okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna skip the clip so we don't get copyright hit by. What? Oh by my God! Someone has clip. major copyright clip PTSD. Paranoid. It's true. It's true. Well, what? What? Uh, what movie is that? It's from Hook. Hook, yeah, I remember. That's the joke. Chris Rufo's name sounds similar to Rufio mm -hmm. from Hook. So, from Hook. That's yeah. the joke, guys. So I'm gonna play a clip of people saying Rufio. Rufio. It's funny, right? Yeah. The joke. Yeah. It's Chris a reference. Rufo. Yeah. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. Hilarious. <laughs> your pan foil a Rufio from Hook. That would be silly. Christopher Rufo is a right-wing reactionary activist, failed politician, and self-proclaimed investor. Have you listened to any interviews with Christopher Rufo? Uh, yeah, I mean, I listened to the Joy Reid one. Well, he's not necessarily. I mean, I w would struggle to call him a right-wing activist. He seems mm -hmm. more... I mean, I don't even know that I'd call him a conservative. He didn't really... People were asking him about his politics and he didn't really I don't know. I haven't open heard up about, about his politics. Yeah. Yeah. I've listened to a bunch of interviews with Christopher mm -hmm. Rufo mm -hmm. and podcasts and whatnot, trying to get a feel for he, who he well, is. This is why this is why it's so dumb. He could I don't he could be, I don't care. Okay. That's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Totally irrelevant. But they have to do this where it's like, oh, he's a Republican operative. Like they have to always prime you for what team the person's on. Right. He I think ran for city council or something like that in Seattle and kind of got a wake up call about how politics works. I guess it got really nasty really quick. And mm -hmm. um, to the point where he was like getting th threats to his family and shit. It got super bad. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. His wife's Asian. You know what that means, right? His kids are half Asian. That means he's a Nazi. Oh really? Yeah, then you know all those white nationalists have Asian wives. I didn't I wasn't aware. <laughs> you didn't know of that? that? Oh, yeah. that was a stereotype, yeah. That's a typical schmear. That's that's the yeah. schmear, yeah. Oh, there okay. you go. So now they're not only against now they're against integration <laughs> and interracial marriage. What the yes. fuck is happening, Sage? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Well, I got to ask. I mean, did he purchase her or was she Oh. <laughs> I mean, what's going on? Oh, ouch. Well, I think ouch. there's room if if she was like a, a purchase, but I don't know. See, mm -hmm. It seems like that's not the case these days. Uh, Kalavar for another $20 says, Sitch, if, you're, if you're Adam's work wife, first of all, Adam is my work wife. Okay, mm. let's, get it. let's get it right here. Not, Does oh, that mean I'm have Adam's I been, Have work? I been purchased? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have. Hey, technically, I'm the one sending you the money. so I, guess, I guess so, yeah. I guess you have been purchased. You're my work accountant. <laughs> There you go. That's that's anti-Semitic and offensive. Okay. I'm offended that you said that. Uh, does that mean I'm Adam's work side ho? Because I was on stream with him Thursday. He a did. team reigns supreme. Culavar came on and read my super chats for me, and everybody in the comments complimented him on his amazing radio voice. Yeah. There you go. Culavar does go. have an amazing voice. So. Awesome. Well, yeah. Look, if you want to be Adam's side ho. That's fine. Okay, me and Adam are in an open relationship at the moment. Sitch, so. Sitch actually listened to the stream, so I'm sure he he knows this. Sitch is eavesdropping on my Thursday stream. I did now, listen so. to it. Yeah, it was good. So he knows Kalavar. He knows. I was aware. Yeah. So the secret you think is Adam, out. Kalavar, you think Adam is going to be being with you on the side if I was Faithful. not okay with it? Faithful. Okay. He asked Adam asked me permission every Thursday stream. He's like Sitch. 
I'm going to have so and so on Thursday. Is that acceptable, Daddy? And I'm like, <laughs> Yes, Adam. That's first totally of all, acceptable. First of all, that doesn't happen. But Colabar, <laughs> Colabar did reach out afterwards and say, uh -huh. you know, uh, What's happening next week? Like he was going to read my super chats next week. And I thought, well, you know, Sitch might be. Sitch is like my main squeeze. He might come on and read my super <laughs> chats. I don't know. I have super okay. chat reader preference. There's okay. a high, ad, there's a hierarchy of Adam <laughs> super chat readers, <laughs> and Sitch is at the top of the hierarchy. Well, I'm not, I'm not an Adam super chat reader. I'm a Sitch and Adam show super chat reader. True, okay. true. But when you've okay. come, we ha you have come on my streams and read true. my super chats. That's true. That's true. I do, That's I true. do have the, and don't give Colorado any ideas. But when Sitch comes on my stream, I split super chats with him. So. That's right. But that's, that's always right. because I get like, it's like double the super chat. So, of course, what am I going to do? We're like the, we're the YouTube power couple now. Mm -hmm. That's it's true. great. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it too when Mahler says Adam and Sitch when he calls the show Adam and oh, Sitch. Oh, so triggering. He's done it a couple so times. And he I does always, it on purpose. He does it. Does he? Does he? Yes. <laughs> of course. Hilarious. Of course. That's Terrible. hilarious. Mauler and I are bros. <laughs> he knows what's <laughs> up. Investigative <laughs> report who rapidly found himself rise to prominence as a countervailing force to the nationwide protest that took place in response to the public lynching of George Floyd and so many others in the summer of the public lynching of George Floyd. Don't you love it? The fucking oh. wow. Who's creating the moral panic here again, Sitch? I forget. <laughs> Can oh, <yeah>. you remind <laughs> me? Can you remind me? Just give me a quick refresher Ooh, on who's, I don't know who you, who's, who's stoking who? the moral panic. What what is the see when I heard the when I hear the word lynching, okay. To me, this generally implies an intentional public execution of an individual that the crowd supports. I know. Okay. Which would be almost the exact opposite of a police officer. <laughs> almost the exact opposite. Completely Accident the exact yeah. opposite. Accidentally killing someone while everyone is yelling at the police officer in a horror. These are the yes. exact opposite things of a lynching, but you know. They were trying to get in the, they were trying to stop it. They were trying to get in the middle of it. I mean, there's an argument to be made that they made it worse. Right. The, exactly. The, exactly. That was part of the defense. And probably true. Probably true. 2020 by sensationalizing, misleading, and outright lying about what was happening in diversity training programs across the country. He described the diversity... Well, I, I missed it. Is he making an argument that George Floyd died because Christopher Rufo basically killed George Floyd? Is that what's going no, on? No, here? no. He's saying Christopher Rufo used the murder. The intentional oh. lynching of George Floyd mm -hmm. as fuel to push his evil lying narrative about CRT. Burr, 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 burr. That's what? Where's the causal connection there? What? Uh, you don't I, need the causal connection. Uh, my understanding of the timeline is George, like the communist used the George Floyd situation to push CRT into the public consciousness. And Christopher Rufo said, not so fast. <laughs> right. Yeah. But th this is, this is the common tactic. Okay. They say, Oh, you guys are reactionaries. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but then at the same time, he's trying to push it like, Oh, Chris Rufo. It was all his idea. All these, yeah. Yeah. Like it's all his idea. And it's like, no, 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 no. He's reacting to this shit happening. Right. And saying, yes. this is something I don't agree with. CRT was a reaction to the George Floyd outrage. And Christopher Rufo is stepping in to say, wait a second, maybe we shouldn't well, teach Marxism in school. The, the way that I think a lot of this works mm -hmm. is that you always have, you always have these extremist elements at all times that are always trying to pressure institutions and systems and our society into believing their extreme nonsense. Okay. Whatever it may be right. from both sides, the left and the right. right. They're always pres pressure, uh, pressuring, but then some event happens mm -hmm. that allows one of these extreme organizations to suddenly infiltrate. Mm -hmm. So you had CRT and all this stuff. It's always pressing against this, all this yeah, Marxist totally. cultural race nonsense. Yeah. It's always pressing. 
And it was already making headway. Mm -hmm. And then when you have George Floyd, that basically opened the floodgates to allow it to super get inside. Yeah. No, I, Naomi Klein wrote an entire book on this mm -hmm. concept called Disaster Capitalism and never put together that, yeah, the exact same thing is happening on the left with the Marxist stuff. <laughs> like they, yeah, guess what? They have a bunch of ideas that they would like to implement too in, in, as soon as a crisis erupts and they have the opportunity to. It's right. like, yeah, both sides are doing that, Naomi. No. Right, exactly. Diogenes for $20 says, Sitch recounts stories of discrimination. Adam, hey, bro, you heard about Vosh talking about female penises? <laughs> we like to brighten the mood on a team. There you go. Hell yeah, that's true. Yeah, we don't like to get, we like, we like this, what is it, the smug propaganda over the dark propaganda. Adam's never been discriminated against because he's a white boy. He a lot more. Let me think. Have I ever been discriminated against? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. Maybe for being too smart. <laughs> uh, Nicholas Miles for $20 says, Centarium Sensio, Communism S. Delundum. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's what they said last week. Did you just I believe... cast a spell? I hope uh, I'm going to be safe. Uh, which you said he sent us last week, which is Latin for furthermore, I consider that communism must be destroyed. There yeah, you go. yeah. There you go. So it's just full blown anti communist now. I am. I am. Well, I never until recently, I didn't realize mm -hmm. that all this woke shit was just communism. And I don't think, I don't think most people do know that. The, the book, the populist book that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. is basically making the argument that the left is the original populist party and that we shouldn't let the right steal populism from us. That's the it's, argument in the book. It's stupid to me to cast populism as either left or right. Mm -hmm. It can be either or. It's right. It's it's not specific on a each and on a specific side of the political spectrum. You can't write a book that you can't write a book neutrally these days. Like that's my problem. And I was arguing with people on Twitter about this, about the deficit myth. I was saying, listen, the book is super partisan. Like I can't recommend the book to any of my conservative friends because they were going to say, this is fucking communism, Adam. Why are you recommending me this book? <laughs> it doesn't have to be written that way though. She could have, she could have framed the jobs program as a, a means to support the private sector, which the right wing might like. They might be in right. favor of, right? Right. But she didn't frame it that way. She could have framed the uh, she could have framed the deficit myth in a way. She's framing it as a way to sell the Green New Deal. She could have framed it as a way to hire more cops mm -hmm. to fucking mm -hmm. fund the police more. A hundred new cops in every fucking town. But she didn't frame it that way. Nope. Why? Nope. Because she didn't want her sell. left wing readers going, no, right. what the fuck? Right wing propaganda. Mm -hmm. God, I hate the fact that you have to cater to a bunch of super uber tribalists just to be able to sell anything these days. Right, right. Sad. Hot diggity demon. Hey, hot diggity demon. What's up, or man? For $4.99. It says, if I have a, I, says, if I have a pressing and urgent question about the color of my skin, is that a critical race query? Mm. Uh, oh, that hurt. Perhaps that hurt me. You literally hurt me with that pun. <laughs> well, you're the pun guy. <laughs> that what are you talking only about? When, only the reason I'm the pun guy is because I like to hurt others. Okay, I like to inflict the pain, the mental oh, really? pain of it on other people. <laughs> oh my of god! So it's basically oh. like a slap fight. Yeah, it's no, it's <laughs> it's like. It's like being a, a being a sadist versus a masochist. Okay, I'm a pun sadist, but I'm not a pun masochist. That's hilarious. All right, you you cross the line. Cross the line, John Smith. Why are you screaming my name in the chat? I mean, I know this is far for the course, John. Why are you screaming, Sitch? What's happening? Oh, I the last one I got was Adam. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> John, can you it's at least type be, out "shut the be. fuck up"? I don't like it abbreviated. I can't tell if it's in all caps if you abbreviate it. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. S T U F is already in all caps. <laughs> God, don't you understand how this works? 
I need to hear the screaming in my boy in my head. City training program conducted in the city of Seattle as cult programming and claimed that critical race theory has oh. become so he makes this very strong claim and says Chris Rufo is lying about everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chris so Rufo does not strike me as a liar at all. Right. Yeah. So instead of, and Chris Rufo has brought up like, I don't know, dozens and dozens of examples of yeah. uh, critical race theory and wokeness being taught in school. But of course, you know, you know that Cody here is going to try to cherry pick the weakest one to somehow prove that, that Chris all Rufo is them, lying about yeah, everything. Yes. That all of them are bad. Right, right. And it's probably just some source he didn't check closely enough, or it was probably just a error on his part. Well, I'll, t I'll tell you when we, when we get into it. In essence, fault ideology of the federal bureaucracy and is now being weaponized against the American people. To prove this point, he asserted that the Treasury Department had hired a diversity consultant who told Treasury employees essentially that America was a fundamentally white supremacist country and I quote, virtually all white people uphold the system of racism and white superiority. Now it turns out these claims were not... In the fact that they've decided to capitalize white is really weird to me because it's it nothing says i mean it's it seems supremacist like unless well, it's, you, unless you have white and black in the sentence and you see that they're capitalizing both it makes you infer that why are they capitalizing white well it's it's actually weirder than that because uh the ap guidelines yeah i know recently, they changed it was that only black should be capitalized what and white should not be capitalized really yes really that's and the ap style guide that's now the literal ap style guideline is yeah, that so where we're at now or did they up. or did they change it so no, no that's where we are now so they're capitalizing white wrongly then in that quote well this is a, this could be old or it could be wrong yes entirely accurate because i, I think mean, the it, old guideline was you're supposed to capitalize both. This is so, I mean, you can't even use the word black without, like now it's like, you forgot to capitalize black, you're a racist. Oh my okay. God. Here, here's their explanation. AP style is now to capitalize black in a racial, ethnic, or cultural sense, conveying an essential and shared sense of history, identity, and community among people who identify as black, including those in the Africa diaspora and within Africa. Mm -hmm. Is that not the most racist fucking shit you've ever heard? Yeah, uh, yeah pretty that, close. Yeah. They just said all black people have a shared sense of history, identity, and community, yeah. including blacks in America and the black Africans. I know. They might as well just say <laughs> go back to fuck? Africa, right? I mean, that's fucking... <laughs> awful that's insane i just i would drive me crazy if i was a black american i know it, i i've heard this before from black friends and stuff that you know they don't like to be called african-american because they're like i'm not from africa i don't right right i grew, I grew up in america like i'm, I'm well, fucking 10 generations American. that's why here. that's why they stopped using the term yes they don't say african-american anymore they say black yes i think jesse jackson and Al Sharpton were the ones that pushed for African American too, which is like, what the fuck? Because I wouldn't be surprised if you were to dig into the literature that African American was secretly black nationalist talking. Really? Holy I wouldn't be so I don't know, shit. but Holy I wouldn't be surprised because think about it. What's the point of labeling all blacks in America as African American unless you're trying to create a distinct black nationalist idea? That could identity? be. That could be. That could be, and the and then you have bl several blacks who are like, "I'm American. I love being American. God, I just being American is great. I don't, I don't understand I mean, like, it. This would be, I'm, I'm a what, like a third or fourth generation American. I wouldn't refer to myself as a Russian American. <laughs> Did rap? <laughs> like, because, yeah, like, my totally. great great grandparents totally. came from Russia. Like, what the totally. fuck? <laughs> totally. Does um, did rap music come out of Africa? No, it came out no. of America. That's fucking, right. That's fucking American as American gets. That's right. 
Dude. Oh, and wait, they this this article continues because they explain why they don't capitalize white. Mm-hmm. Okay. After a review and period of consultation, we found at this time less support for capitalizing white. <laughs> oh my god. White people generally do not share the same history and culture. Oh my god. Oh my oh my god. <laughs> no. No. Oh my god, you racist piece of shit. <laughs> you fucking race. This is exact this is actually what CRT is talking about. They're talking about how yeah, the racism is invisible to white people. They don't see it. I know. <laughs> this is totally insane. it. But no one none of the woke people called them out for this. Which shows it's all bullshit the anyway. Fuck. White white people generally do not share the same history and culture or the experience of being discriminated against because of skin color. I don't know why that would necessitate whether the word is capitalized or not. In addition, AP is a global news organization, and there is much considerable disagreement, ambiguity, and confusion about whom the term includes in much of the world. Yeah. (laughs) We agree that white people's skin color plays into systemic inequalities and injustices. And we want our journalism to robustly explore those problems, but capitalizing the term white as is done by white supremacists. Oh my we're God. We're subtly conveying legitimacy to such beliefs. Well, by capitalizing black, you're lending legitimacy to those beliefs as well. That's the problem. Right. Like by capitalizing black, you're giving into <laughs> the supremacist narrative. I know. It's so bizarre. It's so weird. Yeah, I'm not I'm not in favor. A- AP is, I believe, Associated Press, right? They they yes. put out a style guide for journalists to put together. Right. So right. And they're usually considered to be like the most neutral. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. That ship has sailed. Some have expressed a view that if we do not capitalize white, we are being inconsistent and discriminating against white people or Conversely, that we are implying that white is the default. We also took note of the argument that capitalizing the term could pull white people more fully into discussions of race and equality. We will closely watch how usage and thought evolves on these questions, and we will review our decision periodically. Oh, my God. (laughs) Isn't that sick insane? I just, this is, this is... We're in such a weird place right now because I was under the impression, you know, people write books for, you know, time and memorial for posterity's sake. You can't fucking change this like, style guide every 15 minutes, right? There are books that are being written right now that are mm-hmm. capitalizing black and not capitalizing white that are right. going to be, what are we going to do in 20 years? We got to go retypes at all those books. It's so well, weird. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's so weird. It's so fucking weird. All for just a virtue signal. I just, but I love how their their argument is so insanely racist. Black people, including Africans, all share a sense of history, identity, and community, but white people do not have a I know. sense of history yeah, no. and culture. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, I don't know. I don't know, AP. I don't know about that yeah. one. Who came Better out as white supremacist there. in this statement? You right. F- oh. Jeez. So it's weird because they're basically, they're saying that there's a black culture, but there's no white culture. So yeah, yeah. But in in reality, there's no such thing as an amorphous white or amorphous. There's black yeah, culture. there's no ethnocentric no. black culture or ethnocentric. No. I mean, black. It's, you can make an argument that there's a black American culture, sure. But you know, but even that, it's obviously going to be different depending on where you, what part of the country you're in. Yes, the only white American culture that there is is actually the white supremacist culture because most like culture, white culture doesn't, there's not an ethnocentric component sure. to white culture except for the white supremacist. Well, yeah, it's like, as I said, is is the quote unquote white Texas culture going to be mm-hmm. the same as the white Los Angeles culture? <laughs> yeah, did you see that clip of of Kendi going around on Twitter where the some black rapper was basically saying that Candace Owens is not is anti racist or mm-hmm. is is a racist, is not okay. black or something like that. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see that clip, no. Yeah. Yeah, they want to I assume Kendi's supporting it. 
Oh, yeah, obviously. Okay. Yeah. If you don't support our politics, you're right, not right. black. God, it's so bad. Well, Candace Owens is married to a white guy, so, you know, race oh. trader. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> oh, my God. Sounds like something I may and probably will say before the end of this episode, but according Wait to the minute. 33 superiority. Wait a minute. Now, it turns out these claims were not, America was a fundamentally white supremacist country, and I quote, virtually all white people uphold the system of racism and white superiority. Now, it turns out these claims- How come they don't capitalize white and white superiority? <laughs> right. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let's see what he said. Claims were not entirely accurate. I mean, it sounds like something I might say and probably will say before the end of this episode. But according to so, <laughs> so his complaint is, well, I don't think that he actually said this, but I believe it. <laughs> that's, that's what he's complaining. And he would say it himself. So, yeah. And he's yeah. And he's he's predicting he's going to say it in this exact video. According to the 33-page document that Rufo provided to support his claims, it's clear that, at best, he was recklessly distorting the nature of the program. But more likely, he was outright lying about it. So, of course, he quickly found himself on Tucker Carlson's show. You know, Tucker, this... So, of course, Cody doesn't actually, in his hour-long video, okay, doesn't give any evidence to show that supposedly Chris Rufo's lying about this. But, since I care... Oh, my God, Sitch. I actually went on Chris You're a god. Oh, website. you're a god. I looked it up. Holy okay. shit. And it's classic two movies syndrome. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yes. While it's true the program doesn't explicitly say some of those things, it does provide the underlying base arguments that lead you down that path. Mm -hmm. And it cites, and this is where I think Chris Rufo was talking about, it cites sources that do specifically say that. And it oh, re recommends okay. specific Further reading, reading that does ah, say ah, that exact ah, thing. Okay. Ah. And so look, you can criticize him for that, say he should have been more specific, could say he's hyperbolic. But of course, Cody doesn't do any of that because he doesn't actually do any research for his videos whatsoever. Yeah. This is something I've been investigating for the last six months, and it's absolutely astonishing how critical race theory has pervaded every institution in the federal government. And what I've discovered is that critical race theory has become, in essence, the default ideology of the federal bureaucracy and is now being weaponized against the American people. The morning after this. And I think it's a fair claim to say that that's not true. That critical race theory is the, is the central default. ideology yes. of the, federal, of the government. federal government yes you'd have to have a lot of evidence to make that claim which well i see i worry about that because that's it's the cultural zeitgeist if more people do believe that like just believe the meme that mm -hmm. ever all of society serves white people at the expense of black people i think a lot of people do believe that I, first of all, I don't think a lot of people do believe that. Really? No, I don't. I what think if, if you would ask people, polling on it? I'm sure there is, but I'm, I don't think if you ask a person, does current American society and the government mm -hmm. serve white people at the uh, expense of at black the, people? At the expense what if of we black asked people? Aaron, the guy we debated <laughs> CRT with? No, Aaron would say definitely, but okay. I don't think the majority of people <laughs> agree with that position. I, I live in California. I live in Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I went out in front of the grocery store and started asking people, mm -hmm. I think 99.9% .9 of them would say. Sure, but you live in true. crazy Southern California. That is okay. true. They would say, okay. yeah, that's of course that's true. Sure, sure. Yeah. Appearance. Rufo was called by Donald Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, who told Rufo that the president saw your segment on Tucker last night and he's instructed me to take action. According to the Washington Post, the reaction to Rufo's appearance that evening on Fox News was swift. The next day, Trump demanded action. Two days later, his budget chief issued a memo laying the groundwork for the federal government to cancel all diversity trainings. An executive order followed, and Rufo was invited to the White House a few months later for a meeting. Now, the funny thing is that even though Rufo set in motion the rage-filled delirium over critical race theory that would eventually entirely envelop our political discourse and advise hundreds... So, so far... Mm -hmm. The only 
arguments about critical race theory that Cody has brought forth have been him re- Frankenstein stitching together a bunch of passages from a critical mm-hmm. race theory that book. That he doesn't know what they mean at all. That he doesn't know what they mean and he just mm-hmm. read them out. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the video has all just been him ad homing and what about is me yeah. the entire time. And he's continuing now. He's like, oh, we're going to talk about Chris Rufo as if that's relevant to the conversation. Well, he's making the argument that Chris Rufo stoked <laughs> up the moral panic. Sure. Which he did. But that doesn't mean whether the moral panic is correct or not. True. Yeah. Sometimes you have a moral panic because, you know, there's a pandemic. <laughs> it's right. like fucking real. You, you know who else stoked up a moral pandemic? Uh-huh. Abolitionists. Oh, yeah. They stoked up a moral panic. They sure did. All these people are slaves. What are yep, we doing? Yep. This isn't right. They're people. What? A, I can't believe those people. I bet those people, those abolitionists, they were paid by some wealthy northerner somewhere, some some proto George Soros somewhere. You know. <laughs> uh, Brian Town said for twenty dollars says I apologize. This is a dumb question, but you find fancy fellows often talk about people being controlled by their elephants. Or the rhinos. What does that mean? Is this more of that Harry Potter Patronus thing? No. 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 Oh, you don't want to explain it, Adam? You're the Jonathan Haidt disciple. I was I was momentarily reading the chat. What do I need to explain? Let me zoom in. They were asking why we talk about people being controlled by their elephants. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. They don't know. So there's this metaphor that Jonathan Haidt has about there are two systems of thought. Uh, I think Don, Daniel Kahneman's one that actually did the research on this, but there's a, a thinking fast frame of mind and a thinking slow frame of mind. And the thinking fast frame of mind is uh, intuitive, emotional mm-hmm. in, uh, intuition that we have. And right. then there is the slow, methodical, rational, reasoned, linear type of thinking. That, Facts and logic. Yeah, f- which Sitch is great at, which Sitch does... I'm more, I'm definitely more of like a feeling person, such as more of a logic thinking through person. I, right. Probably one of the reasons why we do so well together. But so Jonathan Haidt makes this metaphor that the human mind is like a rider on an elephant. And the rider really thinks they're in charge. They're the ones running the show. But after, you know, in the final analysis, it's a fucking elephant, right? It's going right. to go where it wants to go. And he even takes it further in the fact that the he says that the writer is not really our our conscious, uh, our conscious reasoning isn't really even serving itself. It's really serving the elephant. It's kind of like the press secretary for the elephant. So the elephant comes up with what it wants to do. And the the writer, the press secretary kind of justifies what the elephant wants to do. Right. So we, to, we to be to... clear, mm-hmm. the elephant is the emotional mind. Emotional the thinking component. fast. Yeah. Yes. Your initial reaction to something, your emotional reaction, yes. your intuitions. Yeah. This is your elephant brain. Right. And all your consciousness and your big brain logic. That's the writer, mm-hmm. the human writer who thinks they're controlling the emotions, but maybe they really? are. But but really. This know. is one of the reasons why we actually sell free will on the show because it's right. very easy to just you know shut the fuck up writer <laughs> press secretary <laughs> right and the the i you since you since the elephant is the unconscious mind i mean you don't really even know i mean you have to really work at, at understanding what the the elephant wants i guess it's not totally opaque but so when cody says something like you know the public lynching of george floyd he's basically his elephant is nudging your elephant to get fucking right. pissed off. Yeah. The, the word lynching is used to trigger your yes. elephant. Yeah. Yes. He even right. talks, uh, the righteous mind in the book, he talks about how wor- different words have different affect. You know, different words give you a different emotional response. And they do a bunch of studies with this. It's really fascinating. It's one of the things right. that got me fascinated with moral psychology because they can use, this is the thing with polling. You realize how corruptible polling is when you realize there's affect on certain words and even when you're debating people on Twitter, you can tell like if a person, this is, this is the problem with our political polarization because certain words have completely different affect for different people. 
Like if you say something like the Green New Deal, oh God, leftists get a fucking boner for days. They're like so hard over the term Green New Deal. Oh God. Right. It makes them want to pull out their checkbook. Can I help you? <laughs> Let me write you a thousand dollar check. Did you say Green New Deal? Let me help. But Green New Deal at the same time makes conservatives like want to wreck their car into a wall. What? Yep. Green New Deal. F f fuck you. Right, right. So it's like there are tons of words like this. Yeah. So you don't necessarily mm -hmm. know. This is the thing. When I was arguing with the people about the Stephanie Kelton book, the the deficit myth, like they don't even know it's partisan. They don't even they when when she uses certain words, I think, okay, well, you just lost your entire fucking conservative <laughs> audience just because you use that word. Like, why'd you have to use that word? There's other ways that you could say that. You didn't have to use that word. And you right. always wonder, does she know that she's using that word? Does she, does she know there is a cost to using that word? I mean, there's Probably a benefit, not. too. Probably not. There's a benefit too, because like I said, Green New Deal, some people are getting their checkbook out, some people are wrecking their car. There's like there's a cost well, and a benefit that right. you have to consider. And we I mean, we talked about this a lot, was the difficulty in a lot of these conversations is that you can't walk up to a random normie mm -hmm. who's on the left and say, Hey, all this woke stuff is based off of communism. Totally. Because that's one of those triggering words totally. because the, the term communism has been cried wolf for so long that their elephant immediately like wakes up and just says, Oh, I'm going to ignore what this person's saying. They use the trigger word. Yeah. This is interesting too, because the way words do the affect thing is they have this thing in the brain called spreading activation. So literally words are stored close to other words that have similar meanings to them. And mm -hmm. in every leftist brain, I think communism is stored right next to conspiracy theory. Conspiracy yeah, theory is exactly. like right next door. So as soon as right. you say communism, it activates this whole set of ideas. And one of them is conspiracy theory, right? But in the conservative brain, communism is stored right next to genocide. It's like Is that it's, that's I didn't know I didn't know that. Is that true that like there's a physical it is space true. associated with yeah. the language? Yes, it, it is it of is each true. Word. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's how when you're able when you're able to talk and string words together. You know, words hmm. are formed in these hierarchies in your brain that are Interesting. that are close because obviously it takes a, like a microsecond longer to get to when you when you can't think of the word. It's like that word, that little fucking sure, sector sure. of the activation isn't quite working, isn't syncing up with the other word. What's happening? Right. My brain needs to work to, harder. And just to, to finish that question, the mm -hmm. thing that was most powerful uh, and understanding this is, I think it was he said this, was that um, the way you have to conceptualize this is that you have to understand that your elephant, your emotion brain, mm -hmm. your lizard brain, that came first. That's yeah. existed in animals for millions and millions right. of years. Right. And your writer, your facts and logic, your consciousness, that evolved in humans to serve yes. the elephant, to serve your emotions and You're all right. that stuff. Right. And no one... The first really? rule of moral psychology. Right. Uh, f emotions come first, reasoning, a uh, strategic reasoning comes second. Yeah. Right. But that's important to remember is that your reasoning evolved to serve your emotions. Yeah. And people don't understand that. Yeah. Our brains are innately tribal, which is something we have to fight against very hard. Yeah. Very hard. I mean, we even fall into the tribe. We're doing a tribal thing right now. We're totally beating up on Cody for being a moron. Right. <laughs> but I feel like he deserves it. Cody is a fucking moron. Would, could of leaders could you change Cor uh, Cody's mind, though? No. Yeah. He Once you come out and you... and you Make these declarations. Make these declarations and you make content like this in front of a wide audience... It would require a very significant personal experience to have him change his mind. They were joking around in the chat before we began about mm -hmm. my flip on UBI being the biggest anime betrayal of all time. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. What happened there? I didn't have a troll. I don't have. Come on, I was wrong. Fucking UBI that's won't work. That's true. I got more information. But that's because we're enlightened centrists. We can change. We can come out and 
and say something for months and then someone gives us different information we say oh i guess we changed our mind this is the thing because people talk about they want to live in in that world you know obviously this sam harris types always say oh yeah you know if you get new information the right thing to do is change your mind that world is so much more unstable imagine it's <laughs> it's hard it's hard to reach that world that world is imp that world is unstable yes the unsustainable maybe yeah p perhaps yeah a few people Country, can do the, it you know right. special people like us but. me and you <laughs> <laughs> but it's dangerous of too many this this that's is what right. you're talking about the free will being too dangerous like that's there right. being a that's certain right. amount of free will that's too dangerous that's what i think you're talking about issue rufo had only recently learned of the term himself by reviewing the footnotes of popular anti-racism books by robin d'angelo and ibram x kendi far from being an investigative they keep bringing this point up they all this is so weird like Whenever there's a political argument on either side, there's like a there's like a sheet of talking points people make and they just regurgitate them. Yeah. As if they have power. Like, okay, how does it show that Chris Rufo doesn't know what he's talking about because he only decided to look into critical race theory in the last couple of years yeah. after reading uh, Robert D'Angelo and Ibram Kendi and looking at the footnotes? To me, that's the opposite. That's saying, oh, here's a guy who is reading this literature. And he wanted to know more about it, so he did what no one does. He read the footnotes and then researched the material the foot that the book was based off of. Yeah. How is that a bad thing? It's not. This is like, <laughs> oh, my God. When I read The Righteous Mind, I started reading everything he referenced in The Righteous Mind because I right. wanted to learn more. <laughs> like That's what you're supposed to do. Like, this is, it's so weird. That's basic investigative journalism. Yes. Yeah. Because Christopher Rufo was not born with an innate knowledge of, of critical <laughs> race theory. He needs to shut the fuck up. What the hell That's is he right. doing? That's right. Obviously, well, Cody was born with an innate understanding of critical <laughs> race theory from this video. You can tell. He knows absolutely nothing <laughs> about right. critical race theory. That's right. I mean, we started digging into it for the same reason, right? I mean. Yeah, because I heard people talking about it. And I said, oh, yeah, I want to know what this is. Yeah. And so I dig into it. We do a show once a week. It would be a shame if we talked out of our fucking ass for 10 hours about something that we knew nothing about. Yeah, we Cody, probably... what a shame it would be to put on a YouTube internet shows where you just say the dumbest shit imaginable and you don't know what you're talking about. I know. Oh I would feel God. wrong about that, Sitch. <laughs> I would definitely feel terrible. If reporter, the truth is that Rufo is a right-wing reactionary activist with an explicit <gasps> agenda, and Rufo himself has not shied away from stating this agenda explicitly, <laughs> tweeting, We have successfully frozen their brand, critical race theory, into the public conversation and are steadily driving up negative perceptions. We will eventually turn it toxic as we put all of the various cultural insanities under that brand category. Yeah, go Christopher Rufo! Woo! It's so it's it's weird because on one hand, that doesn't mean what they think it that they're claiming it means, but on the other hand, he still he should not have tweeted this out. You don't think he foolish. should have? Oh my no. god, I was very it. in your because it's, it's this is just am, this is you're giving needless mm -hmm. ammunition to the leftists and mm -hmm. the commies, mm -hmm. but you're not gaining anything from it. He doesn't accrue benefit from this, except you that he's bragging. So? Oh, so he's just bragging. He's saying, yeah. "Look, I'm successful." At, at stigmatizing this term well he is saying we're gonna win yeah but you there's a way to say that without basically mm -hmm. admitting to the truth which is that chris rufo and everyone else is conflating a bunch of a horrible woke shit under the yeah. label of chris under the label of critical race theory who do you respond for, to there i see for, i see james Lindsay in the response he was referring. He this is like a, he gave a multiple tweet thing. Oh, so he might have been just doing talking to himself, and James Lindsay retweeted it or something. But no, I think he's responding to James Lindsay. And they're talking. I don't remember. They're talking strategy. It was. Well, we want to take out critical race theory. Of course. You think this hurt the cause of taking out critical race theory? Of course, because you point to this. Cody can point to this, and he can point and show, and look and go mm -hmm. to the normies and say, "Look, here he is admitting." that all this stuff isn't critical race theory, which is again, kind of irrelevant because like, okay, well, 
whatever label you want to use to describe wokeness, we don't care. We just want to get rid of it from schools. It doesn't matter what you call it. We just want to get it out of schools. Mm. Okay. But then you get sidetracked in this conversation about what is and what isn't critical race theory when that's kind of irrelevant for the most part. There's two ways to look at this, though. There is this tweet could mean two different things. Mm -hmm. It could mean that Christopher Rufo is talking about associating other things uh, along with critical race theory that are not necessarily critical race theory. Right. Or just that that would happen inadvertently. Without, he says we will eventually turn intention. it toxic. Yeah, but we... he only he only means that for critical race theory. We yeah, have successfully says... frozen their brand critical race theory into the public conversation right. and are steadily up steadily driving up negative perceptions of critical race theory. Right. We so will far, eventually turn critical race theory toxic as we put all the various cultural insanities under that brand category. No, he is saying specifically that they're going to do they're going to put Yeah, those exactly. Yeah. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Which I don't really have a problem with them doing that. But in terms of trying to be persuasive, you shouldn't mm. declare this. Yeah. But it's probably not better unsaid. Yeah. You're right. Right. I'm just, I have a little shot in Freud and like, it's, it's so much better. Do you ever play the game Hearts? I guess nobody plays Hearts anymore. I used to play, that's actually, I used to play Hearts. Fucking, I, I love that game Hearts. My parents, for some reason, loved to play Hearts when I was a wee so, lad. So have you ever shot the moon? That's when you get all the hearts? You get all the hearts and the queen of and spades. And the queen, yeah. yes. Yeah, so of course. Hearts, do you play with the Jack of Diamonds or no? No, I didn't okay. know there was some Jack, of diamonds. Jack of diamonds. Yeah, role. we sometimes play with the Jack of Diamonds. It's like 10 points. I guess you're trying to get no points or it's negative 10 points or whatever. The Jack of Diamonds is good to get. But So when you shoot the moon, which I I try to do like every single time, nobody <laughs> likes to play hearts with me because my only the only thing fun about hearts is shooting the moon. But That's it a horrible is, strategy, Adam. Well, it's fun because everyone's like, okay, Adam's trying to shoot the moon. We all have to collectively work together to stop Adam from shooting the moon. It's, but it's, it's very difficult to do that. You can only do it if you get the right hand in the beginning. Hence the reason that I'm bringing this up because okay, okay. the best part of shooting the moon is rubbing it in their faces as you're doing it. <laughs> as you're doing it, it's going, listen, oh, oh, you don't, oh, you don't, you can't play a good card. You got, okay, I guess I'll take that hard. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so funny. And this is this is what he's doing with the tweet. He's like, yeah, not only am I going to shoot the moon, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to rub it in your face as I'm doing it to you. So th th this is a very interesting personality difference. Let me let me explain very quickly what Hearts is. The, the, all the kids who have no clue what we're talking about. Hearts is a four-player card game where every heart is worth a point and you're trying to get no points. So you're trying to end the game by acquiring no hearts at the end of each round. Right. But if you acquire all the points in a, in a single round, you end the round with getting zero points and everyone else gets max points. They get like okay. negative, what, 50 or so? I don't even remember No, you just get zero and they get 32 or whatever. Yeah, they the get numbers. 32, yeah. So it's a um, huge win. You basically yeah, walk, it's a, it's a, right. walk away and, yeah, they call it shooting the moon, so obviously. Sure, sure, sure. So, But it's funny because the personality difference here is that whenever I'm playing, or whenever I did play, I haven't played Hearts forever, when I used to play Hearts and you're trying to do that, you have to be sneaky about it, at I least know. at first. It always becomes apparent towards the end of the round. But at first, you're trying to be sneaky. So it's funny that my personality, I'm like, oh, no, I got, like, like fuck you. I got all the hearts. Like, I'm always trying to, like, like lie and pretend like I'm not doing what I'm doing. But Adam is all, like, rubbing it in people's faces. Like, fuck you, bitch. I'm taking all the hearts. <laughs> I, know. I know. I love it. Raw power. Hilarious. Raw power. Yeah, but see, to me, I'm looking more like, I'm trying to make, if if I can convince them, I'm not trying to Look do that. You. And Look it makes you. it easier for me to win. And you're more concerned with just the emotion of rubbing in their face <laughs> rather than the end goal of actually winning. So it's just, it's an interesting character. Oh, it's so, oh God, it's so satisfying when you win and rub it in their faces. But after a while, they know, like everyone knows that yeah, all I'm trying yeah. to do is. Of course, of course. It adds a completely interesting dynamic to the game, I've noticed. So. Right. Anyway, we should move on. Nobody we knows what Hearts on. is, but you should no play. It's a lot of fun. That's when people Hearts... used to play games like sitting With next cards. to each other. <laughs> yeah, in person. I know. I know. What an interesting experience that was. 
happy. The goal is to have the public read something crazy in the newspaper and immediately think critical race theory. We have decodified the term and will recodify it to annex the entire range of cultural constructions that are unpopular with Americans. Shooting the moon, bitch, in your face. Yeah, yeah. it's very super apparent. Super apparent. <laughs> Not not good strategery. Not good strategery. In your face, Cody. <laughs> in your face. We're Adam just dropped his pants. He's waving his dick around. <laughs> see you face. at the next election, Cody. Can't wait. Trump uh, 2024. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you imagine? Oh, can you imagine? Can you mm -hmm. imagine if this critical race theory gets Trump elected a second time? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know Trump is going to run on I tried to ban critical race theory. Or no no he he'll run on I I'm going to ban it. He right. did ban it. That's true. Yeah. Sort of sort of did. Yeah. Exactly. So, Major League Baseball moves the All-Star game because of racist voting laws in Georgia, critical race theory. Juneteenth becomes a federal holiday, critical race. Is this that is wrong? super this is super dishonest. This mm -hmm. is so dishonest. Who who is saying that Juneteenth becoming a federal holiday is having a holiday that ends slavery. I, who has a problem with that? I love it actually because I idea. I keep talking about how we need a shared narrative that that blacks and sure. whites can both be proud of. Ending slavery is part of that shared narrative, don't you think? Right, but see, this is the dis this is the disgusting thing here, and you'll and you'll find out at the end of this that Cody's a little bit more knowledgeable about CRT than he's been letting on. Oh, really? Um, yeah is that because he he's now he's doing the he's doing the the disinformation campaign he's like oh, okay if i can just associate all things that vaguely have to do with racist crt not only am i going to show that the republicans are wrong about saying crt is bad but i'm going to show that crt is actually good yeah That's even though they're here. even though they're not teaching it in public schools because it's too complicated for school children to ever right. figure out right go marxism <laughs> race theory vanessa williams sings the black national anthem on independence day critical now that is actually bad <laughs> yeah well, that happened really apparently it did happen there's a what black even... national anthem uh yeah black national anthem lift mm -hmm. every voice and sing hmm. okay don't you isn't isn't it i mean i imagine the the racist south had their own national <laughs> anthem too i mean we set that aside hopefully it was the confederate right? national anthem i'm sure it exists yeah, yeah. dixieland I, do you understand that the national anthem is supposed to bring people together you don't it doesn't work if you have five national anthems right right actually God five save the south i don't know five national anthems might work because then it might be mm -hmm. like oh yeah mm -hmm. we have lots of we have so we're so nationalistic. We have all these songs that we sing together. Sure, if you were singing that on Juneteenth, you know, fine. But I don't think you should be singing that on Independence Day yeah. or something. No, no, no. Critical race theory. Your roommate walks in on you while masturbating. Hot. What? What was I talking about? Critical race. It what? was the joke. What? <laughs> oh my god. I think it's hilarious how if the subject of a sexual assault joke is a white male, it's acceptable. Not only that, like, hot is, I mean, he's basically, he's basically saying that a sexual, like, unwanted sexual attention is hot to him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. As long as the subject or victim is a white male, mm -hmm. sexual assault is funny. Oh. Like, what if in that picture... It was a woman walking. Oh, in. I know. Oh my God. Every, you, remember, you think that would have played the same with his audience? He's like, Cody thinks it's hot if he's masturbating and his female roommate walks in on him. Yeah. That's like disgusting. Right. But no, no. But if you don't see the picture, you don't know. We could change right. that picture out. We should, here, let me back it up and put a, <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> let's just move on. Let's pretend yeah, we let's did. Move on. But it would be it's funny theory. on the clip channel. <laughs> 
essentially become a stand-in for any discussion of racial inequality or the history of racism in America. Which is why it is not at all surprising that Rufo's claims about critical race theory are either entirely misrepresentative or outright lies. In his explicit effort to drive up negative perceptions of critical race theory, Rufo created a CRT briefing book. And if we spent the necessary time it would take to adequately debunk every aspect... So this is where you're completely right about the strategic mistake of putting that tweet out yes because now they can claim things that are patently critical race theory are not critical race theory they're just right. christopher rufo trying to say that it's critical race theory right exactly. which i really <laughs> don't give a fuck to. honestly i don't care about that because if there's certain things i don't want them teaching in school and i don't care what you call it well that's part of the problem and and so unfortunately because when we had our second conversation with aaron that's where i planned I want the conversation to go <laughs> to be like, I don't care about endlessly debating what is or not is not critical right, race theory. Yes. What I want to talk about is these concepts that are being taught in school. And unfortunately, I got completely sidetracked and I la and I and I tried to pull it back a couple of times, but I was not successful. Yeah. So if you want to have another conversation with them where I'm just I don't like know if moderating I want to have and <laughs> I don't know that I want to have a con another conversation either. But he just seems super in the bubble, in the completely. He doesn't yeah. even, he's not conscious of the two. If you can't even really, you know, if you don't understand both sides of the argument, what's the point of even having the argument? Right, <laughs> I mean, right, right. Of this sacred home of garbage, this episode would last an entire semester, and you might have to take on student loans to do so, which would disproportionately impact you if you happen to be black. Critical race theory! So I like that he's like, it would take too long to go through his critical race theory briefing book. It's like, mm -hmm. bitch, you spent and will continue to spend 90% of the video not actually addressing anything about critical race theory or what's being taught, but just character assassination, whataboutism, and ad homs the mm -hmm. entire time. Yeah. But we don't have time to actually get into you know, <laughs> the evidence or the facts. We just don't have time for it, guys. So I'm going to do that. But it's worth taking a look at a particularly egregious claim that he makes about critical race theory to give you a sense of the kind of nonsense Rufo is peddling. In a section of his CRT briefing book called Race Essentialism, Rufo claims that critical race theory reduces individuals to the quasi-metaphysical categories of blackness and whiteness, then loads those categories with value connotations. Positive traits are attributed to blackness and negative traits are attributed to whiteness. This claim is literally the exact opposite of what critical race theory contends. Race essentialism is a belief in a genetic or biological essence that defines all members of a racial category. In fact, as I previously noted, critical race theorists explicitly argue that the concept of race is not a biological reality, but in fact, a social construct. And even more than that, a legal construct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's go back and show you how bad Cody is at propaganda. He mm -hmm. can't even he can't even lie correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he puts this quote up mm -hmm. from, from Rufo. And he didn't read the last part didn't of it. Didn't read the last sentence. I know. Of the quote. Although some critical race theorists formally reject race essentialism uh, functionally, they often use these categories as malicious labels that erase individual identities. So they're, oh. they're basically oh. Oh, Cody, yeah. it's almost like Chris Rufo saying, yeah, they say they're not race essentialists, but they basically act like yeah. they're race essentialists, which guess what? That's exactly what they fucking do. I know. I was going to say that. I was well, like, we've caught, in, we've caught so many of them dipping into the race essentialism. I don't like yes. race essentialism. It's fucking bullshit. It's awful. It's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. But, but Cody's going to whip out a definition of race essentialism as if we don't know what it is. Fucking, yeah. Race essentialism right. is cancer. But while he's cutting off the end of Rufo's sentence, that shows that he knows exactly what he's talking about. Totally. So so that Cody can straw man him and say, he said they're race essentialists, but they said they're not. So obviously he's lying. Right. <laughs> yeah. But they're too stupid to cut off the clip from the the visual. Well, they, they. Oh my God, that would that is. Well, he knows nobody's gonna read it, but us. I anyway. guess. I guess. Well, I guess. Yeah. 
fuck you. We got like 1,300 well, people reading it right now. And it's funny because I want to read this part from the critical race theory handbook that talks about this specific thing mm -hmm. because there's a context about why the critical race theories always include that they're anti-essentialism, okay? Mm -hmm. That no one ever talks about. Oh, and the reason is and the reason is because as he as as Mark Lamont Hill talked about, critical race theory spawned from critical legal studies, mm -hmm. which was basically critical race theory, but on class. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was a bunch of Marxists saying, oh, all the laws and systems were invented just to help rich people stay rich and to screw over poor people. Mm -hmm. And the critical race theorists were like, wait a minute, why are you not including class in this? I mean, race in this. You're being you know, you're, you're focusing too much on class. You're being too Marxist about this. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of leads down this road because then the Marxists were saying, oh, well, but because you're focusing on race, you must automatically be race essentialist. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah. they say in the book, they say, our point here is not that the crits, i.e. the critical legal scholars, committed the typical Marxist error of subsuming race under class. Okay. So that so the CRT people have already admitted that the that the people that their philosophy is based off of are Marxist. <laughs> they say, while we're straining to strengthen our understanding of racial power, it appears to us that some of the CLS crits were deploying racialist critiques from a position on race that was close, if not identical, to the liberalism were otherwise joined in opposing. Oh, okay? wow. Oh, so the wow. CRT people are saying these dirty CLS Marxists are being too liberal. Mm. To be sure, these crits position themselves in a discourse far removed from liberalism, a certain postmodern critique of identity. Mm. <laughs> okay. So in this one section, the CRT people have already admitted that their philosophy is based off of postmodern neo-Marxism. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then it continues. Um, yet the upshot of their position seems to be the same, an abiding skepticism, if not outright disdain towards any theoretical or political project organized around the concept of race where classical liberalism argues that race was irrelevant to public policy, these Marxist CLS crits argue that race simply didn't exist. This position is the one that we have come to call vulgar anti-essentialism. Oh, wow. That's the vulgar. Right. Right. Yeah. And then they, they, they continue. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But the whole point is... The whole reason they include this race anti-essentialism thing is to ward off the claims that they're being race essentialists because they're acting like race essentialists. Right. Basically. So they're basically uh, getting out in front of the charge before it happens, even though, right. like, like Rufo says, fundamentally, that's how they're acting. I mean, there's really only... Isn't there really only three positions if you're arguing that there's disparities that are happening? Mm -hmm. There's the biological, which is race essentialism. There's the <coughs> cultural, mm -hmm. which is, I don't, I mean, we're not really allowed to talk about that either, but I would argue that culture plays a bigger role than a far outsized role to biology. Mm -hmm. Or, there is the subjugation argument that you really don't have any agency because somebody else is calling sure. shots. Sure. Well, there's a fourth. The fourth is the individual <clears throat> argument. The Just individual people making individual choices, right? Yeah, I guess that is the yeah. that is the argument there. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And so, but this is but culture this is plays on the individual because culture kind of forces people. Of course, into of course. But that's yeah. looking at any one of those. It's a, it's a combination yeah. of all these things. Four. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, but that's so the, weird. The, the trick here is that technically, essentialism means that you believe there's some biological uh, 
something biological in race that determines behavior. That is the Which, outsized claim, though. That's the one right. that takes precedent over any of the other four that we sure. mentioned. Or which, three. Which, obviously, the CRT people don't believe that. Mm. However, they believe that your culture and that the oppression of society is so strong that basically they're not making race essentialist arguments. They're making they're making social race essentialist arguments. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying that the social categories people have constructed are so strong that you can't fight against them. And that's why they can say, oh, all white people are bad or they're engaged in this whiteness, blah, blah, blah. So they're, they are making essentialist arguments. It's just not biological essentialist arguments. Oh, okay. It's cultural essentialist, which I yeah, never so really thought they're of. basically making, yeah, they're making cultural essentialist arguments. But isn't CRT part of that cultural essentialism in the fact that, I mean, if you're going to demonize whiteness in the same way that critical race theory does, I, I can't imagine why anyone would want to engage in any behavior that was that was you know even tacitly associated with anything called whiteness right and that's where as soon as you get into like being on time and and empiricism and things like that are categorized as whiteness that's where you run into trouble yeah exactly exactly uh daniel chihote for twenty dollars thank you says guys i'm not teaching christianity in school I'm just teaching that a God sent his only son to die for our sins. I didn't even say the name Jesus. You guys are creating a moral panic about nothing. We don't even use Bibles in school. Basically, exactly. yeah. That's exactly it. Exactly. You started this moral panic. <laughs> we didn't do anything. Now mm -hmm. get on your knees and pray. It's lunchtime. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Miss a Thrim is six for 500 Kazarkazarks. Says free med school will create an oversupply of docs, which will cause decrease in their pay. But that also means in the long run, much lower incentive to become a doctor and you'll end up with a shortage of doctors. This is already happening in Europe right now. Yeah. Until you reach the equilibrium. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes, I completely agree. That's what I was going to say. But then you saying that it still has like this has like strict merit criteria is why I'm saying I don't think there's going to be a huge, I don't think it'd make a big difference. It's an interesting but, debate over yeah. whether or not we would hit. Cause we, we've experienced that situation in veterinarians, which we've talked about, like there are too many veterinarians and it's affecting the price of veterinarian services and the competitiveness of being a veterinarian, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But does it take, is it, I guess you do have to have more merit to be a doctor than a veterinarian or more skill. I guess merit is, I guess, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know enough about it. Yeah. But it's interesting. I mean, on one hand, you could say no because I, I assume with vets, they have to know, you have to learn to operate and teach, practice medicine on a wider variety of animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with humans, you're just the human working is on the human. one animal. Right, which I mean, obviously, all humans are different, so maybe, mm. you know, and people generally care more about humans than they do with animals. Mm. So, yeah, much to the chagrin of the yeah. vegans. Right, right. Stories <coughs> with value connotations. Positive traits are attributed to blackness, and oh, negative yeah. traits are attributed to whiteness. Let mm. me not read the last sentence, so I can totally straw man Chris Rufo because I'm a dishonest hack named Cody Johnston. When's Cody going to come on our show? <laughs> Never. Talk to us about Marxism. Come on our show, Cody. Debate Jeez. us. Cody's an Debate actor. Cody is. is an actor, but I mean, I've seen Cody on podcasts where he seems like a true believer. So, and we, so you've. Heard, I'm curious to hear what he sounds like without a script. You haven't. You we listened to the podcast where what he did with the massive Jordan Peterson hater. Remember. No, I don't remember this. Really? We talked about doing it. We talked about uh, watching it together. Co uh, S Cody Johnson went on some podcast with some Jordan Peterson hater, and they listened mm -hmm. to Jordan Peterson talks together and completely misrepresented Jordan Peterson together. Oh, <coughs> I vaguely remember. I don't yeah. remember what he said. I just remember the concepts, yeah. But he did seem like a true believer, like leftist. He didn't have a script there, obviously. Oh, so. sure. I think he's a true believer. I'm just curious if he 
like how well he is at stringing words and concepts to get in the script. I mean, he did the uh, that was the thing that really sucked about that podcast is, you know, J J Cody is the one with the platform and all the power and stuff like that. We want to beat up on Cody. We don't want to beat up on this other guy who's like right. dragged Cody onto his podcast and then done ninety five percent. Like, why the fuck are you inviting Cody on your podcast? And you're just going to talk at him for 45 minutes? I mean, right, right. let Cody talk already. We want to hear for what Cody Bologna color. has to say. <laughs> Without a script, reality, right? But the system of laws and their enforcement in our nation created a very real legal difference between white people and black people that carries a very real and material legacy to this day. The very fact that this country had laws against interracial marriage until 1967 is an example of this legal construction of race. See, oh my god, this is so dumb. No one's denying this at all. Cody yeah. doesn't even understand the argument. No one is denying that under our legal system, there was a classification for white people and black people, and that was racist. Yeah. And then we got rid of it. Okay. That's not yeah. what the argument is that the CRT people are saying is that, yeah, even though we got rid of those classifications, the law structure is still inherently racist. Yeah. That's the argument, Cody. You I mean, we, they're on. We changed the law. So you, like business owners couldn't discriminate based on race, which was right. a, 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 wasn't actually in law, but people just chose to do it. We made that illegal. And that legal construction helped create and reinforce the social construction of race in America, which is the only reason we are even f***ing talking about any of this at all right now. Yeah, but one side is trying to break that social construction. Yep. And one side is trying to solidify, re reinforce that social yeah. construction. And guess which side it is that's trying to reinforce the social <laughs> construction, Cody? Guess. Could it, could it be? Guess. The, the anti-segregationist black nationalist side. <laughs> Could it be that side? <laughs> it might be. You said anti-segregationist, but you meant pro-segregation. I mean, pro anti yeah. anti-integrationist. Anti-integrationist. Yes. yes. Look at pro Cody. Pro-segregation, anti-integrationist. Oh God, Cody. Dude, put your eyes back in your head. <laughs> Please, nobody wants to see that much of your eyeball, Okay. So, wokeness! And this little detour into our history of the long-standing impact of our racist laws gives us some insight into what this grift is all about. And considering the fact that Rufo has made Ibram... What, what's it? What's the grift? Oh, Rufo's... Kendi, one of the primary villains in this manufactured hysteria about critical race theory. What, what do you think of Kendi in the context of tokenism? He's super. He's the super token. Yeah. He doesn't seem to be where he is by any merit, by any stretch of the imagination. No. Like no. if I, if you, well, if there was a one hour talk between him and John McWhorter, how, how stupid could John McWhorter make him seem? Well, it was funny because there's a conversation that he has with Ezra Klein. I know. Where it, I know. It's funny. Kind of surprisingly, Ezra Klein asks him very hard questions about how his policies that he's prescribing would actually logistically work. Right. And they don't seem like they could actually work. You know, his policy is about, you know, there should be some magical fourth branch of government that determines whether laws are racist or whatever. Right. Um, and it's funny because Kenny admits he doesn't have an answer to these questions. Yeah. What's your whole fucking job? What the fuck? Yeah. It's like, well, what are, what, are, why are you famous then? You're proposing, you're proposing solutions that you don't even think make sense and you don't explain how they'd even work. Yeah. Like, give me a break. Not to mention the fact that they're completely illiberal. Right, yeah. right. Denying people human choice is the only way that you can make his fucking policies a reality. Only fair and balanced DMCR to ask Kendi himself what he thinks this is all about. I think what's being... And then he jumps straight to the podcast we're talking about. It might be that one, or because he, he was on his podcast twice. So I don't. Know oh, okay. One, but. Described as as critical race theory is is any analysis, critical analysis of race or racism in this country that 
does not position this country as post-racial. Any attempt to hold people who are being racist accountable. It is, that makes absolutely no sense. That makes no logical sense well, if you but, know how he defines racism. But, but think of think of how stupid this is. Cody's like, to prove that Christopher Rufo is a grifter, let me show a clip of a guy he's that Christopher Rufo is claiming is grifting about race. Defend himself and say that no, I'm not I'm not grifting about race. Right. Like, how is obviously Kendi, who's made his entire career off of calling America racist, obviously he's going to give you a very biased answer to this question. Hell <laughs> like, yeah. Why is his opinion worth anything in this conversation it's not it's w absolutely worthless this would be the same as just taking something chris rufo's opinion and just taking it off of off of his base without exploring it and looking at facts it yeah. doesn't mean anything it's completely it's totally worthless. meaningless any attempt to have a clear and complex and multivaried approach to to american history whereby we actually document and talk about and teach about the history of racism in this country. Now, I think Kendi might be onto something here because it's pretty clear that the focus of the anti critic I think Kenny might be onto something as he regurgitates the literal talking point that I've already regurgitated and everyone's regurgitated about, yeah. oh, they just don't want to teach racism in history. Yeah, which is not so, critical race theory, yeah. but and nobody gives is, a fuck about. Which is not critical race theory. No one gives a fuck about. And oh, by the way, is being taught in most schools everywhere anyway, for the yeah. last 20, 30 years. Exactly. Anyway, so. I just, this is what makes this debate so toxic because it's like they're trying to put a position on conservatives, Republicans, whatever, the right that they don't even hold. Of course. That's not their that's position. That's how all these political conversations work. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, Adam's law. Let me take the extreme example. Yeah. of someone on your side of the political spectrum and paint the entire brush of your side and say, oh, you're all arguing what this crazy person's arguing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess there probably is one crazy person out there that's like, no, don't teach anything. Sure. I'm sure there is. Yeah. Uh, Lucifer the Doberman for 20 Canadian says, has any CRT promoter actually laid down the Senate, the tenets to CRT? It's always a shell game to shift outrage. Um, I think yeah, Kimberly Crenshaw has publicly said it, but she's always done it in these super vague general terms, like the most vague general term you can possibly imagine. Yeah. It's just so. analyzing race in America. Right. Right. It's like, what? We're just analyzing it. It's just analyzing. Uh, Mr. Rich low pitch for $20. Thank you. Says as someone who keeps himself well-groomed. I can't stand these leftists who can't get a decent haircut and put some product in it or spend 10 minutes trimming their beards. To Hell paraphrase yeah. Peterson, clean your beard, bucko. Hell yeah. I did a little clean up right before the show. <laughs> Shave the neck. Still doing my own home haircuts. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to go get a haircut with a mask. Is that weird? Um, Are you wearing a mask for haircuts? I used to get my haircut every three weeks. Mm -hmm. God, it was yeah. so nice to have a nice haircut every three weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now definitely. Now I'm like just trimming a little bit every day. Just so You're like, honey, come cut my hair. I make her cut in the back, definitely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is anything sticking out totally wrong, bizarrely? Just clip Let it off. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Critical race theory phenomenon has been largely centered around the teaching of our history specifically with regards to the history of racism in America. And speaking of history, it's worth reiterating that all of this- This is such a fucking lie. It is a total bold-faced lie. All this stuff about, like, when you look at, when you look at the actual claims that people were making, even those Fox News reports, they weren't even focused None on history. Of them. They were focused None on, oh, them. they're teaching that the white privilege nonsense. They're teaching, they're teaching white that stereotypes. White stereotypes that whites are naturally oppressors. Yeah. And then if you look at most of the anti-CRT bills, they don't even mention CRT. They just say, you can't teach that one race is superior than another race. You can't hold one race of people accountable for the actions of, of other people in that race. And that's what's so insane about all this stuff. 
if people like Cody and other people on the left were being honest actors about this, they would look at these anti-CRT bills non-politically and say, well, I don't actually have a problem with anything the text says itself. Right. I agree yep. with everything the text says. Yeah, they're playing the moral panic card too. They're like, look, it's they have a moral panic going. We need to panic. We need That's, to panic about their moral panic. You're you're exactly right. They're saying the Republicans are moral panicking about critical race theory. So I'm going to create a moral moral panic saying that the Republicans don't want to teach about the history of racism in schools anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so many moral panics going around. Nobody gives a fuck. Cody's an no. idiot. Anti-critical mania is unambiguously a backlash to the Black Lives Matter movement that coalesced into oh the largest God. sustained protest movement in American <laughs> history over the summer of 20. All these people are just against Black Lives Matter. That's where he's yep. going. Yep. Everyone's against Black Lives Matter. 20, animated by the fact that the entire nation watched in horror as a white police officer pressed his knee onto... He did say the entire nation, which includes who? <laughs> who? Maybe white people. Who maybe? does that include? Ooh. The entire Republicans, nation? Republicans? White people? Conservatives? George Floyd's Ooh. neck for nine minutes and 29 seconds amidst a crowd of people begging the officer to spare Floyd's life mm -hmm. with his hands casually placed in his pockets. His hand is not in his fucking pocket. You idiot. Wasn't he getting his mace or something? He's got a black glove on in front of black pants. If you zoom in, you can see oh, you're right. his hand is clearly visible <laughs> right, right. on his fucking thigh there. It's it's so interesting. You can you can this is the trigger for the elephant. Okay. Like with Kyle Rittenhouse, when someone says he crossed state lines, like that's an elephant trigger. Like it's a code word that's supposed to invoke some emotion, right? He mm -hmm. was part of a militia. Like it's like, okay, these are all things that are either not true or even if they are true, it's completely irrelevant. Yet you always hear it being repeated. Yeah, and it was the same thing I was noticing um, with a. Uh, I'm blanking on what this guy's name was. That mm. the, the police officer. Uh, yeah, I don't remember it either. Yeah. Derek Chauvin, right? Derek Chauvin, yeah, Derek Chauvin. Was that like there was so much talk on things that didn't matter, like like oh well he had his hand. I heard that he had his hand in his pocket. Line repeated a bunch of times. Like yeah, that me means too. something. Me too. Or or like oh. You know, well, he said casually, though, that's why they use the hand in the pocket. Right. right. Or, oh, you know, he has this look on his face. Mm -hmm. He has this smug look on his face. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I've watched the video a million times. I don't see a smug look on anyone's face. I don't know what you're talking like. It's all just this emotional manipulation and elephant wrangling that's yeah. happening. Cody just lied to your face. He has a picture of Derek Chauvin on the screen. Clearly, you can see his hand <laughs> visible right there. I mean, it looks right. like he might even be making the okay sign, which I'm not in favor of. <laughs> but he's clearly wearing a black glove that yeah. many police officers wear yep. so they don't get stabbed with a needle yep. when dealing with a drug addict. Yeah, who, who has a pocket on like the front of their thigh like that? I know. Nobody. Clearly... Yeah, black glove on yeah. black pants, not in his pocket, not casually. <laughs> you you would think, you know, if uh, if a a suspect, you know, might be getting like away anytime soon, you'd probably want your hands out of your pockets just in case you need to use them. Right. Or if there's a crowd forming and you're afraid that it's going to be an issue, which obviously yeah. it was because he pulled out the mace and started shaking it up. So obviously he's conscious of this stuff. Every time they say the hand in the pocket, I think you are in the total liberal bubble. If you, if you, if right. that, that's like one of the first things that got debunked the yep. hand in the pocket thing. When, listen, we're almost a year later here. This guy's been tried, sent to jail. Cody still thinks his hand's in his pocket. <laughs> What's going on here? It was clear that this police officer believed that George Floyd had no rights which the white man was bound to respect. What's the holy shit? What's oh this? Oh my god. Chief Justice Roger T. Tanney from 1857. We're going back in the way back machine yeah. now.
Let me let me just replay that. His That's hands so casually placed in his pockets. It was clear that this police officer believed that George Floyd had no rights which the white man was bound to respect. It's clear. <laughs> It's clear that the reason that this happened with George Floyd was because Derek Chauvin was obviously just a huge racist. Okay. Wow. Huge racist. That's why what happened happened. <laughs> no oh evidence God. of this claim that race had anything to do, do with it was ever provided by anyone or even argued in court. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Obviously, obviously, it's just race. Obviously, Derek yeah. Chauvin is just a racist. If these, if these systems of oppression are in place why is derek chauvin in jail right now ah, why did derek question. chauvin get uh thrown in prison why did why did everyone especially when they first saw the video look in horror if we live in this evil white supremacist racist country it just makes absolutely no sense i don't know yeah don't someone's know. trying to soak a moral panic cody who is it who's who's in moral panic mode here well and think about how like the argument they're making is that Derek Chauvin is possibly the dumbest person on the planet mm -hmm. because while this is happening, everyone that's watching is like yelling at him mm -hmm. and filming him. Yes. Okay. And it's a mixed crowd. It's not just like it's all one ethnic group. It's a mixed crowd of people uh, who don't like what's happening. So are they arguing that Derek Chauvin is so racist that he's like, I want to kill this black person and I don't care that everyone filming and watching me is shouting and saying it's horrible and I, and the, he like, is he not concerned with the optics of what's going on? Yeah. He knows what he's doing is wrong. Like he's, he's like, oh, I'm going to willingly commit a hate crime in public and it's just totally going to be fine. Like, <laughs> well, that's, what? that's why they love this is because you can totally see it that way. It's easy. It's easy to see. Derek Chauvin does do like get, get you three quarters of the way and just the way that he looks. He just yeah. looks, he has like a blank face in the in that most of the interaction yeah such so much so that i wouldn't be surprised if he's like aspie or something wow he has a very non-emotional face for, yeah. for most of the video but yeah, i think I people watched some of the clips where he spoke in in um court and he did seem very well it's hard like, to tell because he had like a mask on didn't he i think he didn't know maybe he did oh, okay. i don't remember who knows i don't know i think I think he's Aspie, and I think a lot of people completely mm -hmm. misinterpret like that face to be mm -hmm. smug or something. When right. It's like no, he's just fucking Aspie. Yeah, which would be funny if you found out that's true. It's like, oh, you have a guy with a mental, Great. Um, a learning yeah. disorder. <laughs> you know, you're sentencing him to uh, 30 years in prison. But. Just look at this, going back to 1857 for a quote. Sure. From well, some he's Chief Justice, just so he can like stoke a moral panic yeah well he, he's relating this this was a quote from i forget like the original uh mm -hmm. was for a separate but equal case or something some, from some old racist case in the 1800s and he's like oh i'm just going to take this mindset and i'm going to implant it into chauvin's mind because i have the ability to mind read so yeah. well you have the ability to produce propaganda right right yeah and one of the most significant aspects to this movement that was different from other black liberation movements of the past was that this movement included a whole lot of white people, including a lot of white people who grew up in the era of colorblindness and were learning about the devastating impact of racism in our society for the first time in their lives. And so in addition to the- Wait a minute. Listen to how insanely stupid what he just said was. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if you caught it aspects to this movement that was different from other black liberation movements of the past was that this first of all he said black liberation movement yeah which is black that nationalism is, yeah that is like that's one of your elephant keywords that but people don't realize this that specifically means that he's in favor of black leftist radicalism yeah okay? black, black separatism. nationalism black separatism yes yeah because liberals say things like rights and yeah. equality civil rights and, movement yeah and leftists say things like liberation <laughs> yeah they want to be liberated from these oppressive systems yeah. man was bound to respect and one of the most significant aspects to this movement
that was different from other black liberation movements of the past was that this movement included a whole lot of white people, including a lot of white people who grew up in the era of colorblindness and were... Okay. So he said that this was different because for the first time, which is, I don't know if that's true, but for the first time, the the anti-racist movement was had a lot of white people on. involved white people too yeah white people who grew up in the era that promoted colorblind yes yeah so if we're going to use our logic brains for a second <laughs> seems like gonna, colorblindness is working yeah if we're going to think about this real hard we're going to say hmm if learning colorblindness made white people care about racism, then I get for the first time be involved in an anti-racist movement. I guess that means colorblindness works, Cody, you stupid moron. <laughs> but I think he's I but I think he's conflating the two things. I think when he says colorblindness, he means racism, racism. blindness. I know. I right. understand that. So right. he, he's 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 basically making the argument that the white people are becoming conscious of the fact that racism is everywhere and we had no idea because we were, were taught racism blindness that, right that is the argument he's making but he's so dumb that he doesn't understand that the way he that phrased there's another the argument, argument yeah he literally just gave evidence that colorblindness Works. and liberal ideas about fighting racism is what worked is what yes. created is what allowed white people to be caring about these issues in the first place yeah because if colorblindness really was racism blindness and all that stuff, and CRT was right about liberalism, all this stuff, then white people wouldn't have given a fuck about George Floyd. Yeah. They wouldn't have cared. They'd been like, eh, why do yeah. I care? The, 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 they would have been taught racism blindness and they'd be like, eh, that's all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to be blind to racism, right? Right. We're learning about the devastating impact of racism in our society for the first time in their lives. Oh my God. And so in addition to the increased awareness of systemic racism that took <laughs> Could you place imagine? As, what what, I what know, person Jesus Christ. before watching the George Floyd incident, which first of all, yeah. I don't think had really fucking anything to do with race. And no one has ever shown any evidence that they did race. We just have to assume it. But what person was like, oh, well, before Derek Chauvin put his knee on... George Floyd's right. neck. I just thought that there was no race problems in America. I'd never seen the miniseries Roots. I'd never seen <laughs> Mississippi Burning. Yeah. I, what's what's I, the I, one? What's the one with Samuel Jackson? I've never seen Ghosts of Mississippi. Ghosts yeah. of Mississippi. Exactly. Right. You know, I sure. I had no idea. What? Sure. I've I've never seen the million movies, TV shows. I've never been taught any of the history about racism in this country yeah. whatsoever. I didn't. I was totally deaf, dumb, and blind. Yeah. Uh, when uh, Tamir Rice was shot, or when you know during yeah. Ferguson with Michael Brown and all that stuff, yeah. it was posted as a race uh, narrative. Yeah, Trayvon Martin. Yeah. I just, I was just living in a fucking few states, wandering <laughs> the world in a fog. And then when I saw the video of Derek Chauvin with his knee on George Floyd's neck, I was like, oh my God, yeah. racism is Ut still alive. Utopia is not real. <laughs> Remember when people were saying Obama wasn't born in America? I didn't realize anything <laughs> about race issues whatsoever in America. Nope, nothing before George Floyd. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Remember Don't you when... Uh, but wait, Sitch, he really wasn't born in America. Oh, no. It's not, oh, it's, no. Not a, it's not a race thing. Don't you I understand? Said, course, People totally, have to be. Totally not racist. People racist. have to be. Oh, of course. Totally have, not racist. We have to vet people. Mm -hmm. Listen, Ted Cruz was is Canadian. We can't let him run either. Remember when when Kanye West said that George Bush doesn't care about black people? Oh, oh my yeah. God. I just There's race issues in America? Very sensitive. Like, I just I didn't know. I just whoa. <laughs> Cody, your logic is failing you here. This is insane. This is so dumb. As a result of this throughout our society, it's not that surprising that this moment has also included some misguided excesses and cynical efforts of appropriation, clumsy conversations about race in school board meetings, efforts by corporations or the military. Wait, what is he saying? Yeah. 
I was curious about that. Also included some mis- So in addition to the increased awareness of systemic racism that took place as a result of this movement throughout our society, it's not that surprising that this moment has also included some misguided excesses and cynical efforts of appropriation. Clumsy conversations about race in school board meetings, efforts by corporations or the military to adopt anti-racist language or make symbolic gestures in hopes of deflecting from the structural critiques of racism and capitalism that implicate them, and some cringy... So... Yeah. He's so he's doing the thing that really pissed me off, um, that I've seen people do, especially leftists do, or they try to say, oh, well, any excesses anyone actually who's you know using wokeness in the wrong way it that's just the corporations okay that's just the liberals who are right. using this stuff incorrect they're just virtue signaling incorrectly <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like no 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 are you kidding me it's the tra it's it's the black lives matter founders who are buying mansions for their families saying that they're trained marxists okay but that's <laughs> it's not it's not the evil corporations who are that's just true it, idiotically virtue signaling because you know they want to get more money yeah this is this is insane or the military or, or the military right and if you noticed he said he's related that that systemic racism is inherent in capitalism so he's tipping his oh he is. Hand here. he is yes. the mask is slipping yep 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 virtue signaling by people that may have taken the writings of robin d'angelo a bit too far side note it's pretty it's funny how mm -hmm. this this shows you the this shows you that Scott Adams is correct as much as Adam hates this. Oh my God! People you gotta warn me. You can't just I know the affect. Just drop the just, Scott Adams. That oh. name. I know. People don't generally form opinions; they're yeah. assigned opinions. I can't believe you believe this. It's well, I was gonna say the Robin D'Angelo thing is the perfect example of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. When her book White Fragility first came out, everyone was like, this is the best book ever. Oh my God, everyone needs to read this book. She was on every TV show ever. She was on Jimmy Kimmel. She was on every news station. Everyone mm -hmm. was sucking her lady dick mm -hmm. for the White Fragility book. Mm -hmm. And the and all the normies and all the people on the internet discourse were all throwing her praise because they were assigned the position by the media that, that she's a good man and she's doing the good works, okay? Mm -hmm. But then what happens? A year goes by or a year and a half goes by and some of the woke people say, you know, why are we letting a white lady <laughs> take credit for talking about race? She's making all sorts of money and gaining all sorts of fame talking about race this is a form of cultural appropriation okay mm -hmm. this is a form of white people banking off of black plight again lady doing our grift exactly <laughs> what the fuck? and so you started to see slowly at first a lot of woke black influential figures would start to criticize robin d'angelo now they wouldn't say it was because she's white but that's kind of what they were saying in their original critiques. And then that critique of her starts to spread and spread enough that suddenly it's magically acceptable for you to be on the left and to, and to say that Robin D'Angelo is bad. Mm -hmm. And now you'll actually see lots of woke people saying that she's bad. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is the perfect example of people having their opinions assigned to them. Because at first they were assigned the position that she was good. And now they're assigned the position that she's bad and they just flip flopped like, like that. Mm. So, I mean, you can't, you just can't say categorically. I, the counter to that is that people, and I, I, I don't see how these can be, they can both function because a lot of people have their opinions and then seek out media that validates their opinions so the how can the media be assigning them their opinion if they're well, seeking out media that already validates their opinion ahead of time so that's true but i guess maybe maybe we have to add an addendum which is that they're assigning their opinions on topics that they don't have opinions already about that could be so they so they're seeking out media that validates some particular opinion and if they have another opinion that's they just that media will that media has a basket of opinions. 
And right. Some someone, could be assigned. Some could be agreeable. Right. Like yeah. someone goes to watch. Um, yeah. MSNBC or Fox News, because they already know that they, that MSNBC or Fox News is on their team. Okay. Yeah. They're like, I'm on the left. I'm going to watch MSNBC. I'm on the right. I'm going to watch Fox News. So they go. They seek it out because they know they already have some shared level of agreement. But then when they're broached with a new topic, they're mm -hmm. assigned the opinion of, well, if you're on my team, this is your opinion on the topic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm terrible at that. I fucking, <laughs> I don't want to be assigned my opinion. I so want to know the facts, Jack. Uh, Aussie Yar for 20 Aussies. Thank you, Austin. Says, Cody, this Rufus guy is blaming everything on CRT. Doesn't he know everything is the fault of capitalism? Please ignore my Patreon. I'm really living in a trash can. Is that what it is? I mean, maybe the disheveled look is to let everyone know maybe. that it needs more patrons. God, if only I had more patrons, I could get rid of this wool tie. But it's the only please, tie please, I have. Please ignore my Patreon and my sponsor to rake on. Yeah, exactly. Is there a sponsor what? in here? You watch. This of movie. course, there's a sponsor. Okay, in here. good. At least we get to fast forward through the sponsor, unless it's super cringe, and then we might have to watch it. I didn't watch it. I'll be honest. Uh, Ivan, but Pat Tretzku for twenty dollars says, unrelated to the video, but Sitch seemed interested in animal animal welfare previously. In slaughter, we look more. Oh, it's right. We talked about slaughterhouses. Uh, in slaughter, we look more to excessive force, minimal excitement of animal, and ensuring unconsciousness throughout the process. This is after oh, wow. farming. Yeah, no, I I know. That, and that's good that that's the idea. I'm assuming that's not for moral reasons, though. I'm assuming that's because uh, I thought, like, if the animal is more freaked out when it dies, it releases hormones into the meat, which changes the taste and all that kind of stuff. Mm, interesting. But I didn't know that. There, there was... Um, but regardless of whether it's for moral reasons, obviously it's good that that's the way it should be done. But there was this this debate that you sent me, Adam, or not debate, this response video that was from a capitalist vegan and a communist vegan. Oh my God, that was great. It who, was I, it was thought crimes. The one I, we I always know, respond to. This, yes, it was thought crime. I didn't know this. He's a vegan apparently. And he made this uh, very long response video to i forget what her name is this youtuber who's a vegan unnatural vegan she's actually really vegan, smart and yes. i think she's a, a hype fan as well to be honest with you that's good. i mean she's a vegan so she can't be perfect but she's well, pretty yeah smart. that's true nobody's perfect but um <laughs> and thought crime had the dumbest take on this like my brain fell out of my skull when i heard him saying this he was like if it wasn't for the profit motive you really think factory farming would exist <laughs> she just I'm blew like, him out of the water too. I'm yeah, I know. I'm like, is this guy fucking for real? The, the, how idiotic does this guy? The reason factory farming exists is because it's the most efficient way to do it. Yeah, not because it's people are fucking sadistic and they're like, I want meat that's the most tortured, please. Like no, but his idea that this is driven. First of all, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about when he says driven by the profit motive because a. If you still want the co-op model, the co-op people, even if the company doesn't make profit, they still want to make as much money for themselves as possible. Yes. Okay. True. They want the highest wages as possible. So they would still be engaged in factory farming. Okay. So no thought crime, you idiot. This has nothing to do with it. And B, even if we didn't have co-ops and everything was, I don't know, mandated by the government or whatever, you're still trying to feed massive amounts of population on as little land as possible. Yeah. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we did live in the state control communist government, if we wouldn't have the option of buying free range and organic food. You wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised because it wouldn't be efficient. It'd be a it'd be considered a waste of state resources. Yeah. She she so bitch slaps him on all that shit. It's so great. She's so much smarter than him. And obviously it's like Yes. You doofus. So, it's uh, she, go ahead. What she fuck? He up does on? do one of Sitch's unforgivable crimes. He does or she does? She does. Oh, what's that? She uses the wrong definition for neoliberalism. Oh, she calls herself a neoliberal. I thought that I would know. trigger. I thought that it would trigger you me. as well. Yeah, it does trigger me. She's using. It's weird. She's using the communist straw man of neoliberalism yes, to define yeah. herself. 
and that does trigger me. That does She's trigger not me. a laissez-faire capitalist at all. No, 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 no. You can't hold on. How could you? How could you be in like an activist for regulating farms and be a ne neoliberal? Right. Yeah. Well, no, because she's def she's using the communist strawman definition, which right. is that a neoliberal is a neoliberal is someone who wants to you know who believes in a social safety net, mm -hmm. but you know and wants the government to regulate things, but still believes in capitalism. It's like mm -hmm. okay, that's not what a neoliberal. <laughs> Yeah, it's not even remotely it's like the exact opposite of neoliberal, but uh, whatever. That's another conversation. Yeah, uh, that definition might be changing on us. Nobody uses neoliberal as a laissez-faire capitalist. The problem, the problem why you have to fight that definition change is because it's done for insidious reasons. They're all all, all what definition change is done for pragmatic reasons. Well, that's it's all true, insidious. But the, the, the redefining of neoliberalism is the same thing as people trying to redefine racism as P plus P equals R. Mm -hmm. It's so that they want to say, they want to make this weird association between laissez-faire capitalist and the Democratic Party. Right. So that the leftists can say, oh, see, you know, they're not liberals, they're neoliberals. Mm -hmm. You know, the Democrats are all the same. It's really, they want to make the argument that Democrats and Republicans are the same. That's why they're trying to redefine neoliberalism that way. Yeah. They're different. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Funny that things that set this off is a book called White Fragility, which led a bunch of white people to flip out and try to ban any discussion of race. For all the books. Why does he just lie so much? This is Bran. Like, like, white people want to ban any discussion of race. No, fuck you, Cody. White people think it's super racist when you say that entire races of people behave or act in one way or another. Yeah. I thought, like, we, we, I thought we banned racism and we're, yes. like, scoffing at the fact that, no, it seems like people are promoting it now. Yeah, exactly. I wonder what Cody's lie per sentence count is. Oh my God, it's off the charts. Yeah. Flaws, maybe, at the very least, the title was onto something. And so part of the enormous backlash to the Black Lives Matter movement, as Rufo explicitly stated, was to put all of the various cultural insanities under the brand category of critical race theory. It didn't matter that Robin D'Angelo was not a critical race theorist or that her emphasis on the racist beliefs held by individuals was actually at odds. It, it, it is it is relevant that what Robin D'Angelo is trying to teach is what people are objecting to being taught in schools. I mean, sure. And, no matter what both, you call it, that's what people are rejecting. Exactly. And both her and Kennedy said that they're like, oh, they, they did the bullshit line. Like, well, we're not critical race theorists because we're not lawyers. But they both said that they were inspired by critical race theory. And obviously they were if they're citing works of it in their <laughs> in their books, which, yeah, Rufo said the only reason he knows about critical race theory right. is because he was like, whatever this fucking nonsense is, I don't want this taught in schools. We right. have to define this. I know. Yeah. So they're only influenced by it. They're only citing it, but it's 100% different, guys. It's yeah. totally different. I mean, I'm curious because this would this would simplify the conversation quite a bit. Cody, are you in favor of them teaching Robin DiAngelo's white fragility in K through 12? Well, that's the pro this is why this conversation is so dishonest. Because people argue till they're blue in the face that this isn't critical race theory. But then they all agree with what's being taught, even if it's not critical race yeah. theory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants that That's, white fragility shit in school. No. Well, they do. They do. I guess they do, yeah. I guess ultimately they do. God, it's so... Like, oh my God, I just want to shake them. With critical race theories focus on more systemic and legal critiques, or that her participation in diversity training programs for corporations restricted her from leveling an honest assessment of capitalism's role in systemic racism. Oh, here he goes. He's tipping the hands. <laughs> See, Robin D'Angelo was bad because she didn't go commie enough. That's what he just. Well, <laughs> he's saying that the corporations banned them from being for like he never said how commie she went. 
the corporation no, he, he stepped said, in and said, don't be commie. No, he's saying mm -hmm. that the critique of her is that she didn't go after capitalism enough. Oh, okay. Which, first of all, in her in her Let's... previous book, she does go after capitalism and say that racism. She does pu pull the whole nonsense mm -hmm. socialist line that racism is at the, was because of capitalism. Which this is never explained because mm -hmm. it, it makes fucking no sense whatsoever. How, How does capitalism, capitalism is racism make you more racist than socialism? Well, you can make the argument if you're talking about slavery, obviously, as a capitalist. Sure, but we're endeavor. not. Yeah, but. Yeah. Right. Well, even though, as you said, and I think he actually mentions how slavery was actually a net negative for, for capitalism. The yeah, exactly. Right. Well, you're the enslaving, <laughs> enslaving uh, so many of your potential innovators. Thirteen percent right. of your potential innovators is like or dumb. Your potential customers too. Exactly. Exactly. That's what's so yeah. weird. Like again, like the, with Plessy versus demand. With Plessy versus Ferguson. Okay, which was the original separate but equal case. It was the train company which was trying to get the government to get rid of separate but equal because they didn't want to <laughs> exactly. have the cost of having separate white and separate exactly. black train cars. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it was the same thing, I think, with a lot of the civil rights lawsuits against um, bus segregation and dining segregation. It's that most capitalist companies sure yeah. like the there could be individual racist owners of shops or whatever but the large these large companies they don't they don't care enough to be racist yeah, they totally. just want money they want more customers racism actually hurts their business yeah. it doesn't help their business yeah imagine that no sense. imagine that imagine segregation on airplanes oh my right. god <laughs> right like shut the fuck up get, get in your seat you racist piece of shit but they just make this claim and it's never explained all, or thought through. All the capitalist incentives are towards diversity. Yeah, or they're just towards they're towards colorblindness. And I think that's the real problem. Yeah. All the capitalist incentives are towards colorblindness, and they think colorblindness is evil. Right. Yeah. The fact is that this reactionary backlash was not interested in a conversation about actual critical race theory. The goal was to label any effort to examine the impact of racism in our society as critical race theory and make sure that when people heard that term, they had a negative association with it. To put it more simply, by cutting out the middleman. So Cody and Cody's just doing the same thing. He's literally he's literally just projecting. He's I'm going to make an emotional negative association with anyone complaining about CRT. Yep. That's what this entire video has been. Yeah. It totally sidesteps the real reason for the negative emotion, though. The real reason for the negative emotion is either they're teaching racism to your kids or you're upset that they're teaching racism to any anyone's kids, other kids. Right. Yeah. They wanted people to have a negative association with any examination of racism in our society, and particularly citation needed. Yeah, hugely needed. They keep making this claim. Any examination they... of race, like, ugh, who's who? Who? What person is interested know, always, in this? They always make this claim, and there's never any evidence provided. Nope, whatsoever. we can't look. We can't study race at all. Yep. Shit, half the university's like some sort of racial <laughs> studies now. What are you talking about? Throughout our history, which is why one of this reactionary effort's main targets has been the 1619 Project, which I can't wait to talk to you about. But while we wait out this storm, here's an ad. Do you know anything about the 1619 Project? Other than of course. Of course. But we're going to get into that. It got but, debunked. Yeah. But before we get into this very important topic. An ad. We have to shill oh, for hello. Raycon. I didn't see you there. Still don't. I'm Internet's TV's guy from Some More News. You might know me from Some More News, a show you are literally watching right now. Now, everyone is always asking me, Cody, how are you always so calm and collected when talking about the news? Well, this Cody keeps his cool by enjoying the relaxing sounds of raccoon scurrying, which I listen to on a cassette tape recorder hooked up to a Bluetooth transmitter and then received through my Raycon earbuds. Oh my God. <laughs> 
I should have brought up the picture of Ben Shapiro with his Raycon doing his Raycon ad. We're fast Cody, forwarding this, right? Yes. Cody Johnson, the enlightened commie leftist fighter of capitalism who's doing an ad for headphones in the middle of his video that Ben Shapiro also shows for. He seems to enjoy it a lot more than like he ben literally, ben, he yeah. looks like he loves shilling for this. Oh, product. yes. Yeah. Yes. It's that's true. Like when you hear Ben Shapiro or Joe Rogan do ads, they sound like they want to die. Which is reading the ad. Which do you think is safer? The COVID nineteen vaccine or mm -hmm. Bluetooth headphones? <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> I'm curious. I mean, I'm gonna say the vaccine's probably safer. Just because. Probably. Like You're I've had. Right. I've had. I've had both doses of the vaccine and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine. You know, there could be long-term effects, but I definitely think there are long-term effects from Bluetooth. Well, let me tell you why headphones. they're safer than the Bluetooth headphones. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause after I got both vaccines, I can now connect wirelessly to my computer <laughs> with no Bluetooth. So obviously, obviously well, it's, it's the best safer. of both worlds, right? Right. There. Exactly. I don't need Bluetooth anymore. That's not safe, so you should get Raycon that checked ear out. Brands. Raycon ear brands. Raycon ear. Raycon day guarantees to all. Storm's clearing. There you go. There's your ad, guys. Your, oh, my ca God. Your capitalist Raycon ad. I mean, it's not. It's okay because we live in a capitalist system. So he's. he's it's not he's, okay for him. He's got to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, so, it's not okay for his principles or anything. Sure. But, he doesn't yeah. have. These, all these, all these Ray commies. Thank you, Chad. All these Ray commies. <laughs> they're all, they're all quote unquote consequentialist or commiquentialist. Maybe we should call it. Okay. I'm trying to think of anything that would be totally against our principles, but we don't have any principles. So, right. Right. Well, I guess dishonesty would be against our principles. I love that. Principles. If we ever bring up anything about vaccines or COVID, some people in the chat get so triggered. Do they? <laughs> Oh, are we not allowed that. are we not allowed to have our opinion no, i mean not. i'm we're like not. listen no, no, no. don't you get vax okay vaccines are only for for me and sit okay <laughs> we want all the vaccines you know i actually listened i was i was very disappointed i listened to rebel wisdom's vaccine video i know i sent it to you yeah adam sent it to me i dry drum it was so bad i couldn't believe how bad it was. i was like oh this is good they're gonna go through like the information and then the video ends and you're like wait <laughs> yeah they're like oh they're gonna go through the information about you know being pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine like they did with the ivermectin thing mm -hmm. and then they don't the entire video is a fucking drama video they're like well, we're not allowed to talk about that. i'm like i don't care if you're don't have a don't have a conversation about having a conversation, as Sean always says. Okay, just tell me what the fuck the information is, you assholes. Like I couldn't believe how bad that video was. You haven't looked into the Ivy Mectrin stuff. Well, I listened to their video, but like their video about the vaccine, I was wondering if it wasn't actually the video, if it was like an introduction to the possibility of a future video. That's how bad. The video yeah. Was. Bottom bottom it. line is they think. They're not with Brett Weinstein. They think Brett Weinstein is off base, which I right. agree with. I love right. Brett Weinstein to death, but mm -hmm. I mean, I've looked at, I've looked at uh, what he's pitching, and I've looked at the counter claims, and I just think the we're on the no one can be certain about the the vaccines. Obviously, I've said this before, but we have some certainty. They've been given to millions of people. We would know mm -hmm. if like calamity. Is going to happen in the first couple of months, obviously, because it's been a couple of months. Sure. Uh, Matthias, eleven ninety for twenty dollars. Thank you, Matthias. Says, can you guys both give me an explanation on Jesus, who mm. he, <laughs> who he is, and what he means to you both? Sure. <laughs> Jesus is Jesus is my hero. Uh huh. And I mean that in all sincerity. I was raised. Mm -hmm. Christian and I grew up believing Jesus is like a superhero and I always thought what would Jesus do Jesus would do the right thing Jesus wouldn't lie Jesus wouldn't hurt people I believe in the hippie Jesus the, Je the Jesus that is about doing good in the world and being honest and forthright and um I don't I don't believe I mean I could I could go as far as saying like I believe Jesus is the son of God and in a like Jordan Peterson-esque 
kind of way. But since I don't really believe in God, I like it pushes towards potentially dishonest to people. Mm-hmm. So, but I am very much an atheist for Jesus. I think Jesus is like the avatar of goodness that we should all strive towards. And he functions in that capacity for a lot of people. And I'm all in favor of that. Obviously not for, for Sitch. I don't know who Sitch's avatar of superness is. It's probably like well, one punch man or something. Well, obviously it's, <laughs> it's common. Okay. But we've talked, but well, okay. Do you want to hear the truth? I yeah. t- talked about the truth about Jesus on stream and you get very uncomfortable when i talk about i myself. get uncomfortable you get very uncomfortable really okay well yeah. people love it when i get uncomfortable so let's dive it's, in I, yeah it's uh for every jew mm-hmm. when they turn 13 oh for yeah, the bar. yeah. <laughs> i do i i get uncomfortable <laughs> as in i i get uncomfortable because of the negative stereotypes <laughs> you're putting into the world of jewish people for, i for have every, every, you're <laughs> not my only jewish friend okay <laughs> for every jew for their bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah they go to the secret jewish time oh machine god. okay oh my god that the secret jewish elites control and what you do is that time machine transports you back in time to the crucifixion of jesus and for your bar bat mitzvah you have to personally be the person to nail the nails into Jesus <laughs> oh while he's being crucified. Oh and that's gosh. how you become a man or woman, according to Jewish <laughs> oh tradition. Oh, my God. My God. Look, I'm just saying, what I, I want the people to know. <laughs> Why are you making a mockery? <laughs> Why are you making a mockery of this? Anyway. What is who is your who who do you, who is your Jesus who is your uh, person of goodness that you try to live? I don't up to? I don't have one I don't have one. Is it Luke Skywalker? No, I don't have I don't have a personal hero that I conceptualize in my. You mind. don't have your own no. personal Jesus. Jesus, I don't know. Are you a fan of Depeche Mode? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Oh, okay. They're okay. They're okay. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. What anyway. are we talking about? Anyway. Ah, yes, the 1619 Project, Thunderbolt. According to the creators of this endeavor, the 1619 Project is an ongoing initiative from the New York Times Magazine that began in August 2019, the 400th anniversary of the beginning of American slavery. It aims to reframe the country's history of placing the consequences of slavery and the contributions of black Americans at the very center of our national narrative. Considering the fact that these... It, they're trying to make a sh- shared narrative, right? I mean, or actually the 1619 Project centers white people as the antagonist of blacks in the 1619 narrative, yeah, correct? They're, they're trying to make a shared narrative that America's fucking racist country. <laughs> right. They're trying to do. Yeah. Which is <laughs> yes. not something every American can be. Uh, when I talk about this, I'm talking about something that every American can be proud of. I know mm-hmm. it's a challenge, right? Well, this is what I think people on the left don't understand, okay? You have to you have to teach your children mm-hmm. to be proud of their country because otherwise they see no reason to continue it. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't and because all this leftist marxism has infiltrated they don't want to continue the country. They want yeah. to tear it down and rebuild it again yeah. under some sort of weird socialism. Yeah, just for for giggles. <laughs> just, <laughs> just for fun, right? For right, funsies. Right. right. The central role and lasting impact of slavery has typically been minimized in the way our history has been taught in this country. I mean, this is why we had so many statues that had to be torn down in the first place. Maybe this effort is a good thing. But of course... this is. You know, there's only like one example that he gives for this that I've ever seen about this whole, oh, they don't want to teach the history of racism. It's just every person I've ever interacted with who's around my age or even older, they all are like, oh, no, I learned about racism. I learned about slavery. I learned about Jim yeah. Crow laws. Like, who are these mythical people wandering around in America that just no don't idea. know the history yeah. of slavery and racism in our country? Yeah. It's, it's like they took a snap, like maybe in 1950, this wasn't taught. I don't fucking know. Hmm. Of course, conservatives. 
connected to this undertaking by acting like the creator of this project, Nicole Hannah-Jones, just cut off Uncle Sam's dick and fed it to communists in front of children. Newt Gingrich called it brainwashing. Ted Cruz called it Marxist indoctrination. And Senator Tom Cotton even in Wait. front of children. Newt Gingrich. You like that line? No, I don't. Nicole I want to called see Ted it brainwashing. Cruz Ted Cruz. Nicole Hannah Jones. Okay. So, so again, I don't even, first of all, I hate Ted Cruz mm -hmm. with a passion. Yeah. And now Cody's making me defend Ted Cruz. I know. Fucking okay. Armageddon has come. You I thought know. you thought that Jesus joke was funny, but this, I'm looking at it like this is fucking karma, dude. Now you're defending Ted <laughs> Cruz. How's it because feel? He he says he he says Ted Cruz called it Marxist indoctrination. Okay. Uh -huh. So the implication is he's calling the 1619 project Marxist indoctrination. But if you read the tweet, there's nothing about the 1619 project in the tweet. Oh really? He says critical race theory is Marxist indoctrination that teaches America is inherently racist, uh, white people are racist, colorblindness is racist, our systems, judicial military, are irredeemably racist. Biden is teaching these lies to our servicemen and women. Hashtag CRT. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with the... Where does it say 1619 Project? Nothing. Nothing to do with it. And I would agree with his explanation of what CRT is. I would agree with all those suppositions. Hell yeah. I think Cody would agree with all those suppositions. <laughs> Cody would right. definitely would. endorse every single well, one of those. I don't. I, I think he would try to weasel out of it and reframe it so it doesn't sound He's so bad. Been, but... Every time he says color blindness, he means racism right. blindness, which is racist. No, but I don't think Cody would, <laughs> even if he believes it, I don't think he would say all white people are racist. He would say, oh, well, all white people systemically you know, oh, no. He'd participate be, no, in the systemic systems no. of systems. And I think Cody's so, racist. no, Cody would no? jump up and even call himself racist okay. as a white maybe, person. Maybe, maybe He's one of those people that would definitely jump in and say, oh yeah, <laughs> he'd put it's it amazing. on his resume. It's, <laughs> racist it's amazing. white person. <laughs> it's amazing on the show how many times Cody will put up a picture of something that disproves the words coming out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Like, Who's running this shoddy operation here? <laughs> Come on. You need a better editor. Someone, I think your editor is playing tricks on you. They sh we should call Cody some more lies. Like we call thought, ah. thought slime, thought crime. Some more lies. That's yeah. good. That's good. Some more lies. Some more lies. True. Cruz called it Marxist indoctrination. And Senator Tom Cotton even introduced a bill to ban it from being taught in public schools. Oh, yeah, 1619 Project. Torting that, as the Founding Fathers thought, slavery was the necessary evil upon which the Union was built. And very smart best friends of mine like Ben Shabeeps called it pseudo-history because some historians argued that one of the essays exaggerated a claim about the role friends of mine like Ben Shabeeps. So e what? <laughs> even some more lies mm -hmm. is repeating the vaguely anti-Semitic... I know. Ben Shabib's name ben that Shabibo. Hassan came up with. I know. I don't it's very strange. They never very they strange. always they always come up with that. They always name Ben Shapiro something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to be clear, the Tom Cotton quote, which I don't know if it's if he's right or not, he's not saying slavery was a necessary evil. He's saying the founding fathers said it was a necessary evil. Right. Yeah. Which I don't know if Which, they did, but if they did, they have then totally he's fucking just accurate. Argue. They right. argued over in all kinds of letters and shit like that. Some they of the did. founding fathers they were did. very much against slavery, but they were like, well, lose the South. They were. We won't be able to unite the country. We want a big mm -hmm. fat country. Well, but that's where so much of this 1619 stuff is so just delusional mm -hmm. because it's kind of operating under the idea that, like the, the old idea that. Oh, all the founding fathers, you know, they all magically uh, teleported into a room one day and they just wrote the constitution no. and everyone said, this is perfect. And it's like, no, no, no. This was months and years of people in the vehemently yeah. arguing with each other and deal making with each other. Cause no one could fucking agree on anything. Yeah. Yeah. Bill of rights wasn't even in the original draft. They were like, right. what the fuck? All this power. No, we want protections for the people. Right. And this and the slavery issue was 
as you said, it was a hotly debated and contested yeah. argue, uh, conversation yeah. because not only was it just the moral question of slavery, but because in those days, there wasn't so much Republican Democrat. It was slave states versus free states. That was the main political line. It got roped into this political identity and this political coalition. Yeah. And it's like, and I'm not making any defense of slavery. Okay. Don't but, you hate that you have to say that? I, like, I know that the, I hate that I have to say fuck? that. To explain the context of who why the fuck why, is pro slavery. I know. To to explain why the country was kind of uh, created the way it was is because you have 13 colonies that are about to engage in a war with the biggest global superpower in, mm -hmm. in the world at the time yeah. by fighting for their independence. And they know that the only way they can do this is that if they all unify yeah. to fight against that. Okay. Yeah. So they need to make concessions with the slave states to just in order to get everyone to to come to the table and to fight Isn't the war. Isn't it the, the, the same war. thing happened in World War II with the commies? Because, I mean, fucking we fought with the USSR, Soviet Russia. Yeah, that's exactly what. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. We weren't all loving up to the commies right. all of a sudden. Called it history because some historians argued that one of the essays exaggerated a claim about the role that the president... Wouldn't it be funny if he gave... Chris Rufo, this kind of a doubt when he said, Leo, because Chris Rufo got one thing and, you know, that <laughs> one thing was a little bit off. That's, a, that's such a great point. He, he, he pulls the one thing that Chris Rufo, you could say, was being a little bit hi hyperbolic about. And he's like, this proves that Chris Rufo is a liar about Yeah, everything. a fucking dirty liar. Yeah, lies about everything. But in right. this 1619 project, it's like this one thing that, yep. you know, all of the I I mean the none of the history people like I think all the history people have pretty much come out against her. The I wish I knew this stuff better. Do you know, well, do you let, know the sixteen? Play, yeah, I do project? I do know. Okay, this stuff, good. But let's let's let him play the claim and then we'll talk all right. about it. Preservation of slavery played in the motivations of colonists in the American Revolution. This sentence was later amended by adding two words, changing the statement from the claim that protecting the institution of slavery was one of the primary reasons the colonists decided to declare their independence to one of the primary reasons that some of the colonists decided to declare their independence. Because, you know, a lot of them did. The states, they wrote it down. Conservatives used this arguably slightly exaggerated claim to try and dis... Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Let's go back. I'm glad. Okay. So first of all, he said, oh, well, they were just against the 69th Project because one of the essays made this claim. Mm -hmm. First of all, this is the introductory essay written right. by Nicole Hannah-Jones. So this is like the first thing people read. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And secondly, if the New York Times or whomever edited it out and barely changed it, that's not proof that they were right. That's just proof that they were that their edit is bullshit. Okay. Yeah. Let me because I want to read the whole uh the whole lot. The whole I, paragraph. Here. All I know about 1619 project is from listening to um listening to Glenn Lowry and John McWhorter fucking rip on the 1619 project right. all the time about how, so, they, how untrue it is. Here's the, here's the paragraph. And this is, and by the way, this isn't the only thing that the historians have critiqued. This is just the most um, egregious, controversial, okay. most egregious thing that they've pointed out. The paragraph is, uh, and this is by Nicole Hannah Jones, conveniently left out of our founding mythology is the fact that one of the primary reasons the colonists decided to declare their independence from Britain was because they wanted to protect the institution of slavery. Now, that is a pretty wild claim, Sitch. That's a pretty wild claim. That's basically yep. saying they only wanted to start America because they were super hard for slavery. <laughs> yep. And it's, and it's And I read a whole article by a black historian... Okay. Oh my Who God. was contacted by the New York Times to fact check this claim, and she said it's all bullshit. <laughs> exactly. He That's said such a wild claim. He said 
while it's true that a couple years prior to 1776, uh, England outlawed slavery in their own country, they did, however, retain slavery in all their overseas colonies for another 50 or 60 years. Wow. So there was no threat there and was... no discussion or serious discussion from England that they wanted to outlaw slavery in the Americas. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's total bullshit, a total bullshit claim. Right. Um, anyway, it continues by saying, by 1776, well, Britain on. had grown what, what, deeply. What about... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Britain had grown deeply conflicted over its role in the barbaric institution that reshaped the Western Hemisphere. In London, there were growing calls to abolish the slave trade. This would have upended the economy of the colonies in both the North and the South. The wealth and prominence that allowed Jefferson, at just 33, and other founding fathers to believe they could successfully break off from one of the mightiest empires in the world came from the dizzying profits generated by chattel slavery. In other words, we may never have revolted against Britain if the founders had not understood that slavery empowered them to do so nor if they had not believed that independence was required in order to ensure that slavery would continue. It is not incidental that 10 of this nation's first 12 presidents were enslavers, and some might argue that this nation was founded not as a democracy, but as a slaveocracy. My God, this is fucking such nonsense. Okay. So that's a huge fucking claim. Giant. Made in the introductory article by the author, Nan, uh, Hannah Nicole Jones, that historians are like, yeah, that's not even remotely true. Right. That's not even remotely true. But, you know, it's just a, it's just a small, it's just a small thing, Adam. Just a tiny, it's just a little small thing. That's okay. not a tiny thing. So that's <laughs> gigantic. That's gigantic. <sighs> As if uh, slavery didn't. So, uh, they go into in my favorite book, obviously, why nations fail. They go into like how slavery held the South back. That's why the North became the economic powerhouse that it did and was able to win the Civil War. So, I mean, the whole idea that slavery enriched, mm -hmm. it, if anything, it held them back. It kept the South impoverished. Sure. Also, I'm curious about, I mean, I remember reading something long, long ago about taxation without representation and i mean was that is that part of the i mean it seemed more like so part of the mythology is that the whole taxation without representation is just nonsense and it's really about yeah we might lose our yep. slaves and we have to yep yeah that also the i mean yeah, he makes a pretty compelling argument that one that i've made in in debates that the whole idea it's like slavery is anti-capitalist slavery is big time anti-capitalist well i'm assuming he would say slavery is capitalism because he's the economy so uh yes I mean, yeah that's why they say definitely. oh you're you know you're a wage slave well they say uh slavery is capitalism because you're owning people and capitalism has to do with property rights yeah. mm -hmm. right uh, Charlie Gordon for $25. Thank you very much, Charlie. Said oh, said Sam Hoadley, Sam Hoadley Brill thinks you should have him and Cody on to set things straight since I quote, so much bad faith in the first few minutes I tuned into this, especially by usage. Well, I would that would be an interesting conversation. Have Sam and Cody on. Who's Sam? We when we talked to Sam with Aaron. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know if Cody would come on, but I, we could talk to Sam in the does future. Does Sam about know this. Cody? Maybe as he's implying that he does. So if he's Sam wants to come on when we read super chats, fucking have sure. at it. Sure. Well, I don't know how tired you are. I guess we are. We both talk. Well, we, we do have both. we do have thirty minutes, twenty minutes left to get through the video, and a, I'm sure a million super chats. And uh, Sitch and Adam both were talking, but I would before be, the stream began about how I would, neither one of us got any sleep. Yeah, that's true. Well, look, if we could, maybe you can ask him if he wants to talk about this on Thursday because maybe. I would be interested to talk to him about this. I don't see how any of this is defensible. Yeah, any of this character ad homing assassination plus his Frankensteinian stitching of CRT into this nonsense, okay? And then him playing a clip 
of Mark Lamont Hill saying what's not CRT and him saying it's fucking CRT. Yeah. Where's the defense of this, Sam? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Indefensible. 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 I, I think I'm going to talk to Mosler on Thursday, though. So we Okay, might not well, we can do it next Thursday, then. And then there's Kami Mark, who's... We have this guy in Comicsgate who's mm -hmm. called Kami Mark. And okay. uh, I'm going to... We don't want any... We don't want any Kami... It's not Kami Gate, okay? <laughs> right. So, but anyway... This, Sam doesn't like work for Cody, right? Is he associated with the show? That'd be hilarious. Sam is on on Twitter all the time, though, saying things that are just completely false. Yep. Misrepresenting Christopher Rufo. He's got a huge hate boner for Christopher Rufo, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's really given Christopher Rufo an honest hearing on anything Christopher Rufo said. <laughs> so. But he does do a good, a mean Jordan Peterson impersonation. And he's very likable in person. So That's I just, true. I know a bunch of our fans ended up following him on Twitter after he was on the show because they liked him. And then they hated him as soon as they saw everything he tweets. <laughs> so, well, let's continue here. We'll power it's through. Let's speed it up. Changing the statement from the claim that protecting the institution of slavery was one of the primary reasons the colonists decided to declare their independence to one of the primary reasons that some of the colonists... Yeah, I would like to see which of those colonists and what is the evidence that she's using. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to see one of the colonists that said well, that was she, the primary reason. She even admitted... Mm -hmm. Uh, that she was that it was a weak claim that she was being hyperbolic and that it wasn't so what? much she does so yeah, she, she doesn't have a letter or anything she doesn't have any evidence whatsoever that somebody because a lot of this stuff comes from like journal diary right. entries and stuff for people well I, I don't know I don't remember I don't I'm assuming she had something but she also admitted that a large part of the 1619 project and that specific claim was not so much to you know, mirror objective reality, but to promote, you know, conversation. Yeah, well, she did call call it mythology, which I'm, like, I don't understand. Historians coming out calling history mythology seems a little suspect to me already. <laughs> right? Yeah, def definitely, definitely. That's not, you don't want to hear historians talk like that, yeah. I mean, I don't see any of the Christians coming out and saying, oh, you know, Jesus, the Jesus mythology. It's like what the fuck? What? Yeah, but that's par for but that's par for the course for a lot of critical theorists is that there is no objective reality. It's all power games. So you know, mm -hmm. here's a little power game for you. Right. So mythology was just her tipping her hand. By the way, this is all a bunch of fucking pack of lies. Choke yep. on these lies. Some more lies. lies. I know exactly. It's perfect. Decided to declare their independence because. You know, a lot of them did. The states, they wrote it down. Conservatives used this arguably slightly exaggerated claim to try and... What, what was that graphic, the, dis, the Declaration of Reasons? Is, that on, is the claim on that? Uh, I wasn't looking. Here, I'll back I played some more. graphic or something? Yeah, this thing. The oh, Declaration this... of Causes of Seceding States. Is it on there? Is it on that? paper well this is why i don't understand this like this seems like another some more lies okay mm -hmm. this is the declaration of people seeding not from england but from the union is it really yes okay so that's a completely different thing so obvious no one's saying the civil obviously the civil war was about slavery like what yeah. the fuck's he talking about the civil like what uh when did the Civil War take place? Because it wasn't 1619. I know 1619 and then 1776 was the actual Declaration of Independence, right? Yeah, he he, he has the picture is the, the the Declaration of Immediate Causes, which caused in which cause which induce and justify the session of the South Carolina from the Federal Union, also known as the South Carolina Declaration of Secession, was a proclamation issued on December 24th, 1860. Yeah, so 1860 is after all of the founding fathers are dead, <laughs> fucking dead and buried. Right. 
could see but that see that i'm glad you caught this because i forgot that's how dishonest this is some more sam some more some more lies okay because listen we'll go back a second listen to what he says two one of the primary reasons that some of the colonists decided to declare their independence because you know a lot of them did the states they wrote it down okay yeah, that's so way he, fucking dishonest yeah he just said the states wrote down that they were ceding from England, and here's evidence they wrote it down by providing a document from the Civil War a hundred years later. Yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck? It's so dishonest. Yeah. This is really crazy. Dishonest. Yes. Insane. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm like, where's the what is the evidence that anyone was seceding because they were worried about like having to give up their slaves? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Fucking crazy. Conservatives use this arguably slightly exaggerated claim to try and discredit <laughs> the entire endeavor as revisionist history. Arguably slightly exaggerated. Uh, arguably slightly exaggerated. Ugh. Not like anything Chris Rufo's ever done, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Chris Rufo. <laughs> All of Chris Rufo's claims seem yes. crystal clear. The only problem I have with Chris Rufo is the fucking dark propaganda music. That's the <laughs> only problem I have. <laughs> but I mean, I could even argue with this Chris is what Rufo. they're teaching your kids at them in school. <laughs> I could, I could even, I might be convinced that it's bad enough that we do need the dark music. Mm -hmm. Like if Christopher Rufo came out and said, listen. They're literally teaching racism. We're going to lose a, a generation of of civil rights gains over this. We need the dark music. I'd be like, okay, you're right. We need the dark music. <laughs> Do the dark music already. <laughs> well, the dark music is interesting because for you and I, we hear the dark music and we go, oh, this is bullshit. I'm being propagandized. We're, yeah. yeah, we're primed to be like, oh, this is bullshit. So we we, we read it the exact opposite way. That Tr that's a great to. point. That is a great point. It has the opposite effect on us. But I yeah. I'm, I mean, both of us know that the dark music works. Like it's yes. probably 90% dark music, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You could just put dark music on a screen and the words critical race theory. Yes. It's like, oh, so scary history yet for some reason they seem to have no problem with this exchange you said our children are taught in school to hate our country where do you see that i just look at i look at school i watch i read look at the stuff now they want to change if 1492 columbus discovered america you know we grew up you grew up we all did that's what we learned now they want to make it the 1619 project where did that come from what does it represent? I don't even know. It's so slavery. I, that's what they're saying, but they don't even know. Look at the stuff. <laughs> As this clip proves, conservatives Wait. honestly believe that the teaching of history should not include any political agenda or propaganda. What What was, I don't even understand. What is the point of that clip? It doesn't prove besides anything. Making, besides making Trump look like the incompetent buffoon that he often was and talking about subjects isn't what he's fucking talking about i don't know what does that have to do with the subject matter i mean i don't know that trump is as incompetent in it seems like he knows more about the 1619 project than cody does but well that's a very low bar that's true that's I know. Low bar. but uh I, I i don't understand what that's what was the point of that clip he literally said as this clip proves <laughs> proves what i know that Trump was just like bullshit as a bullshitting politician. Yeah, I I believe that. Sure. I believe that. <laughs> even the so guy stupid. who even the counter, it's about slavery. Well, that is technically true. Yes, it is about yes, slavery. Right. Trying to purport a false narrative about slavery and the motivations for for seeking independence mm -hmm. closer to the truth. <laughs> right? Right. And should be taught accurately and truthfully. And so in direct response to the 1619 project, the Trump administration launched a commission to create the 1776 report, an effort undertaken by an 18 member panel that included famed historian, Charlie Kirk. In fact, as the- Okay, so remember when we clicked on this video 
called Why is Critical Race Theory? And we assumed yeah, this was going to be a video that had something to do with critical race theory. Mm -hmm. But instead, where are we? Now we're talking about the 1776 project. Mm -hmm. 1719, 1619 project. No, no, no. This is the counter 1619 project. This is the Republicans, Charlie Kirk evil 1776 project. Oh, okay. I didn't even okay. know that that was a thing. Yes. I'm so out of it. Holy so shit. It. Okay. So we're... Cody is so committed in his critical race theory video to not talk about critical race theory. He wants to talk about everything else in the planet and in the entire world be besides critical race theory. Yeah. <laughs> the Guardian at the time, most of the authors listed at the commission lacked credentials as historians and scholars noted the report was missing citations, bibliographies, and scholarly references. By the way, have you read this thing? You gotta read this thing. It's not that long and it's truly <laughs> pathetic. Get this, the 1776 report removed any mention of slavery from its section of our nation's founding and instead relegated the topic to its own subsection under a broader category called challenges to American principles, a section which also happened to include fascism oh and God. communism. And progressivism. <laughs> right. Right. Oh my and, God. And here's the thing. I have read this document. Oh my <laughs> God. No, Sitch. And first of all, it is it is very pathetic. It is um, bad it's shit crazy. But well, it's Charlie no, it's, Kirk. Come on. It's did Charlie this, Kirk write this in his dorm room or something? No, well here well okay, let me be fair. It's not it's not the thing that makes it pathetic. Most of it is not bad shit crazy. Some of it is a little crazy. Okay. Some of it's pretty crazy. And he's going to give some good examples of it being crazy. But the reason it's pathetic is that it's so shallow. It's like a, but it's, it's I, I don't, the point of it is, it's just like, oh, this is the principles that our school should be teaching. It's, it's entirely a virtue signaling document. Right. That was created. That's all really it is. And it is pathetic because it's just this very shallow virtue signaling document. But the part about slavery is actually pretty fair i found mm -hmm. oh really it's not yeah it's not like downplaying slavery at all and it's talking about slavery being obviously really bad and, and, a, and a problem and it's so weird because they do this thing where they say it didn't mention slavery in the founding of the country but it got its entire own subsection called challenges to american principles and if you look at the chapters you don't see that there's a chapter called the history or founding of a country. Mm -hmm. It just says introduction, meaning of the declaration, constitutions of principles, challenges to American principles, and slavery is right there. So that's a fake criticism of this document mm -hmm. completely. And he, where else would you put it? Where else would you? Obviously, slavery is a challenge to America's foundational Th pr that's, principles. This is fucking Martin Luther King's exact framing in the civil rights movement he was basically yes. saying that america has not lived up to their principles yes a, and a pro a promissory note that i have come to washington dc to cash i mean he's right. talking about american principles and even funnier in that same nicole hannah jones 1619 project essay where she has that bad claim her claim is the same thing that slavery is against the supposed American foundational. Oh principles. my God. She adopts MLK's framing. Okay. So there, he's just, so this document saying the same point and yet they're pointing to it to say, look how bad this is. MLK one, literally you have Charlie Kirk adopting <laughs> MLK's framing in a, in a fucking pamphlet. That's propaganda for the Republican party. Yep. Call, yep. call up your friends, Cody. You won. I know it's 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 so dishonest. It's so dishonest. Oh my god. If slavery were some sort of foreign threat and not an American institution practiced by many of our founders. And this is a total okay. They've all repeated this line. Cody didn't come up with this concept. They all mm. said the same thing. The 1776 thing acts like slavery is a foreign threat. It, doesn't do anything like that it's very clear and specific in the document about what it that is a threat an internal threat to its own american principles the 1776 yes document 
Yes. Yeah. It's a contradiction. It's a, you can't start the document, you know, all men are created equal. Uh, the the qualifier all kind of refers to everyone. Right. No, but I, I mean, the commission report, they don't, this claim that they, that they act like it's some sort of um, external threat being forced upon them is a total fucking lie. Mm -hmm. Complete lie. Completely. None of it's true. And it's annoying because Again, there are legitimate critiques to level at this document, mm -hmm. and but this is not one of them. Yeah. Well, you you spelled it out. It's just shallow. It's very shallow. Yeah, exactly. Well, they had to whip it out real quick. Founding fathers, and was a reason a lot of states changed countries. And in this short section on slavery, the report makes all sorts of excuses for it, like everyone was doing it, which is a weird argument. A lot of states changed countries. What does that mean? He's repeating the line that he talked about earlier about how states uh, broke off from England in order to protect slavery. Oh, really? That's what they he's. Be, I'm they assuming became that's what American. To. They did. They yeah. joined the revolution. Right, because remember he he said he said some of the states seceded from England mm -hmm. and he posted a document of them seceding from the Union 100 years later. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's referencing. Wow. To make when you're trying to claim that America is a uniquely exception. Did, did they all sign the... I mean, that's not how I remember being taught the Revolutionary War. It wasn't... Well, it's a, it's a lie. It didn't yeah. happen. It's just a fucking lie. And here, even here, it's a lie. He's saying, I'll, I'll, I'll read the, the section to you. Okay, you can tell me what you think. This is the section, the slavery section. The most common charge leveled against the founders and hence against our country itself is that we were hypocrites who didn't believe in their stated principles and therefore the country they built rests on a lie. This charge is untrue and has done enormous damage, especially in recent years, with a devastating effect on our civic unity and social fabric. Mm -hmm. Many Americans labor under the illusion that slavery was somehow at a uniquely American evil. It is essential to insist at the onset that the, at the outset that the institution be seen in a much broader perspective. It's very hard for people to be brought up in the comforts of modern America in a time in which the idea that all human beings have inevitable rights, inherent dignity, is almost taken for granted to imagine the cruelties and enormities that were endemic in the earlier times. Mm -hmm. But the unfortunate fact is that the institution of slavery has been more of the rule than the exception throughout human history. Mm -hmm. It was the Western world's Reputation of slavery only just beginning to build at the time of the American Revolution, which marketed a dramatic sea of change and moral sensibilities. The American founders were living on the cusp of this change in a manner they straddled the two worlds. George Washington owned slaves, but came to detest the practice and wished for a plan, a plan adoption for the abolition of slavery. By the end of his life, he freed all the states and his family estate. Yeah, he freed his so, slaves. Right. So you could say, yes, those paragraphs are very shallow and propagandistic mm. and they are trying to to some level uh dismiss blame from america for slavery sure mm. but it's but even cody can't frame it properly he's got to put this extreme hyperbolic claim like oh they're saying everyone did slavery so it was okay and they're saying no it's just the context of the world was a world where everyone had slavery and that's what you have to understand because Obviously, if you say America started the slave trade, which is what some of these people say, that's a very different connotation of our country versus, well, everyone was enslaving everyone and our country was just part of that larger process. Right. Well, I, I'm just, I guess I got to, I need to read a book on the American Revolution because I was under the impression that the American Revolution was all the states got their shit together, united and signed the Declaration of Independence together. It wasn't like, oh, we're just we're gonna stay with England and you fucking you're Americans now. That is what happened. I don't know why you're what you're talking about. Oh, I have it correct then? That is what happened, yeah. Okay. Well why is Cody framing it that states flip flopped back and forth between Because Cody's changed a liar. Countries? <laughs> okay, well I mean, he literally said that some of the states changed countries. I'm like, what? 
What the? F- well, what? What do you talk, Cody? I don't. Did I don't anyone he, teach you American history for heaven's sake? Because remember, he lied before that. I know. Stated. Yes. Yeah, he said he means that I the know. states changed countries from right. Being but is England, he reading the yes. wrong blog and the states? Because the, the states did change from like Confederacy to to the North. Right. I mean, there was some flip flopping going on during the Civil War, but not during the Revolutionary sure, War. Sure, but he's melding them all together to to perform this narrative. I mean, they were trying to win. You know, they're like, "We want North Carolina. North Carolina's with us. South Car-. like, there literally may be a North Carolina and a South Carolina because of the fucking split during the Civil right. War. Right. Right. I just, uh, yeah. Obviously. Cody doesn't is an unreliable protagonist is what we call him in the biz. So I don't believe anything he's saying, but the whole idea that uh, it just, it's weird way of framing it. Some States changed countries. They just called up uh, great Britain and said, listen, you know, we changed our minds. <laughs> we, we don't, well, I thought great Britain was against the slavery. So, well, I mean, what they changed. They're like, okay, we're with the revolution now. I don't get it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cody. Your thing is unclear. Nation. So that's what children say. Other well, excuses and also, included. I mean, I thought, mm-hmm. if I recall my history correctly, it's been a very long time. I know we're both that, going off of fucking <laughs> like high school, public school. That the southern states were more reluctant to revolt against England because. England was the primary or one of the primary purchasers of their tobacco. A lot of, well, to tobacco, but a lot of the agricultural goods that the South produced. Yeah. That's what I remember learning. Their about. fucking tea. That was what it was. The tea. Right. Right. But that was a different issue. But I'm just saying, so what I learned was the exact opposite was that the slave states were more reluctant to break off from England, not less reluctant. Uh, reluctant. Yeah. yeah. Which this Hannah Nicole, uh, Hannah Nicole Jones, is that it? Hannah Nicole Smith? Yes. Oh, or is Anna Nicole Smith? The Anna C- Nicole Smith. Hannah Nicole Jones. I like Anna Nicole Smith better, but I see. the Anna. I Ni- know. Do you know who Anna Nicole Smith is? Yes. Okay, good. Anyway, uh, yeah, the framing there is completely opposite of the actual, like the whole right. logic of how the situation is. It's so funny when you actually know the situation and like the logic, I guess it could be mythology as she puts it forward, but Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at least we're all working off the same mythology. Go ahead. Read a super chat. Your pal Ashley for $20 says, Hey Adam, I was thinking about what you said about our individual profiles and wanted to see if you think there's a connection between that and working for our flashy job titles. Hell yeah. Yeah. He goes into that in the book. The flashy job titles are all about profile building. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. True. Tri- Trippy Liquids for twenty dollars. Thank you, Trippy. Says this patch of pubic hair seems to have a human growing off of it. <laughs> oh my god, that's so. <sighs> that's funny. But, but 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 George Washington freed his slaves, even though in fact he made private efforts to prevent his slaves from claiming their freedom. It also argues that the compromise of slavery was necessary for a durable union, despite the fact that a quick study of American history shows Wait. that these com- also argues. I want to read this quote for a second. I don't know anything about this, but mm-hmm. it reads very funny. It says he, George Washington, made private efforts to prevent. Uh, his slaves from claiming their freedom and never spoke publicly about abolition until his death. Mm-hmm. George Washington never spoke publicly about abolition until he died. Yeah, I guess that's uh, <laughs> that's as you do it, right? What? As soon as you, as soon as you're, in, as soon as you're in the coffin, that's when you really start speaking up. Now that I'm the, dead. <laughs> or the, they opened up the coffin when Sir just watched the die and they brought out his corpse and he's like, now that I have passed beyond the realm of mortals, let me tell you about the horrors of slavery. Like, what, what does that sense mean? You know what it means. You're just I don't kidding. know. I literally don't know what they're saying. Come on. What does it mean? You tell me, Adam. Well, usually they they write something out that they don't want published until after they die. That's but that's how, not, that's you would never say... Done. I, is that what they mean? You would You're never. Not, you would never. Speaking publicly. You would never say speak publicly because <laughs> maybe declare publicly. 
He never I declared don't publicly. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Know. That is pretty weird wording. I love how they're just trying to paint. It's like if George Washington, just because George Washington freed all his slaves after he died, he's still a fucking dick. Yeah, exactly. What if, well, what actually, if George Washington had all his slaves murdered after he died? <laughs> and that that historian that was talking about the 69th Project being wrong said mm. something interesting that I had never known, which was that uh, they said that actually a lot of, you know, during the Revolutionary War, they were very hard up for soldiers mm -hmm. and they offered freedom to, to many slaves. slaves. That would fight? Really? And that while some people were not granted slavery, so this historian was saying that most of them were granted a uh, freedom really uh, from slavery for fighting the revolutionary war really so, so that's I how never, you... i didn't even know that i never because you before. did you had freed blacks in the united states and i always wondered about that like frederick right. Douglass is famously a freed black so yeah so they could get their freedom somehow or other yeah mm -hmm. interesting that is interesting that's a little bit of complexity that they could teach that doesn't make america seem like complete a-holes right right yeah. that the compromise of slavery was necessary for a durable union, despite the fact that a quick study of American history shows that these compromises were, in fact, far from durable. Just a, a real quick history lesson for you. This is so dumb. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. The comp they're saying the compromises mm -hmm. around slavery originally were necessary to win the Revolutionary War. Right, yeah. Okay. But he's like, and but it wasn't durable because the Civil War came along, dumb, dumb. Yeah, like... Yeah, but if, who cares? They were wrong. <laughs> well, but if anything, that proves that our country wasn't founded on white, white supremacy racism because it shows that from oh, totally, its foundation, totally. from its core, there was this inherent problem of slavery that was never addressed which was compromised to fight the Revolutionary War. And it just continued to, to go fester. on yeah. and fester until we literally had a civil war that divided the country. The people fought and died over this fucking issue. Right. Yeah. It wasn't durable. <sighs> but Not it, like it that, dis we're wrong. Yeah, but it disproves this whole point that the country was founded on white supremacy and it's in, in the system. Because if, if America was founded on white supremacy... Why did they ever fight to end slavery? Then the Civil War. Why did they care? Yeah. Yeah. Why would this? Why would the North care? Yeah. People care. America, a pretty bad. Uh, what do you call? Uh, like, like a civil war, I guess, would be the term. It was kind of a big deal at the time. About one in every ten men in this country died from this war. And I don't want to say anything too controversial here. Please don't cancel me. But the civil war was caused by the issue of slavery, specifically people liking it. So I think it's fair to say that the civil war. Do, do you think Aunt Cody would have been a member of the? underground railroad something tells me it wouldn't be no no all he's doing is like it's so funny that they call themselves anti-establishment because all i see him doing is like establishment fucking sucking up to yep yep this is the establishment line the the true underground railroad they were the fucking rebels they were the ones that put their lives on the line to fucking deal with this issue mm -hmm. yeah for moral reasons yeah it's easy for Cody to come along and virtue signal about all this shit after it's fucking politically feasible. And like he gains everything from bitching about it, but suffers no potential risks. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Was a somewhat important thing that happened in terms of our national narrative or whatever. Yet the 1776 project hardly mentions it. The only times it's brought up at all is as a lead-in to how progressivism created a shadow government intent on taking away your rights and how identity politics is the same as the beliefs of racist slaveholder John C. Calhoun. Incidentally, progressivism and a category that conflates racism and identity politics called 
racism and identity politics are also listed as challenges to American principles alongside slavery, fascism, and communism. Progressivism, fascism, and slavery. Yep. Yeah. No, notice how he left communism out of that second run through. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, what? Communism is a challenge to American principles. What? He's like, what? <laughs> Cody, you left one out. You said them all once, and then you said them all a second time, except for one little one that you missed. That communism one. <laughs> Say, well, it's funny because I don't like the whole progressivism that they're talking about is not the progressism progressivism that we think of of today they're talking about historical like in the the things of the early 1900s or something oh really and yeah and some and when i the, the characterization by calling it like the shadow government that's all bullshit it's all bullshit cuz there were a lot of good aspects of the early progressivism cuz a lot of it was about trust busting and you know destroying the monopoly teddy roosevelt right and a lot of it was you know like the enactment of the original child labor laws and things like that were under the quote-unquote progressive label but there were some bad things under the progressive label mm -hmm. too yeah like prohibition yeah and wasn't the one that always wasn't eugenics one of the ones? and i was gonna say the one that always gets pointed to is eugenics yes eugenics yeah yes. Come on, we're trying to fix humans here. Right. But that's always the truth generally when you look at history, is that whenever you look at a group or a person, there's generally a mix of good and bad ideas. It's not like one or the other. Yeah. So Those are the challenges. Right. The challenges to American principles. Yeah. But despite these partisan opinions and obvious activist propaganda, the 1776 report also argues that states and school districts should reject any curriculum that promotes one-sided partisan opinions, activist propaganda, or factional ideologies that demean America's heritage, dishonor our heroes, or deny our principles. Anytime teachers or administrators promote political agendas in the classroom, they abuse their platform and dishonor every family who trusts them with their children's education and moral development. These conservatives are so conservative about propaganda, so concerned that the report also argues that educators must convey a sense of enlightened patriotism that equips each generation with a knowledge of America's founding principles, a deep reverence for their liberties, and a profound love of their country. Totally normal freedom stuff. Hey, remember that viral story about the girl from North Korea? So, I like that he's like, oh, all this one-sided political talk is bad, but mm. all our one-sided political racism talk, that's not political at all. That's just facts. Yeah, it's completely bad. What college in America? I mean, I like, I wow, just... wokeness is worse than living in... That's another conversation that just is never really had. I mean, we do mm -hmm. need a shared narrative. That's the thing. Right. You need, you got to have a shared narrative. I, like... This is a perfect opportunity to talk about that kind of stuff, but it's never talked about in any of these. It's like, oh, conservatives just, you know. I I think conservatives are, I mean, that, that spiel that he read didn't seem unaware of the complex history that we're dealing with. Like It didn't come out and say we have to ignore things or make mm -hmm. things up or, I don't know. Seemed, right. seemed reasonable to me. Sure, yeah. And, and it's important to say the 1776 project, so what Chad said, is not like that's not the catch all conservative opinion. Obviously, no, totally. Is, it's, it's like a, one yeah. Charlie Kirk came up with it or whatever. Or yeah. he was just part of it. There's a bunch of people that are involved. But it's it's a it's a virtue signaling propaganda piece. Right. It's not in you the know. Republican platform or anything right. like that. Right. Yeah. Why would uh, it Kulavar be? for twenty dollars. Thank you, Kulavar says, Sitch has a good point, Adam. If you have to go through your bar or bot mitzvah, mm. even though you spelled the, both of those things wrong, I recommend <laughs> renting a du DeWalt DCN, DCN680. I don't know what that is. Is that a gun or something? Mm -hmm. or, a, or a hammer of some kind? Oh my and God. a ladder, just in case you need to make adjustments. Oh Remember, kids, God. measure twice, nail once. Oh, my God. 
Oh my god, it's a, it's a nail gun. You're okay. not gonna. There you go. You're not gonna nail our savior. Uh, secret. Oh my god, it's the secret Jewish council, everybody. What? <laughs> the secret Jewish council is here. Nobody, nobody tell anybody. No they're, one tells Sam. They're checking the in Jewish on you. Are, okay. The secret secret Jewish council for twenty dollars says Sitch. It's your turn to bring the matzo ball soup this Thursday, but this time do not put sriracha sauce in the middle of them. It's not a fun surprise. Rabbi Gimli didn't leave the toilet for four days. Oh my God. There you go. I have never tasted matzo ball soup. I'm, am there I allowed go. to as Wait. a as a Gentile? Matzo ball soup is delicious. Wow. You need to get on that, Adam. Well, I'd love to try that. it. It sounds delicious. I'm not a big it's soup fan, but. Oh, what? What's a, what do matzo balls taste you like? You don't you wait, you don't like soup? Well, I'm not against soup, but I'm just not a huge soup fan. I fucking love soup. Soup oh, is like really? the best thing ever made. Really? You're a big yes. soup fan? I love soup. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Oh my god. Doesn't like Shrek, doesn't like musicals, doesn't like soup. Uh oh, Jesus. John Smith is triggered. God. <laughs> god. Uh, uh, how, what, how I am going to try it. I'm going to put that on my list of things to try this week. Matzo ball soup. Hey, I don't know how to describe I will, it. I will report back. Does it? It's like does it have gumballs in it? That's what I want it. That's really no, what, what I want to know. Gumballs like candy? Yeah. No. What? Bubble like bubble gum? No. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no bubble gum flavor in matzo ball soup. Adam. Bubble gum soup. No, I love no. It. Oh my god. Matzo ball soup. Oh my god. Got you one too on. many O's there, John. Dude, there's got to be like a million fucking Jewish delis where you live. Come on, get on that. What are you? What are you saying? You got to go into one of the Jewish say? delis and get some matzo ball soup. That's what I'm saying. I mean, there probably is a bunch of Jewish delis around me, but I don't know. It <laughs> seems racist that you're implying that. Well, I'm, no, I'm where else are you gonna buy where Jewish else? Delis. Well, that's where you find. I don't live soup. in Florida, for okay. Sakes. I thought Cal, I thought you guys were very liberal out there. I'm so yeah. sorry. I didn't realize you were anti-Semitic. Oh I'm my so god! I'm so sorry. Jewish is now a euphemism for liberal. No, that's not what I meant. I guess you fucking bigot. I know. North Korea. One of the things she cites is that in North Korea they hate America, and in America. They also hate America. And I feel like there's maybe a disconnect there about how we're free to do that and allegedly aren't fed nationalist propaganda about how we're a perfect nation and all others are bad and inferior. Just something to consider. But God, these people are so mind-numbingly stupid. It's like, yeah. okay, there can be a middle ground between the blind patriotism of jingoism where you're like, my country can do no wrong and we are... The shining city on a hilltop forever into all future. Everyone else is our scum. Right. Like, right. okay. There's the difference we we can get somewhere between that and America is the evil empire that's destroying the world. There's got to be yeah. some kind of middle ground that we can say America is a great country that has accomplished great things, that has great ideas and great principles, and you know obviously has many flaws and a flawed world controlled by flawed humans. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Come on, let's be adults here, Kurt. Let's not be children. If you're, I know it's hard. If you're literally lying, though, to to propagate the narrative that America is evil, you've crossed the line. Yes, like you've lost. Right. You, you've you've right. lost your way. You've right. lost your way. And and Cody's literally lying to propagate that narrative. Mm -hmm. That's fucking True. evil. True. It's totally evil. Right, and. It, the reason they're doing it is because they want to demolish and deconstruct America, uh, liberalism, America. Yeah. And reconstruct it as socialism. Yeah. I can't believe this commie makes more on Patreon than we do. <laughs> it's fucking disgusting. But why lying about our history considered more patriotic than owning up to our mistakes? You tell us, Cody. Yeah. Tell us. I'm all ears now. <laughs> Oh my God. This whole video has been some more lies. Don't ask me to love the fact that America enslaved black people for nearly 250 years. Don't ask me. Nobody loves that fact. I know. What the know. fuck? This, the, the founding fathers didn't love that fact.
to love the fact that America committed genocide against the native inhabitants of this land. Don't ask me to be an enabler of America's addiction to committing atrocities. Yes, I love what America could be, a borderless beacon of hope that rids the world of nationalism by evolving beyond- Did he just say borderless? Oh wait, let him go. On the need for nations, but maybe America- So I don't know if he's joking, but I assume there's some truth there. He wants America to be a borderless country that unites the world in a one world government. My God, fucking globalist shill here. Uh, which how can america oh my God. like this is, so is that the ultimate colonialist position i mean if america yes. is going to be you're basically saying the entire world has to be america i thought we were past the colonialist thing how is that well, not cultural appropriation well no because somehow like they have this delusion that somehow we're gonna have a magical one world government but everyone's gonna have their own multiculturalism you know, they're all going to be unique and completely different from each other, but they're all going to have the magic borderless country. Yeah, this sounds yep. like colonialism. I, you weren't you, don't you guys normally shit on colonialism? <laughs> right, right. They do. Like, they what do. the fuck? And you know, it, this is such a, oh my God, it's just so, it's so vapid. It's so vapid. You know what's going to necessitate if there's going to be a magic one of government? What's that? other planets containing humans <laughs> that's the only time we're gonna have a magic one world government oh really we have to start dealing with mars and other planets that have humans on them because mm -hmm. that's how we always we always define ourselves by our opponents mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we're not gonna define ourselves as a magical unified earth unless we have some opponent that's not of earth that we're defining but ourselves mars against wouldn't be our opponents they'd be like our the martian colony colonialism's first, coming back in style uh-oh, did I lose you, Sitch? Sitch! No! Can you hear me? You okay. can't hear me? I can't hear you now. No. Internet I'll dropped say, out for a sec. Yeah. They were they're part of the they're part of the Earth colony at first. But you know who else said that? Mm -hmm. The British. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh. We totally fuck them. Yes. If they if those if those dirty fucking Martians try <laughs> any of that shit. There Those are dirty colonies. Martians. <laughs> there They're are gonna be colonies. like, wait a minute. How dare you tax our air that you're sending here? This is taxation of that representation. There's yep, this it's gonna there's, happen. There's this documentary I keep wanting to go back and watch about the moon, about colonizing the moon. Have you ever seen mm -hmm. that documentary? No. God, it's so great because they interview so many freaks and weirdos <laughs> that are want to go live on the moon and this one guy put like does this talk where he's basically saying that all the new adventures like all the new colonizations were all done by freaks and weirdos because they're sure. the only ones that have nothing to lose they're ready to right. leave everything behind yeah and it definitely. just it made me think my god he's right <laughs> <laughs> my god he's of course totally right think think of like okay you're living well it depends because there there were some people that like especially back the, back in those days you're living in some shitty city somewhere filled with like the plague or something yeah like, exactly i'm right? going to america yeah it's exactly, gotta be better exactly. than this shit yeah hole. yeah right so it's a little bit different but uh, yeah america needs some tough love maybe america needs an intervention and while the incoming Biden administration removed the 1776 project from its website and disbanded the effort, this has not stopped local and state governments from following through on the 1776 report's stated goals with regards to education. In a matter of months, Republican lawmakers in nearly half of the states have proposed legislation to limit the teaching of concepts such as racial equity and white privilege. Florida has banned the teaching of the... Which has nothing to do with the 1776 part. I hate every, they, everything. It's like, we have to find a tie to Trump. It all has to come back to Trump. I know, the 1776 project, Charlie Kirk, Train Points USA. Like, yeah. Just argue shit on its merits. If you look at almost all the laws that I've seen that are the anti-CRT laws, you can't actually disagree with anything in the state of law. Because it's, it's very, as I said, it's very just... You can't teach people that races are inherently better than others. You can't blame people because they share race with someone who did something bad. Pretty simple. You can't argue against that. Yeah, pretty simple. 
The theory that racism is not merely the product of prejudice, but that racism is embedded in American society and its legal systems in order to uphold the supremacy of white persons. Yeah, that shouldn't be taught in schools. That's fucking good. <laughs> it's not fucking true. Why, like, why the fuck should communist cultural Marxist propaganda be taught in public schools? Yeah, it shouldn't be. What, what, what the fuck is this? The immediate question people are going to have is, well, that's lame. We have to get that out of there. How do we do that? Yeah. But and then they crazy. start digging and they're like, well, we can't find it. What, what, what the fuck are they talking about? Like, but it's crazy to me that listen, this is what he's saying to his audience. The theory that racism is not merely the product of prejudice, but that racism is embedded in American society and its legal system in order to uphold the supremacy of white persons. Yeah, okay? that's, that's not fucking, the past. That's crazy. That's right now. Right. That's happening. That's right now. Of course, that shouldn't be taught in school. That's insane. Yeah. But they believe and it. That's their ideology. I know, but that's fine. This could be your crazy ideology, but you mm. need facts really? and evidence okay for something to be taught in school right i don't know if they know this, this. is this is on par with like god created the world in seven yeah. days we should teach that right in school. that's what i was about to say this is just a religious forever saying we should be teaching that god created the world in seven days and that evolution is a lie we should be putting that back at school creationism back in school it's a fact <laughs> I know. we don't have to argue it it's a fact I've got a book that says so. So it's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Senator Josh Hawley has introduced the Love America Act to combat critical race theory and teach kids to love America because he believes it is a lie to teach students that America is systematically racist. A teacher in Tennessee was fired or canceled, if you will. It so, is a lie. So everyone must be agreeing. His entire audience must totally be agreeing with this. They've all been. Of course. They've all been brainwashed yes. this. Yeah. They've all been brainwashed about this. Yes. The whole s systemic racism is such a fucking stupid term. Mm -hmm. Such a stupid. Yes. All it means is that there's racial disparity in our country. Okay. No mm -hmm. one disagrees with that. Sure. We disagree with the seated presupposition that you guys Ma and Bailey around that you hide against that there's some intention there. Okay. You keep arguing that you're not saying that, but no, that's not true. You are arguing that there's some intention within there to mm -hmm. keep America as this white supremacy society. That's what CRT is arguing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you taught this, the first thing, like I said, people would want to fix it, but right. they give no, no way to fix it. I mean, even uh, Kennedy's like just to have a American office that deals with this it isn't really a solution. Right. Bill for teaching say about white privilege written by Tanahasi Coates. A new law in Texas removes the requirement to teach the history of white supremacy, including slavery, the Ku Klux Klan, and ways in which the white supremacist hate group was morally wrong. So I finally looked into. I actually. Looked yeah, into I looked this. into this one too. I actually. Okay. <laughs> well, you you go first. You tell me what you found. No, you go ahead. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I always, I'm always the one looking into it. I want to hear, I want to hear the Adam. The, the Texas uh, Senate passed a bill to remove and require to teach uh, Ku Klux Klan is morally wrong. So they put together, I'm going to totally murder this. Okay. <laughs> I watched a video on it. Uh, one of the, uh -huh. one of our, obviously one of our fans in the chat uh, suggested a video and I actually watched the video. So they basically put together a bill and then there was some wrangling over the bill and some parts were removed and it wasn't actually uh, put into law yet. So am I close? Mm -hmm. Dig I'm in. I'm reading. I'm not actually listening. But I'm... Okay. Um, okay. So what, what happened was uh, there was some bill that had very general, you know, they pass these very general education standards. Yes, yeah. Uh, regularly. And there's partisan wrangling that goes back and forth sure. as they're passing them. Yeah, and part yeah. of that partisan wrangling was that uh, the Democrats, unfortunately, in Texas, they inserted mm -hmm. into the bill when it was in the House or something, like a They dozen have to teach the history of the so, Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, like the, they, they, the they, they put into like, 
these very general criteria, all these specific yes. things. Yeah. And one and of them so, was they have to teach the history of the Ku Klux Klan. Right. And it says you have to teach that the Ku Klux Klan is morally wrong or whatever. Okay. Right. And all this other stuff. And when it went back to the Senate, they removed like 90% of the specifics. And their mm -hmm. argument was, well, these are just general guidelines. You've added like a million specific things that you want, you know, everyone to teach, mm -hmm. you know, that this not, and they said something like, there is more specific guidelines within the Texas school boards that deals with all these issues. This, this is not already, the correct place. Yes. Yeah, it deals with this already. It's not the correct place to put this into the legislation. Right. That's at least their argument. Now, I don't know if that's a fair argument because I've never seen anyone actually address the arguments to counter it. They all just give the straw man version where they say, ah, Texas doesn't want to teach it to gay, gay, gay. It's morally wrong. But I, I'm under the impression that the back and forth was just like the Texas Senate is like, come on, this is just like a virtue signaling bill that we're putting out. This isn't supposed to be like actual law or anything. And the Democrats are like, let's sneak this in. This will be fuck. This will totally get them. Watch. <laughs> Well, no, the original bill didn't seem like it was virtue signaling. It seemed like it was pretty dry. Oh, okay. Like it was just, you know, general uh, standards of education mm -hmm. for these classes. Because when you read what they when you read what they left in, that's that's basically all it's left there. It's these very general statements, general uh, subject matter. But I'm not. I'm under the impression that the law has not even been passed. You know, it hasn't been passed. Yeah, so this They're is still like, going back and forth. Right, yeah. exactly. So Texas Senate passes bill that removes. That's not true. Texas Senate passes well, the Senate bill that passed removes. It. Requires the Senate passed. Oh, okay, the bill. gotcha. I gotcha. Right. So the, there's and the but the governor hasn't signed it or anything, so it's not actually made into law yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like in Congress. Sometimes they say like. Congress passes a bill or the Senate passes a bill. Well, if it doesn't pass both houses and get signed by the president, it's not like who gives a fuck? Why are we even talking about this? Right. Yeah. We're talking about it so we can say that Texas <laughs> wants to, doesn't want anyone to know about the Ku Klux Klan. They're trying to hide the evidence. Mm -hmm. Ku Klux Klan never happened. Oh my God. Ah! Uh, Joe Schmo for $20. Thank you, Joe. Says shout out to Moonbet Freeman, a former slave who sued for his freedom for her freedom in 1781 and actually achieved the American dream. She used the arguments of the American Revolution and the Massachusetts Constitution really? and even got reparations. Wow, Holy that's very shit. surprising. Very surprising. But awesome. This this um yeah, I watched a whole video on this, but it's it was um like it's a lot of needless detail, I think. Because it's really, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. This is all just a fucking leftist lie right here. Uh, says she, the court found that slavery was inconsistent with the 1780 Massachusetts state constitution. Oh, interesting. Interesting. The, the ruling was considered to have ended slavery in Massachusetts. Wow. That's good. This happened before before the Civil this, War? Yeah, this was 1780. I'm reading. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The court was, the case was 1781 was the case. Okay. Very cool. I'm rereading uh, that book on the, on the Bank War, which actually I'm realizing now took place before the Civil War. The Central Bank took place before the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeedy. Uh, political jargon for $20 says, not sure if you guys have talked about this, but the story about the teacher in Atlanta was crazy. It's hard convincing black people in my family that CRT is actually just fashionable racism, but that story got them thinking. Yeah, we talked about that in the beginning. The, uh, the, the, there has to be black and white classes that are separate from each other. Yeah. True. The law also makes other changes that would drop the teaching of some of the most prominent civil rights leaders in our history, which actually is something worth loving. Among the figures whose works would be dropped, Susan B. Anthony, Cesar Chavez, and Martin Luther King Jr., whose I Have a Dream speech and Letter from a Birmingham Jail would no longer make the curriculum cut. They also phrase this, and Cody phrases this dishonestly, 
because they're phrasing it like these things were part of the curriculum and now are being removed. Right. When they're Which just not... part of this fucking bill that they're arguing over, wrangling over, just trying to create right. headlines. Exactly. They inserted all this stuff. to it's fucking this... nonsense. That's exactly. I wouldn't be shocked if that was the intention. We're going to insert all this stuff that doesn't necessarily belong in this very broad, generic bill. Yeah. So that when they cut it, we can say, look at what the Senate and Republicans in Texas are cutting. Look at they're so racist. Yeah. Yes. We're going to basically make a bunch of lying headlines to right. stoke, what do they call it? A moral what? A, it, has, <laughs> moral it has to do with... Moral <laughs> panic? Is that, is, that yeah. What, yeah, is that what they're calling it? That's exactly what they're doing. Evil. And in a way, if you truly do oppose critical race theory, cutting out Martin Luther King Jr. makes a lot of sense. Because despite the claims of historian Donald John President that critical race theory is a Marxist doctrine that rejects the vision of Martin Luther King Jr. True. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. A line that he definitely wrote and definitely understands. In reality, the work of Martin Luther King was actually one of the major influences for the development of critical race theory in the first place. And <laughs> is he going to go down the Martin Luther King is a Marxist? Oh, he he says it. Flat oh, out my says God. It. Yes. The video he I watched is Texas, uh, Texas bans MLK by undercover uh, America of her under a cover. I've never watched mm. his channel before. So, okay. He's obviously very popular. There's a great article by someone who was Martin Luther King's friend mm -hmm. who marched with him and was like very active in the civil rights movement. And he talks about how CRT is the antithesis of every single thing Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> stood for. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and oh. it's all, and, and it's not, and it's funny because when you read his words, you know that he knows what he's talking about because he's specific. He doesn't speak in these bullshit vague generalities. He says, he says, Martin Luther King Jr. was all about liberal principles of human beings not judging each other by the content of their skin and uniting and getting rid of the importance of skin color. And yeah. CRT is all about separating people by their skin color and identifying with it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But no. It's, Martin Luther it's, King wanted the American dream. He wanted right. everyone to have access to it. Just a Quick reminder, won't keep you long. It's so funny because the person, and we talked about this on stream before, there's a great video, I'm blanking the guy's channel name, um, who talked about how the civil rights movement was broken up into the liberal side and the radical side. Mm -hmm. and, the ra and the liberal side was like Martin Luther King Jr. and people who wanted to change the system using the system. And the radical side were basically the black nationalists yeah. and the communists who wanted to revolt. And... Just to, to sort of cement this, the guy who came up with the, the term systemic racism is a guy named Stokely Carmichael, who was a black radicalist oh, wow. and a black nationalist who was such a black nationalist that he left America to live in Africa because he wanted to be with his, quote, people. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that also came up with the phrase black power, mm -hmm. a phrase at which he, he was in a speaking event with Martin Luther King Jr., and he did the black, he did his phrase in the Black Power salute without telling Martin Luther King Jr. that he was going to do that. And Martin Luther King Jr. was enraged. With really? Him that he did that because wow. he felt, because he was, he, he knew used, that he there was this. Him. Yeah. Because he knew that there was this ideological distinction between him and the black nationalists. And he didn't want that brand necessar necessarily associated with him. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. MLK was a radical leftist who. Oh my God! <laughs> there you go. There you go. MLK oh was a radical God. leftist. They're totally. They don't care anything about the truth. They don't care anything about the truth. Let me let me go bring out. You know, I, I'm not going to do it again. We did it in like previous streams where I had like the list of quotations where Martin Luther King Jr. talks about how terrible social or communism is. I might have book bookmark some of them on Twitter. <laughs> Cause I I was sharing the I was sharing the ones on Twitter too. Danimal had yeah. sent us that one that one paper that he or no the uh, the sermons the right. book of the sermons that he did where he very explicitly says I'm not with the communists. 
He, he had an entire sermon that was literally just about on communism. Yes. <laughs> telling black people not to become com not to be seduced by communism. He had an entire sermon that's on that yeah. one topic. <laughs> Oh, I do have it. We can bring it but, up uh, later. Martin Luther King you was know. anti-communist in spite yeah. of the recent push to rewrite his history. Right. In truth, he was concerned that racial injustice could lead America to the horrors of communism. Right. Uh, here's an excerpt from his sermon where he clearly condemns the communist philosophy. Yeah. Yep. How should cool. a Christian view communism is the name of the sermon. Yep. Yeah, obviously. His whole thing was was he was religious it was about christianity and communism is anti-religion yeah that was his entire that's like his entire thing but see okay so cody says martin luther king is a radical leftist what and these are his examples okay of being a radical leftist being against the war in vietnam mm -hmm. opposed us and them criticized capitalism he criticized capitalism mm -hmm. And what he means by that is that Martin Luther King criticized wealth inequality and income inequality. Yeah. Okay. Which we do all called the time. Called for a federal. He called for a jobs guarantee program. Right. Jobs guarantee and made the case for reparations. And he made the case for reparations. There you go, guys. Mm -hmm. Radical leftists right mm -hmm. there. Nothing about the abolishment of private property or communism, but you know. Yeah. Apparently, the bar for being a radical leftist is very low when it comes to historical figures you want to shoehorn into your movement. Yeah. How is jobs guarantee a... How is that communism? I don't know. Yeah. It's no wonder the FBI saw him as a communist threat. And even... Oh, and this is, this is my favorite. This is... Mm. I love this. Oh, my God. So... The, the leftists who hate the FBI and the CIA, okay, and they always say you can't trust anything the FBI, the FBI, the CIA says or does. Mm -hmm. But then when the FBI was shown to have been creating a PSYOP campaign to paint Martin Luther King Jr. as a communist right. in order to hurt his public opinion, suddenly they believe the FBI <laughs> and suddenly the FBI is telling the truth. It's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> The FBI basically launches a smear campaign because at the time being a communist was as bad as being a pedophile. Right. <laughs> but now, because they want to actually label them as communists, they're like, oh, the FBI was right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, we're living in, well, this is clown world. This is, it is clown totally world. clown world. This is peak clown world. Even spied on, blackmailed him, and urged him to commit suicide. In fact, recent yeah, very trustworthy source. Yeah, right totally. There. That's what you want. The people are released trying FBI to FBI The people are trying to convince you to commit suicide. They're the ones you should trust. Yes, definitely. It's revealed that the FBI believed that King is a wholehearted Marxist who has studied it, Marxism, believes in it, and agrees with it. And while this may or may not be true, why should it matter? I still contend. Such a fucking oh my god! Does that I mean know. he knows that it's not true and he's just? I don't know. Why did you bring it up if it doesn't yeah. matter? You fucking piece of shit! What I'm about to tell you and what I've said for the last twenty seconds may or may not be true, but why does it matter? Because I brought it up for no reason. <laughs> Well, he's saying, oh why does it matter? He's saying, why should it matter? Because being a there's nothing wrong with being a communist. That's his argument. He's a wholehearted Marxist who has studied it, Marxism, believes in it, and agrees with it. And while this may or may not be true, why should it matter? I still contend that the most frightening thing about Karl Marx was actually his hair, which I gotta say, it's it's out of it's out of control, man. So you were right, Adam. You were totally right. Yeah. Why does it matter? Because there's nothing scary about Marxism. Marxism is your friend. Oh, my God. I mean, it's only a coincidence that all these Marxists happen to be tying capitalism into racism, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's just a coinky dink. It's not like they have some ulterior motive here, some sort of cultural Marxian motive here to try to get people to be communist by any means necessary. But so yeah. they're going to tie in 
all issues into being capitalism, even if it makes sense or not to do so. It's not like they're trying to take over K through 12 public schools. I mean, right. how fucking not, scary you know. is this? Where's McCarthy now? What's <laughs> going on? This is fucking. We actually needed him. He vanished. I know. What the hell? And, but more importantly, this red baiting to make movements for racial equality seem. So he just said there's nothing wrong with Marxism, but now he turns around and calls it red baiting in the same breath. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is, what I don't is, know if this is gaslighting. Is this is peak insanity. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like baiting uh, Republicans, red baiting. Oh, okay. Because people really? are Marxists. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's he, he's saying it's red baiting to say that, oh, they're like they're trying to do this in Marxist indoctrination in school. And he's like, no, they're not. But if they were, why is that bad? Hmm? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, oh, OK, I'm going to trust. Why would I trust? Are you the guy? for red baiting or not for red baiting? <laughs> like, well, but why would I trust the guy who's pro Marxism? And wants it to be taught in the school when he mm -hmm. claims the things being taught in school are not Marxism. Yeah. That's the most unreliable source you can find. Cody hates America. He does. Look at that face. Yeah. It's pretty obvious. That's the face of someone that hates America. That's the face of American hating. Uh, one Abby Ab Abioden for $25. Thank you. Says, I'm a black woman who was adopted into a white family and who, who homeschooled. My parents and my parents didn't sugarcoat anything when it came to the slave trade, but they also taught me how much we as a country have improved what matters is now. True. Yeah, you have to True. take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of you. You have to give people a hope. winning mindset. Hope, yeah, okay. hope. Right, and yeah. hope, yeah. And just saying that, oh, you live in a racist country that's systemically racist against you and can never be changed, which was literally... Derek Bell's position mm -hmm. was that there would never be a solution to racism, <laughs> that we would always live in a racist country and that we should only fight on in order to piss off white people. Oh my God. What? And you're saying this is what, this is the guy we should be holding up and following this crazy person. Yeah. No. no. That's basically the, we voted for Trump because he triggers the libs philosophy. That's completely what it is. Yes. Yeah so bad scary is as american as saying something's as american as apple pie a dessert invented in england here's a photo taken at a protest against school integration in little rock arkansas in 1959 of a little white boy holding a sign that reads race mixing <laughs> is communism see because people mm -hmm. back in the 50s okay mm -hmm. who were racist used the boogie the specter of the boogeyman of communism mm -hmm. to attack things that they didn't like. Therefore, if you say anything's communist now, you must you be the racist. same yeah. as that person 50, 60, 70 years ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not like they're using the boogeyman inspector of racism to call everything racist, but you know, that doesn't count. Well, we've been pretty clear here that we believe communism is the abolition of private property. So, that sign right. that that kid is holding is not even correct. <laughs> like, no, no what, obviously, yeah. What the insane. fuck? Right, right. Yeah. But this is the problem. This is what I was talking about when I said the Republicans have done a disservice. Yeah, I, I by agree. By crying wolf we give on them... the communism that no one on the left here or even the moderate center hears them anymore people when they cry the, about actual communism. People in the comment section just are way against us on this i know way way against this us. picture yeah. is a good example it of is exactly yeah dog about. shitting on my lawn our communism right. <laughs> it's like come on well i don't think these people understand the history that the republicans or not the republicans but the right in america has, has often used. called everything they don't like communism for 60 years my i remember you know not understanding what communism is because so many this is communism that is communism were being right. thrown out that seem like contradictory things it's like what i don't what i don't get it the only sure. reason one of the reasons i read marx was to figure out what this fucking communism thing was
that everyone Remember, was talking about, but no one was defining the same way. Bill Crystal. Remember Bill Crystal? Oh, yeah, totally. That guy compares hates Compares Obamacare to communism. Oh, yes. Yeah. In a totally. debate with Rep Representative Keith Ellison. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. There's always, you could type this, there's always articles where they're saying, is Obamacare socialism? Bill O'Reilly, Obamacare and socialism. Mm -hmm. This was in 2014. Okay. You yeah. got, it, you can't deny that this was going, first of all, calling Obamacare socialism is like batshit crazy. Yeah, ridiculous. Okay? Yes. Forcing you to buy medical insurance from a private company is not, <laughs> yeah, it's not communism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a free market. They tried. Yes. I, I can't. I don't remember if it's Iceland or or Denmark or what country it is, but they kind of modeled after one of those other countries mm -hmm. that is more more capitalist because we have a more capitalist system. Sure. At the time, I was super triggered by it. At the time, I was more like fucking. Well, remember Bernie, that we was, need Bernie Sanders healthcare. We need to abolish the private insurance company. Right, but remember that was the whole thing about Obamacare was that it was a, it was a Republican plan created totally. by yeah, it's either the Heritage Foundation or the Cato Foundation, some Republican yeah. think tank. Romney that fucking Mitt Romney implemented in his own state. Right, and I don't but know no, that it even worked in Massachusetts. Now that, yeah, but now that Obama and the Democrats are pushing it, oh, now it's, it's communism. Socialism. Yes. You don't understand. Oh. Anything next to Democrat is socialism. I know. I know. Yeah. But that's the problem of crying wolf. Isn't abortion communism? Of course it is. Oh, of course okay. it is. Yes. Gotcha. You have to understand mm -hmm. how political discourse works. Mm -hmm. Okay. All politicians, all politicians are horrible fucking liars. Yes. And they yeah. all engaged in tribalism yeah. and they all use the secret elephant code words we talk about. Yeah. Okay. And so right now the left secret elephant code word is I'm going to call everything racist. Yes. Cause it's working. They're like, Oh my God, I can't believe this racist thing is working. Right. That transphobia sure. thing, it seems to be not working as well anymore. <laughs> right. What's happening. So I'm going to call everything racist. And we've talked about it. And Part of the problem with doing that is then when the actual racists show up, yeah, people don't hear them. It's like, well, you call everything racist. I'm so tired of hearing people call racist. I've so many times I've seen this conversation whenever Nick Fuentes comes up. Yeah. And I'm like, well, Nick Fuentes is an actual white nationalist. And I'm like, well, I don't believe that because I've heard the white nationalist racist label thrown around so much yeah. that I just don't believe any time it's ever labeled totally. anyone like that. And the Republicans were doing the same thing with communism for the last 30, 40 years. Race mixing is communism. Yeah, that's incorrect, kid. Go fix your sign. <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> you fucked up, kid. And here's the May version of Senator Joseph McCarthy. Oh, look, Senator McCarthy. Raphael. He's got, look, look McCarthy he brought McCarthy groups. in. There you go. There you go. We kind of need a McCarthy now, though, don't we? We do. Yeah, that's the problem. We need him now. Right, but but back then he did a desert to such a disservice because he was one of the he leading was the figures wolf of the criers. everything is yeah. communism. Yeah, yeah, the he wolf was the crier. wolf criers. Right, he would he would haul people in front of Congress and he'd be like, "Are you a homosexual? You must be a communist." <laughs> it's like what? The, <laughs> what? Oh my God! Where? What's happening here? Edward Cruz on his podcast in 2021. Yes, this senator has a podcast talking with none other than Christopher Rufo using the exact same Red Scare playbook. All of this originated in Marxism. What's interesting is it didn't just originate in Marxism. The end point that this curriculum is designed to teach the kids to go to is Marxism itself. It is designed to tear down capitalism and replace it with communism, replace it with Marxism at, with with government power, although on racial lines, I mean, is, is that is that a fair characterization? Yeah, I, I think it is. I need to get a chair like Ted Cruz has. Oh you my like that God. chair? He's fucking pimping. Ted Cruz yeah, must be. Ted Cruz and the Republicans must be so ecstatic. Okay, mm -hmm. they're like, finally. I know. <laughs> finally, but we've been crying we wolf for communism. sixty years. Oh my God! Finally. The time has come. The prophecy. Oh. The prophecy. The prophecy <laughs> has come true. Oh my God! The communism saying, is finally here. 
We've been saying the sky is falling for 60 years and finally it's happening. Oh my God, finally I told it's you. Following. I told you. Oh my God, it's terrible. And it's no terrible. one's going to believe them because that's... Nope. Do you do you actually remember the story of the boy who cries wolf? Do you remember how that story ends? He gets... Him and his flock get eaten by the wolf. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It, that's called a cautionary tale. <laughs> I hope that this doesn't end the same way that that story ends. It might, it very well might. But um, it, but it's funny going back to the CRT people, because whenever they, whenever you throw this claim at them, like, well, this stuff is based in Marxism and it's going towards Marxism, they never really have like a strong refutation. <laughs> no, they're totally down with it. I they're almost like, feel oh. like they're shooting the moon with us here. Right. They're rubbing it in our face. Well, they go like, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. Now, I just happen to be a communist myself, but <laughs> yeah. I'm also supporting CRT, but it's just a conspiracy theory that this thing that I'm supporting that I want to be Marxism is actually Marxism. That's a conspiracy theory. I'm in on the conspiracy, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we asked Aaron with the first question. They said, are you a socialist? And normally I wouldn't care, except when you have this conversation about someone claiming something is or is not socialist, it's kind of important if they are socialists or not, because suddenly it creates motivation here. Why didn't he just come out and say, yes, I am a socialist? That's the thing that I was expecting. Be I, I don't know, because he, he was like, I mean, he, he kind of gave us way, the long I answer. I he gave care. us He gave us the weird answer of, it sounded like he was like, I'm not a socialist, but I'm afraid if I say that, all my friends will disown me. That's what it sounded like he was saying. <laughs> Like That's he, how I interpret it. Like he hasn't told his friends yet that he's not a socialist yet. I like he has a lot of uncomfortable conversations where he just nods along and is like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Huh. Hmm. I think that's what happened. But then as we got more into, I don't know, it's, it's so, so annoying. So these people, you ask them like, well, are you a socialist? And you get like the 10 minute long answer about hmm. you know, like, what is socialism? Like, okay, well, we say it's the abolishment of capital ownership. And like, oh, I'm not against that. But then it's like, well, do you, but I want the government to make, I want the government to be promoting co-ops. Like, well, wait a minute. What? Like, it's just. I, uh, I wonder if he sees us as right wingers and he's trying to manipulate us. And he thinks, well, if I say I'm a socialist, they'll see that as like a pedophile. And I don't want to say I'm a That's ped possible. That's Which, very possible. I mean, right? I could care less if you're a socialist, to be honest with you. That's I mean, entirely not, possible. Yeah. I mean, we always, I mean, we cover social, the socialists are comedy for me. I mean, right. hopefully the fact that it's getting, I don't think they, there's not a chance in hell they can win on this CRT thing. I think no. they're going to get shellacked at the election. At, I think people who Okay, are, Ben Shabibo. Well, I do believe that. I think Ben is right. I think people no, who. He said, that's, that's exactly oh, what he yeah. said. They're going to get shellacked at the poll. Well, don't you, do you disagree? <laughs> I think people who are like have no reason to vote whatsoever all of a sudden are going to go, what? They're C My kids are learning CRT in school. Now I have a reason to vote. I'm fucking getting registered. I'm voting. Oh, no. It's, it's, well, if the CRT shit continues into 2022, it's definitely going to be a huge issue. And it's definitely going to be blamed as an issue when the Democrats lose their majority in the House and Senate. This is going to drive yeah. people. Right to the polls the the republicans know that right the republicans know that <laughs> i mean but this is this is what's so baffling to me it feels to me like the republicans are so much better at politics than the democrats because the democrats they have like the one tool right now they have the one tool the racism gun okay mm -hmm. which was yeah. effective but how do they not realize what you just said CRT is not going to push any Democrats to the polls. No. At all. No. Not but one. it is going to push Republicans. To in the mass. It's going to it's mass. going to create Republicans. It's going to turn normal right. people who could care less about politics into Republicans. Right. How do people whose job it is to come up with political strategies not see this? This is the hold on. We're right back to the righteous mind again. This is why Jonathan Haidt even became a moral psychologist. <laughs> he, he became a moral psychologist because he learned 
that Democrats have absolutely no idea what they're doing. And he was like, we have to teach Democrats to be more effective because like, while they have the racism gun right now, I'm not even sure they know how the thing works. They don't, don't know how it works. I don't, no. I, I they're going to they're they're end up shooting themselves in the face with the racism They're wildly gun. fucking just blasting everywhere and everyone, everything. And I think no and I precision honestly think, whatsoever. I, I only think the racism gun worked because it was opposite Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. It was opposite yeah. Mitt Romney or some fucking boring Republican that would not have accomplished that goal whatsoever. Yeah. Yes. We're going to see. I mean, 2022 is right around the corner. And I mean, I, they're going to make a lot of excuses, but. Of course. I mean, we, we heard in 20, uh, 2020 how so many people lost their local races because of defund the police. Oh, yeah, totally. It's just going to continue. Yeah. But I guess it makes sense because, you know, with height, his whole thing is that the Republicans are able to understand and articulate the moral foundations and the moral arguments of the left, but the left is not able to articulate or understand the moral positions of the right. They have no idea. Cody's right. completely in the dark. He's fucking right. blind as a bat. He has no idea what is going on around him. But that would explain why the right would be better generally at, at using political messaging. Yeah. Because they understand this stuff. Yeah, they speak to the gut. Yep. They're like out there telling people, hey, guess what? Well, They're teaching your kids to be racist. <laughs> everyone speaks to the gut, but if you don't know how, what your opponent's doing, or you don't understand why your opponent's oh, doing what yeah. they're doing, yeah. then you're going to be at a disadvantage. What? Everyone loves the Green New Deal. Why I keep running on the Green New Deal, <laughs> and I keep people are like kicking in the face. <sighs> everyone loves the Green New Deal. That's so sad. Everyone loves it. What? Yeah. Sitch. It, Everyone loves the green. In, in my in my perfectly safe district, that's 99% Democrat. Everyone mm. loves the, the green. New Deal. <laughs> exactly. I don't understand what the problem is. Okay. Every when I walk out into my 99% you know Democratic district oh, in love. Portland, Oregon, uh, you know, when I say defund the police, everyone cheers. I don't understand. What, what do you mean it doesn't work on a national scale? I don't understand. Yeah. I understand. We've never been in another place. I experienced that. I moved to New Orleans when I first graduated from college to really experience culture shock and mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. it totally, totally experienced culture shock. Have you done that? Have you experienced, have you gone someplace and really experienced like, wow, this is completely different? Uh, Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, going from high school to college was very mm -hmm. different because, and I talked about, and it's funny because I talked about this to Aaron. He, he's, his mind was blown mm -hmm. when I told him that my school was like 50% non white. Mm -hmm. and he was like, that's so, that's so crazy. That's so crazy, Sitch. Mm -hmm. But the college I went to was like 90% white. And it was very different. And it wasn't just white, but it was like white people from out of state. And it was a very wow. different uh, atmosphere and culture and interaction. And, wow. I, and I remember I would joke, I'd be like, wow, there's, there's too many white people here. I don't like it. A lot of Because <laughs> it was just people. very different from the types of social interactions that I grew up with. Yeah. So, no, definitely. Uh, Crack Rock Steady, our mm. favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles villain for $20. Mm. Thank you, Crack Rock. Says, I had the most amazing call at work. I work for Spectrum. A guy called in to see if we could stop broadcasting Fox News because they were spreading misinformation and fake news on COVID-19. I had to try hard not oh to laugh. Oh, my God. Holy shit. That's hilarious. That's very funny. That's hilarious. Some motherfucker has nothing better to do <laughs> than to call his fucking cable company. Like, listen. Yes. You don't want to watch Fox News? Take it off the remote. I know. Fucking I know. Don't, put it, don't put it in the channel stream. He's like, what's the, ah, point? My yeah, what's the point? Well, the point is his activism. He's like, I guess I have to tell somebody Fox News are liars. Here, let me get the Spectrum guy on the phone. No, you're right. There's probably something on Facebook that's like, everybody call your cable provider and tell them to take Fox News off the, you know, the, the airwaves. It's like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Culvar for $20. Thank you, Culvar says you uh, well, what is your and adam's thoughts on afghanistan and on biden's response to it we might talk about that later super chat i feel like that's a long a longer yeah. subject matter yeah. to get into Here, so I'll we'll write come it back down. to that afghanistan yeah. 
got lots to say about that. Definitely. I have a, I have a super spicy take. I have such a spicy take that I don't think I'm actually going to discuss it because it's too spicy. Well, you can tell me afterwards and I can, okay. I can leak. No, it on cause the, then you'll blab it. I can leak it on the Thursday. Exactly. Extreme, you'll blab guys. it. No, I'm not telling. What? It's such a, it's such a spicy take. I know it'll be clips and I'll be labeled a horrible, horrible badmans. So really? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, don't tell me. My nickname is Big Mouth, just so you know. <laughs> Big Mouth Back. Strikes Critic Again is one of my favorite songs. The yes. race theory, as these people present it, is just the newest iteration of the anti-Semitic trope of cultural Marxism, but with a oh, little more mainstream appeal. Oh, my appeal. God. There we go, guys. Oh, my God. It's all anti-Semitism. You talk about cultural Marxism more than anyone. <laughs> You're I know. Oh, it hurts. How this is such a dishonest video. That is painful right there. He's like using, he's using your power against you. <laughs> he's not Jewish. This is like kryptonite. He's not Jewish. Oh, Cody Johnston? That's saying, a fucking white person name, motherfucker. But he's saying that every time you use the word cultural Marxism, yes, you're I'm a Nazi, being right? anti-Semitic. Yep. I'm a Nazi. It's true. It's true. You say cultural Marxism way more than me. I, I really yeah. don't think this is all fucking clown world to me. <laughs> because to me, it's it's insane that they've managed to pull the wool over everyone's eyes on cultural Marxism. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Yuri Bezmenov. I know he I told know. the truth. Yep. Heal because blackness has a bit more oomph in the context of America. And maybe this history should be taught in our Marxism, but with... Hold on, I gotta back yeah, up a little. Yeah, I, I think it is. In fact, critical race theory, as these people present it, is just the newest iteration of the anti-Semitic trope of cultural Marxism, but with a little more mainstream appeal, because anti-blackness has a bit more oomph in the context of America. And maybe this history should... Did, did he, is he saying cultural Marxism is anti-blackness? Or no, saying he's saying cultural Marxism is being anti-black or what is no, he, he saying? What, I think what he's saying, mm -hmm. which is hard to decode. Well, first yeah. of all, he's saying two things. He's saying he's trying to say that complaining about critical race theory is anti-Semitic. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he's doing this very disgusting, this honest thing. He's like, well, the, the commies were successful at labeling cultural Marxism as a as an anti-Jewish conspiracy theory. So maybe we should do the same thing for critical race theory. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's part one. Part two is he's, I think, saying that people in America care more about being racist against black people than they care about being anti-Semitic. And that's why oh, critical okay. race theory is the new anti-Semitic boogeyman. Gotcha. Be taught in our schools. Maybe the problem is not that we are teaching too much about the history of slavery and racism, but that we haven't been teaching this history enough. That's the Southern the Poverty Law Center did a study on 12 popular U.S. history books, surveyed more than 1,700 social studies teachers, and one. So, yeah, none of this. Listen has to, to do this with critical race theory, but because this is important, okay. teaching this history enough. The Southern Poverty Law Center did a study. On Southern Poverty mm. Law Center right. did a study on 12 popular U.S. history books. 12 popular U.S. history books. Mm -hmm. Surveyed more than 1,700 social studies teachers. 1,000 teachers. Mm -hmm. And 1,000 high school seniors. 1,000 high school seniors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. All he's going to, he's going to not talk about the textbooks or the teachers. Or the All study. he's going to do is talk about the students. <laughs> Oh, okay. no. Oh, no. Really? Yes. Yes. That's all he talks about. Because that's the only part that proves his bullshit narrative. Oh, my God. Okay. To try and determine how much history schools are teaching about race and slavery. Their depressing results found that only eight motherfucking percent of high school seniors can identify slavery as the central cause of the Civil War. Two thirds. So because because the high school seniors are fucking dumbasses. <laughs> so it's interesting. Well, first of all, I found this thing that he's talking about, but I'm annoyed because it doesn't. It gives you the questions, but it doesn't give you like normally when you look at poll results, mm -hmm. it breaks down all the answers to some degree, mm -hmm. like and it shows you the numbers of who answered what. It doesn't do that. Okay.
It just kind of gives you that's their... kind of a red flag. That's a huge red it's, flag. It is sort of a red flag because I'm like, I want to see the actual data tables, and you're not. They're nowhere that I could find, so I'm assuming they're not, they're not publicly available, which is a big red flag. But everyone hyper fixates on this one question, which was, what was the central cause of the Civil War? Mm -hmm. And that only 8% of students, of the 1,000 students, were able to say that it was slavery. And he, so here's the question. Yeah, what are the other answers? What was the reason the South ceded from the Union? Mm -hmm. A, to preserve states' rights. Mm -hmm. Well, B, that's to the preserve... way they framed it. Right. B, to preserve slavery. Mm -hmm. C, to protest taxes on imported goods. D, to avoid rapid industrialization. Or E, not sure. Oh, my God. How can you answer? You literally can answer E, not sure? Yes. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? So out of those answers... If oh, I guess it's 8%. not like a multiple choice test. I guess it's just a poll. But yeah. two of those answers could be correct, though. Right. But so you think, do you think the majority of people answered to preserve states' rights? Well, they, that's the way they framed it. They framed uh, they framed slavery as a state right. Right. Yeah. But so do you think that the people that, the majority of people that answered it, answered that? Well, I would think that it was one of the two. Yeah. Kind of a trick question. No, you're wrong. What did they answer? The majority of people, I think it was like 50%, answered that taxes. the reason the South ceded from the Union was to protest taxes on no imported way. goods. No way. What the yes fuck? Way. You guys are morons. What the okay. Fuck? But, but here's why this is a bullshit statistic. When, it, when, you get, when you do a poll and you find that one question specifically garners such a bizarrely wrong answer or a very wildly yeah, you, wrong you're going to dig in and find out what the fuck is happening here right yeah and so even within the sblc they say they think what happened mm -hmm. was that everyone or most people misread the question because a bunch of the questions were also about the revolutionary war mm -hmm. which was about taxes oh my god they right. they they thought they were answering a question about the revolutionary war not the civil war yes right <laughs> right. And so even the SBLC says they they assume that the majority of people misread the question right. because they it's like a it's like a 20 question thing. Right. And, the, and the, some of the questions are long. And it says that the average time was like between three to seven minutes of people. They filling primed them for revolutionary war questions. Well, and then they threw a civil war question. Right. In. Yeah. Well, no, no, there were there were questions on both. Um, but it's just funny because it's like, OK, if you have a three, a three to seven minute average response time for 20 questions for a bunch of high school seniors <laughs> who give a fuck. Yeah, totally. I don't know how closely they're reading these questions. So this is kind of a fake statistic. Yeah. And it's a further fake statistic because as what Cody doesn't talk about is that 64% of teachers mm -hmm. said that slavery was a central cause of the civil war. Mm -hmm. And 58% of textbooks explicitly said slavery was a central cause of the civil war. Right. So obviously that means that the system, okay, which is what they're arguing, the system is making the claim they want it to make. But for some reason, these one students in these one poll answered incorrectly because they right. weren't paying attention. So. Yeah. yeah. What they're being taught is like Cody makes it sound like, oh, they're being taught that, you know, the Civil War never happened. Right. <laughs> Look at all the which textbooks. Is not true. Yeah. Which is not true. Some more lies strikes again. Yep. Here's some yep. more lies for you guys. Here's your fucking dishonest copium. <laughs> it's just so, I don't know, it's baffling. I guess pe he's like a, how is this guy not a politician, man? He's a fucking paid liar. He might as well be a politician. Politicians make more money, Cody. You should run for office. Mm -hmm. Birds didn't know that it took a constitutional amendment to end slavery, and only 22% were able to identify how provisions in the Constitution gave advantages to slave owners. And I just can't stress this enough. Eight f***ing percent were able to Wait. identify how the cause of the Civil War. Two-thirds didn't know that it took a constitutional amendment to end slavery. So... It's uh, so obnoxious because these are all sort of deceptive. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
He says two thirds did not know took a constitutional amendment to end slavery. Mm -hmm. The question was, which formally ended slavery in the United States? The 13th Amendment, the Emancipation Proclamation, the treaty ending the Civil War, or the Civil Rights Act of 1968? So I mean, a third of the this... people said the 13th Amendment, a third of the people said the Emancipation Proclamation, and a third of the people said the treaty ending the Civil War. Which are all uh, correct-ish responses. They're not like... Well, obviously, not... the 13th Amendment is the correct response, but if you're trying to use this as examples of white people not being getting racist. proper... You're yeah, being racist. Exactly. It's completely insane. It is totally completely insane. insane. That's why I said correct ish because it's yes. like they're all definitely related. Right. That, that there was no answer. The Civil War never happened. And like yeah. <laughs> two thirds of them answered what? Right. Right. Not yeah. exactly. Exactly. This is all fucking chicken little. The yep. sky is falling nonsense. What would we call that? Uh, some, moral something panic. With M and ends with yeah, moral, moral panic. panic. Something about trying that, to create yeah. a moral panic about how schools are doing a terrible job at teaching how ra the, how racist America is, our racist American history. Yep, yep. These this isn't proof though that I mean this stuff is being taught. Thank you, Cody. And only two percent were able to identify how provisions in the Constitution gave advantages to slave owners. Only twenty-two percent were able to identify provisions in the constitution that gave advantages to slave owners huh again not true it's weird because he since he didn't look at the information he basically reads every question the inverse of the way the question is asked okay because this question says the u.s constitution privileged slave owners in all the following ways except mm -hmm. okay so it's the inverse of the question which cody just said and let's see if you know the answer to this okay uh, a, protecting the slave trade for at least 20 years. B, provisions of a fugitive slave law. C, boosting the representation of slave-owning states in the House of Representatives and the Electoral College. Or D, reserving a majority of seats on the Supreme Court for Southerners. What was the question again? Is it the... because The U.S. This... Constitution privileged slave owners in all the following ways except... Except. So it's probably the Supreme Court one. You're correct. Yeah. I'm pretty good at this shit. I know my American history. Come on. But is not knowing that evidence of you being racist? <laughs> Fuck no. It's it's evidence of me being bad at uh, trivial pursuit. <laughs> like, right. What the fuck? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's evidence that public school used to be good. It used to be worthwhile. But, but the way Cody frames it, he says people didn't know I know that the constitution granted privileges to slave owners. Okay. So he's framing it like, Oh, they didn't realize that there were special ben special. I don't even want to say benefits. There were special treatment given to slave states. Oh, that's totally untrue. So when more lies. The inverse strikes of the again. question. Yeah. Yes. So more lies yeah. strikes again. Right. Like right. they obviously knew they had privileges. They just didn't know what, which particular privileges <laughs> they had. Right. They didn't know out of the list, which one they didn't have. Yes. Right. Where's the all of the above? <laughs> and can't stress this enough. Eight fucking percent were able to identify that slavery was the primary cause of the Civil War, which I guess isn't surprising, considering that Texas only just decided to teach that fact in 2018. Because it turns out that different states are allowed to teach about slavery. So even that is... It's kind of misleading and dishonest. Obviously. So Tex um, so Texas, and this is wrong of oh Texas to do. Fuck Texas for doing this. In 2018, or until 2018, they had they were teaching that there were three primary causes of the Civil War. And it was like I'm trying to remember. It was like states' rights. I know. See the states' rights one. That's why they else, always frame it. Yeah, something else related to states' rights and slavery. Mm -hmm. So they were teaching that slavery was a primary cause of the Civil War, but they were just trying to downplay saying it. these. They were a little, a bit. They're, they're diluting it by saying these other two issues mm -hmm. were. We got to make um, these kids love America. What are you going to do? Sure. This is like the question of the Rufo and the dark propaganda music. OK, right. Commies are but, taking over, Sitch. We got we have to make some concessions here. 
But here's my question, okay? If we live in this magically racist, white supremacist society, mm -hmm. everything's racist, why does Texas, A, have to be one of the unique states that's teaching this? Mm -hmm. And B, why do they have to dilute it in this kind of sleazy way? If we live really, if we really did live in a white supremacist society, they would just why couldn't they yeah. just take it out? Right? The white out, yeah, exactly. Yeah, literally. Why do I don't understand? If we lived in this super ultra racist society that they claim we live, how come all the evil right wingers have to use all these tricks and manipulations yeah. in order to, to do to do the racism? Yeah, why can't why they, they just be frame very it as states' rights? Why don't they just come right out right. and say it? Right, like like racist people rights, used mofo. to be. People used to be super open with their racism, and yeah. now they have to hide it. I don't know. Yeah, it's almost like we live in a society that doesn't tolerate racism. Yeah, shocking. White supremacists get the fuck out. Slavery as much little as they want, and you know, usually it's the latter. While Massachusetts mentions slavery 104 times in its social studies framework, Louisiana only mentions it four times. As in four times total. Listen to how this, okay, this is so, everything he's saying is like a fucking dishonest. Mm -hmm. Massachusetts, they use the word slavery in their guideline framework 144 times. Mm -hmm. But Louisiana only says it four times. Mm -hmm. Really? So different states that have different frameworks that often have difference about how vague and specific they go into criteria for teaching had label things like slavery different times. Mm -hmm. For all we know, that the Louisiana framework just doesn't get into the specifics the way the Massachusetts framework does, sure. which wouldn't surprise me because generally the red states have far more general laxer education guidelines and leave more specifics up to the local school districts, while blue states are more specific on a state level. Mm -hmm. But no, it's because they're racist. I don't know, Louisiana. I mean, it's Louisiana. I'd like to look into this criteria a bit. Well, but that, but that's Cody. If it's really racist, why don't you actually bring up the Dig criteria it and show it? Show us instead don't of just relying on some shitty article that said, "Well, we did a a word check on their yeah. criteria, and they only use slavery four times, so it must be the racist." Context matters, Cody. Yeah. We need to see the context. Did they mention slavery four times to say slavery is a myth and never really happened? <laughs> they say slavery is the best awesomeness and we should go back to it? Yeah. What's, what, what was the they context? Exactly? Yeah, we need to know. Yeah. Right. Help us, Cody. And I, I like that that's like, an in, like the number of times slavery is mentioned as an indication of something. Like if it says, if the four times it's mentioned is like slavery is a fucking awful, terrible thing and mm -hmm. kids need to learn about the awful terribleness of slavery. Okay, like that's enough. They don't. Why do they have to keep saying the word slavery over and over again? Like, what does that accomplish? I know it's like Bart Simpson writing it on the blackboard. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Slavery is bad. Slave. That might have been what they did in the other state. They just wrote. I slavery will not is commit bad. a slavery. They've they've filled an entire page with slavery that's, is bad over and right. over and over again. They were just like, to we, pump their numbers up. We got to get our word count up. Cody's gonna come by and fuck with us if we don't. We they need a the, whole book that says slavery is wrong. They knew the Washington Post was going to come by and there's going to word count them. You know, I just, the whole, what argument is Cody, what is Cody making? I guess Cody he, is making the actual CRT argument that the that America is a racist place. He's making the argument that we live in a magical fantasy America where we don't learn about racism and slavery in school. Right. Which a white supremacist not, place where we don't learn about that stuff because it's too which, painful. Too many right wing snowflakes would lose their minds. The only person that I've ever heard that that ever said this claim was part of their lived experience was Sam, who obviously that's a little bit of a I know unreliable protagonist. Unreliable yeah. protagonist, yeah. So. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he has a a Brad Pitt type character that follows him around. <laughs> like, that's right. We need we need to have a dare program to resist slavery because it's just such a problem in our society right now. <laughs> slavery is, is so epidemic in our society. We need to teach kids to say no to slavery. Yes. For K twelfth grade, 
which is still twice as much as they mention it in Idaho. This might be why 85% of teachers said that their textbooks were inadequate in teaching black history, also known as history. Well, did you like that total shift in topic? Mm -hmm. Okay. He's complaining that, that the books and the teachers and the classes are not teaching enough about racism and slavery. And then just immediately slides to a different subject where he's saying 85% of teachers said that their textbooks don't teach them enough about black history. Mm -hmm. So unless Cody is saying that all black history is the subjugation of black people via racism and slavery, <laughs> then oh, he just completely, true. he completely pulled a, a fast one on us and hoped you didn't notice. Yeah. This is backed up by the fact that out of all the books the Southern Poverty Law Center went over, not a single textbook addressed how white supremacy factored into the justification of slavery or how depressingly essential slavery was to the American economy. And this is... So, mm -hmm. he's kind of conflated some stuff here. Okay. Yeah. So, what, what they actually said was that, yes, none of the books used the language, specifically saying that they didn't use the language that white supremacy had something to do with slavery, mm -hmm. which according to Vosh, that's normal because you're not supposed to use the term white supremacy in academic literature. Yeah. So I don't know what he's complaining They about. do use it all the time in academic yeah. literature, but right, right. they're just, they're saying that they're upset that they didn't specifically use their academic framing when talking about American history. Right. But white supremacy though, I mean, it just, it makes me think of like World War II, Nazi Germany. That's, That's what, what yeah, I think exactly. Of. Yeah. Right. That's probably why they don't use it. I know. It's, right. it doesn't make a lot of sense to but then conceptualize he, Nazis in the Civil War since that's long before the Nazi regime ever came to power. Exactly. Or even exactly. existence. Right. Um, and then he conflates it with the whole, the books, there were zero books that said, that slavery and slave trade was economically essential to America, which is actually not true. According to their own thing, they said 31% of the tech books they looked at did state that claim. Yeah, the transatlantic slave trade was what I was taught. Yeah, that it was economically a thing for the slave traders, not necessarily for why nations fail makes a completely different argument about how terrible it was for the economy. Right. This is just the study. If you look... No, and of course, he negates all the things that say the opposite. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it said, like, according to the, the same study, it said, the majority of books uh, talked about how slavery was practiced by Europeans prior to the arrival in Americas and was important to all colonial powers and existed in all European North American colonies. Mm -hmm. Majority of textbooks and teachers and students all said that. The majority of textbooks said that enslaved people resisted the efforts of their enslavers and to reduce them to commodities in both revolutionary and everyday ways. The majority of textbooks talked about the experience of slavery and how it varied depending on time, location, crop, labor, perform, size of slaveholding, and gender. The majority of textbooks said that slavery was the cause of the Civil War, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But no, we have to leave all that out to push our narrative. Right. That nobody's learning about this. Nobody's learning about any of this. Who's watching this? Aren't they learning about it in school, theoretically? Don't they realize Cody's lying to them? If no one's learning about this, how did Cody and all these other people learn this, though? <laughs> I know. I mean, were they all ignorant until they found YouTube in 2014, and suddenly they're like, oh, I just learned about racism for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> did they look into it specifically? They started searching for it? They didn't learn Jeez. about it until the 1619 project was released in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Typical. Look for it. You can find a wide and dizzying array of schools routinely f***ing up the way they teach about slavery in America. This fourth grade class asks students to name three good things about slavery. Then there's the school. So it's funny. <laughs> Give three good reasons for slavery. Fourth yeah. grade homework assignment sparks backlash. Apology in Watasha. Watasha. First of all, this is a private school. So. Oh, really? <laughs> so all this talk about public education is pointless. To this one cherry picked example he could find. Um, 
And they said, when you look at, and it's obvious from the way it, that it was worded, what they meant to, to write was what was the re, what were the reasons that slavers gave for why they were enslaved? Oh, people? okay. Not, yeah. Give three reasons people justified slavery. Yeah, yeah. that's for fourth graders. So like, right. if I don't know what the word justified means. In upstate New York, at just this year the year 2021 in homework for elementary school kids <sighs> described slavery as African Americans agreeing to work for colonists in exchange for a trip to America. Literally just not teaching slavery as slavery. That, that's, is that oh like a God. typo? Like that's indentured servitude. I learned all about that. He, well, first of all, it's so funny. He's so happy. Mm -hmm. And this is like, you know, where like Ted Cruz is so happy. Finally, he can say communism. He's so happy. He's like, I found an example of the racism. Like I'm claiming me, Cody Johnson, I'm claiming that this is all systemic racism, that we live in a white supremacist society. So you think I would just be overflowing with examples of all the racism being taught in school. However, I can only point to two very specific, bizarre, cherry picked examples. I know typos, basically. <laughs> Which, first of all, the first one was a typo or a miscommunication. And the second one, he's actually sort of lying about. Oh, go figure. Okay. So I found the question, which it's not a good question, because it does seem to mix up uh, indentured servitude with slavery. Which, oh, my God. They mix it up in the question. Holy shit. Which, well, I'm not sure. I'm assuming that that didn't happen. I was unfamiliar with uh, black... Africans being promised indentured servitude and then actually being slaved. That could have happened. I'm just unaware of that. Mm -hmm. But the question says, uh, why did slaves come to America? As an exchange for the trip to America, African Americans, which is bizarre to call. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, African Americans agreed to work for the colonists for blank many years, but then were kept as slaves. Okay, so even though the question is wrong, I assume, about mixing up indentured servitude with slavery, it does still say that the colonists reneged on the deal and kept them as slaves, which Cody leaves out of his description of the mm -hmm. question. To work for colonists in exchange for a trip to America, literally just not teaching slavery as slavery. So no, even this question is teaching slavery as slavery. It's just saying people were tricked into slavery as opposed to forced via chattel slavery. Right. That's the difference, Cody. And it's a substantial difference, but that's not what you said. And he even right. has the fucking picture on screen. Did he not look at it before he filmed the segment and said, well, this, this line that you wrote, writer, it's not really accurate. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. So that's, that's totally normal. Hey, speaking of things that were totally normal, did you know that there were nearly 8 million KKK members in the 1920s or that Georgetown University was funded by the selling of 272 slaves? Hey, did you know that Bank of America- Hey, did you know that no one is talking about- any of this stuff? Disputes anything that you're yeah. saying whatsoever? Did you, I don't know if you knew that. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. America's terrible. We get it. I like Cody. how uh, V Radio on your Thursday stream said that the KKK was losing so many members <laughs> I know. Oh that God. they they were talking about dropping like the racism in order to appeal to more people. In order to keep the club going, you gotta <laughs> you gotta admire the tenacity. <laughs> My God, folks. It's the year is 2021, and we just can't get enough members to sign up for the KKK. So we're thinking about dropping the whole racism <laughs> element of it. How is, like, the KKK is, how is that not a dead brand? Exactly. exactly. But that's the proof. That's proof that it's dead. Uh, best Bastiat for $20. Thank mm -hmm. you, Bastiat. Says, I've been running for school board. This past week, I was kicked off the ticket by the GOP. Oh, that sucks. Because the left found tweets of me calling people autist or making jokes. Oh, my God. 
Jesus, that's awful. But you know, look, cancel culture is fake, right? Yeah, we've done like we we've thrown the R word around pretty yep. religiously. Well, you have. I try not. But you have. I have a very, very It only sparsely. takes one. It's very sparse. What are you talking about? They dig into your back catalog immediately. But fortunately, this is the thing. Since our streams are so long, it like protects us from being clipped to some. No, extent. I think Nathan's clipped me using the R word. I think they could just go to the clips <laughs> channel and find it. You're not supposed to tell them that, but Oh, sorry. Uh oh. I'm not uh, running for Congress anytime soon, so I should be safe. Uh and, and then they continue. In less than forty eight hours, I raised two thousand dollars for a writing campaign. Well, that's great. What? Oh my god, there's a happy ending. I love it. There you go. There you go. Well, I hope you win. I'm rooting for you. Yeah. Don't let those That's autists awesome. get you down. Yeah. Don't let the autists get you down. Yes. God, so pathetic, though. I mean, weaponized. Are we allowed to say weaponized autism? Because that's kind of using it in a positive light. Yes. <laughs> that sounded like a maybe. Uh, that sounded like a big, huge maybe. It was a maybe. Uh, Kalavar for $20 says, Hearsay, Sitch will be our all-powerful supreme leader, and Adam will be his prophet in 2024. By the way, Adam is considering making presidential ads and putting them on YouTube so we can get Sitch elected for president. God, that would be so cool. There you go. I could stay I'm in the Lincoln bedroom. Could come hang I mean, out. I don't know how to tell you this, Adam, but if, if I'm president. Uh-huh. What? You think I'm going to still interact I'm with getting, you I'm getting, anymore? No. I'm getting thrown under the bus? You're what getting you, thrown I under thought the I would bus. be your vice president. What are you no, talking about? I'm going to have... I, no, I need I'd a be the vice president. president. Are you kidding me? The first thing Sitch would do is he would he would launch too white he would launch an exploratory committee for a vice mm -hmm. president pick, and he would put me in charge. No, no. no. And I would, ex I would You're look too... high and low. No. Right? I would look all over. To find uh -huh. the perfect candidate to be the vice president. Also known as pulling a Dick Cheney. <laughs> and then yes. I would bring I would bring back the ultimate solution. Me. Myself should be vice Sitch, president. I don't know what to tell you. I, yep. I interviewed a thousand different people. Ten thousand people. Ten thousand different people. All all minorities of all various colors and all genders and shapes. Subservient to me. I didn't I didn't interview a single white person, and all I can say is that none of them were cut off for the job. So it's got to be me. It's got to be me. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, Sitch. I tried really hard. I don't know what to tell you. It's perfect. Yep. Come on. You need, you need, everyone's going to say, listen, he's too young. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's inexperienced <laughs> in politics. You need a vice president that, you know, knows the terrain, knows what it's like, a seasoned professional. Who's only said, you know, the R word a few times on the internet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, and Dick Cheney did do exactly it, that. That's it, how Dick Cheney became vice in president. In very long live streams that have only been clipped a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> but Adam would bring all the 12-year-old voters. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, yeah. You want that's the 12-year-old vote? We want the 12-year-old vote, yes. yes. It'll be a slaughter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. America, City Bank. Wells Fargo and JP Morgan all accepted slaves as deposits. Have you ever considered or been taught in school about just how many now, now here's where he does the big push for like in case you didn't know America is evil. Here let yes. me It's just so weird because he I mean when's he going to chant death to America in this video? I'm, did you I'm know, waiting for it. Adam, did you know that companies that existed during slavery times were engaged in slavery stuff? God. Cody, Cody, <laughs> did you know that? Cody, why do you hate America? Just tell us why do you hate America? Because he's a fucking he's a Marxist communist. That's why. Did your first love leave you for America or something? Did 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 a girlfriend cheat on you with America? I think that's what happened. Tell me. I think that's tell what me. happened. Did America hurt your feelings in some way? What happened? <laughs> did your parents get divorced over America? Mm -hmm. Why yes. do you hate America so much? What's going on, <laughs> Sitch? What make what possesses people to feel this way? Is Cody can Canadian? Oh, if he's Canadian. Oh, it all makes sense then. We oh don't need God. any questions. Cody Everything Johnson. Is, is he Canadian? This has come up before. This has come up a million times. All these times. fucking Canadians. If he's Canadian, everything is like all of this is ultimate propaganda. We have to we have to 
We literally need to attack Canada over this video. I'm Canada. sorry. I agree. We should attack Canada. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. I'm sorry to all our Canadian listeners. I'm really sorry, but we have to. We have to colonize Canada. We have to make Canada the 51st state and put an end to this nonsense. Uh, I can't find anything that talked about where he was born. So I we we'll did this before. There. We did this we before. Did. We did. Yes. We tried to figure it out, but I think he's actually American. Okay. Okay. He's just an American-hating piece of shit. Right, right. Why? It's actually, I mean, it would be good for Cody to denounce his citizenship because I don't believe America's principles are lying, bold-faced lying to people on the internet. Maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think all the anti-COVID people would be, would disagree with me on that. <laughs> They'd be like, what? America is all about lying. All about so lies. So a... A random, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can believe it, some random website, famousbirthdays.com. Uh, it says did, he was this born. Ha this happened before. I this swear. did happen before, yes. It says he was born in L.A. And we said, uh -huh. oh, that makes sense. Yeah, was, totally. Yeah. yeah. There you go. He's I an, believe that. He's an that. L.A. piece of shit. Yep. He's done the experiment where you go stand in front of the grocery store and you ask people, do you believe America is a white supremacist? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> totally white supremacist but then you know if i went down if i went down to my local grocery store and i did that 99 percent of people would say yes but then if i went down to like hollywood and sunset the, you it's, it's all filled with tourists from all over the world and i would get a much a much wider mix yeah yeah wider not whiter wider yeah <laughs> yes much heavy, much heavier set mix right. of Americans. American companies and institutions gained their power from the suffering of others, and wouldn't that? God damn it! We are going full Marxism, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, we are. Such it's coming. Bullshit. Don't worry. It's this coming. This is such bullshit. You're, I'm glad you see it because he's leading up to it. It's such bullshit. Yeah. It is such bullshit. Capitalism is all about the suffering of others, huh? Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Not that like perhaps. communism. That's never ever led to the suffering of other people. Oh, I know. Oh my God. <laughs> it's all sunshine and roses. Yes. Be a good thing to know. Also, geez, I'm not sure if you know this because you may have gone to an American school, but black history isn't entirely just the slavery and civil rights eras. Like, obviously those are important to teach, but as a few have pointed out, most schools pretty much stop there and call it a day. And in fact, the United States history content standards for grades five through 12 only require schools to teach the baseline subjects of slavery and civil rights, and then nothing else about black history or culture. You know, stuff like the reconstruction era, which most schools don't teach. I didn't learn about white culture mm -hmm. in my history classes. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't learn about Germanic white American culture or Irish white American culture or no. British white American no. culture. We didn't learn about any of this stuff. I learned about World War Two, World War One. Not even really a lot about Vietnam. Well, I was going to say part of why this is such a dishonest complaint is I was going to ask people. And I'm curious, how many people took a history class in middle school or high school? Where you actually made it to the end of your textbook. Oh, never. Yeah. Right. I never did. There was too much. I never too did. Too much. Yeah. Yeah. Because... They'd be like, just read these chapters. <laughs> right. Because my history book ended in like the mid-90s. Yeah. And I've never, ever, in any history class, we've never finished our textbook. Ever. We never get that. We never get the modern times. We That's never, so funny. I don't think i've ever got into the fucking 80s in any of my history classes we've never made it the furthest we've ever made was vietnam and the civil rights movement when my when i had my history book the mid 90s had not even been made yet it was all <laughs> like hypothetically flying cars and stuff right so he's like well in 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 our history classes where you never make it to the fucking end of the textbook anyway, why aren't you talking about all this extra stuff? It's like, well, because we only have this thing, Cody. I don't know if you know, thing called finite time. Yes. Okay. 
there's only a finite time in which kids can learn this information and they don't have to, the ability to go through every, the entire history of America. It's very long. I don't know if you knew that. It's very long. What is a reconstruction era? I wish they would teach the bank. The post war. the post Civil War era. Oh, okay. I mean, they brush over it. What are you talking right. about? Yeah. Everybody Nor do they teach about the Great Migration or how about the fact that over 60% of Americans know nothing about Juneteenth, which is probably why the Tulsa Race Massacre and countless other massacres has been strangely absent from history textbooks for decades, even in f***ing Tulsa, an event where a white mob attacked and killed hundreds of black residents, injured even more, and raised over 35 city blocks. Was you know what else mm -hmm. is never talked about? Mm -hmm. except in a movie mm -hmm. one of the craziest riots that ever occurred in american history mm -hmm. do you remember the movie gangs of new york mm -hmm. vaguely <laughs> where, yeah. where where the irish and the non-irish white people got into a gang fight that was so bad the u.s navy had to literally that... shell the city of new york to stop the fighting <laughs> That was real? I thought that, that was, was Hollywood. That was fucking real. No, that didn't that happen. Was, that was totally real. But, oh, we don't talk about it in our history books. So, therefore, it must be the conspiracy theory to prevent people from learning about the white Irish history in our country. Arr. Do you want everyone to think that the Irish people are drunk, alcoholic? And... <laughs> Obviously, by not teaching about how this riot was so bad against the poor Irish people. That's yeah, what they're trying on. to teach. We can't the do systemic that. discrimination of the Irish in America. We're trying to make people like Irish people. We can't teach this history. <laughs> Too many negative stereotypes in this history. It's yeah, it's it's so annoying because so many of these complaints are always like, "Well, this one specific thing that I want in school wasn't taught in school." Like, I okay, know, that's everyone. I know. That's everyone. Everyone has something yes. that got left out. Yeah. God. I wanted to teach about the bank war. Come on, people right. need to learn about the central bank. What's going on? There's there's a million things that that could be taught. And for, for me, almost all my history classes, and maybe this is where I don't know if there's some other way to do it, because it's not like it's not like you learn one period of history in middle school and you learn the next period in, in seventh, seventh grade, next period in eighth grade, next period in ninth grade, next period tenth grade, blah, 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 blah. That's not the way history is structured. It's mm -hmm. like you basically learn an overview of history in middle school, and then you basically learn the same overview of history again in high school, but in more depth. Detail, yeah. And I don't know if there's any other way to do it, because I remember in high school, I barely remembered anything I learned in middle school. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, know if, I don't know if there's any other way to do it. I remember one, I had one teacher for world cultures that was super great, but... Like Amer my American history teacher completely fucking sucked. I don't even right. I don't even remember him lecturing, to be honest with you. I think he brought us into class and was like, Okay, your assignment today is to sit at your desk and read these chapters and you know me in reading. I was like, Fuck, I'm uh -oh. taking I'm yeah. taking a nap. Yeah, exactly. Well so. and so much of this, as you said, it's all dependent on the teachers. Cause I had a fantastic high school yeah. American history teacher. Which was rare because in that same high school, before that, I had to take uh, world history, and that was a terrible class mm -hmm. because for some reason, our history teacher wanted to learn about my ancestry, which I didn't give a shit about, mm -hmm. the Russians. And we spent an inordinate amount oh of time God, learning about fucking Nicholas and Alexandra and the oh, last yeah. czar of the Russians before they became commie. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. why are we wasting our time? I don't care about any of this. But shit. it's fascinating. Baby oh Sitch, learn. It's so interesting. The only thing that was fascinating about that was Rasputin, the magic man who fucked a bunch of women, was a dirty hobo, and maybe had psychic powers. Rasputin couldn't was die. great. Rasp they tried yes. to kill that motherfucker, but he wouldn't right. die. Wouldn't he die. Kept he was stabbed, in their shot, face. poisoned, and drowned, and yeah. he just wouldn't fucking die. What yes. a badass. I know. Fucking Chad Rasputin. You had to <laughs> learn about it, that guy. And it came up with a great 70s catchy song about it, too. So thank you. Thank you, Rasputin. Yeah. Oh, my was God. Was just completely absent from our history until a fucking HBO show about fictional superheroes brought it up. How damn weird and sad is that? And this is just black history I'm talking about. And not like Native American history. But heck, I'm sure the way schools teach that is... Uh, 
very thorough. Boy, f howdy. It sure seems like my, my entire elementary school was basically just, I don't know why, well, it was basically just talking about Native Americans. <laughs> yeah. In history class. I don't think that was normal. I don't know what was up with the school. Trail, I went to, but... trail of tears and stuff. <laughs> yeah. In elementary school, it's all just Native American culture. I'm like, yeah, why are we super very like, strange. liberal? Yes. It was a public school. It wasn't like a hippy dippy private school somewhere who knows each of these teachers brings their own right their own well, thing into the classroom it was the the quote gifted program which mm -hmm. like in elementary school was very like i don't even know it's very silly <laughs> it wasn't like like in high school middle school gifted was just harder classes but in elementary school was like oh we're gonna be creative guys like it was a bunch of hippie bullshit one of my nieces had a a class recently but i think it was mm -hmm. a college class that was the instructor was super racist and putting all of these like racist saying all of these racist things and my niece was just like you really? know, keep your head down you know don't really don't say what you really think because but that's, you know you're yeah, gonna that's have to problem. you're gonna get a bad grade yeah there's so many and i hear that story repeated again there's so many They're kids little fucking hitlers they are yeah that they go to these college classes that are fucked and it's like they just they keep their head down yeah like well i don't you know i i don't want to get a bad grade it's so sad it's well, so she, despicable she's uh her mom is latino and her dad is white but like you know even that if they're disparaging white people she's like they're disparaging my dad what the fuck <laughs> right it's like well, you're one of the good ones well i mean half one of the good ones i guess <laughs> it's like what the fuck this is why this racial stuff in the classroom is so toxic yep but they the whole they want to design the whole curriculum to be like you know you're it's just like we were saying walk you out to the edge you know come on put two and two together here you're a racist we don't want we don't want to come out and tell you you're a racist but come on put two or, and two together we're gonna walk you out to that cliff's edge yeah and you're we're gonna point you to the ocean that says you're a racist uh be marxist <laughs> yeah. be communist we're not gonna push you in there but we're gonna walk you right up to that edge yeah. and say well we're not teaching marxism we're not teaching people to hate themselves and be racist okay yeah oh no no what are you talking about oh god most american no shit about Do our you, history with race would you because i mean i'm i was a little fucking shit man i would have totally spoke up i'd have been all over that shit sure i'd be like but expel I me motherfucker i that but that was me too i was one of like the problem kids uh, me too <laughs> i got a, so. my i my sixth grade teacher like made a certificate that called me the instigator like she fucking set my my desk was literally up <laughs> In front Hilarious. of the classroom, <laughs> where the class was over here, and I was like right next to her desk. I remember in elementary school, we were supposed to go on like uh, some like out of state trip. Oh in man, in fifth oh, grade. those are great. <laughs> and um, the way it worked was like you would write on a on a page three people that you wanted to like be in the room with, uh -huh. and they would try to work it out so everyone was at least with like one of their friends. Uh huh. And then I got my list back and I'm like, wait a minute. None of the people I wanted to was on my list. I know. And so oh I go to the God. teacher and I'm like, why am I not? And they're like, we can't put you with those. You people are, you kids are troublemakers. They did I looked the at that list and I said, thing. there's no way that you guys are going to be together. <laughs> they did the same exact thing to me because not only was my desk in front, but my best friend's desk was like, on the other side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> like also not with the students. Yeah. But, it, but to me, it was so ridiculous because I'm like, this is like the epitome of white privileged teachers. It's like, okay, we're not starting fights. We're not beating people up. Like, they're just mad that we, like, don't take seriously some of the nonsense they oh, say totally. that we talk in class. So it's like, we're like evil now. It's like, give me a totally, fucking break, okay? Totally. Jesus. Yeah. Relax, teachers. We were not buying God. the bullshit. We understood right. this propaganda shit early on. <laughs> right. I mean, and that was basically our entire Boy Scouts thing was that whatever the adult leadership told us, we're like, yep. we do the opposite of. We're like, fuck you. This is why when I talk about 12 year olds voting, why do you think that they're going to vote how the adults tell them to vote? Fuck that. They're not going to do that. <laughs> okay, so great. So they'll just be voting the opposite. 
just to spite them. That's not exactly a better. Oh, they're going to vote for that. what they think is right. I uh, okay, okay, sure. God, sure, sure. My, my cat is being sure. such a pain in the butt. He Everyone just wants sees your it. love. Did you yeah. hear him? Could you hear him yelling outside the door? I let him in because uh, he was a being little such bit. a little bitch. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Now he wants out. I'll be of right course, back. Of course, of course, he's classic so, cat. I know. Classic I'll be right cat. back. Alex Stewart for fifty dollars. Thank you so much, Alex. Very generous. Says, today a commie tried to claim I never read Das Capital. They asked if I knew what MCM was, and I described it exactly how Marx does and said it's stupid. This is exactly what people do with CRT. Claim you never read it since you disagree disagree with it. True. That's exactly yes, in every yeah. conversation. They I've said, you know, they say that, and then I quote some specific CRT thing, and then they go, oh, and they try to change the subject. <laughs> I didn't leave yet because you can't read the $50 super chat while I'm gone. Oh, I'm so sorry. And not only that, like I completely agree with him. Now, I literally have a video on my channel about how if you want to debate commies, reading anything communist is just a complete and utter waste of time for this exact (laughs) same reason because none of them have read any of it. And if they have, they, they didn't understand it or they don't, or you didn't read the right thing. You right. don't get their interpretation of it. It's fucking maddening. Yep. Yes. All they want you to do is, re- it's like a trick. It's like a bait and switch. All they want you to do is read more of it. Oh, you didn't read that. Oh, you didn't read it right. Oh, you didn't read this. Oh, you didn't, re- now, you got to read this one. What? There's another one here. You got to learn about the fucking LTV, man. <laughs> it's all about the LTV. It's mm-hmm. all garbage bullshit. Yep. And slavery. I don't know. Perhaps if we did teach these things, we would have fewer people going on TV saying nonsense like this. America was not founded on racism. Uh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, there was slavery going on, but slavery itself was not initially a racist thing. It never was about race initially. So to sit there and take America was founded on racism, it's a complete lie. Yeah, there was slavery going on, but slavery was going on in all the world. It never was a race thing. So why are we making it a race thing now? Now, I'm hoping that I don't. So that's not untrue. Slavery existed for thousands and thousands of years of human history, and it was not racialized. So you can you can criticize that and say, well, in America, it was sure. But what he said is not an untrue statement, Cody. But we'll see how Cody deals with this. I need to defend the idea that slavery in America was very much a race thing. Yes, the institution of slavery existed in the world before the transatlantic slave trade, and there were indentured servants from Europe for a time in America, but it's also true that slavery in the New World was a uniquely brutal institution, and that after uprisings like Bacon's Rebellion that saw European and African servants join forces against the ruling elite, lawmakers began to make legal distinctions between white and black inhabitants by permanently enslaving Virginians of African descent and giving poor white indentured servants and farmers some new rights and status. And that this dynamic metastasized over time and is actually why we have the socially and legally constructed categories of race in America in the first place. Did did he just say that whites and blacks actually joined forces to fuck with the elites? That's what he said, yeah. How come I don't know? This is That's awesome. (laughs) That's totally (laughs) awesome. The indentured servants are like, we're fucking slaves. Hey, we're fucking slaves. Let's team up. No, no racism here. Let's get simultaneously. He's arguing that slavery, there were like, you know, is only a black issue, even though he's bringing up an example of it not being. Yeah. So. Yeah. What's going on there? The indentured servitude. They figured out they were slaves too. They fucking tricked me. I can't believe yep. I signed the contract. I don't know. I'm never, I c- can't make enough in a year to pay off the interest. Yep, yep. And if the laws and social dynamics continue to, you know what, actually, I'm not going to do this right now. Frankly, this is something that this guy and everyone should have been taught in middle school. That that Does he play a clip? Did I miss a clip of that guy? Because that's the guy that was getting pissed about critical race theory. Yeah, he played a clip of him saying that Slavery wasn't inherently racial. Mm-hmm. That's not worth going back. But it's that's true. I mean, uh, it's sort of true. It's sort of diluting the topic. Yeah. Depending on the context of what you're talking about. Sure, totally. But they're like all of us have slavery. Like, 
Sure. So all everyone's had slaves in their past. Yes. Thomas Sowell. Uh, it it depends this. what you're, why you're bringing this up. Sure. I totally. don't know because he brings it's like a 10 second clip. But again, this is the Cody Johnson. Let me cherry yeah. pick. I'm going to cherry pick to Take find someone saying something. Yeah. And this is proof because this Be one person bitch. who I've already labeled, this is his own argument doesn't make sense. He's already claimed that this guy is a political operative. Mm hmm. Okay, so if he is a political operative, how is him saying something on TV any indication of his level of educational background? Yeah, is this on TV here? Is this yeah, a Fox, Fox News, News interview? Yes. Oh, okay. He's he's read off. It's probably just from Thomas Sowell because Thomas Sowell makes the case that we're all everyone has slavery in their background right. because all kinds of people were slaves. Yeah, and speaking of this guy. Do you recognize this guy? That's I do. Right. He is one of the people from the Concerned Parents montage that we played earlier in the video. And you guessed it. Just like all the others, he's actually a conservative activist with his own conservative radio show and YouTube channel. Oh, my God. This is ridiculous. Did you this know? This is fucking ridiculous. That if you're a parent and then you get upset that something's happening, so you decide to make a YouTube channel about it. Well, that means you're a conservative activist and we can't listen to anything you say. Even if you have it, like everybody has a fucking YouTube channel now, Cody. It doesn't make <laughs> you a political operative, for heaven's sakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, by that definition, we're fucking political operatives, right, which exactly, is ridiculous. Exactly. It's fucking ridiculous. Not only that, the only reason he's on Fox News is because that video went viral. Yeah, <laughs> He was the one to talk to. He know on Fox News if he the video not go viral. Do you understand this? God, so Cody, funny. fucking cause and effect. Do you understand it? Do you get it? Oh, no, he doesn't. Ridiculous. It's so funny because even the clip says father goes viral for takedown of toxic critical race theory. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I got news for you, Cody. Having a YouTube channel is a great way to examine your own principles. Maybe you should try it. it <laughs> you know, it doesn't seem like you have any principles. And so How, I think it's worth... Am I wrong? I'm, I'm a little skeptical, okay? Because they're like, oh, this guy is like, he has some big YouTube channel. I'm typing his He's name. He's got like into, a thousand subs. I'm, I'm into YouTube, I and guarantee, I can't. I guarantee. I can't find him. I guarantee he's got like a thousand subs. <laughs> he's got. Okay, like, I, I found his YouTube channel. Did you? Okay, what is it? Okay, this is interesting. So he has a, he has a shit ton of subs. Mm -hmm. Is over. He has 175k subs. That's not a shit ton. I mean, well, he's got a lot. Could be in the millions. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But his videos are like a thousand. A thousand views. views. Okay. Yeah. So he had so one his... probably one video that went viral. Look at his videos and see which video went viral. Well, it was probably yeah. him being on Fox News. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you could look it up on I mean, all those subs could be brand new. Yeah. Oh, actually, his this is hilarious. His most popular all his like very popular. So two years ago, this is hilarious. So two years ago is where all his channels got views. Mm -hmm. um, they, and they're all him reacting as a black man to classic white music. No like way. Elvis no. <laughs> or the animals or oh Stevie Ray Vaughan oh or the Dan God. or the devil went down the oh Georgia. Oh my God. This is him reacting. To now like, we know how he paid for that medical school. He was a reaction channel. On it's YouTube. just him reacting to like quote white music and saying, Oh, okay. those videos are gr great. Have you seen the videos? Like I've seen some of them, but I would think if you keep doing them, it kind of loses the appeal, right? Like you do it well, once. Not if it's a viral thing, but this completely goes against Cody's argument that he's a political Does. operative. Listen, his most popular videos yep. are him reacting to white music. How is he a political operative? And the, and look, they're like fucking terrible videos. <laughs> okay. Cause like I'm like it's one of those like someone watches the video and in the corner is the video they're reacting to, and they just play the whole video and they're just like like making facial expressions right. throughout the whole song. And at the end they give like a two-minute like my thoughts on the song. <laughs> like Oh really? 
yeah it's very lame it's very very lame Hassan. so that's where all his views and that's where his channel came from and as soon as he started doing political stuff his views went to shit right they're like yeah. listen we just like to see you react to white music we don't give a fuck we don't give a fuck why we all thought you were liberal now we find is, out you're a conservative this is actually hilarious because i'm just scrolling down and down and down i i organized his channel by views yeah do it i can't even get to the political stuff like it's not even on the page i don't even know how to see it like if you do it by views. there's a lot of a lot of videos it looks like yeah because well, yeah he does he has like these two-year-old videos where he was just reacting to all this music yeah. and all his new videos that are political get like no fucking views whatsoever so do you have friends that you ask go. you about the youtube game yes sometimes yeah. yeah me too so there you go when someone says ty smith is this political operative with a massive youtube mm -hmm. channel it's like okay we'll see let's see all yeah, right. that's, that's being completely dishonest, Cody. I think him being political actually hurt his career. I don't think it helped his career. Yeah, he's a political operative. Come on, he's yeah. working for the Republican Party. You don't mm -hmm. know this? Do, doing React videos. Mm -hmm. They're going to be huge. And I'm telling you, 2024, when Trump <sighs> is running again, he's going to be reacting to the Trump ads. <laughs> it's going to be go. off the there hook. We're going to be reacting to the Trump ads. Oh, he also talked to Candace Owens, so you know. It's... Oh, he did? Yes. When? He hasn't. Uh, in July of this God. year. Let me just, what's his name? I'm going to look it up. Ty Smith. Ty Smith, and that's the name of his channel? No. His channel is you said it was different Modern stuff. Renaissance Man. Modern Renaissance but Man. But that's, that's not where the Candace Owens interview is. It's on her channel modern well probably after his thing went viral oh you're gonna look at the social blade numbers i doubt it because his early videos he had over he was getting over a million views on his reacting to music videos yeah that's why he continued to do them he's like right but that's what i'm saying that's where all his subs came from he's pocketing like three grand yeah. every time I'm, what right every time he does a react modern yep. renaissance man anyway let's continue Whole, what, whoa, whoa, uh, whoa. What, what? Five days ago, vaccine mandates are coming for medical professionals now. Mm -hmm. He uses fucking laser vision in the thumbnails, buddy. <laughs> buddy! Buddy! <laughs> Didn't you know? I do not approve. <laughs> Didn't you know, sir? Okay. Dear sir! You have yes, infringed uh, on my trademark. <laughs> lasers belong solely to Adam Frundin. <laughs> no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yep. Oh, this is fascinating. Okay, let's continue with the video. Okay. Mm. Worth reiterating that far from a grassroots movement of concerned parents who spontaneously became concerned about the little known academic concept of critical race theory, this backlash has been a coordinated effort from reactionary activists, politicians, media figures, and right wing think tanks. Many, incidentally, are funded by the Thomas W. And evil, evil reactionary music <laughs> YouTube channels. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you w. can't Smith react to Stevie Ray Vaughan without some a little panky panky with the Republican Party going on. That's true. That's a good point. I mean, his most viewed one was him reacting to Elvis. You know, oh my the god. King, the king of cultural appropriation, Elvis himself. Insane. Foundation. SD and director is James Pearson, who explicitly opposes teaching classes about women, black people, or the LGBTQ community. The Thomas W. Smith Foundation funds many groups currently going all in on the anti CRT train. Fun groups we love, like the American Enterprise Institute, the Daily Caller, the Federalist, the Heritage Foundation, the Federalist Society. What 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 about ism? I like that we're forty-five minutes into a fifty-two-minute video. Yeah, we're still on what about ism? We had, I think, thirty to forty seconds 
of actual material on critical race theory and the rest of it's all been ad hom character and assassination yeah yes crazy crazy Turning Point USA, Prager University, and others, including the Manhattan Institute, which is the top recipient from this foundation, and incidentally, a place where Christopher Rufo now works. The Manhattan Institute simply wants to develop and disseminate new ideas that foster greater economic choice and individual response. This is, this is like, you could take every single person who's like, a big name in Black Lives Matter or any of these other woke organizations and be like, look, they're all part of mirrored organizations that all do the same nonsense only from like the leftist perspective. Totally. Therefore, yeah. that proves it's not a grassroots campaign. Like you could tie them all. I'm sure you could tie them all to Marxism somehow. <laughs> sure. But no, what I mean is like all, all these people that get politically involved in shit, they all create these fucking little organizations and charities and shit. That's how you make money doing doing what they're doing. Yeah. Political activism's <laughs> big bucks. Stability. And speaking of places where Christopher Rufo has worked, how much money do you think Cody makes off political activism? <laughs> yeah, look at his pay. I don't know. Look at his Patreon. The Discovery Institute, a right-wing think tank also pushing the anti-CRT issue, although the Discovery Institute is perhaps best known for their efforts in the early 2000s to encourage schools to teach the controversy between Darwinian evolution and faith-based intelligent design. I, isn't teach the controversy basically their whole argument for CRT now? Yes. It seems like it is. They're in the it teach the controversy argument. role now. Yeah. I know. It's ironic. Why is isn't too it? Con well, we can't teach the controversial history like all white people are racist fucks. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> well, you don't like that? That offends your sensibilities? We'll teach the also, controversy. Okay. Yeah, come on. It's just a controversy. <laughs> Let's teach it. All right, white people are biologically dis uh, biologically disposed to racism. What? Yep. <laughs> We're teaching that known as backdoor creationism interesting they have no back please backdoor creationism <laughs> oh he's about to make your point but or, or in the, the inverse and i realize the joke it. yes uh -oh. interest in teaching the controversy this time which is why it is not at all surprising that see he's like oh well, they're not interested in teaching the controversy this time it's like, wait a minute. So you're sh saying that your side is hypocritical because they want them to teach the controversy this time? Like, what are you talking yeah. about, Cody? Yeah. One of the authors of the 1776 report. I, I mean, they've gone so far in the pandemic stuff to say, you know, this is science. There is no controversy. Nothing to teach here. No controversy because we've all worked. We know the science. No controversy. <laughs> but here it's like, oh, yeah, there's controversy. We're going to teach it. Charlie tweeted that it's not enough to just oppose critical race theory. Republican governors, legislators, school board members, and parents need to play offense. Push for the Bible to be taught in schools. Push for prayer in schools. Push for pro-America curriculums. Put Marxists on defense. Charlie Kirk is a fucking moron. What the yep. fuck? Of course. But look. Vosh played nice with him because, you know, he's on the Tim Pool show and he's trying to... Uh... He's trying to win his audience, yeah. He's trying to win his audience, I know. God, why would you... Hold on. <laughs> this is interesting. Sam deleted his tweet. Oh, really? Yes. After we talked about it, he deleted it? I don't know tweet. when he deleted it. I just tried to click on it and it says, cannot be found. What's a, that? What was the bad tweet? Let's... Um, uh, let's... The tweet was, so much bad faith in the few minutes I turned into this... Adam friended at or at friended forever, uh, but especially at PSA Sitch. Ooh. Oh. You should have Cody and I on to set any tags, Cody, and I on to set things straight. Oh, he's just trying to get Cody interested in coming on. Cody, well, maybe he's friends with, maybe Cody DM'd him and said, listen, these guys I fucking hate. I don't think so. I think your first uh, impression is the correct one. What? He's trying to sucker Cody into being in a relationship with him. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's my. And maybe that's why he deleted it. He's clout like, chasing, like, basically. Yeah. And he's like, oh, right. my God, what did I? Uh, this was dumb. Yep. These yep. guys have no clout. What am I doing? 
they don't can have a, say they don't have enough th- clout to get me involved. <laughs> right. Can you say that your thumbnail is amazing? The one that I did. All the little Cody faces. Oh, so I know. Funny. I couldn't let any of them go. I was like, <laughs> which one of these should I? Oh no, they're all great. We got to use all them great. all. He's, He's all about the eyes. Yes. I the the thing here is back back to the the actual video. Like Cody's literally pushing for the the inverse of like he wants how is this any different than putting prayer back in public school so no you're right i don't you're completely right but charlie kirk loses all of his all of his anti crt cred if you're just basically saying oh you know we just don't like their prayer in public schools we want to put our prayer in public. we want them right. to pray to our god not their god right it's like come it's- on i thought we agreed just let's not pray to any gods it's funny because, you know, Sam and all these other people, they all hate James Lindsay. This is James Lindsay has explicitly said this. He said, if you only allow actual right wing reactionaries to be the spearhead against CRT, then they're going to push their right wing reaction. Totally. Views yes. Back into the school. Yes. And it has to be up to liberals and and not like left wing liberals, but people who are pro liberalism. Yes. Yes. Center right, center this. left. Yeah. Yes. People are like, hey, saying, we got a good thing here going. We don't need to fuck it up with all this nonsense. Right. And he keeps saying that that it's not a question of uh, liberal versus conservative. It's a question of Democrats and Republicans need to join forces to fight off leftists. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's a question of reality versus some sure. shared delusion but even though james Lindsay has explicitly said this he's still they castigate him as like a fascist right-wing nazi or something yeah yeah <laughs> so ridiculous. they can't tell they don't know the difference i know they can't tell the I difference no. empty bottle of monsters for a hundred dollars thank you so much empty bottle of monsters which is a cool name I like that. Yes. It says a longtime fan. Love you guys. You make me think constantly, reconsider things, and give me a bit of hope that people can get along even with radically different views. Thanks for everything you both do. A team's the dream team. Yeah. There Woo. There you go. Love it. I do love it. And that's, I mean, that's what we're really trying to do. Yeah. Are we activists? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, but John Smith sent me a very long DM mm-hmm. that's all about her going on and on the Discord about MPreg. I'm not sure why she's doing this. Oh, what really? was your point to sending me this, John? I don't I don't know why you're so into MPreg, John Smith. I'm not sure what's what you're trying to tell me here, but uh, okay. what's happening? I don't know. Like people on the Discord talking about MPreg? Yeah, she's sending me all this stuff about her talking about MPreg. Hmm. It's so bizarre. Very bizarre, John Smith. <laughs> I saw Kavah said something about Impreg in the chat about coming on and talking about Impreg, but it's bizarre because Kavah is has like an amazing channel. <laughs> I'd be more interested in talking to her about, <laughs> you know, like racism in public education. But I guess, I guess Impreg would be more interesting. <laughs> We had to check. It would be more. It would be. I know. <laughs> Adam, check your DMs. I have a feeling I'm getting. I have a feeling I'm getting DMs too. Adam, I sent you proof. <laughs> There's proof. Proof. Such is proof un- of John Smith's Mpreg. <laughs> Such is unreliable. Adam, <laughs> check your DMs. Proof of John Smith's Mpreg addiction and obsession. I know. Crazy. Are you lying? Did you lie? Are you setting? I her up? would never lie. Oh, you did. You did set about her up about anything ever. Okay. You never, did never, set never. her up. No. Fascinating. No, 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 no. I just noticed I have that guy's. I have that guy's. That guy's viral video. Benjamin Boyce shared it. I have it actually mm-hmm. um, bookmarked. I try to save my bookmark videos. Oh, the Ty Smith video. I actually unbookmarked the video, uh, the tweet of Scott Adams artisting me. That fucking, <laughs> you know. Do do you save tweets as like his history, his historical tweets that you want to? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta let them go. 
Sometimes you gotta let them go. Sometimes you say, <laughs> "I'm still laughing." Are you <laughs> laughing about the impreg? You're like la- John Smith. Oh, no, John Smith says, "Sitch, I'm considering joining a team." <laughs> John Smith is a team. She's always been a team. I don't no, know what you're not. talking about. What are you talking about? She's always she's S class, baby. <laughs> she might what? she might be a little upset by my light trolling. <laughs> I say out of love, John. I say out of love. Mm-hmm. Trolling. Adam knows this. Trolling is how I show affection. God, every time I go into my DMs in the middle of the show, it's a huge nightmare. It's like uh uh-huh, it's yes. like tons of DMs. Yes. Yeah. I now understand why the 1776 report promoted the idea that when families pray together, they acknowledge together the providence of the almighty God who gave them their sacred liberty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is all really just Christian nationalism and in support of American myths. And I know this is a lot to take in. but See, the real threat isn't the CRT shit that's all being injected into our schools and our workplaces and that you're not allowed to criticize because you get fired. The real threat is this mythical Christian nationalism that no one ever talks about and is not in any schools. And if you promote, you get fired. And was de- like decidedly put down 10 years ago when they tried to push for intelligent design in science class. <laughs> I mean, what the exactly. fuck? Exactly. Exactly. We, ha- we had this fight 10 years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They lost. Remember? <laughs> We beat him in court. We can't give up. Let's try to get to the bottom of it if we can. So remember how I told you that the short answer to whether or not critical. Oh, here we go. So we had Mm -hmm. 30 minutes of fuck, 37 minutes of character assassination. What what, and what about ism? Okay. So now we're finally decided maybe we should actually talk about the subject of the thing. Really? Why wasn't this talked about in the very beginning? Well, you're about to find out. Oh, this is a lot to take in, but we can't give up. Let's try to get to the bottom of it if we can. Do you you notice when he goes into actor mode when he's like obviously reading a script? Yes. He gets all serious. Let's try to get to... No, he's like staring at the screen. You can basically see his eyes scanning the words. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Look at that. Look, he's totally fixated on the word. He's got like a big teleprompter there. He's like, this is a serious part. I got to make sure I don't misspeak. Get this part right here. My my (laughs) eyes to the The cue cards. Yes, exactly. All very So remember I told you that the short answer to whether or not critical race theory is being taught to our children is nah, but that the longer answer was longer. It's time for that longer answer. Uh Because while it's true that critical race theory in the academic and legal and activist sense is not being taught to kids in elementary school, it is also true that many of the basic ideas and assumptions that critical race theorists make have actually found their way into the mainstream under- What? What? Fuck you, Cody, you fucking piece of shit. My God, after everybody. scumbag. After 47 minutes, he's finally going to say, yeah, it pretty much is. <laughs> he's like, the nah has oh become a, God. well, the nah has become a, <laughs> well, well. Cody just welled 40 minutes of ad hom and what about isms? <laughs> this oh is, my that's, God. My God. This is the biggest betrayal in anime history. <laughs> what are you talking about? Is it this? Did you see? This is the twist. This, I is, never a, saw this, this is a fucking twist ending. Hell yeah, oh it's a twist ending. Oh my God. Ending. This entire time, Cody's like, it's just a right wing conspiracy. Blah, 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 blah. But actually, all the conspiracies are true. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What is happening? Did somebody just get like a sodium pentothal or something? What Jesus happened? Who injected Christ. Cody with truth serum here? What happened? <laughs> You've been lying to us for 47 minutes. Oh, and now all of a God. sudden you have a change of heart. Oh. Let's let's let him continue. Maybe he goes deeper into this rabbit hole. Yes. Standing up kids in elementary school. It is also true answer. 
Because while it's true that critical race theory in the academic and legal and activist sense is not being taught to kids in elementary school, it is also true that many of the basic ideas and assumptions that critical race theorists make have actually found their way into the mainstream understanding of the history of racism in America. And conservatives actually do have good reason to be afraid of these ideas because they have the potential to completely decimate their ideology. Because as Kimberly Crenshaw, one of the pioneering scholars of critical race theory has said, Critical race theory just says, let's pay attention to what has happened in this country and how what has happened in this country is continuing to create differential outcomes so we can become that country that we say we are. And while this statement may first appear innocuous and uncontroversial, because it's mostly pointing out how the concept of time works, if you take this statement to its logical conclusion, it tears holes in conservative ideology and the myths about America that they are desperately trying to maintain in order to preserve their ideology. Because if we actually examine how our history impacts the inequalities of our present, and how those inequalities are maintained through our current system of social practices and laws, we might discover that the idea that America is a land of equal opportunity is a myth. We might discover that the notion of meritocracy is a myth. We might discover that a person's success or failure is not just a function of their individual choices in life, but also a result of a broader social, economic, and legal system that produces and perpetuates inequalities across generations. And if we learn that, we might become skeptical of the ideas of individualism and in turn, capitalism, and may become more receptive to the idea that our collective fates are intertwined. The awareness that the contours of our history play a substantial role in determining the nature of the opportunities of our present. Has just, I, I just don't... He said conservative ideology a number of times. What is he? What is he implying? The, the capitalism is the conservative yes. ideology. I mean, it's he, the libertarians yes. that are the free market fucking free market till you die. First of all, it, Democrats are not against capitalism. Yes, okay. that that too, obviously. <laughs> so yeah. saying it's a conservative ideology. Well, I don't know. Yes. maybe he's one of these people that says the Democrats are really a right wing party. The you know, conservative, like the conservative ideology is to conserve and preserve what is working in society. That that sure. that is the conservative ideology. So I don't right. necessarily know. Like there are these things that are like capitalism has a pretty good track record of at least delivering half a loaf. Like you can argue over whether or not I don't think any conservatives are saying like that it's presented us with utopia. Like some obviously believe that. You normally yeah. they're in pretty good straits, but you know. No, but he, he's probably one of these people that labels everyone that's not a communist as right wing. Right. Okay. So he's just labeling them all under the, 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 the umbrella of conservatism. But mm -hmm. more importantly, he's just gave the fucking game away. Yeah. So Cody is fucking admitted. This is a fr now. This is amazing because I've never seen any of these leftists yeah. ever be honest about this. Pretty much mask he's, off. <laughs> yes, he's gone completely mask off. He's actually made the truth that not only are all these foundational uh, axioms of CRT being taught in school, right. but that teaching them in school can make people become Marxist and right. want to create a revolution. The whole point <laughs> is to undermine revolution. capitalism. Yeah, he basically yeah, spells it right capitalism. out. Yeah. Yes. So this entire time he's been complaining about a fucking red scare. Remember the sections? I know. Where he was complaining <laughs> about a red scare. And now he's like, well, actually, they should be scared because we're coming for them. <laughs> I know. Jeez. There is no Joseph oh, McCarthy no. for them to be afraid of anymore. They're like in your face. I this know. is I'm telling you, I'm so glad we had the conversation about shooting the moon because this is You're literally right. him, him fucking Rufo oh was God, bragging so and now right. he is fucking bragging. He's, He's like, yes, doing... we're totally winning. Oh, you're so right. I didn't even think about that till you just said this. The projection is off the charts because he was complaining about Chris Rufo putting this in everyone's face and he's doing the same thing the exact same thing yeah. oh my god he's like guess what you're gonna lose suckers ha ha conservatard look what we're doing this is not gonna fly cody i hate to tell you this i mean maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong maybe the maybe this stuff maybe people are gonna eat it up but i you know i doubt it i just doubt it i don't see how you can I don't see how you can I don't see how this can survive. 
people really want their children taught that America is a racist nation? I mean, some people do, but I just, I can't imagine, you know, 51% want their children taught that. No, no. Yeah. No. Mask off, Cody. I know. Mask off. This is crazy. And if we learn that, we might become skeptical of the ideas of individualism and in turn, capitalism and may become more Hey, Sam, you want to debate us mm -hmm. on this video? Yeah, where is Sam? Is Sam coming <laughs> back on? Sam. Oh, shit. We never really, asked Sam, Sam if he's a communist or not. We Sam, asked is this Aaron, the video? But... You sure this is the video you want to debate on? Are we being very dishonest here? I feel like he's pretty much valid. He's come to validate everything we said. Receptive to the idea that our collective fates are intertwined. The awareness that the contours of our history play a substantial role in determining the nature of the opportunities of our present has the potential to entirely... I, I just, I hate this whole idea about how he's going to preach at us about how our fates are intertwined. Why do you think we don't want children taught that whites are fucking oppressors and and blacks are oppressed because our fates are intertwined you dumbass yep like yep. who's uh, excuse me sitch but are conservatives unaware that our fates are intertwined i, I kind of feel like that's the whole reason they're putting these anti-crt bills together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we can't have a, a, a nation of People who hate America. <laughs> our fates are intertwined, Cody. Wake up. Upend the status quo of our current social, economic, and legal construction of white supremacy and capitalism within our society. Look at that. He's, put, he's putting them together now. White supremacism yes. is capitalism. Oh, as, as someone said in the chat, maybe Sam deleted the tweet because he watched the whole video and he got to the end. <laughs> oh, he did? Maybe. No, it's like, maybe. <laughs> like... He tweeted that, and then he watched the video. Was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> I wish there was response because it would be nice. It would be fun to go through the responses because yes. I'm sure people jumped in immediately after we talked about it. They're like, "Oh, Sam, let's I fuck with Sam on Twitter." Well, I guess actually, no. He must have deleted it very quickly because there's no responses. To any of that, oh, okay, so. how do you know? I thought if you if you tweet something and delete it, and like I thought when you tweet something, you can still click on the responses if it's like on your timeline. Yeah, but only he would see those responses. We wouldn't necessarily see them without being able to click on the tweet. Um, I'm not sure that's true because I've hmm. I've incidentally found um, responses. I've found response replies to deleted tweets when I'm looking for the deleted tweet. And I haven't been able to find it. So, but whatever. We'll we'll talk to him. We'll ask him about it. We'll get to the bottom. We'll get to the bottom has the potential to entirely upend the status quo of our current social, economic, and legal construction of white supremacy and capitalism within our society. Dispelling these American fairy tales. The idea that conservatives want to uphold white supremacy is, yeah, sure, there's going to be some, <laughs> there are white supremacists that will probably call themselves conservative, but you don't, you can't conflate with conservatives with white supremacy. Sure. That's the same thing or, as saying because... You know, the crime statistics are what they are. All black people are criminals. That's the same exactly. kind of conflation. Exactly, yeah. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah. And it's just as dumb as conflating white supremacy with capitalism. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Tales, the foundational principles of conservative ideology. So he said it again. It's driving me fucking He keeps crazy. saying capitalism is conservative ideology. Meritocracy is conservative ideology. This is not, this is not true. This is American yes. ideology. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What is uh, not only that? I mean, what fucking meritocracy is now? The Democrats are against meritocracy. Good luck in the next election with that. Oh, we're a bunch of idiots. We don't care about meritocracy here. Fucking vote for us. Vote for us. We're so fucking dumb. We can't even. We can't deliver any of the promises we make because we don't believe in meritocracy. Yep. Bunch of nonsense. The art of I'm white supremacy so and cap nature this. of the opportunities of our present has the potential Wait. are inter I know I know I just, everything, everything he's time. saying is like insane I yeah. know this fuck the insanity content I can't he's like he why did he leave this <laughs> come on don't you watch destiny's videos you're supposed to put the insanity up front it's supposed to be well, no, see, center in the beginning he, here's what happened he figured that all the people hate watching this video would have turned the video off by now hell no only only the true 
believers in the true commies would have made it through all the way to the end. So he's like, okay, now that they're all gone. I'm going to pull the mask off and tell you what's really happening. We're going to clip out just this section. What are yes, you talking yes. about? That's this true. section's That's going true. to be front and center. Yep, yep. We might become skeptical of the ideas of individualism and in turn, capitalism. This is that that bugs me too because I mean, I've made videos on this. How can you say the the, the the they have a different name it's like communitarianism because they don't want to say collectivism but it's basically <laughs> like how, well, listen military is predominantly conservative right sure how can you say like when you join a military you're basically sacrificing yourself for the good of right your individualism fucking, yes yes group. you're literally putting on a uniform that makes you look like a hundred other guys okay right right Yes, I can't. It makes absolutely no sense. He does. He has no understanding of any of these. That's why when he keeps saying the ideology, it's like some fucking straw man version of the ideology. This is why the left always fails. They know your ideology inside and out. You can't even articulate their ideology. Mm -hmm. and may become more receptive to the idea that our collective fates are intertwined. The awareness yeah, that the- Yeah, that's what happens when you join the military. You come to the realization that your collective <laughs> fates are intertwined. The guy standing next to you is the, the guy who can, uh, could conceivably be saving your life. Right. What a fucking- The contours of our history play a substantial role in determining the nature of the opportunities of our present has the potential to entirely upend the status quo of our current social, economic, and legal construction of white supremacy and capitalism within our society. Dispelling these American fairy tales threatens the foundational principles of conservative ideology. The architect of this attack on critical race theory, Christopher Rufo, recently tweeted that we should teach honestly about the history of racism and injustice, but place it in the context of America's highest ideals and our steady progress towards achieving them. Cultivate a sense of agency and common purpose in children of all racial backgrounds. Wow, what yeah, a terrible what fuck, Nazi. I'm ready to fucking salute that. That's a fucking American <laughs> promise there. What yep. the fuck? Christopher yep. Rufo for president. What are you talking about, Cody? Yep. But the steady progress towards our highest ideals is another American myth. A myth that actually removes agency and obscures the role that reactionary movements have played throughout our history. Because if teaching the history of racism is limited by its adherence with this myth, then you are requiring that we teach a lie. Because the history of racism in America is not that of steady progress towards equality, but that of progress and backlash. We made progress during Reconstruction, and that was met by the backlash of white supremacist domestic terrorism and Jim Crow. We made progress during the Civil Rights era, and that was met by neoliberal austerity that weaponized the ideal of colorblindness and by the era of mass incarceration. And today, these same reactionary forces... I know you're laughing so for hard. Well, he's, he's, first of all, his whole, this whole point is idiotic, okay? He's like, well, it's not steady progress because it, goes for, it takes two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. I'm like, okay, so we're now we're quibbling over the definition of the word steady. Yeah, <laughs> like, totally. Just because you don't want to agree with what Chris Rufo said. Do how okay. look, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back is about as steady as it comes. What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, if you chart about? that on a graph yeah. and you zoom out, it's gonna create a steady slope. A steady <laughs> fucking direction. line. Okay. Listen. Right. Are who, you who was it? Who what famous civil rights leader said something about the steady progress towards uh yeah. what was it? What was the what was that arc, line? The arc of the moral universe or the the arc of the moral universe may be long, but it bends towards justice. Oh, he, what yeah. what kind of horrible racist said that, Adam? That was Martin Luther King. Oh, <laughs> Martin Luther I thought King it was Chris Jr. Rufo, honestly. I thought it was Chris no, Rufo. <laughs> no. Yeah. But then it's even funnier because then he, now he's casting colorblindness and mass incarceration as neoliberalism. <laughs> Not only that, he's mischaracterizing, again, critical race theory because critical right. race theory says, no, there is no progress. There is invisible progress. There is two fake steps forward and four yes. steps backwards. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. Progress is impossible according to critical race theory. 
holding back the enfranchisement of black people yet again and passing laws to restrict the way that the history of racism is taught in our country. And this is where the real danger comes for those of us who actually do believe in equality. Because if you see, that's another thing that just fucking triggers the shit out of me. Conservatives Never. believe that they're literally fighting for equality in this fucking CRT debate. What are you talking right. about? Yeah. You're, you're the ones that want to uh, perpetuate this idea that their people are fucking oppressed. Yep. Yeah. God damn it. It's you don't teach children the truth about how our history has produced and perpetuated racial inequality. Eventually, the we're talking about teaching that that racial inequality still exists today and is uh, detrimental to your ability to move forward in life. Yeah. And is inherent in the system and requires radical revolution to change. Yeah. Yes. That's the okay. problem that the conservatives well, have right there. It's like, what? Um, <laughs> imagine thinking. Okay, we used to live in a country. So we live in a country that, that had literal slaves. And yes. that did require a radical revolution to change. Right. Like we had a civil, civil war. war. Yeah. But then we lived in a country where we treated black people as second class citizens, we didn't give them equal rights. Right. But we were able to change that without a radical revolution. Right. We were able to change that through the laws and legal system that exists already in the country. Civil rights. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So imagine thinking that somehow whatever racial inequalities or racial problems exist today that are left over are yeah. that are left over are worse than actually than treating slavery. black people yeah. as second class citizens oh my God. okay and so we were somehow able to have the civil rights movement and pass all those laws without a radical revolution but now we're just so much worse that we need to have a complete overhaul of all of our systems yeah it sounds like somebody is looking for an excuse for a complete overhaul of all of our systems. It's, it's, yeah, it's, just it's almost, for absolutely you know, no reason whatsoever. It's just a coincidence that these Marxists just happen to be saying that we need to completely overhaul our country. I mean, it's not because they're Marxists, it's because of racism. That's the problem, yeah. guys. Because of race. I mean, it's also because capitalism and obviously white supremacy is inherently tied into capitalism, as Cody just said twice in a row. Right, but you know, yeah. it's just a coincidence. Citation needed, no evidence yes. whatsoever, but you know. I mean, it's well known that all those communists, like the Chinese, very progressive about different race and ethnicity, <laughs> cultural understanding. I was told during the George Floyd stuff to patronize black owned businesses, which makes mm -hmm. me think there are black owned businesses. What the fuck? I mean, well, we need to get rid of that because we need to get rid of private property. So. I know it's so ridiculous. Yeah. You know, the, the USSR, very progressive about race, mm -hmm. different races and different groups of people. Yeah. Very progressive. Yeah. How many black like, people are in Russia? Like five? I don't even. Yeah. Is it like a multicultural society at all? I'm sure. I'm sure when the USSR was totally fine with, with allowing all the Ukrainians to starve to death and mm. eat their own children. Um, but you know, even though they're basically the same race of people, they're just mm -hmm. different shades of white. I'm sure they would treat black people way better. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was hilarious. There was this video. Oh God, what's that guy's name? That the leftist youtuber I and mean, he this whole video about the space race mm -hmm. and he was complaining that america was spending money on going to the moon oh while, i remember that while black people were you know being uh you know poor and subjugated in america yeah and i'm like it, but then he's but the whole video is posited as he's comparing this to the ussr i'm like well what was the ussr doing <laughs> in that time period? yeah at the same time were they starving the entire <laughs> populations of countries in yeah. the space race or something? We're not going to talk about them, though. You know, yeah, they're sure a famine's going on. That's for sure. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> uh oh. Those kids will grow up and take a look at the world around them and notice that 
black people have a lot less wealth and are more likely to live in areas of concentrated poverty and are more likely to have violence in their communities. And without the knowledge of how these inequalities were created and perpetuated through our social practices and laws throughout our history. They're, they're fucking, the, hold on. CRT doesn't make the causal argument between them. CRT assumes racism. Yeah. It's fucking right. bullshit. It's bullshit. The first thing the, the kids are going to ask is, well, what's the causal connection? They're going to be smarter than the fucking teacher. Yep. These kids will be left with no other explanation for the racial inequality they see around them other than to conclude that there must be something deficient within the population of black people themselves. This is the oh my God. dumbest. Oh, my God. He's saying argument. who? <laughs> Who made, was this? I, this was like a Vosh argument, wasn't it? I, someone made this argument. They're just going to jump to the race essentialism argument. Right. That like, oh, well, if you don't talk about, if you don't blame everything at the feet of racism, then these white kids are just going to assume that black people are just inherently are inferior. inferior. I know. It's like, or you could just teach them the truth, which is that if you have a group of people who are basically subjugated for hundreds and hundreds of years, you know, it's going to take some time for things to even out. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, a, I know that's a shocking idea, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, it's not so shocking to be honest with you. Maybe it's their culture. Maybe it's their genetics, oh. but there must be something wrong with them because. See, I like that he's associated culture and genetics. See, it's the mm -hmm. same thing, right? Well, I just the there's a there is a detailed yeah. argument about the culture that people need to have because sure. they're 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 propagating a myth that business culture, academic culture, scientific culture is, is white. white culture. Right, and Cody is reinforcing this, and all yes. these CRT things are reinforcing. Yes, this. right. So if you want to. If you want to propagate that myth, then then you have a, a dangerous situation going on when you're demonizing the, yep. the 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 group that supposedly embodies this culture. People are going to want to be away from that culture. This yeah, there's literally and I talked about this before. There's literally a section in the CRT Delgado uh, handbook where he talks about. You know, you have two black people. You have the black guy that wears a suit and tie and works yep, at a law firm, yep. and the black guy that wears African garb and has right. dreads and is a music producer. Yeah. And that guy, the music producer, he's the good guy because he's not assimilating and integrating into white society. Whereas yeah. the black guy wearing the suit and tie, oh, well, that's problematic. He's yeah. just subsuming his culture to be white. Yeah. Like, oh. bad news. It's funny because it's, the same argument that they've so there, there's this argument uh, that's true to some extent, mm -hmm. which is that all the jacking off of the Confederate flag is kind of bullshit, and it happened not after uh, the Civil War, but it happened during the Civil Rights Movement, mm -hmm. and that the Confederate flag that we think of wasn't even really the official Confederate flag during the Civil War, huh. and so. And they talk about how a lot of these Confederate statues were built specifically to fight against the civil during rights the civil movement. rights movement. Yeah, they were yes, all built in the fifties and sixties. Yeah. And so they talk about how all that idea they were of that culture, them, basically, right? But that all this idea of like the quote Confederate culture was sort of not like it didn't it it, it didn't occur naturally. It was a reaction to some specific event, right? And it's the same thing with saying like, oh, well, all black people have to have dreads and wear African garb and like do specific things. Like that's not re that's not their real culture. That's them reacting to American culture and saying, well, we have to have our own unique, different culture. Yeah, we have to yeah. react to their culture and have something completely artificial. The CRT makes all of this ten times worse, though, because you're putting people it in promotes a classroom. It, yes. Yeah, you're putting people in a classroom and like you're calling it whiteness for heaven's sakes, white privilege, <laughs> white fucking. Like it's it's very transparent what is going on here. Why would you yes. want to be a part of this whiteness thing? It sounds like evil. <laughs> you want it. You want it. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can't be a part of whiteness, then we have to be a part of something else. Here, let's. What will be our culture? Well, but that's what's so that's what's so insidious and stupid about all this stuff. Yes. Because 
they're simultaneously arguing, we want to have black people organize around black identity. That's what mm-hmm. race consciousness is. You have to, black people need to rally around black identity. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we're going to demonize white identity. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, but what, so what you said is very valid. What do they expect white people to use as their identity? If they're saying there's no American identity and white identity is evil, what are they expecting to happen? Yeah. Oh my God. I know it's going to happen. You're going to breed a generation of fucking racist Nazis. Totally. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. You're going to have 20 year old kids that are fucking joining the. Oh, look, the Ku Klux Klan didn't have to get rid of racism <laughs> after all. Yeah. Uh, I know. It's sad, but that's true. Sad, but true. I tweeted that today about whether or not Candace Owens or Abram X. Kendi was creating more racism. And I just, yep. it's obviously fucking Ibram X. Kendi. Yep. So obvious. Because uh. I've been taught that all you have to do is work hard by your bootstraps and you will be just fine. So, in conclusion, um, oh. <laughs> My God! There you go. Stop. I want to see the the list of writers. How many people wrote this crap? Oh, is it just Cody? I'm or? sorry. We oh. don't have time for pleasant. Oh, it's in the end. In the right? qu- but there must. Yeah. Be- what happened? Um. Oh. The wall. Of- <laughs> the wall of patrons. Based uh, on American history, people should probably know. Written by. Will Will Gord and David Christoph Bell. Mm-hmm. Jeez, Cody doesn't even get a writing credit. He doesn't write any. <laughs> this is the mouthpiece for this. Yeah, yeah. These are the <laughs> communists right here. He's just the right useful here. idiot. Oh my Will, gosh. G- Will Gort and Christ and David Christopher Bell. They're the commies. Yep. There you go. Hosted by there Cody Johnson, executive producer. Oh, Kathy Stoll. She's got to be a commie. Oh no, wait. She's just. She's there. They're George Soros right there. <laughs> Well, she is executive producer. Listen, guys, producers get their hands dirty. Executive producers write checks. That's all they do. Write checks. Mm. Yeah. David Christopher Bell. Edited by. Um, edited by Greg Meller. Produced. You- see, produced by Nick Mundy. That's the guy that got his hands dirty. You got you to gotta be careful, okay? Because mm-hmm. that editor, I'm pretty sure Greg Miller is trolling. Trolling mm-hmm. these guys. The oh, amount really? of, or maybe it was the graphics guy. He might have caught it. Denisco. I mean, there was three examples of them displaying a graphic that completely contradicted what Cody was saying. What's this watched and enjoyed by Rufio? Well, there you go. Oh, it's... Rufio, like Peter Pan. Oh, okay. Heroes. Adam funny. Ruth. Let's see how many. Let's see. I'm going to look for Lindsay Ellis. Are these in alphabetical order? Lindsay Ellis has to be in here. David C. Bell, host and co-owner of Gamefully On. Oh, I found his Twitter. Did you see okay. uh, Lindsay Ellis accused Sargon of, like, simping her? Trying to, like, date her or I did something? see that. I did see that, of Fucking, course. So that's so crazy. She, she accused... Sargon of sending his brigade mm-hmm. of goblins after her and then also secretly loving her. Right. Even though, you know, he's married as a child. Right. <laughs> well, and, you know. You know, you know. And also, Lindsay Ellis is not even remotely attractive, but, you know, yeah. whatever. Let her think whatever she wants to think. Yeah. That's, That's so always weird. the common thing. It's like, it's so funny because they're so. They claim that all all men are like misogynist and sexist. Mm-hmm. And yet whenever a guy is complaining about something that a woman does politically, it's like, well, they secretly love them. They want to bang them. And that's why they're complaining about them. It's like, oh, okay, thank you. Who's, who's the sexist person in this situation now? <laughs> and there you go. There's your there's your wall of patrons. I know. Yep. And no, it keeps going because that's just heroes. So there's multiple now looking, tiers. Now I'm looking at John Smith's DM. Oh, why are you looking at John Smith's DM? Did you did you get any John Smith DMs? I did. Okay, I so did. you got the same ones basically. All that you mean all these Discord pictures? 
Well, I didn't get Discord pictures. Oh, I got a wall of Discord pictures. Okay. I got people talking about MPEG. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's picture, it's screenshots of of people talking about MPEG in the Discord. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, that's what well, that's what it is. It's a wall of Discord pictures. What do you okay, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I also got a picture from Dr. Diddler. Mm-hmm. That's a picture of John Smith in the chat. It says, John Smith, I do something edited out. Love MPREG. So there you go. Really? <laughs> proof, <laughs> proof confirmed. Thank you. Thank you. God, they have so much fun with that stuff. Those crazy <laughs> kids. Those crazy kids with their MPREG. I know. Sitch and I have to be the adults here. Oh, God, it's so bad. <laughs> it's bad. Why do we have to be the adults? I want to screw around and have fun on the internet. I'm not an adult. You can be an adult. Okay, good. I don't want to be an adult either. And if you're not I need being an adult, adult then... what's that? I need an adult. You need one adult? I need an adult. I am an adult. No. Nope. No, you're not. Don't do it. Uh, C. Hennessy for $20 says, only university class I ever failed was a class called Keywords to Social Media. It was all about activism somehow. Once I realized I wasn't going to pass to do my papers, I just debated my teacher till she told me not to come. Anymore. Oh my God. She gave up. Th- oh, an American hero. American hero. Uh, see, Hennessy, you are an American hero. I salute you. Oh my God. You get beautiful. double free will. That's <laughs> right. You get 40 free units of free will for being a patriot. Give okay. that man double free will. That's right. He says right. he's got free will to spare if he did that. <laughs> He doesn't even need the extra free will. But he's got it on hand. He's got it. He's got it. Impressive. Uh, Hot Diggity Demon. Hey, hey, Hot Diggity. Thanks for sticking around and giving us more money. Yes. Uh, For $10. says, serious question. You guys refer to CRT and woke politics as Marxist and neo-Marxist. They certainly have a similar victim oppressive subtext, but is that enough to categorize something as Marxism? So it depends on what woke politics i guess is being referenced specifically i'll stick with crt because it's more specific crt and i didn't realize this until i was doing the readings for it is literally marxism and the reason it is is because and and you can and i'll send it to you if you want you can look at you can just read the introduction of uh critical race theory the key foundings that form the movement Mm -hmm. critical race theory is all First of all, they say they're based off of critical legal studies, which they describe as Marxist. And then their whole their whole message is liberals are doing this wrong and we need to fight liberalism. And when you say, well, who's critiquing liberalism? Well, it's only two groups. It's the commies and the reactionaries. And unless the CRT people are secret right wing reactionaries, then they're the commies. They're the Marxists. So there actually is a very strong academic foundation that all the CRT stuff is literally coming from Marxism and that it's working towards wanting to deconstruct the country in a Marxian way. And that's why, and even that's why Cody kind of devolved into the end of the video of just saying, we need to, if they teach this, then it's going to teach kids to basically fight capitalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even the framing that he had, you know, going after the bootstraps and stuff is right. The Marxist to each according to his ability to each according his need is that's what it's all about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not, it's no longer about to each according to his effort. And, but, and here's the thing. This is where I get was getting to all these arguments with Sam and Aaron and Hunter about this and anyone I've ever talked to CRT about. Where do you, I don't see any liberals, okay, mm-hmm. cri- saying that liberalism is bad or wrong. I've never seen that happen. I see liberals criticize certain things that are happening in the country, but they never frame it like, I am a liberal and I think liberalism sucks. I've never seen that. Shockingly, yeah. I've never seen that. So whenever you have certain ideologies that are explicitly anti-liberal, like CRT, it seems to see, well, why are they anti-liberal? Because they're promoting something that's not liberal. Because they're promoting socialism or Marxism or some variation of that. 
Yeah. Yeah. I just, so much of it is, I, so much of the intuitions that they're stoking to promote communism are intuitions of wanting to help people, wanting to see people succeed, wanting to see of people course. move ahead. Of course. That's but what communism delivers none of that. No. And capitalism delivers all of that. Right. I mean, the, the study, the tests are in. Co uh, capitalism, win. You know, yeah. freedom, win. Yeah. Yeah. Communism, the lie that never dies. Yeah. Yep. Did you get the that idea book? That you died. said you were I did get, get that book. book. I'm listening to it, yeah. Did you notice, have you gotten to the Angela Davis part? Isn't no, Angela Davis, she's the intersectionality lady, right? No, that's Kimberly Crenshaw. Who's Angela Davis? Angela, Angela Davis is a famous like black poet that is cited very often. Angela Davis is not involved in CRT at all. Angela Davis. Well, CRT. I no no no. See, um, and she was a she was a you know, a political act, a big political act. Yeah, she was stuff. a big apologist for. She's in the right. like, the book is constructed where they have different communist regimes that rise to power, and all of the fucking. American intellectuals all just, oh my God, this is it. This is the big one. This is the one that's going to be totally successful. And we're going to be able to finally rub it in everyone's face. The communism works. And then all of a sudden, you know, things turn bad. <laughs> People start dying right. And then they just conveniently forget about all the positive things they had to say about it. She, <laughs> she's, she won the Soviet Union Lenin Peace Prize. So. Angela yeah. Davis did? Yeah, I know. Yes. They totally went. Yeah. Yeah. I do th remember someone saying that there was some connection between her and Kimberly Crenshaw. I don't remember what the connection was. Yeah. There was, I, I do remember hearing this, like that she was a, like her teacher or mentor or something. Yeah. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, though. But it wouldn't Angela be Davis surprising. proclaims she's a lifelong communist. Well, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know she was really the CRT. I think I was thinking of Kimberly Crenshaw, so I may have just got right. it wrong, but right. that book's pretty good. Glad to hear you're listening to it as well. Expanding uh, uh, your education. That's right. Kovar for $20. Says, was talking to V Radio about this, Adam. When I lived in St. Louis, the people that hated American blacks the most were my two black neighbors, one from Ethiopia and a family from Somalia. It was surprising. Yeah. Thomas Soul goes into this in the book Black Rednecks and White Liberals. And he is, talks explicitly about how, like, Blacks aren't a monolithic culture, okay? <laughs> there's a culture of, there's a redneck culture, and then there's a, like, button-up Protestant, hard, work hard and fucking have a family culture. There's a live fast, die young culture, and a, and a you know, work together culture. And uh, neither whites nor blacks have a monopoly on either of those cultures, right? There are plenty of white people that are fucking don't want to, you know, live fast and die young. Do a bunch of drugs. Mm -hmm. Live, live, die young, leave a good looking corpse, right? Um, I brought up the, the MLK quote. Righteousness. After our uh, condemnation of the philosophy of communism, Look at that. He says it right. He just says it explicitly. <laughs> After our condemnation, mm -hmm. how do you spend the word condemnation? Is that, that's, con that, the root of that is condemn, right? Yes. Which means like, get the fuck out of here, bitch. Means not in favor of. Right. In case you're confused. Yes. After our condemnation of the philosophy of communism has been eloquently expressed, because, you know, you wouldn't want it to be unclear. Yeah. We must, uh, with positive action, seek to remove those conditions of poverty, insecurity, injustice, and racial discrimination, which the fertile, uh, 
which are the fertile soil in which the seeds of communism grows <laughs> and develops. Communism thrives only when the doors of opportunity are closed and human aspirations are mm. stifled. Cody, you should read some Martin Luther King, man. He's no, no, no. the he's fucking too busy man. Reading, he's too busy reading the FBI's interpretation of Martin Luther King. Dude, is that... Hold on, is that unclear? This is from How Should a Christian View Communism? Let's uh let judgment roll down and the water uh as waters and righteousness as the mighty stream. Oh, I guess that's a quote from the Bible. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm not a good Bible guy. Strength well, but here's the real question. Love. How did Martin Luther King feel about impreg? Yeah, well, who, who I thought he didn't he impreg a lot of a lot of women. I thought he was like. Didn't he have like? Did he? I don't know. Well, he can only unpreg a man. So, this is the first printed volume of sermons by Mart, Doctor Martin Luther King Jr. The sermons selected deal with the personal and collective problems we all face in these days of grave crisis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In them, Doctor King has sought to bring the Christian message to bear on the social evils that cloud our world. I wonder if Dr. Martin Luther King was for prayer in public. I wonder where he would be on CRT versus prayer in public schools. He might be with Charlie Kirk. He might be, he might, he be. might have pressed like on that Charlie Kirk tweet. I know. That's why I said it's, it's I know it's bad. Cause I, I wouldn't be, I wonder, I don't, you know, he was not secularist. It didn't seem like, no, from, from not at all. Whatsoever. Not at all. Not at all. Charlie Kirk yeah. be like, look, Martin Luther King, Junior just followed me on Twitter. Okay. Right. Shut the fuck up, Cody. <laughs> I got the king on my side. That's right. Letters from Empreg. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the righteous Empreg. <laughs> Are you filling up my inbox with Empreg? Just reading the chat. <laughs> Empreg. People are going crazy. I gave up on the chat. I literally, I'm <laughs> closing the chat. Here, I'm Mpreg taking Luther King. I'm taking the chat. I am taking. Mind Wait, I think I here. There we go. Chat the God. The Holy Empreg. The Empregger's Handbook. You guys lost your chat ability. There's no, a... bring it back. The chat demands Empreg, Adam. Okay. Your chat. I I think I accidentally deleted the chat. Now what? No, no, no. The Empreg Corridor. <laughs> The Empreg Corridor. Is that like the narrow corridor? No, Corridor. Yeah, like the narrow corridor. Yeah, exactly. That's a great book. I love that book. Or what about the narrow Empreg? The narrow Empreg. Yes. <laughs> 12 rules for Empreg. Should I bring up some of these? Should I bring up some of the chats? I have a dream today that one day a man will be able to get pregnant. What's John Smith Just as saying? much as any woman. Kavah impreg <laughs> dissident. Hold on, this is that's this is old. This is from like June 9th. How long is this? What are you what are you looking at? These screenshots. It says it says June 9th, 2021. That's a long oh, time. Oh yeah, these ago. are yeah. Turns out if Kavah you, oh, was this was oh, the mastermind wait. behind Empreg the whole time. Yes. Sorry, my cat decided uh oh. <laughs> More proof, she says. Yes. So I guess she's saying that the impreg is from, this is from longer, because I went to the stream last time mm -hmm. and showed she was the first to say impreg in the stream, but now she's saying this, this, this disagreement goes all the way back to June, June 9th. Yes, that's right. This is a meme that's been brewing Kavah for quite some is time. first. Yes. Please Kavah. give us a palate cleanse with impreg in general. <laughs> How is that a palate cleanse? Cleanse. That's it's not the opposite. Palate. Yeah. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. Show the screenshots. Come what would us. be? What would be the? What would be a palate cleanse? Like a nice. I don't know. I know. Uh, Sitch and at and Empreg Forever show. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a palate cleanse. Empreg indoctrination. <laughs> Don't make me start posting impreg again. <laughs> Avatar, the last impreg. <laughs> Kavah says, I can explain everything. Well, what's to explain, Kavah? 
Kava says, if you find an artist who does mpreg, it's like a gold mine. Yeah. What it was to explain, Kava? What's to explain besides your mpreg fetish, Kava? I mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm pretty sure that John Smith secretly is into it too, and that's why she keeps bringing it up. But uh... I am interested. What is it? Is it like a? Is it like um? Is it a sexual thing? Is it like your? This turns you on. This idea of like men being pregnant. I'm yeah, super curious about that. That's like that's a good question. I mean, there are people that are into things like foot fit. Like, I foot don't right. turn me on. So, do you get any, critical mpreg theory? No. Do you get any I'm, any tingles from downstairs no. from the from Gross. foot pictures? No. Nope. Yeah, it's the opposite, right? It's nope. like game over. I'm As going CT's, to bed early. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I don't understand foot fetish. Yeah. CT says. Uh, John Smith was still the first who brought it into stream. It was self-contained to the Discord before. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know if if I is it okay if I this could be I mean this could be photoshopped or something. We've got Kava here with. Well, I don't know. Kava's being a little evasive because because at first Kava says it was just elaborate trolling, but now she says, "Listen, mm-hmm. this is a complicated question." Okay. So I don't know. That makes me think it's not as trolling. You know. guys should check out Kavah's channel. Kavah has some, some, some very good content some that amazing, has nothing to do with that. Yeah, some amazing, very serious videos. I might even call them academic. I right, like I don't know. I like it seems like she knows her you, shit. You're saying this as you display Kavah saying, "I love Emprex." So I know. Crying. I know. <laughs> not only that, she, she's literally changed her name to. Kava, impreg <laughs> dissident. <laughs> dissident. There you go. There you go. Dissident. Oh mm. my God. I store that right next to degenerate in my That's brain. Right. Where do you store? Where do you store dissident? What's worse, impreg or vor? I think vor is worse. I don't know what vor worse. is, which please. That's oh, the no. eating people fetish, swallowing people what? fetish. Cannibalism? Well, no, it's no, it, I don't know. It's like, it's like, like being swallowed, like not shoot. It's very bizarre. I completely don't understand it. I think it's disgusting, but. Char- yes. Okay. Dissident characterized by departure from acceptable beliefs or standards. Exactly. Kava Dissident. now says, I love Empreg in a specific way. What does that mean? <laughs> Well, maybe she loves it just to troll us, which I don't think so. Obviously, think, that's uh, completely acceptable, but I think, uh, I, uh, I think Kavaz, uh, look, it's fine. Look, I'm not going to judge you for being a filthy empregger. Oh, I'm we're not, gonna... we don't kink shame around here. You got your, I mean, that's not entirely true. Depends what the kink is. Oh, wait a second here. Dr. Yes. Diddler has a, a screenshot of John Smith agreeing. John Smith says, I do love empreg. Yeah. Maybe we should exactly. bring that one up too. Yeah. This show is just getting interesting. <laughs> we're just <laughs> we're just we might not have time for super chats with all no, this. No, we have to talk about all this. Know, we, have, <laughs> we have a lot we have a lot of digging to do here. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Did you bring up the the John Smith chat? I did, but it did yeah. a weird. It did a really weird thing. Uh, what happened? Holy shit! It's like a oh my god! You have to see this. It's incredible. I don't know how do I show you this. Put it on. What do you mean? Put it on the stream. Well, I did. I saved the. I saved the Twitter thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. I saved the Twitter. Uh, uh png right you know how you yes. save it sometimes it saves small or medium or large with right. it and you got to take that off yeah but it names the file like some computer name right right it named it g minus mm-hmm. impreg r <laughs> my underscore dot png wait take a you have to take a screenshot what of the, file the name. fuck take a screenshot of the file name I don't. There's an Empire conspiracy. I don't know how I can today. look at this. Here it is. Here's the one. It's oh and it also says John Smith. I do love Impreg. 
I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I, how do I? Can I? Can, how do I show the the file name? I'm not. Ta- sure you take I can a do screenshot it. of the of the file. I can't do. I can't take a screenshot while I'm. I got everything running off my screen. Oh, you can't. Yeah. Oh. Well, then I don't. Then you're not. Yeah. I don't know how to do it then. If I oh, send well. it to you, well, it'll probably change the file name though. Uh, yeah, because when I when I tried to, well, you sent it to me, because the one that Diddler sent me when I click save yeah. as, it's it's not that, it's something different. Oh, okay. But you can send it to me, maybe it will be the same. I don't know. I don't think okay. it's shot. So there you go, John Smith. I, I do, do love Rembrandt. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look shot at all. That looks so <laughs> legitimate to me. It looks very legitimate to me. Oh my god! So oh my god! <laughs> Did I get trolled here? What I'm is what's sure. all that space in there? No, that's just I John Smith just spaces out her words sometimes for no reason random. <laughs> it looks like Dr. Diddler might have put a, like some color over a knot. Like it might say no, I do no, not no. love impreg though. I don't think so. I don't think so. Hold on. Are these oh these might all be these might all be Photoshop. Look at now, that. No, Kava admitted that the the DM, the Discords were, were real. Oh, okay. She also says, to be clear, I have zero sexual interest in it. My love of Mpreg is purely academic. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. That's always uh, good to know. She says, uh, tell Adam to show the Photoshop I sent him. Uh, Which what, one? What did, what did Kava, did Kava we send just sent, I We just showed Dr. Diddler's Photoshop. No, no, no. Obviously. Did Kavar send you something? Dr. Diddler obviously did some Photoshop. Or Kava, I mean. Did Kava send you something? No, I got nothing. Oh. Send it to me, Kava. I'll look at your your. I think I might have blocked Kava. <laughs> Why? I don't want her sending me. <laughs> oh my impreg- god! Look at this. Look no, at this. I He's did. so terrified. I'm obviously, he preemptively blocked. I am obviously joking. Mm-hmm. No one blocked Kava. Okay. <laughs> don't get don't get the Steve Shive meme started about me. Okay. Oh, it says it's not a it's not a, a dis it's a Twitter. A normal tweet. It wasn't like a I'm completely DM or innocent. Something. Okay. Did you send? She sends you on on the normal twitters. I'm looking. Don't you okay. don't we have don't you have some super chats to read? Or this something? is more important mm-hmm. okay. than super chats, Adam. Okay. I don't see anything in my mentions. I don't know. He liked it this last week on Twitter. He liked it. Oh, my plate. I liked something on Twitter. You did. I just like randomly. Sometimes I like things I don't even uh-huh. really like. Uh-huh. I just my favorite uh-huh. thing to do on Twitter yes. is when somebody uh gets angry and insults me, I don't respond, but I like their tweet. Mm. <laughs> because it, I have this idea that it sends an air of confusion around them, like, what? That was supposed to be an insult. I've seen people do that. Yes. Oh, really? You do it too? Someone, Why are you no, copying I don't me? Someone has done it to me. Really? Yes. And I was just like, oh, that's funny. Oh, I, really? didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't insulted by it. I'm like, oh, pathetic. <laughs> I see nothing. So I'm looking through tweets Adam to like. I can't find it. I can't find it. Good. Oh, there it is. There it is. Adam saying, I love Impreg. Wow. I liked that. Uh, Could be. Yeah. You're you looking know. through my liked tweets. I was looking through your liked tweets. Yeah, there it is. There's a million of them. Uh, Adam, after two streams of cursed content, he still fights bravely. And then it's a picture that says, last man desperately fends off mobs trying to inject him with pregnancy oh, in yeah, the year 2020. Yeah, yeah. And it's you. <laughs> it's you being attacked by it looks like people with LGBT. <laughs> I do remember that. That was actually, that's a good meme. I'll bring that should- meme up. Okay, I'll send it to you yeah. since I assume you've lost it somewhere. I have, yeah. yeah okay. I'll send it to you. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, time for the Super Chats. No, there's the no time. Chats. We got to go. We got to do another Super Chat stream later. Uh, Kalvar for $20 <laughs> says, Sitch, don't take offense to Adam. His hormones are everywhere. His ankles are swollen and his nipples are tender. And he probably has to pee a lot. Not to mention his pickle, mayo, and chocolate cravings. There you go. Oh, is I understand. That, that's I understand. insinuating that I'm pregnant. Is that yeah, what's going yeah. on? Yeah, exactly. My nipples are fine. <laughs> no pain whatsoever. A- Adam is taking pregnancy like a champ. No okay. sensitivity at all. Adam is taking the preggers like a champ. 
Unfortunately, and I don't know why, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube is just sucking crap right now, and I cannot access the super chat sent before the stream started. Really? So there was a couple that I will have to get to next week because I literally cannot click on them. It will not show them. I don't know why. But well, that sucks. It does suck. It does suck. Oh, my God. Uh, the crappy robot for five pounds says, Sitch, comfort me. I was playing Hollow Knight and I had to kill the cute little mining bug that sings. Why? I know it's so sad. It's mm -hmm. so sad. It gets it gets corrupted by the by the blight or the light. It's so sad. They, you know? That is dark. You have to kill some cute thing in a video game. There's this little bug and it's singing this very cute song about mining. Mm -hmm. And as you visit it, like when you visit it a second time, it's kind of like seems kind of sickly mm -hmm. and then the third time it's like completely possessed and you have to kill it it's very sad that's awful sad. why it's would you cute. do something like that because it hollow knight's a dark game man. i would never play a video game that made me kill some cute innocent mm -hmm. thing of course unless you were running over it in your racing game that you like so much oh that's true wait a second yeah. i've murdered like <laughs> thousands of dogs in exactly that game. exactly yeah I should bring up some uh, Carmageddon just so people know what we're mm. talking about. Why are you putting screaming anime girl face on me? Well, that's what you look like when you have to kill the thing. <laughs> Why do I have to kill this cute thing? Oh, wait. No, this could be John Smith's avatar about her talk. I do love Impreg. <laughs> we have we have pictures to show. I'm not showing anything. These people... We They've lost a plot. No, 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 no. We have pictures to show. These people CT have lost has sent their you a, mind. CT has sent you like a million things to show. These people have lost their minds. A billion things, including, <laughs> including. Wow, Sammy G, amazingly, in like, a, in like <laughs> oh a second, God. had had just created the exact picture I asked for, and like literally the most perfect perfect rendition oh most beautiful god. rendition i could have ever hoped you have to you have to put this up here oh my god do you see what you see what i'm talking about no john smith sent a picture of the cat of her cat oh, why i don't know it's it looks <laughs> it looks ridiculous john 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 don't send adam pussy pics okay <laughs> it's like got its head in a wall what's happening don't Are torture sure just a are you sure it's not just a picture of a cat? No, it says here's my cat. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, here it is. Here's the yes, I do remember liking this. This is a hilarious meme. Here, I'll bring it up. Okay. I'll uh, bring your up pal stuff. Your pal Ashley for twenty dollars says, have to top up on free will because I will be late because next Sunday is race day. Wish me luck. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, where are you racing? What are you what are you racing? What do you race, Ashley? Race day. Yeah. And first of all, yes, you get your 23 units of free will that you can use to win that race. Is free will, if it's like a marathon, you're definitely going to need lots of free mm -hmm. will. You That's fucking true. better stock up. I don't That's know true. if it's uh, like if it's a motorcycle race, motorcycle race. Put in the, put in the regular chat, Ashley. What kind of race, yeah. what kind of race are you doing? Yeah. Yes, you're gonna need. I don't know. Do you need free will for car auto racing? You do. You do. I've done some auto racing in my life. Always really? illegal auto racing. Wow. Yeah. Look at you Look racing at you. in an alley. Amazing. With a, a friend of mine that actually oh. ended in a car accident. So that wasn't good. <laughs> uh, NP skeptic, who's added a wrench to the end of his name. Mm -hmm. Very smart for five dollars. Oh my god. Uh, says hi fellas. Hi. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks, mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. thanks for saying hello. Thanks for stopping by. What I hope you are not I hope you're I hope you agree with us that this MPreg stuff is really beyond the pale. <laughs> I hope you're on our side. Who are you talking to? The the chat. Oh. Yeah. Chat loves the MPreg stuff. It actually says they're doing autocross. So it is it is driving. Oh really? Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Good luck. Yeah, that's great. Auto erotic racing? Yes, that's right. One car has to impregnate another car. 
uh, weekend jail in the chat says, Sitch, I don't know if you guys turned off super chats. No, but I can't send. That's weird. That must be either something on your end or YouTube is screwing you. Never forget to send some platinum. P.S. Adam, look, P.S. Adam, look at my tweets sometimes, you know, silver too. There you go. Weekend jail. Check out his tweets, Adam. Weekend jail? Yeah. I'll check them Jack, out now. Jack of Spade. Well, put up the fan art. You do your job, Adam. What, put up um, the fan art. People what, work hard to make memes and fan art. Oh, well, I made the mistake of like trying to save it all at once when I should have put something up. What do you want me to put up first? I have almost all of it saved now. The so. Sam, the Sammy G one, the one okay. I asked for. <laughs> Is that the one you requested specially? That's the one I requested. It was somehow made like a magic appeared, appeared in in the DMs. I do <laughs> amazingly. Like, I do like Sammy G. She's got yes. her shit together. I love it. Look at this, Sitch, <laughs> you back a <laughs> Sitch, you back a desk listening to my Thursday stream, and you're crying and hitting me on the arm. <clears throat> there you go. And look at there you. You, you go. got your punk face on. I'm just like. <sighs> You got your I'm so cool again. face on. Yes. The the perfect Sandre Adam. I know. <laughs> Listen to my Thursday stream, you baka. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, I think we should change that to being the thumbnail for the for our show, right? <laughs> well, I could use it on my Thursday stream. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god, you should. Or whatever no no when i when i'm on your thursday stream i'll make this the avatar my there avatar. you go there you go <laughs> beautiful beautiful you should come on my thursday stream sometime man it's fun i do what do you mean i know you've been on a bunch of times yeah let me think do you want to talk to warren mosler about the jobs program <laughs> not really not really. you're not that's all you baby I'm that's all you baby so i'm so I'm so all over that. Warren John, might be stop. my hero. John Smith, stop saying that everyone loves likes my cat in chat in all caps. <laughs> that could be interpreted in many ways. Oh okay. yeah, don't say that. Stop, stop saying that, John. We run a we run a family friendly <laughs> stream in chat. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Jack of Spades for five dollars says it's your boy Cody Ray Conman Johnston back with another video. Oh, I like it. I like it. Hell yeah. I like it. Uh, Airplay looks for... like Job of the Hut, basically. Oh, John's cat. Yeah. Here, I'll... John, you gotta put your cat on a diet. Okay. I'm bringing it up. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna try to get. Uh, for my avatar on Adam show, I'm gonna. It's not just gonna be. I don't want it to just be my face. I want to somehow get Adam in there too, crying. <laughs> Shrink it all. Shove it all in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> shove it all in. Get me yes. crying. Oh my God, your cat is fat, John. You need to. Oh, see, yeah, you got it too. You need to. What's up with the, the in diet? the wall okay. picture? What you, I don't put it in a wall. What are you talking I think about? this cat might be suicidal, John. You should get it checked it's out. It's sitting on the laptop. What are you talking about? Really? Yeah. What are you what, in a wall? Here. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just fuzzy, really fuzzy. I can't. Tell oh, I it. guess it. I thought. I thought there was like a wall, like a. I think that's like a mouse pad wall. or something. Oh, okay. Cats like to sit in little boxes. Don't you know that? Ah. Uh. Listen, I'm a fucking expert when it comes to cat. I have boxes okay. all over the house. Okay. <laughs> Does the cat have a cloaca? That's the real question. The cat box thing. <laughs> the cat box thing is mm -hmm. one of my favorite things to do. To to set out a box that is too small for the cat, but just a little bit too small. So they just have to like squeeze into it. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Tell me you've done this. This well, is... I don't have a cat, but uh Oh, but yes, I never I've had a cat this, uh, when I was very young. Okay, but I don't remember. And it you yet. didn't do this game. No, I well, I'm pretty sure if I asked my mom, she would say that she used to do stuff like that. Have you ever done the put like the toy football helmet on the cat? No, <laughs> it seems a little mean. It's a little, yeah, it's a little controversial. That one is. <laughs> Uh, Airplay for four ninety nine says happy sixth anniversary of the SBJ Airplay discussion from the official channel of the Airplay documentary film hashtag Gamergate. That's right, guys. 
Airplay did a great Gamergate documentary. Check it out on their YouTube channel, Airplay. Hell yeah. CT's going crazy with the t-shirts, I think. Are all these t-shirts on the... On the... Um... the st- no, no, no. Th- I don't think so. They were... Um, oh. So there's a Jackbox game. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a Jackbox game where you make like t-shirts. Oh, okay. And so if they play it in the Discord, well, w- oftentimes they end up making... Okay. They have to make like Sitch and Adam themed t-shirts. Okay. So... Yeah, they're funny. Bring them up. Show them. Show them to the people. So these aren't legitimate t-shirts? Like, what if I wanted a t-shirt? Which Well, actually, you like, can buy that shirt, actually. Why not would us, I not? But through, but through uh, the Jackbox thing. Why would I not want a t-shirt that says 12-year-old should vote? I mean, that's with like a, my whole with thing. With a smiling bloody face. Yeah. You want that t-shirt, Adam? Oh, that's perfect. I love it. <laughs> I like the ice cream hurts my tummy, and it's a yeah. crying stitch. <laughs> By Diddler. Oh. Diddler did that one. Does God stay in heaven because he fears us? <laughs> hmm. It's a little upside down man on a skateboard. <laughs> and Harky did that? Harker did that, yes. And CT's at the bottom says, please don't touch me. My ugliness will rub off. <laughs> it's, a true, it's a picture of herself. Oh. Oh. oh, hurtful. Hurtful. That's so terrible. I know. Though she did the 12 year olds voting one too. So it's very funny. <laughs> I've been uh, all my debates have been officially memed now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, stacking damage for twenty dollars says Adam and Sitch hour one CRT arguments. Adam and Sitch hour eight Mpreg conspiracy. <laughs> also a team. Reign also Supreme a Burr. team reign supreme. Do you not know how to read the super chats correctly? Burr. I can't. I can't get a ch- uh, cat, guys. I'm allergic. Oh, that's such a fucking pussy cop out i can't i'm fucking listen i'm allergic to shellfish i eat lobster three times a year okay yeah you just have an epi (laughs) pen i do without the epi pen i don't care epi pens that's for pussies don't yeah but okay but this is okay what if you're allergic to shellfish but you have to eat lobster every day because that's what you're suggesting Mm -hmm. that's what you're suggesting Mm -hmm. with the cat thing yes I like, would do I it. Was, I would love I, lobster every day. What are you talking about? Lobster's so would, fucking expensive. I can't eat yeah, but it every you would, day. Well, okay, shrimp or something. I don't know. Something less expensive. Shrimp is not as good, though. But it's, it's just shellfish, I mean. Shrimp is not delicious. Because I, I was taking care of my friend's cat mm-hmm. uh, when they were away mm-hmm. for the week. Um, so as long as I like do it in time, break breaks, I can tolerate it. But I took care of a cat once. Uh, for 48 hours and i was like oh god i was like the, the last couple of hours are starting to get to me i'm like this is a problem mm-hmm. this is a problem yeah that sucks yep are no, you allergic sad, to the the fur or the spit i couldn't tell you you don't know because that's there's you. a i don't know i had another friend that was allergic to cats it, this was probably... an important distinction he made Probably the dander because mm-hmm. dog dander bothers me too. Oh, there you go. So I know that there are like special hyperallergenic dogs and cats you can get, but, mm-hmm. but uh, what's going the on? The Wooster just sent a bunch, a, a super chat with a bunch of N words in it. So I guess I'm not <laughs> reading that one, Wooster. Really? What happened? It's, I think he's quoting some song or something. Uh, Grassroots Dictator for 199 says, Cody Baldspot Johnson, also MPREG. Wow, that was prescient because that was at the beginning of the stream. Yeah. Beginning of the stream. Cody does, is trying to make it look like he has a lot more hair than he actually does, I noticed. Fitch mm. should get a pet weasel. Oh, there you go. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. Okay. What's going on so, in this picture here? CT made these awesome buttons. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, one of them is my painting. Yeah. The one in the middle. Yeah. I don't think yeah. I ever finished that painting. No. Oh. I got caught up on the comic and now I'm like, I go. can't fucking paint anymore. I'm drawing full time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fucking 10 hours a day. Hypoallergenic cats are turning the monkeys gay. Yeah, I believe that. Really? That can happen? <laughs> Supposedly that can happen. Dude, can I mean, imagine? I believe it. That sounds legit, right? Well, gay monkey, it's like sneak into your bed and sodomize you. Oh, my God. 
That would be dangerous. Wake up with a I, I don't monkey know if, dog. I don't know if monkeys can differentiate like the sexual orientation of humans well, to my, an extent that it matters. Okay. You don't know. You might have no, a monkey know, dick right. in your know. ear. He might. Just you could have that. Up. You could have that with a straight monkey. I'm the I'm, I'm saying. I don't know if the sexual orientation of the monkey makes a difference. That's oh yeah, I'm you're saying. right. Yeah, <laughs> they don't care. They'll fuck anything that moves. That's true. Yeah. John Smith for two dollars says Sitch already has a pet weasel. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. You. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got him. I'm nobody. Got him, pet. John. Hua! Thanks for the layup. Good What's job. this one? What's this one with the book? <laughs> New Evil Angeles Times. Uh, oh, I gotta find my Twitter. I got the giant fat cat open. There's no way that you. Oh my god! Look at that. That's actually pretty cool. A cat in the middle of the street. <laughs> August twelfth, twenty twenty one. Hippo size oh. cat malls Bo children cat. and city hall. Oh my goodness. So Magor made this uh, very real news article <laughs> about the evil hippo-sized cat we talked about. Hippo-sized cat mauls children in City Hall. Elementary had, uh, elementary, oh, blank school, uh, school elementary had this to say about the incident. My daughter, John. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My daughter, John, hasn't stopped reading about, hasn't stopped reading since the monstrous cat attack. She wasn't hurt, but I think the event traumatized her. Oh my god. Probably so. That's funny. Oh wait a minute. I I'm sorry. I read from the I started from the wrong spot. Let me start over. A hippo-sized cat rampaged through Gray Mantis Elementary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gray Mantis. <laughs> Attacking several children and two teachers, leaving four hospitalized and one child dead. Ouch. One of the injured teachers was Bruce Danimal, said that the gargantuan cat initially approached some children playing Foursquare. It looked like the giant cat wanted to turn playing four scare with the children, said Mr. Danimal. I thought that this would be a good opportunity for the children to learn how to take turns in a power imbalance situation. I must have got impatient because after about 15 seconds, the cat swatted the ball away and swept the children's legs with its tail. Ouch. Uh, Matt Smith, a parent of Gray Mantis Elementary, had this to say about the incident. My daughter, John, hasn't stopped reading since the monstrous cat attacked. She wasn't hurt, but I think the event traumatized her. After assaulting the four square players which we here in Florida call box ball. Uh, the humongous cat continued its rampage by toppling three basketball hoops, pulling a child out of the tube slide and leaving a massive turd outside Miss Tweaker's classroom door. <laughs> the cat then left the schoolyard before emergency personnel could arrive. After leaving the school, the whereabouts of the giant cat were unknown for a period of three hours when the hippo-sized cat reappeared with a horse-sized duck at the new evil Angeles City Hall. The duck and the cat spent 20 minutes harassing government employees and chasing personnel away from the building until NEAPD formed a perimeter trapping the creature. Upon being surrounded, the hippo-sized cat knocked over the bell tower, freeing the city's crime bell. The horse-sized duck then picked up the bell and fled with, while the giant cat drew the attention and gunfire of the NAPD. It's a nice untitled Goose Game reference. The hippo-sized cat succumbed to the gunfire, collapsing on the Jonathan Haight Memorial. <laughs> wow. However, while medical personnel approached the hippo-sized cat, the cat used one of its nine lives to revive and flee into the city. Neither the whereabouts of the cat nor the duck are known as of publishing. Dr. Diddler, a well-known community psychologist, says that there is a bright side to this tragedy. Many therapists and counselors will have blank. It's cut off. Oh my God. We'll have made money probably from the incident. So there you go. Awesome. Thank you, Magor. Thank you. That was look at fantastic. That. That's a great, that cat does not look, I don't know, maybe it looks hungry. I don't know. Looks Cats dang. never look threatening and until they are threatening at him. Right. That's the trick. Yeah. Okay. Until they get you. Look, he's got a little cat carrier there. He's like, come on. Yep. <laughs> get in the box. He's... Get in the box. <laughs> <Get> the... <laughs> It's like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to work. Yeah. If that's going to work. Maybe no. Maybe run no. the other direction. Right, right. Uh, Max Utabi for 10 SARS SARS says, would Adam reject human instrumentality project? I don't know what that is. I'll look it um, up. 
that's the thing from Evangelion. What is it? The that was the the secret goal to bring about forced evolution. The end of Evangelion, where everyone's clapping and saying thank you. Have you seen Evangelion? I don't. Remember. I don't think I have. No. Oh, okay. You probably like it. So it's all artsy fartsy. Uh, Real Oz Ten for five dollars says, "I don't like how people bring up that Runhouse only hit criminals. You shouldn't bring it up because it doesn't matter even if they're model citizens." True. Yeah. Well, it was there was some context to why he brought up on Thursday that was relevant. It wasn't just random. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what the context was. I just remember there was context. Uh, Doctor Diller for five dollars says, "A team eats steak with ketchup." Mm -hmm. and is bullied by swarms of passing elementary school children after his lunch money s class is best class well i have been tortured by mobs of elementary school children there you go and i have there eaten steak with ketchup what's wrong with oh on. my god what's wrong with ketchup that is on your steak? awful i don't do it often but awful Sometimes my dad does that. It's amazing. Really? Holy shit. That's hilarious. we'll go to like the fanciest. No way. No yes way. way. We will literally go to no the fanciest. Way. Like we'll go to like Ruth Chris Steakhouse or oh my god, fancy steakhouse, Ruth Chris. And he will fucking ask for ketchup on his steak. No way. They yes have way. all the different yes stuff. Way. They have like I know garlic butter and stuff. Oh I, my know, god. I know. It's so I good. Know. He'll want. He'll ask for the ketchup. Garlic it's butter. so embarrassing. Passing up garlic butter on steak for ketchup. <laughs> it's oh my god. That's uh, <gasps> that's a super. Criminal. I could just faint from the shock. <laughs> mm. uh. Uh, Max Utabi for another ten stars. Thank you, Max. Says lens equals assumption. CRT equals assume racism. True. True. Yep, yeah, it's exactly how it works. Unfortunately. Uh. Kirak for five dollars says, "I'm pretty sure Adam trusts whatever the last book he read is." Not true. Not true. No. Well, I mean, I I've read lots of books that I thought were fucking garbage. Mm. Yeah, happens all the time. Sometimes I pick like that debt book, Five Thousand Years of Debt. Oh my god, mm. he drifted into the commie, commie, commie stuff pretty quick. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Sandy now for five dollars says I won't discuss CRT with anyone who doesn't understand the different views of Mal Malcolm X versus MLK. Then it's easy to explain why CRT is bad. It's anti MLK. True. Very true. Yeah, most people Very don't true. know that shit. Uh, Chase for one dollar. Thank you, Chase. Mm -hmm. A hippo size cat. Uh oh. There it is, guys. Hippo size cat. Oh, Very hippo size cat just chatted too. Uh, says I've I'm gone for only six hours, and I come back to this hit piece. I will not stand for this <laughs> blasphemy. I use my free will for good. Well, that's not what the article says. Hippo size cat. That's not what the article says. I brought there you go. Look at that me. duck. I know. Look at that goose. Fucking power duck. Is that the gate that? The who was the name of the, the people, the Klauskis, that had their guns on the lawn? Oh, I don't know. Is it you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Never Is underestimate that the, the power of a duck. Is that duck, the duck and cover. That, Is that the duck that uh broke the Klauskis gate and allowed Maybe. the dirty Antifa people to come in? I that's, believe that's that's the Black Lives Matter duck right there. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Duck uh, lives cat. matter. A post size cat for another five dollars says, "I've been using my free will responsibly." And they put "responsibly" in quotes, so it lets you know mm. how you feel. Oh yeah, I know what that. I means. won't elaborate because then we'll just end up in a debate about Sitch's law. More free will, please. Well, despite the article, you get another five free units of free will, plus the other five that you got for your previous super chat. Mm -hmm. A size cat. So there you go. Uh, T. Newberry for $5 says, many of the teachers I work with openly talk about how their classes are based in CRT, but they just lie to the public and the useful idiots accept it. There you go. Do the kids that's... like that? I don't know. Probably not. Do the kids like that? Yeah. Uh, so this is a picture from the Jackbox game Dictionarium where you make up a fake word. 
and the word is populous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the definition of a populous, calling pop pop and not the inferior soda. <laughs> Derived from the word fizzy wisdom. Quote, F fizzy the, wisdom. The war between the sodomites or the sodomites and the populous was a long and hard fought one that in the end accomplished nothing. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Were you did, were you playing in this Jackbox game? No, I was not. Oh wow! No, I wish I was. Dictionarium. Uh, Sean Sullivan for five dollars says a team accidentally calls the teacher mommy. <laughs> oh my god! Have you ever done that? Is that happen? I've never. Unfortunately, I've never done that. Really? I've been in classes where people have done that. But really? I, yeah. What were their names? <laughs> I don't remember. It was very rare. Mommy. Uh, a team accidentally calls the teacher mommy, where S class stays after for quote extra credits. Oh Ooh, my wow. god. Holy this shit. is why S class is a best class. <laughs> Have you Ooh, seen Sean? That? So true. So true. Have you seen that video on Twitter? Mm-hmm. Where the girl is like doing, she's like set up her computer to sing a song. She mm -hmm. starts singing and then her mom runs in and accuses her of sleeping with her chemistry teacher. I have seen that video. That video is insane. Yes. And she, she proffers the excuse mm -hmm. <laughs> that she was failing chemistry. Like, what the hell was I supposed to do? Yeah, that, that kind of. So for those of you who don't know, there's this, this viral video of like, it's really sad. Like, it's really disturbing. This girl's like singing a song and her mom runs in the room and it's like, you slut. Yeah, you're did out you of the fuck, house, basically. Did you fuck your chemistry teacher? And at first she says no, but then it becomes, well, I was failing. So I guess I, I had to. Yeah, teacher. exactly. And then her mom kicks her out of the house, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure is the right move in that situation. Well, maybe she didn't kick her out actually when she cooled off. We only, we maybe. we never saw the maybe. resolution of it. That's true. That's and maybe true. it was like a fake thing. I mean, that would be pretty easy to fake, and it would easily go viral. I don't know. It felt real. Oh, it does. It feels very real. Yes. It did not feel fake at all. The re the way they were reacting to each other and the language they were using. If that was fake, that was like some A tier level acting. But yeah. I think it was real. Well, I you, I, the only reason I bring it up is because that's S class. S class stays after, stays after class for extra credit. Yeah, you, but I'm, but as a guy, you know it's I mean. okay. It's okay for, for younger boys to bang older MILF teachers, mm -hmm. right? Have you seen that South all Park? All S class is all guys. Nice. I mean, you said it's S class, so there's no female nice. S class. Or... That's not what they're saying. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess if you're failing chemistry, S class has to stay late. <laughs> What are you going to do, right? Adam, look at Adam. She's jealous. He's jealous. He called the teacher mommy, but S class got the mommy milkers. Okay, after class. Oh so he's God. jealous. Oh my God. You're Wait the one that it. you're the one that said that video is sad. You that video literally is sad. said it's okay. sad. It's sad. The saddest part sad, of the video yes. is that like she cannot sing at all. I was thought, oh my god, oh my holy god, Adam. shit, Adam, 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 Adam. this is awful singing. What's shit. happening in this video? <laughs> and then it took a way dark turn, like a way way dark turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on, uh, this, this it has to be staged. I mean, they would have tracked down I that teacher. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Oh, Adam Friended's world's okayest. Pokemon trainer. This is a CT picture. I love it. Adam Friend is world okay, a Pokemon trainer. Mm -hmm. And you got a Magikarp. My Magikarp. Lasers. That's Magikarp is my Pokemon. That is your Pokemon. The Don't chain Leviathan Magikarp. Magikarp, yes. Don't fuck with Magikarp. Okay? He's got eye lasers. <laughs> That's great. I love it. That's an awesome picture. This is an updated. Yeah, this is good. Look, I got the little Pokemon thing. I like that you're the world's okayest Pokemon trainer. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> what happens if you set two of those Pokemon balls together? What do you mean? I'm just curious what it would look like if you had two of those Pokemon things side by side. Anyway, I'm let's not move even on. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
the fake the video was fake and they were actors really that is some i called it amazing I acting fucking nailed it oh my god that I is some nailed it that is some fantastic acting Holy did i shit. nail it or what Chat that is amazing up. good shit wow Impressive. am i allowed to laugh now can i have some fun can then i laugh, can laugh at the stupid yes. come yes. on she was failing chemistry sitch she had to fuck him <laughs> Yeah, sure. What Feminism. Uh, Dr. Diddler for $2 says, Sargon voices mm. deep throat of support for Mpreg. Oh, I believe that. No, nah, no. Nah. Sargon would be like, degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> you a degenerate. Uh, underplay creations for $2 says, I will keep saying it. Critical race theology. Yeah, we forgot. Oh, we my God. That. That's a good one. Yeah, that's, that's a good so one. perfect. Oh, look. Yep. Oh, this is adorable. There's the adorable uh, Sitch and Adams. Uh, I don't see it yet. Well, don't look at it. It's too adorable. You'll start crying. <laughs> S class is very emotional. You got to understand. Oh, there you go. Those are these are adorable CT Sitch and Adams. S class. Chibi Sitch and Adams. Why am I wearing underwear? Mm -hmm. Why were my pants? Why am I in my underwear? Look at that. S class leaves the house and forgets to put their pants on. <laughs> uh, so A team CT... never wears any pants. <laughs> so CT uh, did some polling. Yeah. First one says, "Is PSA Sitch wrong?" Sixty nine percent said yes. Thirty percent said no. Mm -hmm. uh, CT said, "Is friended wrong?" Mm -hmm. Sixty six percent said yes. And thirty four percent said no. holy shit. I'm getting this framed. What well, wait a the minute. hell? Do you notice you notice a little difference here? So in, in the PSA Sitch wrong one, there's only 55 votes. Mm -hmm. But in the friended wrong, there's mm -hmm. 97 votes. Yeah, but that's the thing because you know why that is though? Yeah, because I called an A team. I was like fucking because you retweeted it. You I... tried to tip the scale. But the but fuck you, Sitch. Even because... with your scale tipping you only got three points on me motherfucker <laughs> Dude, listen here's the story though like it i was doing better i i was like 59 percent. okay uh -huh. and i uh -huh. thought oh i'm gonna blow this away watch i'll retweet i'll call in the a team and they started voting against me i was like what the fuck what the fuck Serves i'm seeing like right. i'm seeing 59 i'm seeing Serves 62 right. i'm going don't fuck with me, guys. What are you doing? Stop <laughs> it. Right. That's the karma. That's the karma right there. I know. I should have quit while I was ahead. I'm glad I just I'm glad I beat you. I'm honestly surprised I did. CT says you retweeted it twice. Wow. Really? <laughs> twice. twice. I was trying seven. to I was trying to have people take pity on me. I was losing ground. <laughs> I was losing ground fast. I was getting in says, big trouble. CT says, "I just assume you never leave the pant the the house sitch, so you have no need for pants." I guess that's fair. I guess that's fair. Don't leave the house. That's true. Um, and then the last poll, <coughs> excuse me, the last poll. <coughs> mm -hmm. I'm dying. There must be a cat nearby. Yeah, it cut out. Your mic cut out though. <coughs> crazy cop. That's fine because I was dying. Uh, the last one poll is who is smarter, sitch or friended? Six point eight percent said. Adam. Oh my god. Thirty percent said Sitch. Right. And sixty-two percent said CT. I didn't even yeah. see that poll, to be honest. There you with go. You. Yeah. There you go. I missed the I missed the Who's Smarter poll. Together, yeah, because but... you know why? Because I'm smarter, so I did see it. Did you retweet it? No. I mean, because I, I want it to be real. I, I got to tell you, I don't disagree with these numbers. To be honest, oh, there, you go. Like, there you go. I'm not super. I, uh, guys, intelligence nice. is highly overrated. It really is. <laughs> okay, listen. <sighs> you don't want to be intelligent. It's too much work. It's too much mm -hmm. goddamn work. Just be oh. chill. Put on an audio book. Do a little dab. You'll feel better. <laughs> Someone just sent me conclusive proof that John Smith loves Mpreg. What? But oh, I think John left, so we'll have to bring it up next week. Okay, good. John said that they were going to bed. So. Good night, John. Don't good night, um, John. 
Have sweet and preg dreams. We'll have uh we'll have this queued up for next time. I think I only yes. have one last thing that I didn't share. This um, I don't know what this is. This is this confuses this is like how to confuse a boomer. Show them this. Is it all the pictures of all the, the avatars that were fighting? I, I guess. From Champed Up. Okay, it's Champed Up. It's a game. Yes. Yeah, it's, this is a game where you have to create a bunch of avatars. Mm -hmm. You get a prompt, but you don't know what the... You like it, The way it works is it's like you'll get one prompt. It says, like, make the champion of something. Mm -hmm. And then for the second drawing, you don't get the prompt. You just see the person's drawing, and you have to come up with something that's going to fight against them. Oh, okay. So we got the champion of good times. We have excited Adam and Wormy with a clock. <laughs> what? Wormy got my clock. Damn that like cat. That. Champion of sin. You have King Noodle Panda and Sitch with the Panda Express. Oh, man. I got some Panda Express in the other room. Yeah, Just, fuck you. Yeah, it's my Panda Day. You know how I roll. We got champion of breaking hearts, and it's Sitch holding three leaves. <laughs> and Adam saying, I have to... Mm -hmm. What does it say? I have, I have to, to leave. I have, I have to leave. To leave. Okay, oh, good. I get it. Adam is saying I have to leave, so Sitch has three leaves. Oh, okay. <laughs> Champion have, of living on the edge. Wormy with leaves. a Glock. And edgy boy. Champion of cuddling. Mean Adam closing the door. <laughs> and Wormy with, with a cutesy face. <laughs> that is the sound. Oh, God. It gets so bad. Wormy's a little uh, well, bitch. This is a special shout out to Grem Grimetal Skimit. <laughs> this mm. looks terrible. Uh, and the champion of Florida. There's Sitch, champion of Florida. I'll mm -hmm. take it. Here we go. Here's the here's the most important one. Champion of sidekicks. P mm. P S A Sitch. Mm -hmm. And just Adam. P P S A P P Sitch. P P S A Sitch. Oh. With a peep with a laser going pew pew. And just Adam with a harmonica on ice. Mm, cool. But here's the thing. You got all the votes for champion the sidekicks. So I guess that's proof. That I'm the that sidekick. You are the sidekick. There oh, you go. There we go. There you go. All this time I thought we were talking about psychics. And now it's sidekick. I thought uh, I was the show psychic. I was going to read your palm. Champion of not here to make friends. We have a giant evil squid versus the evil short oh, mech with the Adam one? shorts. And the last one at the very bottom. The champion of looking dope. Uh, Sitch. Mm -hmm. Versus CT. I can't, I can't read what it says. Sitch word. Ha ha. Do I win now versus CT? There you go. Mm. And who won? Let's see. I don't know. It doesn't say it doesn't show the votes. Damn it. I'm going to say that I won. Yeah. So I don't know. You CT's would. pretty dope looking. With her glasses and her half and half sweater or jacket, so I'm gonna shrink this go. down to that adorable picture of Wormy. Oh my god, <laughs> Wormy with the hearts. Uh huh. Wormy has amazing blue eyes. Just so you know. Oh, there you go. He looks very sad when he. This is what he looks like when he looks at you. Mm -hmm. He looks very sad. Please, Bernuski. Bernuski for ten dollars says, "I don't think it's useful to call this stuff woke." That just trivializes the problem. Just trivialize what the problem uh, this is. I think we should call it neo-racism moving forward. Yeah. The name of John McWhorter's new book is Woke Racism, which is well, I'll be good. right back while you talk about woke racism. God, you're wait, I can't even read a super <laughs> chat. What are you doing? Talk about neo talk about the woke what, you racism. Gotta book run? For like Ten seconds. Okay. I'm I'm gonna blow my bladder is ready to blow here. Okay, okay, okay. I'm about to I'm about to impregnate myself. I'm gonna read <laughs> I'm going to read a super chat. By weekend jail for $5. Five American dollars. Five dirty, dirty fiat dollars. Five central bank dis, uh, dispensed. A dirty audit the Fed central bank dispensed dirty fiat dollars. Weekend jail says. For five fiat dollars. Did I mention it's fiat? Not crypto. Not strong money. Not uh, sound money. Money that makes sounds for people. 
but uh, but um, fiat, which is just by decree, basically, you know, some by fiat, you basically say this is worth this much money. That's why they call it fiat. It's obvious. It's like basically oppressive as they dispense it to you. Oh, wait, there's another super chat. Now I have two super chats to read. I better hurry up. I can't do the long dollar amount intro on the next one. So I'll have to I'll have to speed up the next one. It's it is five dirty fiat dollars on the next one, but this one weekend jail for five dirty fiat dollars says at any rate, thanks for being my autistic Sunday fam. Uh, pickled herring, platinum. Love you guys. Uh, with a heart, little heart emoji with the the less than and the three. It's okay if you don't love me back. I'm used to it. IRL. Well, that's sad. Fucking okay. We can love you back. We can jail. It's not that big a deal. But you need to get a a a, a real life relationship with it. Another human being that that does love you, though. I don't want you to think that I'm anti love. If you I have, don't think you need a relationship with anyone. No don't bullshit. Don't listen to this guy. He's. I'm trying to get his love life in order, but it, you know, you, you need to have a relationship with someone that care. It's but like life is the buddy system. Okay, you need a buddy that has your back. You need to get. You need to get in the trenches and get someone that cares about you. Don't listen. Whatever you do, don't listen to the MGTOWs. Don't listen to these real down and out people. You know, you can find someone that's that's in your league that you can care about. You just have to take some work, but it's worth every, every bit of the effort. It is. Oh yeah. Cat. True. True. I, uh, you missed, I almost started talking about MMT just over the $5 fiat. <laughs> there you go. I can't, I only read one. I was going to bust through like five super chats. I know when you didn't. And I only got one done. Shame, I'm shame, terrible shame. at this super yeah, chat. Oh, holy shit. I could have backed up to wait. Weekend jail has a ten dollar super chat. There's tons of super chats. I yeah, I know. I know. Oh my god, there is. I'm fucking terrible here. Yep. Uh, Metalworks 41190 for two dollars says, Why does this dude sound like a cokehead? Mm -hmm. Cody, Cody, yeah, because he is. Oh, I'm <laughs> we don't want to get sued or anything. Cody Shody sounding like a cokey Shody. Cody Shody, cokey wokey, wokey uh -huh. coke, cokey Cody Shody sounding like Isn't a wokey cokey. This is these are principles right here. Cody mm -hmm. can come out lie about yep. everything. Yep, lie, 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 lie for fucking 60 minutes straight. Mm -hmm. But I feel uncomfortable just calling him a cokehead off the cuff. I don't, you know, I don't like lying about people. Uh, Sashman for 35 Zardoses, relevant mm -hmm. to your conversation that you just said, says, what's up, guys? Last week, the girl I asked out, remember, he says he's going to ask out this girl. Oh, yes. Here's the, here's the, the end she results. She had a boyfriend. She had a boyfriend. Oh. Uh, Big sad. But good uh, news. But I have another date today. What? Oh, my God. Yep. That's right. Nice. Wish me nice. luck. A team for the win. Hell yes. There you Look go. at that. There you go. See? There you go. See, that's good. Don't don't let the don't, don't be let the, discouraged. The There's failings other, keep yeah. you down. That's right. Other fish in the sea. Exactly. You got to get out boom, there and boom. work it. That's right. You nice. got to tell good job, them. Sesh. Listen, you just tell them I'm a normal human male. I'm a normal mm -hmm. human being. Right. <laughs> Maybe don't. Say I want that. a normal human female. I know. Don't right. maybe don't say that. Maybe I, don't say my that. love. My love life advice is probably awful, but probably <laughs> who knows what's probably. going on these days uh, in the trading market. Draznock for ten dollars says recovering from six hours of paintball and ninety degree weather, oh covered God. in sunburns and bruises. Glad to have you guys keep me entertained. A team is the best for triggering me on MMT. <laughs> That the, honestly, six hours of paintball sounds like that's, fucking heaven to me. Six hours of paintball is intense. Very that's intense. great. That's so much fun. Oh my god! Yeah, I've never played paintball for six hours. That's crazy. I mean, yeah. it does sound fun, but I never really that's played. A little, that's a too long. I played with my my cousin has some paintball guns, and we played with those, but I never got to play paintball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. I only played it once for Boy Scouts, actually. Mm -hmm. I think. 
Yeah. We, we used to do laser tag all the time. Though. Yeah, laser was tag really was a good one. Yeah, mm-hmm. laser tag is so much fun. Uh, mm-hmm. Adam Riley for 10 Canadians says nuclear or nuclear if you're lame. Gang mm-hmm. all the way, mostly because my province of British Columbia doesn't allow me to be independent and go 100% solar and be free from the hydro company. A team reigns supreme. You why why do you sound so discouraged when you have to say that? It's like I'm not. I'm just saying it. I don't understand what you're talking about. Well, people love A team. Okay. You gotta get you gotta this is a reality of life mm-hmm. that you have to learn to live with. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me teach you, kid, about mm-hmm. the realities of life. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Someone says they sent this to me. I don't see it. Uh, oh, they sent other stuff. I the see. Universal Asset for five Aussie bucks says, I sent a meme to PSA Stitch on Twitter, but here it is again. I'll send it to Adam. <laughs> it is relevant to uh, our conversation. So I'll look it up. I'll I'll just put it in your on your DMs. Can't you believe up. you don't want to talk to Warren Mosler. I just don't. I don't get it. I'll let you talk to Warren Mosler. I know it's your thing. You're just going to like eavesdrop on it, aren't you? Sure, sure. I'm just going to listen in. You're going to go, Baka Desich, where are you? <laughs> I have a dream to have four little children. <laughs> you spoiled it. <laughs> I'm supposed to put it up first so people could all experience it together. <laughs> I'm putting it up. I'm putting it up. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is uh, this is M. Prague Luther King. M. Prague Luther King. Okay. Oh, wait. There you go. You got M. Prague Luther King saying, I have a dream to have four little children. Is he, Did they make him pregnant too? I feel like maybe he looks a little pregnant. A he baby looks a little bump. pregnant. Yeah, he's got a little baby bump. Is that quadru- That's quadruplets? Well, it doesn't have to be four little children at the same time, Adam. Oh, really? No, it could be you know, four children overall total. I mean, if you're going to go for it, why not just go all at once? I go guess that's in. true. Some, I don't know if you can make that decision. I don't know if they can just do that. Mm, that happens quite a bit with with um, IVF. I don't know. Is oh, there you does go. Martin there Luther you King go. use IVF? I don't know. You have to ask him. Maybe he does. Oh yeah, this looks like an IVF. This looks like an IVF inbreak. There you go. Uh, Shucked eight for five Aussie says: Is AstroTurf a flying cartoon trans exclusionary feminist? <laughs> Flying. Yes. Who? Yes. Is Astro oh, AstroTurf a yeah. flying cartoon trans exclusionary feminist? Yeah, that makes definitely. sense. Yep. Of I, course I it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Malicious Mouse for ten dollars says your struggle is in vain. Your fight meaningless. All shall feed into that oblivion. Wait, do I have my voice changer working? Nope. Didn't work at all, but that was pretty. Good. I know. I mean, I didn't. I didn't actually do it. I'm just. I'm asking you. Oh yeah, it sounded exactly like you used a voice changer. How about now? Oh, that's great. It's working. Your struggle is in vain. Your fight meaningless. All shall fade into that oblivion whose void is filled only by light, devouring the darkness, the shrieks and howls of orgasmatic, or of orgasmic pain. Don't do that again, man. That's too scary. That's too scary for you. (laughs) Is this too scary for you? This is the for the rest of the show for all all six M shows. I'm just gonna talk like this forever. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh my god. Oh, I know what it is now. Oh my god. Say (laughs) no. Say um. Talk about the pullout method in that other one. Tell me about your. Tell me about the pullout method. I, what? I'm so. Why are you referencing? It's uh, Portlandia. In Portlandia, oh, they have Port- one. In Portlandia, Portlandia, they have one. One skit that they do, mm-hmm. where it's 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 Carrie Brownstein, right? And what's the other guy's name? Fred mm-hmm. Armiston. Mm-hmm. But Fred plays the girl and Carrie plays the guy and they use a voice changer on her voice. So she sounds like, then they use exactly like that voice changer. So you sound exactly like her. 
And she is like a big tough guy that always talks about, I don't know, guy things. Mm-hmm. Her the, her favorite form of birth control is the pullout method. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, Kava said you didn't ever put the meme up. The one of you, the oh, one of you fending off being. Oh, I guess I didn't. No, yeah. no. I fucked up. Here, let right. me fix that. Right. Let me fix that. Sanity mistake. now. For five dollars, says CRT seems to have been baked into the noble savage concept that romanticizes primitive indigenous people before they were quote corrupted by Western civilization. True, yeah. true. Such a isn't it contradictory to call them savages though? I mean, what's well, the, whole... the noble? It's just the noble savage, yeah. But they're not savages. I know, but the that's noble the, savage theory. That's the name of the thing. I know. But it's wrong. So this is Cabo's meme. Correct. You got Adam mm-hmm. surrounded by a mob. Last and... man desperately fends off mob, trying to inject him with pregnancy in the year 2020. Okay. There you go. And Cabo's avatar is in the corner looking very, very scared for you. <laughs> Look at this. Look, they're, very moving, funny. they're moving in on me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They got the impreg flag right there. That's right. That's where the preg is. It's in the flag. They just put the flag into you. Uh-huh. One way or another. Uh, Troll of the Purpose says, Biden's pull-up game is weak. See Afghanistan and Hunter. Oh, yeah. That's pretty funny. His pull-out game. Oh. That's uh, funny. Person, one, person 100 for $5 says, Petition for Sargon's team to be the goblins. If Glink has a G monopoly, alternatively, we would... we eternally bleh, Alternative would be the trash pandas. Rip Sargon, t- tearing Lindsay Ellis to shreds. Yeah. There you go. He took down the video. I resisted the urge to jump into the our Sargon chat and go, Simp! <laughs> <laughs> you should have done it. Sargon Simp! Simp! You should have done it. No. Come on. Don't be a pussy. Don't be a pussy. Nah. I, I should have done it. I'm now, gonna do it right now. Now, now you're that you said that, I'm gonna in. steal it. So, go I'm gonna ahead. do it now. Go I'm gonna open this cord. Say simp. Yep. Yep. I did say in chat that we were gonna cover that because we are shameless. And That's true. Sooner or later, I don't know. Sooner or later, there'll be a Sunday. We don't know what to cover and say. Hey, remember that Lindsay Ellis video? Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Dude, they do look evil. Look at them mm-hmm. moving in on me. These fucking impregers. Dangerous. Uh, the, but, the Butter Anvil for $2 says, Adam, I DM'd you a relevant image. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that image was. I didn't bring it up to Butter Anvil because you put swastikas in there, and I don't want swastikas oh. in our stream. So, oh, What was it? It is a picture of Cody going... Here, I'll DM it to you. You can see it. I see uh, Zalmi T for two ninety nine says, "I'm the Mufukin Sargon." Mm-hmm. There you go, the Mufukin Sargon. Uh, person one hundred for two dollars says, "Shout out to Thursday stream V Radio and Kalvar." It was a good stream. Hell yeah! Stream. How wh- how was Kalvar's? Think I should keep him for like super reading super chats? I mean, you're the professional. I mean, I do professional feedback. I do like listening to you stumble through the super chats. <laughs> It's part of the charm and appeal. So maybe sometimes it. you can have them. I, I knew it. I knew it. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> you Do you listen to uh, Gary from Nerd Rotic at all? Gary's uh, a, no. com- I love Gary. Gary's a completely like genuine, likable person. Mm-hmm. And, and he might be the only one who's a worse super chat reader than me. So I fucking, oh God, I love Gary. Gary. There you go. When Gary stumbles through the super chats, I think that's a man after my own heart right there. Uh, we can jail in the chat says, uh, Sitch and Adam, for real though, I love you guys. No homo. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Boom, 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 boom. We love you too. We can. Yeah. Jail. We love all of you. Thank you. Of course. You. Of course. You mm-hmm. allow us to like hang out all day on that's Sunday true. and just fucking cut up. Like this is that's this how true. this is how Sitch and I relax. Well, I we make fun that, of each other and fuck. I wouldn't say that. What? But, uh, oh my god, Sitch. it's not how I relax. But uh, oh okay. Well, this is how I, I do, relax. And... I do oh, like I to fuck. Yeah, it's I it's see. fun. Yeah, right. 
That's because you're a horrible extrovert. After, after a hard week of like being being forced to be nice, being to chained people, to a drawing tablet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually get to cut loose and that's true. Make fun of my bro. It's great. Uh, grassroots dictator for five dollars says sitch can you confirm that you sand down your horns like hellboy does if so will they also grow back when you speak your true name oh my god <laughs> a team that's a good that's a little dark but anyway yes but true uh, a stole oh my god asked, really sitch are you gonna show adam the mantis video i should i should mm -hmm. i don't know if i should show it to you now or later is it bad um define bad mm -hmm. do i have to bring up the watch together uh you might you might click 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 i need to get like a quiet mouse because my clicks mm -hmm. are so loud i like the loud clicks you like it clicking loud is always great yes where is the video here's the video yeah, here we go. Let me know when you have the watch together back up. I'm working on it. Oh my god. Okay. Come on. God. Oh. Oh, oh no. <laughs> SMG again. This is not gonna be good, guys. Uh, it's gonna be wonderful. Wait time up. No. A stove as a stolfo makes nothing but quality, <laughs> truthful, non deceptive, non edited clip videos. Okay. Yeah. Can yeah, they not get me saying like I was a homo or something. Nothing remember. but the truth. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hippo size cat for $10 says, isn't it obvious? The reason that Cody and his ilk look so disheveled is because their exterior acts as a filter. The filter ends up looking disgusting, but their ideas and beliefs are clean and pure. Oh, <laughs> maybe. Maybe that's a good that's point. A great that's a idea. Point. We need filters like that, but our beliefs yeah. are like pure and clean already that's right ostolfo smg the newest mm -hmm. video you might want to turn the volume a little down it's a little loud but uh is it yeah i, I turned it up all the way okay well you're gonna deafen yourself <laughs> <laughs> that's why Because they're evil. They're, look, they're attacking you. They're evil. They're trying to kill you. Is this really in a game? Yeah. This is in Fallout New Vegas. They're wow. evil mantises, Adam. You have to kill them. Why is there giant mantises? Because there's all these giant irradiated mutated bugs. This is racist. Those are Chinese mantises. You don't know that. But... Those gotta are make sure they're dead. Those are really... definitely those are definitely Chinese mantises. No, oh, this is I... like, hold on. I think they're saying they're Uyghurs. No, no, no. This is in America. This is in in Arizona. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh oh. Look. S class, huh? Oh, look at that. S class. Well, that's pretty cool. Thank you. Nice. That is pretty cool. I like. Wonderful that. video. Thank you. Thank S -class you. S-class going after the mantises. Yeah. There you go. The horror on Adam's face you've never is priceless. You've never, you've never raised a mantis from like a little baby. In, nope. In Star no. One. No, because they're, they're disgusting, mutant, disgusting creatures that should all be purged from the earth. Mm. I should bring up my mantis photos. <laughs> mantis uh, are great. For five, thank you, Astolfo. Yes, thank you. Thank uh, you Pete for, for five dollars. Yes, I appreciate it. I appreciate torturing Adam, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Pete for five dollars says, Adam, forget the haters. Gen X is the first generation ever to be cooler than our kids. I'll be Murdoch to your Hannibal anytime, brother. Oh, A team for the oh, win. Fuck, that's so true. There you go. That's so true. Our kids think they're cool, but they're really just fucking idiots. <laughs> Aren't Gen X kids Zoomers? Are they? Yes. Are Zoomers the worst? I don't know. They are the worst because Boomers kids are Millennials. So Okay. 
Yeah. Boomers' kids are millennials. Yeah. Most. Oh, wait. Them. My mom's a boomer, so. Oh well, then maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anymore. What are you? Are you? You're gen. You're gen. You're a millennial. Yeah. I'm a millennial. I'm a disgusting '90s kid. Yeah. When they go yes. millennials, uh, sit. But you don't really come off as a millennial. You come off more as a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Well, you know, That's not even a, remotely true. You have a very old soul. That is not even remote. All the anime shit that I talk about and know and all the nerds, this is all like peak 90s kid. Like half of, like 90% of my references in my videos are all 90s kids references. You, know, you don't know what you talk about. Mm -hmm. You only think that because you are the true boomer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Me? I'm Gen yeah. X. The okay, boomer. Okay, okay boomer. boomer. Now you're doing the okay, boomer meme. I don't know. My parents are boomers. So mm -hmm. I guess, I mean, I guess it's, my parents you know, are boomers too. What are you talking each about? Each generation is 20 years. So I guess there's a broad But you probably range had super of... old parents. And my, my mom was like 20 when she had me. Uh, my parents were early 30, yeah, mid 30s see, when they had me. Mid 30s, that's not super 40s. Old. Yeah. Yay. Okay. That's not super old. Yeah. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, Airplay for 999 says all this talk about solar versus nuclear. I made my first documentary on nuclear energy and contributed a small part of the doc to Pandora's Promise. Cool. Huh. What is Pandora's Promise? Here, I don't know. Up. I was about to look it up. Oh, you're looking it up? I have a new meme. Did you send me this new meme? I think you did. I did. Do you even know what critical race theory is? I'm the meme magic guy. Uh, this meme was sent to us and made by... A man in lunacy. A man in lunacy. Oh, yeah. Do, do you even know what critical race theory is? Zer, this is a win. <laughs> <laughs> I, like that the, I like that the pronoun is Zer. Zer. That's, that's the joke, yes. Very Zer, funny. this is a Wendy's. Zer, this is a Wendy's, yes. <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do like that. Next time I go to Wendy's, I'm going to say that at the drive-thru. I'm going to be like, hey, do you know what Critical Race Theory is? Uh, Pandora's Promise is a Robert Stone production about nuclear energy. So there you go. Pro-nuclear energy, it seems. Mm -hmm. uh, CT lying to the chat says sitch you don't even eat push pops you're a boring boomer i ate push pops when i was a child okay. yeah i had the fred flintstone orange push pops they were delicious i had a, an occasional push pop but i never liked it wow now that's how you know you're the well i like ice cream push pop is like the bear the orange sherbet push pops were fucking amazing you talk oh so well, what flavor did you have like uh, they're only coming one flavor. What are you talking about? There's oh yeah, no, you're right. There is. There's the yabba dabba do orange. Yeah, I'm thinking of the other thing, like the, the bedrock pop. berry and the lime rock lime. I'm thinking of the missile pop. Missile pop is like. What's a miss? Oh, missile pops are gross. Yeah, yeah they are gross. Oh, yeah, missile pops are gross. Missile pop is not as good as push pops are a lot better. They they are creamy. Yeah, yeah. push pops not to be confused with uh, ices or freezes. Yeah. Which were also, or freeze pops, which the freeze pops are pretty badass too. Mm -hmm. At school, you could buy them for like 50 cents or something some days. Oh, Weekend Jail is coming at me with the sound money stuff. Google it. Do some research and don't take my word for it. Mm. Just for you, Adam. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm all about, yeah, I'm all about looking into this stuff. I'm all about it, baby. I mean, I'm reading that book right now on the bank war because the central bank is... I have a, this sneaking suspicion mm -hmm. that audit the Fed and defund the police are pretty much the same thing. Ooh. Coming well, out swinging. Well, I, I like it. I like listen, it. Listen, defund yeah. the police is like... Yes. You know, they don't... It's like the... The... Poor, mm -hmm. The poor version of audit the Fed, get rid of the Fed. Like rich people don't want the cops on the beat and poor people don't want the cops on the beat. 
Oh, I see. And you're saying rich people don't want the Fed on the beat. Yeah. Well, no, they 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 have or the, the same, IRS really. They them. have the same notion. People mm -hmm. have the same notion that the central bank doesn't serve any function. Like the defund sure. the police people, they think police don't serve any function. They just get got away. you. I understand. Yeah, they're I just understand. here to regulate us. Right. Right. People can self-regulate, don't you know? <laughs> what are you, a moron? <laughs> no, they do. People, we don't need cops. Come on. Come on now. Mm, true. Cops we just, cops. cops just distort the market. Sage. Yeah. Fuck the police. They distort the criminal market. Right. <laughs> okay. No tax. Fuck the Fed. Just no like, um. Taxes, no peace. <laughs> just like the Federal Reserve distorts the, the money system. No interest rates, no hate. <laughs> a lot uh, of people Genos don't care. really know what the what the Fed. No does. one knows what the Fed does at I know, except yeah. for you know ten people. Price stability and and security are very similar. <laughs> it's like the, today Scott Adams was basically filleting economists, saying, "Well, if someone has a master's degree mm -hmm. or a PhD in econ in economics, you should like trust what they're saying." Yeah, because bullshit. they were taught decision making and i'm like that's an idiot like well that's interesting to say because it's a meme it's like a well-standing meme that if you have three economists in the room they'll never agree on the economy yeah on anything <laughs> so on anything yes yeah, so that's like well I, just because they have a degree in economics doesn't mean you should automatically trust them. that's very silly yeah but. no there's not a, there's like one guy on youtube i started tr looking for good counter arguments to the deflation thing because it's the logic on deflation being like catastrophic for jobs mm -hmm. and recessions and stuff like that is pretty devastating but there's one guy who who claims deflation isn't bad but he doesn't really even argue against the reason why most economists say deflation is bad so it's really difficult to follow mm -hmm. what his argument is well more important than that though Mm -hmm. You know who has a PhD in economics? Um, Scott Adams? No, he's just got a bachelor. Let me tell you, well, to explain who has a PhD in economics, first, I have to start with feudalism, Adam. Oh, you my see, God. hundreds and hundreds of so years ago. So true. So true. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes. Richard Wolf, PhD yeah. in economics. So. Richard Wolf was on the Rebel Capitalist show with George. Is it Grummond? Do you ever watch George Grummond? I don't watch that. Yeah. No. George Grummond is a pretty interesting character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I can't. I just. I can't believe he had Richard Wolf on his show. <laughs> he actually seemed to get along with him. George is such a nice guy. He's like so good natured, even though I think he's completely wrong about a lot of economic stuff. He does mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. a lot of other economic stuff. So. Interesting. Yeah. I would hope so. He has a PhD. No, not no, Richard Wolf. He does. Oh. He understands nothing. And I don't think I see. George okay. Grumman is not a PhD in gotcha, economics. Gotcha. He had, he had Richard Wolf on his show. George Grumman did. Um, Genos Coon for $1 says, Hey now, Adam, stop slandering Caesar or I will have to simul, I will have the simulation gods give you another fetish. S class is a best class. Who's Caesar? Oh, that, the, you said he yeah. from JoJo. You said he's like mm -hmm. the gayest character. So there you go. He is. <laughs> well, Janos, you heard him. You heard him, Janos. Mm -hmm. Do what you will. Uh, Doctor Diddler for three for three dollars says, "Long time commenter, first time watcher." <laughs> mm -hmm. A uh, friendly reminder that John Smith basically invented MPreg and loves it deeply. <laughs> really? There you, go. there you go. I don't think so because when Akira the Dawn was on, did. when Akira the Dawn mm -hmm. was on my Thursday show, he looked up MPreg and it was already on the internet. Unless there was like a wiki page for it and everything. Well, how do you know that John Smith didn't invent it all that time ago? Mm, maybe. There you go. Like it's a long game. It's a long game. It's a long con. Uh, Nathan X23 for five dollars says, "Adam, you have to properly hear out my compromise on the twelve-year-olds' voting position that they should only vote in school board elections instead of general elections until you can wrangle with my position and not straw man it and not straw man it." S class is the best class. 
Straw man. I don't straw man any position. I don't know. That's crazy talk. So what is your what is your answer? To whether or not to kids just voting in some only in school board elections. Only in school board elections. Yes. I mean school board elections don't control the federal funding for the fucking school. It's ridiculous. There you go. There you go. Yeah. They need to vote. Listen. If you want to make the argument that kids don't know the complexity enough to vote on some of these like bond initiatives or whatever, you know, which nobody I would argue, understands the listen, complexity of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're making my argument, okay? And not only that, reason, I'm re mm -hmm. I'm rereading that book on Jack. Jackson was a prisoner of war when he was 12 years old. Fucking these what kids need to nut up, okay? <laughs> Fucking hell! If you're saying kids can't vote when Back in Jackson's day, you could be a prisoner of war at 12. You know what? I, here's here's the compromise. 12-year-olds can vote, but 12-year-olds all have to serve in the army, okay? Give them some, so, uh, what's I it called? Can't. Some brown brown? <laughs> get them, you know, get them. Oh, my God. <laughs> get them going. Some brown so, brown. You know, maybe brown that's what brown we is do. cocaine and gunpowder. Do you know what you're maybe, suggesting? <laughs> maybe that's what we should do. Okay, here's, here's the solution to Afghanistan. You, you get up all the 12 year olds, you force them into the army, you give them some brown. brown. They already do this in Afghanistan. Give them That's some the guns problem. and let them loose in Afghanistan. That's the problem. And we we're going to talk about Afghanistan. We need to fight fire with fire. We need to fight brown, brown and child soldiers with brown, brown and child soldiers. I never even okay. finished because you brought up the brown, brown. <laughs> I'm saying that if you don't want them to vote in the like on the bond initiatives or whatever that's fine let them vote for representatives let them vote for the representatives let them vote for the people mm -hmm. listen mm -hmm. to the people mm -hmm. yeah let them pick mm -hmm. the represent you don't think that's acceptable right let them vote for president mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're americans mm -hmm. are they Oh, you're so, oh, I can't how do you are children your, really americans you i mean I'm I, sure how do you them. call yourself a liberal are All children even really policies. humans? I mean, I'm not sure. Listen, if Andrew Jackson is old enough to be in a fucking <laughs> war prison, a prisoner of war, <coughs> little Adam can vote for president. <laughs> Uh, Expert Layman made a, a very trippy sitch gif. I don't know if you can. I know I couldn't download it though. It's, okay. it's, it is amazing though. Here, I'll see Pretty if I cool. can bring it up. Uh, Let's see if I can wait. bring it up another way. Uh, skeptical Waves for $5 says, Long time listener, first time super shadow. Thank you, Skeptical. Uh, love the show. Adam, I know you love audiobooks due to your reading challenges. So, so subscribe to the Skeptical Waves channel on YouTube for audiobooks. And easy narrations. Oh. Really? Skeptical Waves. I'm checking out. Skeptical Waves? You're uh, is Skeptical Waves doing the reading and audiobooks? That's I it. guess you'll have to find out. I'm looking it up right now. I'm subscribing. I'm clicking the bell. There you go. Skeptical Waves. You officially have a subscriber in me. Well, now that you subscribed, they also mm -hmm. said S class is the best class. I am unsubscribing right now. I am unclicking the bell. <laughs> I am blocking <laughs> this channel from <laughs> skeptical waves. I've skeptical yet, waves. I've yet boom. to subscribe. Look at this. Oh my god. Bing goodness. bong boom. Oh look. You know, I might have already been to this channel. It looks like you've read some some Minch's mole bug. Mm. Oh no. Oh, okay. Wait. The Cathedral and the Bazaar. Yeah. There you go. Um, cool. I'll check it out. Thank cool. you. Uh, Lemur Wrench for $1 says, Radical? Colorblindness is more radical change from white supremacy than black nationalism or, or race consciousness is. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, Vagabond for $1, laying down some hot truth. I don't know if you're prepared for this, Adam. I don't know if you're prepared. Well, how hot is it? Am I going to burn okay. my tongue? or? Oh, you're going to burn everything. Ready? Holy shit. Build a man a fire, mm -hmm. and he will be warm for a night. Mm -hmm. Set a man on fire, and he will be warm for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That is some uh, deep truth there. That's some deep truth. <laughs> <laughs> that life may not be very long, but... 
You're, I wouldn't say anything you about are Link, but... You are correct. Yes. <laughs> you are correct. Yes. Some spicy hot truth. Oh, my God. Uh, Dr. Diddler for one hour says underappreciated. And I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's gone on by the time you read this. The actual justice warrior has been losing his mind in the chat for the better span of an hour over Wakanda. <laughs> really? I didn't notice. Honestly, I did notice. Yeah. That's funny. They were trying to, they were trying to goad us into saying something about it. Oh, Wakanda forever. Why was he saying Wakanda? Oh, cause the black nationalism came right. up probably. Okay. Right. Wakanda forever. Uh, render unto Caesar for five hours says race essentialism sounds like what the Nazis promoted. Not a good look, Cody. Mm, Critical Cody, race yeah. theory sounds like what the Nazis promoted. That's Are you true. kidding me? I'm sure there's a book somewhere by some Nazi called Critical Race Theory. It's it's funny because race consciousness is literally just a nicer way, a nicer rebranding of race essentialism. Yes. Basically. That's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah. Uh Render seizures for one dollar says, oops, I misunderstood Cody's argument. Aha. Uh-huh. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Uh, Dr. Diller for one hour says, interesting that Cody thinks having an agenda makes you persona non grata. What I know <laughs> what does he Cody want agenda. again? <laughs> I know. Yep. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yep. Uh, utter nonsense for three dollars says, teacher, Sitch and Adam are picking on a special needs kid again. Mm-hmm. Look. Look, Cody is, is there any special, Cody has all his needs met by capitalism? That's true. Is there any bread tuber, leftist YouTuber who's not technically a special needs kid at this point? At this yeah. juncture. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the the butter anvil for Judah says, I almost forgot to get rags on, please. S class is the best class. I did send rags a message on on discord and he responded we'll be pleased to know mm-hmm. that we are planning mm-hmm. to supposedly have both Mahler and rags on the mm-hmm. show yeah soon yeah very soon supposedly supposedly <laughs> well we're supposed to have rags on for the first time and he couldn't there's something came up at the last minute oh so I'm just, yeah I'm i forgot saying. about that yeah so hopefully we'll have both of them on where it's going to be another 24 hour video. I mean, because the video we're watching is like three hours. So obviously, I don't know how that's going to work. We're going to watch a three hour video. We can't do that. Well, I, that's the video that we remember. It's the one mm-hmm. we talked about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They don't know how to stream for a long time there. No, no, they don't. They don't. They're like, you know, noobs. One hour and then done, right? I love how we're one show behind Mahler now. I saw his show, 149, <laughs> and I did our thumbnail today, and I'm like, 148. I'm like, we're right <sighs> there. We're right, right on his I, tail. We're supposed to, I was supposed to download the stream that me and Adam were on, on EFAP, mm-hmm. and then and re-upload, re-upload it on this it, channel yeah. and say, Sitch and Adam show 149, just to, get, yeah. just to, just to catch up. <laughs> The identical show. That was a fun show, man. I like hanging out with those guys. Yes. Yes. Uh, Grassroots Dictator for $5 says, Sitch, you stole that smugness comment from Michael Malice. Did I? Oh, really? I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, John Stewart gave them the syntax and attitude. He did not give them the wit and intelligence. That sounds like a, a far smarter comment that I, than what I said. So there you go. Michael Malice made that brilliant observation as well. I just retweeted Michael Malice because mm-hmm. Michael Malice made a, a funny comment about Afghanistan. And um, so Michael Malice tweeted, I'm still confused if the Afghanistan debacle is due to systemic racism or to climate change. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's hilarious, right? Right, right. But isn't isn't it really due to anarchism? <laughs> I kind of feel or like or religious fundamentalist. I guess maybe. Yeah. Uh, person one hundred for two dollars says smug propaganda is aggressive stupidity's domain. True. Mm. Very true. Very true. That that Vashian aggressive stupidity. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrick Mulligan for five Canadians says, Adam, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Adam, 
how much money would it take for you to draw a gay porn of yourself? Mm. I know you do not like those images, but I know you like money. Mm-hmm. Name your price. Hmm, let's see here. Let's see. I mean, I'm trying to be honest. I mean, Im- immediately, I think like $1 million. I could not. There's no way I could say no to $1 million. Of one, But then I think, mm, could I do it for 100000 I don't know. Mm-hmm. That just seems, I don't know. I would feel dirty at 100000 Obviously. 000. Yeah. You you would in a heartbeat draw a gay porn of yourself for a hundred thousand dollars. Really, I don't know. You don't I'm think feeling you more would? like? Oh my god! I mean, I think he would do it for like ten grand. Honestly, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> for like, like five grand. No, no, I'm thinking for maybe, like five hundred dollars. I could maybe go as low as five hundred thousand dollars. Oh my god! Look if at we depending depending this guy, depending upon. I mean, we would have to know what kind of... I mean, what are we talking about here? And I don't want reference, okay? I just want to know, like, describe you, it to me. Well, what would... Like, okay, so should we have a price tier list? Like, how much it costs for Adam to be giving a hand job from to another guy? How much does it cost for I Adam take to it be back. blowing another I take How much it does it cost for, I take Adam, it for back. Adam to be banging, I, I banging take, another guy in the I butt? take it back. I how much does it cost no. for adam to be banged by this another is guy? this is li- physically impossible for me to do now i take it back i can't do this. i can't even i couldn't even do it this is like you could totally do that no this is this can't be done oh my god <laughs> this is come on you know do have you ever given yourself a shot or like have you ever done anything like like have I given myself a, a shot? shot? Yes, yes, I have. Yes. Stabbed yourself with a needle and injected yes. yourself. There is oh a time God. period where I had very low. I was very vitamin oh D deficient. Oh my God! You had to give yourself. And I had to give vitamin myself vitamin D, D, shots. D shots. They're not painful. I mean, if I, to, to me, the only concern I had was, was because for vitamin D, it, it wasn't like it was to make sure you don't get a bubble <laughs> in your blood. Like that was the only thing I was concerned. Right. So, yeah, no, the really bubble in your like blood that. is really depressing because it like kills you pretty quick. So. Yeah, but I think you need to get a pretty big ass air bubble to really have oh, a problem. Yeah. But, but I was paranoid about it. Yeah. So. Oh my god! No, I can't do it. Never mind. Uh, Noel Campbell for five dollars. Hey, Noel says ever think it's weird no one can accept they win feminists, blacks, Democrats, social liberals, gays, etc. I know. I think, people can ex- I think people can accept the win, but there's always a force that's just continually pushing. It's always yeah. pushing, 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 pushing. Well, so. it makes it seem like the goal really is just to, to like get under the other side's skin. It makes right. it appear as though the goals that they have are really just you know arbitrary. <laughs> like, right, right, right. Like we're not. We're, I could care. Who cares what they teach in school? I just want to trigger the conservatives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad. Maybe it wasn't vitamin D. Maybe it was vitamin B. I don't know. Some vitamin. I don't remember which one it was, guys. You injected yourself with vitamin air? There was some vitamin that I had to inject myself with. It was only for like a week, though. Oh, really? Or something, yeah. Yeah, injections are... I never had to give myself a shot. I don't think I could do it. No. Well, I know that was like a big... That I mean, that got my dad when, when he had to do the... A pancreas surgery and they were concerned about um him being diabetic yeah he was like well i either have to give myself an insulin shot or i can just not eat carbs he's like i guess i'm not eating carbs. i know sure. that's exact. that's my <laughs> angle right there yes yes i'm like i could be a millionaire or i could draw or i could not draw the game i'll just not you're draw gonna the draw the picture porn. you're gonna draw the gay porn i don't know what you're i about. could be a millionaire or no Adam yeah, says this until the million dollars are like in front of him, and suddenly he, his eyes. I would to be grow too bigger. worried. the the About million what? The million dollars would have to go into an escrow account, and that Sitch had his name on before I even began the project. Oh, you were worried that they wouldn't pay for it? Yeah, I'm not gonna fall for gotcha. some dumbass shit. Yeah, of, well, yeah, okay, obviously that's not part of the hypothetical. Ah, look, Adam drew gay porn himself. I don't even have a million dollars. I'm fucking. I trolled yeah. him on the internet. No, you didn't. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so no, we correct. want that Air money bubbles. in the escrow account. 
Uh, such as correct air bubbles injected into, say, your arm are not typically deadly unless it's a large volume of air. However, if you inject into your artery, mm. even small amounts are deadly. They're still going on and on about how you got the vitamin D. <laughs> I don't remember what the vitamin was, but... <laughs> That's... No, I know. They're just vitamin, saying it's a dick, yeah, yeah. dick reference. I get yeah. it. I got you. Yeah, vitamin I D. Vitamin dick. Yep. <laughs> I gave it to myself, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> the juvenile. Oh, interesting. Is that, is it, was, it was just a form of masturbation, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Pete for $5 says, Adam, UBI is the answer to the meritocracy chap. Hashtag gang gang for life. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the argument the MMTers make on on UBI is pretty... I mean, I didn't really even understand inflation and start, until I started digging into MMT, but all the arguments that we got against UBI were it'll cause inflation, it'll cause inflation, it'll cause inflation. Yeah. Uh, Ginger Must Prime for seven ninety nine dollars Aussies says, who else thinks Sitch should put together a document with all the most ridiculous parts of CRT theory into a nice little bundle? Love you guys. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, I put my I just tweet something out and I bookmark it. That's how I have the the because this one comes up a lot. This this um, MLK th being a commie thing. It's like I don't know. I can't. You can't find a more decisive tweet than him saying, you know, once we've dispatched this whole communist philosophy once we've did well, uh, now i can't even remember thank god i bookmarked mm -hmm. it what's he say oh after our condemnation of the philosophy of communism has been eloquently expressed that's right yeah right yeah eloquently expressed you can you can take off the watch together uh layer why so you can see the other art again oh okay look at you People work hard at it. Okay. They work hard making memes and art for us. I know. I want it to have maximum display time. Okay. Adam is craving some vitamin M prick. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that here. I will organize. I'm going to organize awesome. all of these for you. Awesome. So awesome. we can see everything. Just going to do a little light graphic design here. Vitamin M. Electro Master for five dollars says, "Hey, Sitchin Adam, thanks for editing the video and re-uploading it last week, so I can listen to it." A team resigns. Oh no, A team reigns. S class is the AP club. There you go. Exactly. You go. That's right. Uh, Tony ninety six zero four nine for five dollars says, "Look up AMA and the limits they put on new uh, doc documents or documentaries. Oh no, on doctors." The reason there's a surge of doctors is because we limit the number of new licenses given out. Oh, interesting. Why do oh, they do that? Because really? they want to keep the fucking price up, dude. They well, that like... should be changed. That's a scam right there. Uh, all of these trade organizations are about controlling s supply so that the de so the demand stays high. Right. Yeah. We have now to increase that's... aggregate demand. Maybe that should be illegal. Should all be right? illegal. You gotta read I mean, that it, book, The Meritocracy Trap. I'm telling you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot of unfairness in the world that a lot of people just ignore. Like, uh, I bet the whole idea that do people believe? I guess there a certain number of people do believe that bootstraps argument, but I feel like most people have the you know asterisk. It's like they're willing to accept that it's going to be harder for some people than others. Mm -hmm. Other some people do have privileges. I right. don't think I don't think conservatives object to the idea of privilege. They just they don't think it's related to fucking skin color. Right. Yeah. Some do. Some don't. I conservatives are the furthest from thinking. It. Like, of course they don't. Yeah. Um, it has to do with money, right? Yes. That's the biggest privilege? Yes. Money is the biggest privilege. Yes. Electro Masta for $5 says, you know how anti-gay types turn out to be, or can turn out to be secretly gay. What do you think this means for John Smith and Empreg? Look, mm. I'm just asking the question. 
secretly <laughs> secretly i'm praying secretly uh, that uh, hold on i'm sending john smith screenshots of all these super it chats, literally <laughs> it literally <laughs> you guys realize that impreg is impossible right we're on the same page here well, if, if you're a transphobe adam mm. i realize that they would call me saying impreg is impossible mm -hmm. transphobia but I don't really think it is. I think that's bullshit. I think that's 100% bullshit. Uh, John you, Smith report. Yeah. Well, do you yeah. do you buy into the uh, Bosch's lady penis? No, it's fucking stupid. Obviously. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. we're on the same page then. Yeah, I'm just trolling it. Yeah. You transphobe? <laughs> yeah, you transphobe. Uh, but that being said, Adam is secretly emperor. Yeah, Did your emperor. mom have a penis? Oh, my God. I can't stand Doug <laughs> Tenable, but that would clip is fucking funny as can be dude doug is trolling him so hard i'll i i can only tell you know in relationship to your mom vosh does your mom have a penis <laughs> what did your I didn't mom see this, by the way this was did a your doug mom have a penis? conversation you didn't see this oh god no. this clip i saw this clip everywhere here i'll bring it up it's fucking hilarious i'll bring we it should up watch it we should watch it uh, John Smith for 199 says, in relation, in response, says, wrenchless plebs better look out. She's got a little band hammer icon. Oh, really? There you go. There you oh, go. you should take a wrench for that. Well, she's yeah. not actually doing it. The threat of it is funny, though. Well, I know, but no, that's not. Come on. Adam. We're, we're populists. I thought you were for transhumanism. <laughs> oh, the transhumans can emprag Adam. Not yet. Okay, so you're not against it in the future. You're just oh, saying you, it can't happen. You right now. knock yourself out, you impregers. You go ahead. <laughs> you you go you go crazy with your impregnation, your mm -hmm. male pregnancies. Impreg rights are human rights, Adam. Yeah, no, I'm all for it. Tyron says, "Never catch the stream live." Love you guys. Thank you, Tyron. Thank you. Uh, person 100 for $2 says CRT is animal farm pigs obfuscating sheep's mm. repeating. Yes, true. Uh, filthy casual for $10 says I wanted to join a team, but then you both endorsed an inheritance tax, even knowing how the government spends money. <laughs> TD <laughs> TDS class still wipes before they poop, and not after though. What? Who wipes before they poop the toilet? Does it make sense? <laughs> Disgusting. Disgusting and slanderous. Do wait, someone did talk to me about the inheritance tax and made an mm -hmm. argument that eleven million dollars because you don't get taxed on the first $11 million, but they were saying that okay. if someone owns a family farm, that family farm can be worth more than $11 million. And then they were forced to sell the family farm instead of mm -hmm. just to pay the inheritance tax, which seems uh, like a, an argument that has some merit to it. <laughs> I'm not sure it works that way. Mm -hmm. be, I'm trying to remember because there's, when you, when you have like physical assets as opposed to, to money, I don't think you have to just instantly pay taxes on the value of the asset. Mm -hmm. Like you'd have to, like if you inherited, I don't know actually how that works. I'll be honest. Yeah. I'd assume if you inherited property, you just have to pay the, the tax of the property. You don't have to pay. Yeah, but if you tax. don't have, if you don't have cash. <laughs> yeah. But whose fault is that? That you don't have that's, cash. that's true for any but that's true for any property that's not just inherent tax if you inherit property and you can't pay the tax on it you're gonna have to sell the property but like that's nothing to do with the estate tax <coughs> well it does have right? to do with the estate tax if all of a sudden you inherit property that's over i <coughs> 11 million dollars and you have to sell the property to, to pay the no tax. but that's not what i'm saying i'm saying you could inherit property that's under 11 million dollars of value okay that's worth a hundred thousand dollars, but you right. can't pay the property tax on it, and you're still gonna have to sell it. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. I don't see. I don't see what they're talking about. 
uh, a solidly blown there is a trap. Duck. Oh my god! For five dollars, says recently at Quackford, a hollow boned duck named Derek Bill has written some ugly things about us solid bones and is picking up steam. What to do? Well, here's what I think you should do. I think you should film at Solid Bone Duck and you should blast them on Quacker. Okay, just blast them on Quacker. Quacker? If that doesn't work, it's like the duck version of Twitter. Oh, okay. (laughs) And if that doesn't work, if that doesn't work, use your solidly boned duck arms to show that holly boned duck his place. Okay, if you know what I'm saying. In a video game. I got banned from Quacker. I got a lifetime ban from Quacker. I know because you kept you kept quacking to people about showing them that you're cloaca. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, that's a big no no on Quacker. I I had I came out as a full duck supremacist, and everyone mm-hmm. was fucking. Mm-hmm. This guy's gone. Uh, BF Polar Bear for five dollars. Thank you, BF Polar Bear. Uh, Sly Goose 77 for five Canadian says uh, Lily livered Lance is greater than spineless Lance unless you guys are cool now. Not really. Also, if the commies take over the world, uh, would you guys rather the wall or the gulag? <laughs> what a mm, question. Yeah, a question. I'll take the wall. Yeah, I think so. Wall is so. probably the better choice. Well, it's a better choice. I mean, you take the wall, you get to hang out with John John Snow, right? And at least you get to defend the kingdom from evil. I don't know if this is the right. I brought the watch together back up. I don't know if this is the right clip. Let's listen for a little bit. Okay, <laughs> seven minutes. I know it's floating little... around the internet. It took me by surprise. Oh no! This what is this? Is not it. This is not right, Adam. Judging it with a word like government overreach, I'll just call it government expansion. Okay, this is nonsense. I'll keep looking. Okay, you keep looking. According, BF Polar Bear for $10 says, according to Richard Delgado, critical race theory introduction, CRT derived, fi- CRT derived fields are still CRT. Look at fact checking the media on critical race theory on Ryan Chapman's cha- YouTube channel. That's who I was thinking of, Ryan Chapman, right? Mm-hmm. That's the guy that has a good, very good YouTube channel. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Ryan Chapman. Yes. Yeah. He seems like he likes Mpreg too. <laughs> I mean, just just on the face of it. Like I mean, I'm just guessing, but. Wait, it's Ryan Chapman. Why can't I find this? Everyone should subscribe to Ryan Chapman's YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. He is great. And makes fantastic videos. Yeah, he's on Twitter too, and he really likes Impreg art. Yes. You also send him lots of <laughs> <laughs> Tell him it's from Adam Friend. Oh my okay? God. Of course. Okay. Give, I want credit. Don't I put his channel. Me. I put his channel in the chat. I don't know if it came out. For some reason, oftentimes when I uh, type something in the chat, it does not appear. And I don't know why. Mm-hmm. It's very strange. Very strange. Very strange. Of course it's very strange. Uh, Soupy Comics for five dollars says Adam has a super chat reader harem. Does this mean Adam is a is a harem protagonist? Mm. <laughs> he is, but his harem consists only of guys on the internet. So I don't know how he I feels know. about that. I <laughs> feel I don't like it. You don't like that? I don't like it. I need some lady super chat ladies, please. <laughs> I'm taking applications for super chat readers. Super chat readers? Okay. Yeah. Come on, let's. We want to be an equal opportunity super chat reader employer. Right. Uh, where were I? Oh my Render God. to Caesar for two dollars says assigned opinions sound a lot like manufacturing consensus. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. It does. Mm. How are you falling for this? I don't get That's it. Different. That's different. That's nah, different. Nah, it's the same. I don't know what you're talking uh, about. Oh, God. It's the 2008 housing crash video. I don't even have to make it. It already exists. It says, oh, Sitch, why won't you do me? Oh, woo woo. Don't you ever think about doing me? Tee hee. Give your audience what they want. XO, XO, XO. I'm looking forward to you doing me. Wink, wink. 
Wow, you did that. That was an excellent reading of that. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I might have to have some public doing of the housing crash video, if you know what I'm saying. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, Death by Sloth for $2 says, Snark is often a superficial response that requires very little thought, but is in intellectually satisfying when used against an opponent. That's fine once in a while, but nearly every leftist you cover seems to be helplessly addicted to that drug. Yeah. Yes. yes. True, true. Uh, Dr. Diddler for $3 says, a quick Google search shows that Washington stated privately he didn't want slavery and that he did not publicly speak out uh, about it because he wanted to preserve the union. <laughs> his will read out after his death was what freed his slaves. Sounds like they were right. Wow. Yep. There you go. Not surprising that they misinterpreted dishonestly George Washington. But, of, you know, course. of course. Yeah. I... I read this whole thing about George Washington. I forget why I was looking up, looking into this. I think it was for one of the PragerU videos. I was looking up into the founding father's religion. Mm -hmm. And it and it kind of made me realize that George Washington was like the most ultra-based person around because he was super pragmatic and realistic about everything. He's like, well, I'm not super religious. However, I understand the social utility that religion provides, especially to military troops. Mm -hmm. And so he under, so he basically was like pro the army being religious for purely practical reasons. Yeah. Pragmatic reasons. Right. And it sounds like he was the same thing with slavery. So I, I appreciate, I appreciate someone like that. Yeah. It's a shame. I mean, you really like subjugating people for practical reasons is not great, but. No, no, no. But yeah. I mean, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about his him saying that he knows that if he was as president, was mm -hmm. to come out as anti-slavery, that it would destroy the country. Yeah. When he was president. Right. So. I just, I don't, it's like, we're talking about fucking George Washington from 200, 300 years ago. What is it? I mean, Obama <laughs> did this 10 years ago. Obama was against gay marriage. And then like. That's true. Fucking had to suddenly uh, <laughs> like he's he like, wasn't then if he wasn't. i come out against gay marriage i might break up the democratic party i better fucking i yep. better be against gay marriage it's like okay politics how's that any, how's that any different than what fucking george washington did 200 years yeah, ago that's a little different but yeah i understand what you're saying well he's not make he's not taking the the principled stand that yes, all right, the fucking right, right. left-wingers are like oh my god we have them a million principles Right. We're, our politicians would never. But Obama was a dirty neoliberal shill. Oh, okay. okay. That's what they would say. Okay. That's what they would say. Uh, okay. Desert Runner for 221 says, A-Team gets around town in a limousine. Mm -hmm. S-Class is stuck using Grandma's bus pass. Oh, my God. S-Class. There you go. Uh, also, Adam, I sent you a meme on the DMs for the stream. Do you need a ride, uh, S-Class? I know you're... I know you. Should, is Grandma's bus pass working out for you? Be Look, honest. Grandma's bus pass is fine. Okay, Be geez. honest. I'm not such. I'm a populist. I'm on the bus with the people, Adam. You're the rich elitist driving around in your limousine. Oh my god! <laughs> but first of all, I'm the populist. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> the Did I uh, just destroy you. So I'm. I'm looking for that Doug Tenable Vosh clip. That's super mm -hmm. funny. And I can't find yes. it anywhere. Okay. Well, don't worry about it. I haven't been to Doug Tenable's Twitter in forever, but I'm just realizing now Doug Tenable tweets like a, like a tweet a minute all yes. day long. Yes. That's so weird. Yep. That's so thought, weird. Shouldn't he be like praying to Jesus or something? Instead? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Can he be doing something else like that? Well, I'm like scrolling and scrolling. I'm like, I got to be back like a month now. And I look at the date and I'm like, holy shit, I'm barely back a week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm never going to find it. I typed in Doug Tenaple, Vosh, Mom, Dick. I couldn't mm -hmm. find anything. So yeah. I, I don't know. I typed in Lady Dick. Ah. But I was, thank God I didn't look at the images. No, oh, thank God. Yes. <laughs> when did he talk to him? Was this recently? Or like no, it's, a, it's an old... It's an old debate that they had. I didn't know they Vosh, talked like that. Vosh debated 
Doug Tenaple. When Doug Tenaple, Doug Tenaple is a is a comic creator. He created Earthworm Jim, mm-hmm. but he's super right wing. Like he doesn't. He's of evangelical Christian. He doesn't believe in evolution, and he he started making videos that were the election was a fraud and his channel just started growing like growing in leaps and bounds i think he got up to like 500,000 subs in like a week and a okay. half yeah right, it was right. like crazy do you remember yes, yes he was showing he showed on his he showed his um adsense on twitter he made like 140,000 dollars right right yeah delivering the copium to the masses True, true. How much is how much do you think Tim Pool is making if Doug Tenaple, like in a, I mean, reasonably it was like a two month period, but he made one hundred and forty thousand dollars in one month. Well, Tim's making a lot of money, guys. Yeah, that's a lot yeah, of money. That's crazy. Yep. So, but uh, obviously, have... Vosh is going to debate anyone that their channel's blowing up like that, right? All sure, of a sudden, sure. he's relevant. I need yeah. subs. He's got Wash subs. Watch the socialist wants yeah. all that money. That's <laughs> a lot of money. So Give he, me the money. So he did a debate with him. And evidently I you know, I didn't I don't think even think I listened to the debate. But right. this clip was going around that was like, Oh my god, this is fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh the most dope says Adam is a Trump like populist. He speaks for the common people from his actual golden tower. For my actual golden tower. <laughs> yes, there you go. Oh, Culavar got. Oh, you, Culavar. Culavar fucking... says, "Adam, check your Twitter." Culavar is the best. What is? Oh, did he find the clip? He did you? find it. Yeah. Nice. Good job, Culavar. Vosh fans posting their L's online. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, because they think this is Vosh destroying Doug Tenaple and no. Uh, Dr. Diddler for $1 says, you mentioned reading someone who marched with MLK talking about how anti antith- antithetical CRT is the civil rights movement. I want that link. Oh, I'll look for, I don't know where that link is. I saved it. It's somewhere. Um, someone marching what? There was a guy who wasn't just marching with MLK. He was like, had some involvement with MLK. He was talking about how mm-hmm. CRT is very anti what MLK stood for. I think I actually have that bookmark, to be honest with you. Who is I, I have a bookmark somewhere. But... Op-ed, the civil rights legend who opposed critical race theory. There you go. Is there you that go. Him? I don't know. Probably. I think it's him. But I got to send you the link first for the Vosh thing because that's not we can't put it in the watch together. So we have to oh. like watch it together. But. Okay. Uh, um. Now I'm grabbing the bookmark for the guy. Send it to me, baby. Guy. I did. Don't give me your. Send it to me, Don't baby. give me your freaky. Don't give <laughs> Send me your, it to me, daddy. Don't give me your impreg voice. Oh, Adam. My. Adam, daddy. I don't like the impreg. No, voice. I'm sending you the impreg. Okay, you're the one being impreg, not me. That's we a saw link. The picture. That's a link to the tweet with the link to the guy. I yeah. Guess I Where's the, the bookmark? To the yes. article. I DM'd it to you. I don't see it. I see the link to the clip. Oh. But that's all I see. Here, I'll give you that one, too. Here it it's is. It's all I see. Okay. Let me know when you want me to click play. On this one? Yes. I got to pull it up on... I got to get it to, like, the watch together. Yeah, first. you pull it up, Adam. I'm doing it. <laughs> you do it. Don't fucking... Oh, this is the article, yes. I'll put it in the chat. I knew that one was going to be a good one to keep. I did keep it somewhere, too. Okay. Uh, let me know if you guys get it since... Oh, wait a minute. It's too big to go in the chat. I got to use that fucking stupid tiny URL thing. It's got one of those like 20 million year long uh, URLs. I put it in the chat already. What are you talking about? The article? Yeah, I put a link to the huh. my... the tweet that has it in oh. there it's well there you in go the chat. look there's the i there's the direct yeah. link guys look at i'm clipping sitch saying send it to me baby this is my new notification <laughs> notification <sound. laughs> oh my god go for it go for it 
All right. Let's You're back. I have to ask you, why can a person okay, with a ready? penis... Ready play the clip? Hold on. I backed it up all the way. Ready? Three, okay. two, one, go. I have to ask you, why can a person with a penis not be a woman? <laughs> because women don't have penises. That's you. <laughs> why, why not? Can you find me a de dictionary definition of woman, which includes that? I would only point to your mom. Did your mom have a penis? <laughs> I'm sorry. Does every woman have to have a penis? I know women with penises. My no women didn't. have ever had a penis, and no mom has ever had a penis. I'm just asking. Yeah, moms had a lot what, of penises. Our, wait, our I know, wait, I know moms with penises. So these, you know these are irrational arguments. So let's give it another shot. Can well, you it's explain irrational to me? say that a woman can have a penis. I'm only giving you an example Why? of... Why? Because you're... Because you, your your moms or women have wombs. Some of them do. And vaginas. I, I know this is news. This is what I mean by you, it's You're not even engaging, dude. You're, you. you're lost. It's like you, Vash, <laughs> between the two of us, you're the, you're the crazy person, buddy. You're the one saying that a you're woman You're coming off and No, I'm asking you, but you can't answer because you know that you have no arguments here. The, no, the fact of the matter because is, I'm bored all, with your madness everything, wait, but I'm, wait, but I'm asking you. So explain. Okay. So the fact that some women have wombs isn't an argument that some women can't have penises. So why can't a woman have a penis? Uh, a woman can't have a penis because they don't. Okay, they so you, you know, you can't, man, this is, so I'm the, I'm the mad one, but you're the one who has to resort to tautology in order to defend his position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn, yeah, it's I'll not surprising that. that you lost in every single <laughs> academic circle and that every organization around the Western world unilaterally agrees with me. Like, yeah, it's I, pretty I crazy. Same, That's some I crazy far-left madness right there, you know? Yeah. Yes, it's true. One of us is mad. Okay, just, you know, <laughs> circular reasoning is, like, irrational, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, Rosh always does this thing that's really obnoxious. Well, he does many things that are very obnoxious. He always does this this lie. It's like one of his classic lie lines, where he's like, "Every institution I know agrees with me." Okay? Every it's like a, single institution, yeah, completely false. On the face of planet that, Earth, yeah. agrees with no. me. Right, right. The Catholic Church agrees with Vosh. Yep. That, that argument is this is always the, the Westboro tired... Baptist Church agrees with Vosh. It's yeah, exactly. It's always the tiredest, dumbest argument. Unless you can give me a definition that includes every possible human being that could fit in this category. Therefore, since you can't do that, the definition could be broadened to mean whatever I want it to mean. I know. Dude, I just love the mom line. I only know about your mom. <laughs> Does your mom have a penis? You should have just stick with you should have just stuck with that one, honestly. The mom one was it was killer. Yes. But I yes. it just the it's just boss. It's just so weird. It's such an unserious thing. It's I great know, the way Doug just takes it as unserious. Like, yeah, okay, like, we'll, eh. go, we'll go with that one. Yeah, yeah. Is it is it a tautology? Is he using what the Doug definition? Was saying, yes, the, it is. Well, he was just saying it is what it is, which is a tautology. Um, oh, okay, but. It's, yeah. it's, it's almost it's not worth, it's such a stupid conversation. It is. But anyway, anyway, let's, let's move on. We have still lots of super chats. No, through. we're almost done. What are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> uh, Dr. Diller for $3 says, Dev did a video lately. Uh, they won't say they're socialists because it's more subversive to simply say you're something else, like someone who just concerned about racism instead of CRT. Uh, Vosh straight up admitted this shit. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that video. That was a good video. Mm -hmm. Video. I gotta catch up. Dev is putting where, out videos like crazy. He had some clip of Vosh. I asked Dev where it was from. He said it was he thought it was from the election with yeah. Biden because his audience was mad about him being pro Biden. Where Vosh was saying, you know, I don't give a fuck about your principles. You know, you can you could stand on your principles all day, and if you're not accomplishing anything, then it's pointless to be like principled mm -hmm. or something, something along those lines. Foss is basically pulling out the consequentialist man argument that he always pulls out. But that argument is not dissimilar from the argument that Mark Lilith made in his book, The Once and Future Liberal, that if you not if you're not actually gaining political power, all the principles in the world are pointless. So well, that's gross. Yeah. That's gross. And disgusting. Yeah. That's a bad attitude to have. 
It depends. It really depends upon the principles, though. I mean, if the principles are like lie, cheat, and steal to to get ahead. But that's what it always right. turns into. That's what it always turns into because but I think Mark Lilith is talking about principles as in we don't compromise. Like that's a principle. Okay, but that's yeah, yeah but that's not what Vosh is talking about. No, Vosh is talking no. about lie, cheat, and steal. <laughs> like, right. Basically. Right. Yeah. Uh Dr. Diller for three dollars says, as you know, America was founded on white supremacy and slavery. That's when we did that's when they did away with slavery, the entire country collapsed. Man, that was awful. Probably shouldn't have built it on slavery. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. do they replace it with anyways? <laughs> Capitalism. That's funny. Right. That's funny. They replaced it with free market, right? Uh, the Wooster from 189 says speed round is Tariq Nasheed based. Fuck no. Based. Not even no. close. Not even close. Blue pill. So, uh, how how unbased can you get? Tariq Nasheed unbased. Yeah. Which is like the far end of the spectrum. Uh, Dr. Dealer says he said Vosh said his principles are winning, but truly has none because he keeps taking L's. There you go. Well, he's winning at making money. He's winning at making money. Vosh so is Vosh is winning. I mean, yes. that's that's another thing that's fascinating about that clip is that I, I just can't imagine living in a world where people laugh at you if you don't believe women have penises. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> You're crazy. Uh, Come on. Sanity Now for $5 says soul food is basically the same as Southern cuisine. So it's the same food of the actual slave owners. So shouldn't soul food be canceled too? Boom. There you go. Perhaps. Uh, Cecil S. Grant for $2 says S class is the best class. <sighs> because A class, not even A team, A class mm -hmm. believes in MMT. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Well, that's so, I feel jaded. So yep. I feel gypped because ask fucking literally Sitch believes in MMT too. What the fuck? <laughs> I like that you get all the flack for it. Though, He's so. Sitch is just uh, keeps his mouth shut. I don't care. <laughs> no, it's because I, I don't feel the need to bring it up every two seconds. I think that's the difference. I mean, I'm, am I really bringing it up every? I don't bring it up a lot. Maybe. Okay. I've always said I agree with the descriptive uh, claim. I'm not sure if the prescriptors are right, but I don't know enough about economics to, to dive into it. I am curious your thoughts on the job program, to be honest with you, because it sounds like a good idea. I feel like it's a I, good idea. I haven't heard, I haven't heard an argument against it, but I haven't really been looking for an argument against it. So, right. Yeah. Uh, Akilin Nayar, Narayana Swami mm -hmm. for five dollars says so. Basically, when Sitch plays hearts, he's saying he's a shifty Jew. <laughs> <laughs> when Adam plays hearts, he's a red, white, and blue and blue-blooded American. LOL. There basically, you go. yeah. There you go. I like that red, white, and blue-blooded American is basically being a huge piece of shit, <laughs> being a yeah. huge prick to everybody. I go full Gordon Gecko. I'm like, there you go. Greed works. I'm take your fucking hearts. <laughs> That's right, bitch. Give me that queen. Mm -hmm. See, but this would not you. You just never Can work on me. We need to play some hearts. I, yeah, I, but see, I feel the need to. You shoot screwed the yourself now. No, because whenever I told, I'm playing I hearts, know. whenever I'm playing hearts, and I have a a suspicion that the person's going to try to run it, I always make sure I keep that one card that they need instead I know. of passing it. I know. Yeah, that's so what, you screw yourself. That's what's beautiful about what I do because I do it with I play with an open hand. I'm like, yeah, I'm they, right here in your face, bitch. You're never going to win, then. No, nah, there's ways. There's okay. ways to get hearts out of you. <laughs> you realize. You realize. You you might be forgetting this, but if you only have mm -hmm. one heart, you, you and hearts are played, you have to play that heart. You realize that, right? I know. Yeah. But, but usually... Everyone is all look. Everyone is always trying to hold a heart from me, but old Adam gets all those yeah, hearts. But it's okay? not just a heart. It's not just a heart because yeah, don't. you don't need you could you can run shoot the moon with zero hearts. No, you, if you need have all the hearts. No, no, but I'm saying zero starts in your, zero in hearts your, in your starting in your hand. hand. I know, I've yeah. done it. Yes, right. You you just have to have all of one suit and get it changed to that I suit, know. and then you win. Yeah, I have shot the moon. I know thousands of times. Sure, I know how it works. Fucking, okay. I'm the shoot the moon champion. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen, we'll we got to play some hearts. We're going to have to play some hearts. Now we have to play some hearts. Like, play just some like, hearts. Yes. But you're like, you've already blown it. You've already. I know like, that I know that I'm always going to be shooting the moon. I'm always going to be holding that one card. Dude, okay. the sneaky strategy is not as much fun. I'm telling you. Okay. Trying to trying to trying to keep it on we'll the see. DL. We'll see. We'll see. It's raw. It's brute force <laughs> luck. You get handed that hand, and you're like, "Oh my god, I can work with this." Yeah. Uh, Lucifer, the Doberman, for a five Canadian. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, contrast mm -hmm. for five Aussie bucks says, "I can appreciate Adam rubbing it in." I do this in Street Fighter by trying to end around with overly flashy moves while posing in a, in real life to trigger friends. Oh yeah. You know, if anyone had sent me that super chat and you it didn't have the name on it, I would have guessed that it was from contrast. Yeah. <laughs> the very contrast thing to say. Yep. It's all about the flash. Uh Whalers for five dollars says Cody is is the master of making arguments undermined by the immediately preceding and immediately following argument. Mm. True, true. Uh, Christian C for $5 says, Butter Anvil, I noticed on Adam Thursday's stream, you said it was your 21st birthday. Mine was August 6th. We're practically the same age. Okay, that is all. Nice. That's cool. cool. That's Congratulations, great. Butter. Youngins. And oh my Christian goodness. C. The youngins. God, my twenty. I remember my twenty-first birthday going out and being like, <coughs> "This is yeah, I can drink now." Yep. I've only been getting drunk since I was sixteen, but now there you go. Now, now it's legal. That's right. Yeah. All right. When were when did you first start getting drunk? College. So oh not my 16, god! Holy but... shit! That's hilarious. I think. I mean, that... I had drunk beer or liquor before then. I was just like, "Oh, this is disgusting." Yeah, actually, I take it back. I was fourteen because I my Jesus I had a Christ. friend of mine that is that dad, explains a lot. I had a friend of mine that his dad worked for Gallo Winery, and he would just had the, like a just like a walk-in closet just full of fucking alcohol that mm. no like you would you could totally drink as much as you That's want. That's why you, you know can't read. You gave yourself what? a learning disability by drinking too early. <laughs> you think so? Yes. I mean, I couldn't. No, read, I have no clue. I couldn't read before the drinking began. But <laughs> come on, I got it out of my system. I'm not a drunk now. Obviously, I got all that done when I was 14. And you, yeah, you and you think 14 mm -hmm. year olds can't vote? Um, come on. Come yeah, on you, yeah, you got it out of your system and you replaced it with pot. So there you go. Mm, oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, uh, Rich Jammer for 50 P slashes mm -hmm. says, is Sitch bald or is his whole body covered in black hair? Ooh. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. funny because everyone draws, like every piece of fan art I have, everyone mm -hmm. always draws Sitch bald. Mm -hmm. But the original Sitch avatar has hair. Has hair. Yeah. It's not bald. Not bald. Yeah. So there you go. I have I've never had an avatar that I had wear red shorts in. I mean, I wear the. <laughs> I listen. That's to, true. When the myth becomes reality, I know you go with it. You just go with go it. Go with it. Yes. I listened to our first stream again because somebody mm -hmm. commented on it or something like that. Our very first stream. Mm -hmm. You talked about it. Yeah. On the Thursday thing. It was yeah. our um Michael Eric Dyson, uh Jordan Peterson. No, 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 no. That's no? that was like our third stream. What was our first stream? Our first stream was I I like uh asked you to do a live stream because I liked your videos. Like this is like the first time we ever met, ever spoke. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Maybe the Michael was the Michael that Tyson was on our first official stream. Yeah. That was our okay. first like commentary stream where we right, were just right. doing something, yeah. But I can't, I can't remember why I brought it up because there was something said in there that I was like, "Oh, I remember why." Because you, I asked you if you'd read Jonathan Haidt. You hadn't read that book, so mm -hmm. I was going to take credit for uh, introducing you to Moral Foundations Theory and Jonathan Haidt. 
You, of course, you're prepared for that. Yeah. I had read um, "Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow," right, not, which is not right. as good. Yeah. No. But they're they're related. Definitely related. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Mr. Rich, see, even all those years ago, when I first meets me, the first thing is like, it's like, Sitch, have you read Jonathan Haidt? <laughs> no, that stream is hilarious. That stream is totally hilarious. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't remember anything about it. Yeah. I It was like a little interview. I was like interviewing you, basically. There you because go. I really liked your videos and stuff like there you that. Go. Yeah. I still remember listening to your videos while I was doing yard work. Awesome. Because I did a bunch of yard work and I was mm -hmm. like, I was like, this guy knows what's up. This guy's fucking, <laughs> this is perfect. And it mm -hmm. goes with the whole, you weren't assigning me my opinions. I was yeah. like, this guy has all of my opinions. I like this guy. <laughs> this guy, it's basically like talking to myself, but in a different voice. Mm -hmm. I fucking love it. This is great. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like. CT says, I'm sorry. Stop everything. Narwhals are a real animal. Mm -hmm. I thought they were a whale version of unicorns that weren't real. Of course, narwhals are real, CT. How'd you not know this? Yeah. Yeah, narwhals are real. Super real. There not there a horn, though, a tooth? Uh, is it? Or is it hair? I think it's a tooth. So, oh, Ka Kava, your Mpreg mm -hmm. uh, aficionado, said their horn is actually a tooth. So there you go. See? Look at that. We know. Mpregs think alike. <laughs> Narwhal tooth. Mr. Rich you low take bitch. that back. You for ten dollars says a true black liberation movement is when black people move to America to escape war and poverty in Africa. Oof. Oof. But true. Mm. Uh, Doctor Diddler for Joe says Sitch. It's era, not error. Obfuscation era. What? Ire. It's it's not era. It's era. Ire. I'll need a party bladder. There you go. Some JFK for you. Almost as good as my Bane. I love it. Uh, Patrick Mulligan for, for two Canadians says, what is CRT? Communist race, racist tweaker. There you go. It's like evil CT is CRT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there Simon O'Leary for 10 New Zealand dollars, not to be confused with Nazi dollars, says, hey, have you guys read Crime and Punishment? Raskolnikov's last dream of the plague seems prophetic, not of COVID, but of the two movie syndrome that is causing a lot of our problems at the moment. S class is a best class. I no. have never read Crime and Punishment, but I've I considered not, no. it since I'm like listening to a lot of audiobooks as I'm working on mm -hmm. the comics. So I'm like rereading audiobooks now. Yes. I'll check it out. Crime and Punishment. Uh, Akilin Naryawanya Naryanasa Swami, who I feel we're not as bad about mispronouncing her name because they've called me a shifty Jew <laughs> for five dollars. Oh my god, <laughs> says racism on planes in the 1930s, black section is on the wings, racism on planes in 2021, white section is on the wings. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, basically. Uh, underplayed creations for 199 says S class supports. The Pontius Pilot Simulator. I mean, I don't support it. I'm just saying that's that's what it is. That's that's the reality. That's the secret reality that they don't want you to know what's happening. Play into those negative stereotypes. Yes. Uh, obscured satellites in flight for 10 Aussies. It says, hey guys, I've been binge watching your content over the last few months and just want to say thank you. Your show is awesome. How about a little free will? Thank you for the compliment. I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Here's 10 free units of free will free willy will a mask for five dollars says just taking a break from my crt research to get a little free will every time i think i'm done i find 30 more crazy things the founders push for right. well there you go mask here's your five free units of free will very useful if you're doing crt yes. research so you don't yes. actually break everything in the house and it's true that's part of the problem why it takes so long to do research there's so many I had the exact same thing. I'll be reading some CRT paper and mm -hmm. it keeps citing other crazier CRT papers that I have mm -hmm. to bring up. And then I start reading those papers and it becomes like a never ending rabbit hole of insanity that you get sucked yeah. down into. Yeah. They're all citing each other. Uh, here's a question. Have you read crime and Mpreg by John Smith? 
No, but it does not surprise me that John Smith has <laughs> written such a degenerate book as Crime and Inbreg. Uh -huh. Uh, Danish cartoonist for five Aussie bucks says Glink's cynical politics remind me a lot of my own thinking about joining the G force also get rags on soon, or I'll use my super saiyan two duck powers. Well, don't, well, calm down. You don't have to use your, your super saiyan two duck powers. Okay. We're getting rags on. Everything's going to be okay. I did some digging into that video that he shared and it turns uh, which out which video the remember the doctor the doctor that was speaking about oh, vaccines. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That yes, thing yes. is going super viral. Did you look into right. that? The, that doctor comes out and claims to be like some oh. home, homeo, like it's kind of a... Homeopathic doctor? Yeah, not that bad. Not as um, not as bad as that, but it is like a natural Homo medicine. doctor? <laughs> like a natural medicine doctor, I basically, see, I see. yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. He doesn't treat sickness. He treats wellness, basically. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, the systems of the body. I was yeah. a little skeptical of the video. Yeah, I, I dug in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Wooster for 499 says, this is a tough decision for me. Both you and the distributors are streaming right now. Why must you put me in this mm -hmm. position? Well, there is this thing called... Um, like these are recorded. That's true. <laughs> so, That's yeah. true. You have to watch us live. Ours is going to keep going. Yeah. Distributes is going to be way shorter. But I'll probably watch the distributes later too. Oh, someone had mentioned. For some reason, I always confuse academic agent and distributors in my mm -hmm. mind. Yeah. I don't know why. Like you to me, they're the same person. That. You should yes. not do that. And they're very different. The distributors is, <laughs> is completely humble mm -hmm. and a really nice guy i'd say dave is a pretty nice guy academic agent i think is an egomaniac on the verge of like i don't know some kind of weirdness <laughs> so okay well so that pains me to say this then because someone had recommended the distributed video the squid and the whale mm -hmm. that was about the vosh uh charlie kirk conversation mm -hmm. and i listened to it and it was horribly boring. Yeah. Horribly boring. Horribly boring. To me, if you have someone just giving you their opinion and they don't back it up with either facts or logic, I don't care. Mm -hmm. It means nothing to me. Mm -hmm. It's just you stating how you feel. And that's mm -hmm. fine if you know you want to listen to someone's daily, you know, feelings, but I don't care about that. I want logics. I want mm -hmm. facts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. So I apologize. He did make a compelling argument, though, in that video that there's a, a really strange thing that's going on that, like, Vosh and, and Charlie Kirk debated when they both really have just establishment positions that are, like, they both kind mm -hmm. of agreed on this establishment position. Rosh, well, first of all, Rosh doesn't have establishment positions. I completely disagree with that. Mm -hmm. um, he pretends like he does in certain circumstances and environments in order to garner an audience. But don't you think, I mean... This is the guy that said glass Israel. That's not an establishment position. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But isn't, I mean, the I feel like the communist argument for some reason is kind of like an establishment position. It is, no, the open communist argument is not establishment position at all mm -hmm. there's a reason why aoc and bernie sanders run away from being called socialist does aoc run away from it yeah that's just like oh i'm progressive oh i'm a social okay. democrat oh i'm a democratic socialist they always run away from the label. okay yeah yeah uh loner renault for five dollars says would the u.s in its current form even exist if the northern colonies tried to federally abolish slavery during, during the writing of the Constitution? Probably not. Probably, we'd probably be two separate countries, if even that. Because I don't know if we could have won the Revolutionary War unless we were united. So, who knows? Yeah. True. Um, Stug for $2 says, Why are you buying clothes at the soap store? At the soap That's store? The soup store. Oh. 
that's one of the best internet skits of all time. The soup store sketch. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm supposed to try some matzo ball soup. That's right. It better that's be right. fucking good. Are matzo it's balls good. like meatballs? Um, It's like, imagine the consistency of a meatball, but instead of meat, it's like like breading. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I don't know what other food I could compare it to. But... Sounds disgusting, but I'll try it. No, it's good. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a dumpling. Oh, it's I like, like a... dumplings. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm all for dump. I love no. like chicken and dumplings. Oh, so good. Yeah, so good. Sounds uh, great. Wait, that's what I used to eat when I, whenever I go to a Cracker Barrel. Mm -hmm. Get some chicken and dumplings. The Cracker Barrel. Yeah, I've only eaten at Cracker Barrel a couple times. Of course. Mm -hmm. Are there any Waffle Houses by you? Waffle houses? Yeah, of course. Yeah. There's this one waffle house in in West Hollywood that's fucking amazing. Oh my god. It sucks. There's no waffle houses by me. It's so sad. Yeah. It's so sad. How is it that there's no waffle houses by me, but there is by you in Commieville, LA? What's up with that? They do um they do God, I guess it's not a waffle. No, I guess they have a waffle version of it where they put uh what's the frosted flakes they like make the waffle with frosted flakes in the waffle that and sounds awful oh god it's so delicious frosted flakes on a waffle i don't know about in that in the waffle like baked in the waffle yes like they put frosted oh, flakes in the batter that sounds terrible it's so good oh god it's so good mm. frosted flakes and then they put like strawberries and whipped cream on the waffle and oh god it's so good uh, Williers for five dollars says everything he believes is hidden within a joke because he knows his real positions are insane. He needs deniability. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. That, yep. that's what I meant. Maybe I maybe I said it incorrectly, but the mm -hmm. like in the Vosh, that's that's a devastating thing about that Vosh Charlie Kirk debate is Vosh like laid out an acceptable position for CRT that isn't CRT, it just right. isn't like. Yeah, CRT is a yeah. radical thing. Whalers was talking about Cody, though, not Vosh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously with Cody, the mask slipped at the end. Then we found yeah. out the dark truth. Yes, but Cody did for the first part of it. Yes. Echo that same acceptable position that we're just teaching mm -hmm. history. It's not a big deal. What is it like fucking make people hate each other? That's not what we're trying to do. Unless, of course, we're trying to bring the downfall of society. And then, of, of course, we would do that. <laughs> Stug for five dollars says, "When we have one great unified Earth nation, there will be a government conspiracy where they pretend that there is a great evil alien threat to fight, mm -hmm. yeah, and it will be a giant squid." Watch me. There you go. Perfect. John Smith for two dollars says, "Fun fact: the first American slave owner was black." I'm not sure that's a fun fact. But... Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I'd heard that too. Yes. Really. I'd heard that. I've never, I never knew if it was true or not, but I've, I've heard the claim. I wouldn't be that surprised if it was true. And he was an ancestor of Martin Luther King, direct descendant. Oh my there, god! Oh my god! <laughs> I know. God. Had to take it there. Couldn't help myself. Uh, XSL for one ninety nine says, "What will you do when Islamic theocracy is achieved?" I will fight. Yeah, that's not going to happen, Nuke right? It. Not on my watch. Yeah. Not on my watch. Remember when we were like actually afraid, like oh, Islam's gonna take over the world, guys. <laughs> Boo -hoo 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 -hoo. Now it's like, pfft. okay. Are we afraid of that? I mean, no, we're not afraid. I'm not afraid of that. It seems like a joke now. It sounds like now we're worried about the commies. The Taliban has an air force. What are you talking about? Oh, it's terrifying. Terrifying. Yes. That's why they had to hide in caves until we left. Do you They're think? So do you think the Taliban will try to fly one of those F-14s all the way over to America before and realize that, oh, they have to be gassed? They only fly for an hour? They'll just crash into the ocean. Yeah. We keep sending F-14s to bomb America, <laughs> and they never make it. They never make it. Uh, W.M. Quinn for $5 says, America Uncovered is a very good channel. I'm not sure I'm familiar with that one. They also run China Uncensored. Oh, that's a good channel. Another great channel, yes. Yeah, that's the first time I heard of that channel. 
he I've was seen some thorough. of the China Uncensored video, yeah. But I got to admit, it was kind of boring just because, mm -hmm. like, uh, I know they're lying. Come on, it's politics. They're all lying. Right, right. Uh, Colorblind for five dollars says, "Sitch, tell Adam. Adam will tell me, and I will say it for you guys in the Thursday stream." <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's a good idea. The chain, yes. Uh, Mark the cyborg for six ninety nine Canadian says, "I went to a Catholic school in a predominantly Jewish suburb of Toronto." Well, that's ironic. Uh, my school was five hundred Filipino kids and six other Italian kids and me. <laughs> oh that's wow. Funny. Wow. That's hilarious. I didn't know is there a bunch of like Filipino Catholic kids or something. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. I mean, the Catholic Church pretty much runs the world. So I think a lot of immigrants gravitate towards mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. familiar that they can. They're like, oh, we have Catholic in our country. Right. We know how it works. There you go. Uh, Colobar for five dollars says, Sitch, here's my take on the whole Middle East thing. I said this off air to V Radio. Pull everything out, let them sort it out. Unfortunately, it is. The way. The way. The way. The way. This is the, the way. way. You know what uh, that's was, from, right? Yeah. The, the meme that's dead now. The Mandalorian. Oh, that's not what I was referencing. Has it died? No. I was referencing... Uh, it is the way. I was referencing uh, Knuckles. Oh, okay. Do you know the way? But I guess, I guess they did say the way in The Mandalorian, too. Yeah, they did. It is the way. I wonder, is the Mandalorian really referencing Ugandan Knuckles? Probably. Probably, yeah. Uh, Alex Garris for $5 says, leftist politics don't work well. Meanwhile, I don't know why they keep pulling the wool over our eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Think about it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, the expert layman for $5 says, what's the triggering potential of Joseph of a Joseph Ma McCarthy montage set to Bonnie Tyler's holding out for a hero? Oh, my <laughs> God. Very triggering. <laughs> That's pretty triggering. Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. Uh, the Philippines was colonized by Spain. That's why they're so Catholic. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. They're the convert or die country. That's right. Damn Spanish. Yeah. Uh, the Woosters for nine ninety nine said, what are you guys' thoughts on the... Oh, I read that one. Oh, I didn't. I did not. The Afghanistan situation. It reminds me of a conversation we had on the Q&A stream talking about the future uncoupling of America involvement in foreign countries. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to get to that this stream because it's disunited, already 3 o'clock in the morning. Disunited nations. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to shut up just so you can get through some chats. We'll see if we have time at the end. Uh, Alex Karras for $5 says, I discovered by accident that streams with Adam helped me sleep very well and, and I have the opposite of nightmares. A-team is harmonica sounds. Oh, that's awesome. There we go. There you go. Of course, it's my soothing voice. Uh, CT says you missed a fan art. Did I? Did we miss a fan I don't art? miss fan arts. What are you talking about? Uh -oh. Bullshit. Uh -oh. I got every. Well, we single missed Expert Layman's GIF, but I don't know if you could ever put oh, it up. Yeah. Is that what you were referring to, CT? I'll try it. It's a good GIF. Yeah. If that's what you're referring to. I'm on it. I'm back to work. <laughs> Don't mess with uh, Adam, me. I got to hack into the GIF. Adam Riley for five Canadian says, please just glass us. You don't want any of what we have up here <laughs> in Canada. Oh, my God. Uh, Matthias 1190 for $5 says, did you guys answer my question? I don't I remember saying your name. I don't remember what your question was, Matthias. We never S -class, answer any questions. We answer every question. Oh, yeah. Always. We answer every question. Even when question. you think we don't, we actually did. Sometimes we answer them to ourselves quietly. <laughs> that's true internally you have to listen really hard to get those answers uh s class is the most interesting class but a team is my closest team there you go nice i like it nice oh look she uh, did a link oh ct you're great oh wonderful ct uh cory for five dollars says this dude is completely disheveled and he's trying to sell communism he's dressed like communism <laughs> Oh, yeah, nice. exactly. Orion, the above average for $5, says, Hey, here you go, boys. Now give me my free will. We'll listen to this later, so make it good. Well, there you go, Orion. You get your five free units of free will. Is he saying that Cody is dressing for the job that he wants? Gulag <laughs> inhabitant? Is he gulag inhabitant or gulag enforcer? No, he doesn't look like an enforcer. He doesn't even look like a gulag inhabitant. He looks like the crazy man who wanders the streets with a megaphone telling you that the end is nigh. 
the end is soon. Yep. And they, they sleep on the park bench at night. That's who Cody's dressed up as. Uh, Culvar for $5 says, Newsflash, Stitch and Adam, you guys are still little shits, but chat still loves you. Oh, thank you, Culvar. True. Thank you. Very true. Thank you. We aspire to be little shits. Mm-hmm. Uh, there you go. This is the gift by Expert Layman. Very trippy. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Wow. Do you know Expert Layman is? That's a... What do you call it? An oxymoron. Oxymoron. Yeah. Yes. Did you know that? The expert layman. I did know that, yeah. You didn't know. I, po- I pointed it out to you for the first time. That's right. I don't know English, so I didn't know it until you pointed it out. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrick Mulligan for Two Canadians says, does CT stand for a communist tanky? <gasps> Eyes on CT. Mm-hmm. Bum, bum, bum. CT? Yes. Communist tanky? I knew it. Yeah, uh, I don't even know what a tanky is, but. That's it. Apologists for the USSR and possibly China. Mm-hmm. Ugh. That's what a tanky is. Richard Wolf so, is a tanky. He is. He pretends like he's not, but he 100% is. Uh, C. Hennessy for $2 says, also, sorry, I'm 15 minutes behind the live. That's okay. We forgive you. Uh, Stug for $2 says, turns out this video is a Snopes fact check article. <laughs> Basically. Mm. It's just him reading off some fucking Snopes article he has. Uh, Lick Tasty for five dollars says, "Miss this one. We'll watch tomorrow." I look forward to watching Adam read chat while Sitch talks. Thanks to Adam and his sidekick for keeping me sane. Ouch! Ouch! Why is that Heartful. painful for you? Hurtful. Because obviously you're the sidekick. Guys, you're so e- you're like a snowflake. <laughs> You're like a conservative. It's one of those conservatives. I'm like snowflake. a conservative snowflake. Is that what you're saying, Adam? <laughs> These conservative snowflakes are just so upset that people are teaching that whiteness is inherently evil and that we should deconstruct capitalism for Marxism. Oh, these conservative snowflakes. What's just wrong a with snowflake. them? I know. I know. <laughs> Why are you such a snowflake? A <laughs> uh, cat branchman for five dollars says critical race theory. Critical race, their theory, is not about communism, okay? If people learn the truth about America and they become communists, that is purely a coincidence. <laughs> True. Oh, that's True. sad. That's so yep. sad. That was Cody's argument, basically. It's just a happy accident, Sid. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's the print I wanted, Adam. Oh, your picture. Yeah. What was that flag gif of me? What was that from? I discovered that I have the old live stream from when we did the... We did a debate. We watched the debate. Election covers. That's what it is. Oh, and there's That's a, the election there's a coverage. gif of me with an American flag? Uh, cool. Yeah. Look, I had Trump up there. Fight! I think it was for the Democratic. I see, I yeah. see. I think didn't we get a that we got a copyright strike? We did get copyright, but we did out or something. But we did. uh, You emailed the guy, and he was super cool about it. Yeah, and he let yeah he pulled it. And then the next day, I saw, um, like uh, David Pakman basically raising money. Oh, the copyright struck me! Oh my God, send money! Right, right. I'm not gonna survive. (laughs) Help me out! I'm David Pakman. I know, I know. My Patreon's twenty thousand dollars a month. Yeah. You don't know what it's like. That that alien versus Mickey Mouse picture was painted by Adam. Yes. That is a painting. That's a very cool Adam painting. Uh Lick Tasty for another five dollars says, I'm drunk, so here's an extra five. Thank you. Genuine thanks to both of you guys. You guys represent a reasoned moderate view that seems more and more rare now. I know, it's sad said oh that's right well or we're super conservative reactionaries depending on who you ask but oh i think it cut my mic off when i did i heard what when did you do what when i did uh one of them it cut my mic off oh i think when i do the painting too it cuts my mic off too sorry oh, guys yeah uh, Electro Master for $5 says, also, I forgot to mention, Sitch, 
Be careful when you were editing last week's video. That's a slippery slope to making videos again. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, holy shit, Sid is working funny. for it. That's funny. People want to watch the stream, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm committed. I, I'm surprised that it got as many views as it did, to be honest with you. So, you already said Wakanda forever, guys. You who said, said like 10, that? You said it like 10 hours ago. Oh, yeah. Sean was Not the because chat. Sean wanted us to say it. I said it because of my own accord, okay? <laughs> Sean was trying to play the free will game with you. I know. The, I you know. don't have free will. Well, it was funny because I literally didn't even notice he was doing it. So, so I don't know what that says about free will or not. I had so much free will, I ignored Sean into oblivion. Uh, Bull Moose for 499 says, Attention, if you go back to episode 63, Nuance Bro brings up MMT and Adam calls it garbage. <gasps> When? In what episode happened? 63. Nuance Bro brings up MMT and Adam calls it garbage. I call MMT, I call Nuance Bro garbage. Mm. Sure. Nuance, that's not what Bull Moose says. Nuance Bro has yet to uh -huh. has yet to provide a oh wait. New was Nuance Bro on? Yes, I imagine. Okay. So this might have been before I knew anything about MMT. This is before you knew anything about MMT, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Nope. There you yeah. go. Hmm. Uh, Crack Rock City, our favorite Ninja Turtles supervillain, for $5 says, since you're an avid reader, Adam, you should check out the books from Chuck Tingle. I think you'll find them to be good. Also, S-Class is a best class. Chuck Tingle. I feel Wait, like maybe that's I... not... Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, wow. you should check out Chuck Tingle. I think you'd like him. It's hilarious because I shouldn't check out Chuck Tingle. No, you should. You'd like Chuck Tingle books. Chuck Tingle. This mm -hmm. better not be. This better not. It says Chuck oh, Hugo Award. Chuck Tingle. Yeah. Click on images and look at the Chuck Tingle covers. Let's see. Author Chuck Tingle. Mm hmm. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! First oh my... picture: no. Chuck Tingle book pounded in the butt by Area Fifty One while attempting to storm it. Oh my god! That actually, I'm a little intrigued by that story. There you go. Right. I mean, aside from the butt pounding, I am curious about the aliens. Right. Or, or what about this one? Law firm executive boner, and it shows a topless man serving in a law firm where all the lawyers have. Dinosaur heads. Yeah. I like it. I like the sci-fi angle here. There you go. Chuck Tingle is a uh, pseudon pseudonymous author primarily of gay niche erotic short stories. The stories Bigfoot mainly pirates take... haunt my balls. <laughs> the stories mainly <laughs> take the form of monster erotica featuring romantic and sexual encounters with Dinosaurs, imaginary creatures, oh anthropomorphized inanimate objects, and even abstract concepts. That's right. If you want to get butt fucked by communism, <laughs> Chuck Tingle has a book for you. Unicorn Nominations. Butt Cop Beach Patrol by Chuck Tingle. <laughs> Nominations Hugo Award for Best Fan Writer. What? Hugo Award for Best Shorts. Hugo is huge. Yes. He's got a Hugo? My I hope goodness. not. Danny Hugo become super woke? Well, that would make sense. I remember yeah. someone complaining about that. Uh, Sentient Deep Dish Pizza Pounds Me in the Butt in 15 Minutes or It's Free by Chuck Tingle. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I know. He was Hugo nominated. He didn't win. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's nominations. You're yes. right. Open wide for the handsome saber tubes dentist who is also a ghost. So I, I would not enjoy that book. <laughs> there's a Bitcoin in my butt and he is handsome. Are these all like books or are they just covers? Because I feel like I feel like these, these are all just covers, not actually be, books. These might be fake, huh? Yes. Hold on, let's how, I was how, gonna say, because otherwise he's he's mastered the art of clickbait as fuck. 
Oh my book god. Covers. No, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of them on Kindle. Well, there you go. Two ninety nine. Though you shouldn't check them out. You know why? Because as funny as these all are, uh-huh. he did a no no. What'd he do? He teamed up with Zoe Quinn. Dun, oh dun, no. Dun. No. Remember, remember her Kickstarter video game that she was making and got all this money for and then never made? That's him? She teamed up with Chuck Tingle to make this game. Really? Yep. He's like, oh my God, I thought it would be as easy as writing pounded in the butt by my own butt. How? Do you, well, hold yep. on. How is that possible? August 30th, 2018. It's still up there. Kickstarter. It's called Kickstarted in the Butt, a Chuck Tingle digital adventure. Whoa. Okay. She was making a Chuck Tingle video, not like visual novel video game. Oh my God. All you can basically do a Chuck Tingle book if you just add in the butt to any anything, right. any random mad lib that you come up with. Sure. But a, he was involved though. He was involved. Um she raised eighty five thousand dollars for this. Oh my god. And uh, guess we, what? We have to defeat that evil. Holy shit. She guess raised what? more money than us. Never did it. Never, well, we're never gonna did do, it. We're going to deliver our book. That's of a course. huge difference. I'm fucking... Yes. Vice News. Okay. Mm-hmm. Vice News even put out an advertisement with a half million views for this shitty th- project that Zoe Quinn never finished. Well, that's evil. <laughs> that's 100% evil. So that's evil incarnate. There I you don't go. Know. What do you call you, that, Sitch? Beyond call it, evil. It, is it, well, I don't know if I call it evil. There's a word for it. I'm not sure what it is. A word that we hear quite often. It begins with a, a G. It ends in rifter. I'm mm. not sure if you know what word I'm talking about. Grifter. Ends in a G and ends in a rifter. Yes. Grifter. Some, 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 some the word is word. grifter. Did yes. I guess it? You, I think you guessed it. Yes. Grifter. And if you ever ask her about it, she gets very really? upset. Yes. Here, let me let yeah. me add her on Twitter and see if I can get a response out. Zoe Quinn, whatever happened to your Chuck Tingle digital adventure game? I just found out about Chuck Tingle and I'm very excited for this project. Can I support it? That's what you yeah. should say. To probably send you a PayPal link. I bet you're right. I bet you're right. Remember when oh Zoe God. Quinn made someone kill themselves by getting them fired from their dream job with a fake Me Too accusation? That is about the saddest thing I've ever heard in my life. Ah, Zoe Quinn. What a shit person. That is horrible. Yep. Anyways. Yeah. Thank you, Crack Rock Study. Uh, Darth Mohawk for five Canadian says, I'm about four hours behind, but Adam should get that electrical engineer guy to explain why Bluetooth is perfectly safe. S class is best class. I would love to hear how Bluetooth is perfectly safe because I have bought some Bluetooth headphones that I no longer use because I'm terrified. There you go. Yeah. There you go. But I mean, how do you get around the Geiger counter videos on YouTube where they actually like, they're not Geiger counters. They're uh, EMP counter things. Mm-hmm. That's still bad, right? I mean, it's no one knows whether it's bad or not. That's the point. Oh, yeah. It's very uh, unknown. Listen, all these people going crazy about fucking vaccines, but they're like, Bluetooth is absolutely safe. <laughs> when will your comic be out? Because I'm planning to buy it. Mm. We're shooting for December. Yes. Yeah, we're shooting for December. So we'll see. Um, Darth Mohawk for five Canadian says, Oh, I read that one. Uh, can you imagine? Mm. There's no reality where we mm. wouldn't deliver. Adam has spent too much time. I think he would kill himself if this comic was not right. Made. No. Yeah. The, th- the thing is though, <laughs> I mean, we re- we want it to be super amazing. So sure. No, but I'm just, I'm wondering if like the people who do these projects, but don't deliver on that them. don't deliver. Like, 
how could you, I mean, do they just not spend time? Is it a scam from the beginning? Like how could well, you no, spend so I much time this, on a project and just, I know the situation because mm -hmm. you see this in comics gate, people get in a situation where, you know, they put together a project and it's over their head. They don't realize it till they're already. Swimming. No, the weakest link is always the artist. And if you right. have no ability to do art or anything like that, you're at the whim of someone else who may oh, deliver yeah, 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 exactly. or not deliver. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, there's there's books that that the like the artwork on the book looks fucking fantastic, but then you know the art the artist delivers twenty pages and it's a fifty page book. Right. Right. So right. you got yeah, thirty pages that you have to. So you're you're in a you're in a situation where first of all you've already committed to delivering a book that's like that particular artist but you know there's no way in hell you're going to get another 30 pages out of that artist like they're off doing something else or whatever <laughs> this is one of the reasons why like i i want to be this is why one of the reasons why i'm doing pretty much everything is because Right. No, yeah. that's that's true. You're not. You're yeah. at your own whims. Unfortunately, that's the only way I think you yeah. can do a lot of this stuff. Be very unless there's an artist that you have a very good relationship with, or a super right. professional, or you yeah. trust, or you're paying shit tons of money to, yeah. and you trust. Like, yeah, it would be very hard to do it otherwise. Yeah. CT has helped out with some stuff. Sammy G is helping out with some stuff now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Someone said, "Guys" is an actual Chuck Tingle book titled "Pounded in the Butt." By my bizarre assumptions that Chuck Tingle books are just covers and not actual books. No way. Bullshit. That's not a real book, but it I wouldn't surprise it. me if it was. I believe it. I'm somewhat intrigued with this pounded in the butt by my own butt. <laughs> pounded in the butt by my uh, own Cap, butt. <laughs> Cap, Cap Branchman for $2 says, when I had to murder the companion cube, heartbreak. That's uh -huh. true. Adam would know about that, but he refuses to play the single player of Portal, even though I've told him to play mm. anytime. I will never do that. It's so I much know. more fun playing with Sitch. You have to kill the companion cube. It's so sad. It's so sad. No, I won't do it. I don't kill anything. The Wooster for four ninety nine saying we're qu quoting some racist song that uses the N word a bunch, so um, I can't say it. Yeah, Wooster. Thank you, Wooster. <laughs> is it Eminem? Because technically, if it's a white guy saying it, can't you do it then? Uh, then it's I not cultural appropriation. I think that's the opposite. Oh, okay. Of, uh, of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe this isn't a rap song. Maybe it's a meme. I don't know. I just Googled it. I'm not getting. Hey, look at that. I Googled it, and it brought me to a Know Your Meme link. And it mm -hmm. says, top image galleries today. Hot diggity demon. There you go. Oh, that's hot. All part demon. of. No, not the N word thing, but it just oh. was a coincidence. So, there you go. Thank you, simulation. Yeah. What would you do uh, we... if I just decided the book is beyond me? I couldn't. I can't do it. I can't deliver it. I mean, you have to get a lot of people money back, and uh, you would be devastated. So I don't. What do you mean? What would I? Do? What would you do? <laughs> I I'm just I can't I would be even, disappointed. Like, you would be devastated. I can't even imagine that scenario. No, oh my no. god. Yeah. I feel like we're doing good now. I feel like we are doing good. Yeah. yeah. We're we're or so you're doing like, good, really. We have an we have a, like an amazing page of the fucking of uh of Champ, one of the characters. Mm -hmm. Very, very hotty. A very a lot of sexy. mommy milkies yeah. going on, going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes definitely competes with anything um you've seen from sammy g which sammy yes. g i mean she's not, nothing to sneeze at definitely right some hot yeah. sitch and adam chance yeah. yes i saw a page of, of that sammy g showed me because i gave sammy g three pages and said you know let me see what you can do with these and with one of them i was like holy shit <laughs> show like, me what you got Oh, I shouldn't say this because you have, I haven't even showed you. You yeah. haven't even showed me. It's going to go time out. Yeah. Uh, Weekend Jail for $5 says shrimp is good. Pickled mm -hmm. herring is better. I hope Super Chats work now. They do work. Uh, shrimp is amazing. Pickled herring sounds disgusting, but mm -hmm. I've never had that. So. <laughs> that sounds interesting pickled herring okay pickled mm. herring i'm not yeah. sure how i feel about that i'm not a big fish person i'm not you aren't either you said before so. yeah i mean fish is okay 
Um, it's got to be super fresh. Any fishy taste that I'm just, I'm out. Well, the thing is, I love shellfish so much that if I'm ever at a seafood restaurant, mm-hmm. why would I ever choose fish over a shrimp totally. or something lobster, like that? Crab, yeah. Lobster, well, lobster crab. Lobster crab is usually really. like a lot more expensive. Yeah. But shrimp is usually the same price as the fish dishes. I go all in. I've ordered like five I lobsters know. at once. <laughs> why are you laughing? You know you're in heaven with five lobsters. Five lobsters? Jesus, how fat are you? How the fuck do you eat five lobsters? They're tiny. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Lobsters aren't tiny. Lobsters are like three bites. What do you... I don't know what's happening here. Yeah. There's maybe you're, maybe you're getting the mini lobsters. They're hearing... You... They bring them out and they're like three bites. No, when you go to the seafood restaurant, they got that lobster. It's like the size of your fucking mm-hmm. forearm. What are you talking about? Not here. Tiny lobsters here. California lobsters mm-hmm. are Maybe. basically little people. Oh, they're like special California lobsters. Yeah. They're like tiny Pacific lobsters. Crawdad the Atlantic size. Ocean lobsters are like crayfish gigantic. size lobster. Well, that's that's a crayfish. That's not a lobster. Well, they call them lobster when you order them. Like when I think of a lobster, I think mm-hmm. of like a fucking big old lobster. So do I. Okay. So I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Titanic size lobster. Yeah. Adam loves Juneteenth being the federal, being a federal because it. Oh. Angry Bell's for five dollars says Adam loves Juneteenth being a federal holiday because it's framed as Black Independence Day, and that's what unity really is, right? AP program all the way. I feel like they were being sarcastic. Oh really? <laughs> yes. Oh. Uh, we can not, jail for it's Juneteenth. Juneteenth is about when slavery ended. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is about unity. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we can jail for another five dollars. Says okay. Since super chats are working on my end now, please try pickled herring. Unless you hate Polish seafood, you racists. What? I'm not eating no pickled herring. Okay. I mean, I'll try it. Really. I'll try it, sure. I mean, I don't, I don't think I'll like it, but I'll try it. I don't know where the fuck you even get something like that. with pickled herring, and then the next thing you know, you're drawing yourself into gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know, you're working with Chuck Tingle to never deliver on a Kickstarter. Exactly. Right, that's right. It all is just downhill from there. Uh Lord Tennyson's Pipe for five dollars says this one goes out to my wonderful boyfriend Gemini. We've been together for a week and I've never felt happier. My dearest darling Gem, I love you. Really? Wow, look at this. Is this true? Is this true? Lord Tennyson's Pipe and Gemini have found an internet romance in our community. Really? Adorable. Oh my god. That's great. You mean they're still going to sexually assault you, harass you, Adam? I was thinking they just do it together as a team. I wonder how not gay Ben feels about this. <laughs> uh, weekend jail for ten dollars says. Also, can I have a wrench? I'm inebriated and have given you guys a few hundred bucks over the past few months. Please, I'm a poor boy. Uh, use empathy. Is it super effective? Pickled herring, eat it. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try pickled herring, mm-hmm. and if I like it, you get a wrench. If I don't like it, you don't get it. Oh my god. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it like a whole. whole I someone's not getting a wrench. I can. We'll see. We'll see. Some... I don't know. We'll see. Pickled herring. Your wrench, your wrench status is determinant on pickled herring. First okay. of all, it's cold fish, right? Is it? Uh, that's I didn't know that. That's not. That's not good. It seems that's like it. I mean, it's pickled. That's well, not what, good. What? What do you eat that's pickled? That's hot. That's true. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Good luck, man. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't get there, Taylor. I didn't miss it. Don't worry. Did you miss Taylor's super chat? I did not. Don't miss not. Taylor's super chat. I okay. didn't miss Taylor's super chat. Taylor, who I'm pretty sure has been a fan for like ever, because I recognize her name from like a million years ago. Hell yeah. I would not miss her super chat. Uh, the Podski for five dollars says, "My favorite part about that video is when the daughter just shit, sit when the daughter just sits back down and just starts singing again after being chewed out by her mom." <laughs> I know that's I how guess, you can tell it's fake. I see. 
Well, I'll be honest. I never saw that part because I stopped the video. I couldn't watch the whole thing. What? So maybe that's why. You I never it made great. it to the end? I never made it to the end. So there you go. Snowflake. There you go. I thought it was sad. It's full on melted sad. in the middle of I the melted. video. It's true. That's very true. <laughs> Uh, Weekend Jail for another five dollars says. At any rate, thanks for being my autistic Sunday fam. Pickled herring, platinum. <laughs> love you guys. Heart. It's okay if you don't love me back. I'm used to it in real life. Wow. We love. I think you. I read okay. that one. We love you. You don't have to be passive aggressive. Yeah, you. totally. Did you you so you missed the part where after she sang the song, she picked up the phone and called her chemistry teacher and they had phone sex. <laughs> That didn't happen. You missed that part. Didn't that you? didn't actually happen, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, Cat, I know you're lying. Cat it Branchman did. For, no, it totally happened. Cat Branchman for five dollars says, "Have you watched the new Suicide Squad? DC made an actually really good movie. Not yet. I was planning on watching it. Planning on watching it. You? Oh, I saw it. Yeah, but I haven't seen it yet. Adam saw it. Yeah. What was your? I don't remember. You said you liked it or not? I didn't finish it. I got bored. Oh, okay. So yeah. not Adam didn't like it. Yeah. But Adam has bad taste in movies, so we'll see. I saw I listened to some of EFAP though, and they were making the same points I was making. Oh, they didn't like it yeah. either? Interesting. Yeah. There's some s- real stupidness in it. Hmm. That's too bad though. I thought the trailer looked fun. And I like uh what's his face? Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy guy. Guardians of uh, the Galaxy. Jail. Yeah. For Got another five dollars says adam i'm giving you five more bucks because i think you actually read my tweets lmao mm-hmm. there you go i did i saw a bunch of them but i didn't read them all talking about uh, cryptocurrency rise griffith for two aussie sex jesus says jesus crossing jesus fucking christ adam just read the chat this is when i ditched you mm-hmm. oh i guess i could have read the chat yes yeah that's a thing that you can do that's the thing you could do I did read uh, a super chat though. I read a whole super yeah. chat. You oh reread it. Oh my god. A made whole super work, chat. Made my work useless. Redundant. Yeah. It's <laughs> our favorite super chatter. Not gay Everyone's Ben. Everyone's favorite super chatter. Not gay Ben. Not gay Ben. That's right. <sighs> not gay Ben. I love all Says, of our not gay fans. Yes. Says Sitch. To, and there's like one of them. Sitch. <laughs> to answer your question from last week, I am so not gay that I have the name Not Gay Ben reserved on all platforms, but not limited to Instagram, Reddit, YouTube, Tumblr, Neopets, and the Babylon B. Oh my God, Babylon That's right. I, I've, I found a Not Gay Ben account somewhere else, and I was questioning whether it was this Not Gay Ben. So there's mm-hmm. the answer. Wow. All Not Gay Bens are this one. Not Uncle Gay Bens? Mm-hmm. Oh, someone's saying, Adam, you straw man, EFAP. Did I? They praised the characters and hated on the plot. So there you go. They had mixed feelings on it, supposedly. Uh, Yeah, but they hated on Harley Quinn, who I hated on, too. I see. Yeah. I see. The uh, whole Harley Quinn plot was really fucking dumb. <clears throat> Well, I do think, I mean, Harley Quinn as a character is such a boring character. Boring like. character, yes. Harley, the only thing that made Harley Quinn interesting was she was half naked, and they totally fucked that up. <laughs> so there you go. Now she has zero interesting things about her. Like, she's fine and good. She was great in the Batman cartoon being like the Joker's sidekick, henchman, abusive relationship. Mm-hmm. But whenever they try to do the Harley Quinn on her own, she's just not interesting character there's no she there's no relationship and she's not really right like she's like i'm just zany she has no goal no hero no anything right yeah well i'm assuming it looked like from the trailer they were making deadshot the protagonist not harley quinn Mm -hmm. they are yeah but because he's usually the like the DC animated Super Suicide Squad movies that I've seen are actually really good, surprisingly. I so. I feel like they developed an entire subplot mm-hmm. for one 
joke that is actually in the trailer. The joke when she, like, they're going to get, they're going to rescue her and she escapes on her own. Like, it feels oh. like th there's an entire lengthy subplot that is all just to service that I one see. joke, which isn't even very funny. And they already did it in the trailer. Right. And it's all, and it's also the, like, I'm a, a strong woman. I can't be rescued trope, which is just fucking so predictable now. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. And I almost feel like it should be part of the Bechtel test that a woman being saved on screen just immediately makes you fail the Bechtel test. <laughs> don't you don't you think? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is it's, it, that's what's so weird is that people sort of reinvent like Harley Quinn was interesting when she was like kind of this she was like a bad guy but you felt also felt bad for her because she was like obviously an abuse victim yeah at the same yeah, time totally so it's a she's complex like, yeah. character it was an interesting character but now they're like they're trying to make her like she's free and independent you're like uh okay yeah <laughs> all right so she's uh, a bad guy that is not got that, all like what <laughs> that she's just evil now i guess i don't know yeah i don't know suddenly not interesting anymore and, but uh, she's every... not smart either she's a fucking no. airhead yes that was the thing too she wasn't like in the movies they always make her like brain damaged yeah where in the cart in the cartoon which is where she was originally from because she wasn't from the comics originally like she was crazy but she wasn't stupid yeah she's stupid now she's like homer she, simpson she's supposed i mean she was a psychiatrist mm -hmm. at arkham asylum yeah. who fell in love with the Joker. Obviously, to be a psychiatrist, you have to be an intelligent Smart. person. You yeah, would hope. exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Angry Bellspout for $2 says, can't just teach history, uh, can't just teach history showing whites are devils? <laughs> Question yeah. mark. I know, right? Why can't you just do that? Wouldn't that Why be funny? That? Save a lot of time, right? Yep. Uh, the Universal Asset for five Aussie bucks says, I sent a meme to PSA Sitch on Twitter. But here it is again. Oh, that was the <laughs> that was the I have a dream that I could get pregnant four times. Yes. Yeah. The impreg. <laughs> the impreg, yes. LK. <laughs> uh Weekend Jail for five dollars says one more. I know you didn't read most of my chats, Adam, but you guys are super cool. Sorry, I said fiat lol heading S team at the moment. It's all good though. I thought I'm the one that said fiat. Oh, okay. I said fiat like crazy, talking about fiat. Uh, Weekend Joe for another five dollars says, "Before I delete my checking account, just saying I keep typing at Adam and Sitch. This must be what it's like to be pie curious." <laughs> I mean, we understand that we have this effect on lots of people. Okay, it's not just you. Really? We understand? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really? Really, Adam. I always see a lot of girls chasing after you. I'm got to tell you, I'm a little jealous. But anyway. <laughs> Sitch appeals to all, okay? <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what it is, but it's obviously my brilliant wit. A lot of women. Big brain. My big brain. Okay. A lot of tail chasing <laughs> Sitch. Uh, I mean there's tail chasing Adam, it's just not the tail. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Uh, I know. Well, we can what? jail. For, Don't we have for some super chats to read? We do. We do. We can jail for five dollars. Says for the real last one. I used to work in financial BS, licensed by the federal government, etc. And yes, it's no one really knows what's going on. True. True. Yeah. Uh, contrast for five. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy says kids should not vote. Everyone should go through some form of disenfranchisement as a shared experience that unites everyone. Yeah, I like that. Go. I do like that. Go. Yeah. Uh, con uh, weekend jail for another ten dollars. Damn, weekend jail is giving us lots of money in the stream. Thank you, weekend jail. Give us lots of money in the stream. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try that pickled herring. Okay, we're gonna see if you get that wrench or not. Mm -hmm. uh, if either or both of you come to the Detroit area, I'll let you stay at my house. I know no reasonable person would accept that offer, which is why I'm offering it. Mm -hmm. But I can get you the best pizza. There you go. That's a. I love the way you put that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, even though I'll have to pass because I can't eat the best pizza, being a horrid lactose intolerant boy. But I will eat the pizza definitely. Adam can I have will, my I slice. Love it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and Sitch will sleep on your couch. I will. I will stay at the hotel. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Sitch investigates to make sure that it's safe. I might come to the house and smoke mm -hmm. weed with you guys the next day once there Sitch is go. still alive. But there you go. Sitch is our recon man. There you go. I thought you were supposed to be the rebel grabbing pigeons off the street. Why do I got to be the recon man for the crazy person? Just it, make sure it goes okay. Make sure I see. Make sure he doesn't want to read Chuck Tangle with you. Yes. Sitch is only hot to me when I'm pretending he's in a gay relationship with Adam. <laughs> oh, my God. Who said that? I mean, Mantis Bear said that. Oh, my there God. You go. There you go. Hello, everyone. Will Sitch finally admit Biden was the worst option now that the Taliban have won? Mm. I'm sorry. Didn't all the Republican or all the Trump people want uh, Trump to pull out of Afghanistan, too? Am I crazy and hallucinating that basically every single MAGA person I listened to for the last four years was telling Trump that we should be isolationists and pull out of Afghanistan and Iraq and all the endless wars? Mm -hmm. Did I hallucinate? The last four years of my life, Adam? You did not hallucinate any okay. of that. Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> yeah. I seem to recall many MAGA people very upset when Trump said that he was going to pull out of Afghanistan and then didn't. And then when he said he was pulling out of Afghanistan, everyone got very excited. I'm just... So I could have swore. could have swore that that happened. Bring our troops I home. I don't know. I have heard from someone who's like a diehard Trump normie, like they watch Fox News all day. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, if Trump was president, the Taliban would be too scared to do anything. <laughs> That's the difference. He could have pulled out and they would have been too scared because he knows that the Taliban knew Trump would have nuked them. Mm -hmm. So there you go. I, I don't know if that was the argument they're making, but. Uh, Bob Jones for 499 says, you've both been indoctrinated <gasps> by public school. Marxism. Oh my God. Read Blacklisted by History to learn how the Vienna Vienna no papers and the KGB archives vindicated Joseph McCarthy. So, first of all, mm -hmm. in my public education, I don't think Joseph Joseph McCarthy was ever talked about at all in my public education. I don't know if this was in your public education. Adam. Mm -hmm. Did Adam sneak out? No, I'm right here. I'm listening, oh. looking at pictures of the Taliban. Okay. Did you learn about Joseph McCarthy in public school? I did not learn about Joseph, Joseph McCarthy, in McCarthy in public, in public no, school. I did not learn about that. It's been a long time since I was in public school, so I don't, I don't technically remember when I first heard of Joseph McCarthy. Uh, I'll I might have heard it. about him in a Woody Allen movie. Okay. I'll check it out. I do recall in the past someone sending me a bunch of these Joseph McCarthy was vindicated articles. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading them whenever I did and saying, this is bullshit, but I'll check it out again. He was not. Check it out again. Yeah. But yeah. he didn't find any commies. No. he did. It was like a witch hunt where he didn't really find yes. any commies. Yes. We. On... And he, but he, he. Publicly, I mean, he lied continually. He would say, and this was on purpose, as part of the tactics, where he'd say, I have a list of 100 communists that I've been right, you know, told right, that yeah. exist in you sure. know, whatever organization. Yeah. And it was always bluffing. He was right. always bluffing about Trying it. to get, yeah, doing the interrogator tactics. Yes. I feel right. like Sitch and Adam have outed more commies on this show than <laughs> Joseph McCarthy ever did. I really feel like we're <laughs> getting paid her here. I don't, yes, right. Joseph McCarthy, I don't think he ever really... I don't think he hit the mother load he was nah. claiming. Yeah. Oh. So unless you're saying that, you know, he predicted these future commies coming out of the woodwork and it took him doing what he did to scare them out eventually on YouTube, mm -hmm. like before YouTube was ever invented. Uh, uh, it's, it's always funny when I read a claim and then I read an article that's literally... Oh, the making the opposite of, the of that claim. No, no, no. That is the verbatim of the claim. Because I'm like, oh, I know where they got this. This article is like from the Texas Freedom Network. Mm -hmm. Read the latest on Joseph McCarthy. He was basically vindicated. Mm -hmm. One of the high school U.S. history curriculum writers, a political activist and non-educator, appointed the writing team, says. 
He also insisted that McCarthy was exonerated by revelations in the Venona papers. There you go. So I'll check out these Venona papers. I'll check them out. Yeah, no, we need a McCarthy now, though. Bring re resurrect McCarthy. Uh, it's finally his time to shine. Yeah. He can finally point to any direction on the internet left to yeah. find a communist. Can you imagine Joseph McCarthy dragging AOC into the uh, there you un American? Go. What was it called? The Senate's no, I don't un Americanism. Was that was committee? the House one. The House was the House uh, un American, American Activities Acts. Committee. Yeah, un American HUAC, Activities. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that wasn't Joseph McCarthy was a senator. I don't know what his yeah. committee was called. Um, where are we? Yeah, Spencer we Kindra for five dollars says, "Glad you guys keep taking a hatchet to Cody's videos and see that he's a self righteous liar and an idiot." Mm -hmm. True. Hell yeah! Big brain for five dollars. Big brain says, "I identify as a lady for the super chat." <laughs> there you go. Mm. There you go. Oh, sweet. Uh, Cat Branchman for another five dollars. Thanks, Cat. So they should have just looked up the definition of penis, not of woman. And I'm sure it says something along the lines of male genitalia. Oh, that's a that's good point. A good, yeah, he should have just been like, "Well, I Google penis, and it says male genitalia." So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Penis. I have a dictionary right here. Let's there see. There you go. The male organ of copulation. Member Boom. is a euphemism. Boom. The, Mic the drop. vagina receives the penis. There you go. Coitus. There you go. Look at that. Right there. Look, look at that. And don't look at it because it's porn. So don't put it on stream. The male organ of cop. I'm this is the dictionary, okay? I just looked it up in the dictionary. Uh Kelsey See, that. That's brilliant. I know. Cat was cat. You should have been there. Jeez. You would have been boom. Dropping mm -hmm. the mic all over Vosh. I might have to like screenshot this and send it as a reply to the tweet just to like <laughs> i know this is like from a year ago but <laughs> is it a year ago go. i mean it's whenever he talked to doug uh to Naples, so i feel like it could be useful i mean we talked about it and didn't really mm. get to this okay. realization right uh kelson glaski for five canadians says in an argument about teaching crt in schools i made the comparison with a school history teacher teaching holocaust denial was that a fair comparison mm-hmm um teaching what in an argument about teaching crt in schools i made the comparison with a school history teacher teaching holocaust denial was that a fair comparison i mean i don't know what the i guess i don't know what the context what your what your context was for that crt is like teaching holocaust denial i mean i can't go ahead so. I mean, I don't know. Well, you go ahead. I mean, I don't I don't know. They're both not true, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure. Where's the comparison beyond that, I guess? Well, they're definitely trying to make it seem like slavery denial is something they're trying to teach in the same kind of way that people do teach or do talk about Holocaust denial. So uh -huh. But I don't think it's, I think that's just a lie. Yeah. I'm not sure about that one. I have to know more context. Uh, Taylor Ramirez for 199. Hey, Taylor. Says, Midnight Stream S class is the best class. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> is it midnight? Oh, it's just midnight here in sunny Southern California. That's right. Uh, Angry Bellsprout for $5 says, Adam, love Juneteenth being a, oh, I read that one. That was yeah. you being bad, a bad man. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're close to the end. I can feel it now. We're almost close to the end. Almost close to the end. <laughs> almost close to the end. Um, do, do, do. Just Dr. Pretend. Diller for $3 says, no offense to stupid people like Cody, but most of historical overviews just jump to the interesting stuff. Unfortunately, most of Native American history is nomadic, petty disputes. They had one walled city built in North America, and it collapsed. Yeah, there's That's your history. Offensive. That's offensive and bigoted. Really? Yes. Uh, Dr. Diller, everyone tell <laughs> says, uh, for $2, with a very long super chat, says, hundreds of years before the Europeans set foot there, they didn't leave a very lasting impact on history. Oh, it's continuation, previous one. Because of how few there were and how primitive comparatively their culture was, sub-Sahara Africa was largely the same way, 
once North America was conquered, or North Africa was conquered, they fell for the same ideological trappings as the Muslim world and became just as technologically backwards over time. It's not a conspiracy. They didn't do anything interesting yet. Why else would China get so much coverage when they're Asian? Well, I mean, I didn't really learn it anything about China either in school, so I don't know. Yeah, I was under the impression we really didn't know anything about China when I was in school, but that's... Well, I don't think that's I mean, true. But... That's like... How old thousands, are you? <laughs> thousands of years ago now. A thousand years ago when I went to school, Asia, or the Oriental as they called it, was a mysterious, <laughs> faraway, magical, mystical land that no one had traveled to except for the great Marco Polo. <laughs> well, what was going on in China during the 80s? I mean, I don't know. They were basically starving to death. Like they, they, didn't, don't know. they built their economy over the last 30 years. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Chairman Mao happened in like 1980, right? I see. Didn't it, when Tiananmen Square was in the 80s, wasn't it? Let's see. That was a big crime, deal. <laughs> crime and Punishment, the full audiobook is on YouTube. Nice. Yeah, that's a good thing. Um, Let me look. China Night. What was China Night? Type in Please Tiananmen continue. Square. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah. that. I think that was 89 or something, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember seeing that on the news, and I was like, yep. what's he doing? He's being a he's baller. Gonna, he's going to drop his groceries. It, that tank's going it was, on. He didn't have groceries. It wasn't in a briefcase he was holding or something. Don't ruin it for me. I thought okay. it was his groceries. I think briefcase, but... Uh, DJ Crunk Factory for $3 says, my public school education from 98 to 2010 was taught by proto SJWs. In middle school, English class, we learned about nothing but the Holocaust for two years straight. We talked about North Americans and slavery constantly, white woman. That's mm. interesting. Wow, that's unfortunate. That's very different than my public education. I mean, we learned about some stuff, but not like, also just constantly. We didn't, I mean, we talked about the Holocaust a little bit in my public school, but not a lot. Uh, Dr. Dealer for one hour says he says that we'd be ignoring the role reactionary movements have had in terms of positive impact in history, but he and all his idiotic friends call everyone reactionary. Are they secretly on our side? I mean, technically, if you think about it, communists are just reactionaries to capitalism. Capitalism, I know. Okay. It's fucking I'm awful. Just, just they are the real reactionaries. Jeez. Uh, Magor for $3. Hey, Magor says, thanks for showing the news article I made. Sorry for the trash colors. I picked a bad template and later discovered it was near impossible to change colors without starting over. Uh, I'm a programmer, not a graphic designer. Oh, there you go. That's okay. My eyes still hurt, but it's okay. <laughs> it didn't hurt my eyes. It was wonderful. Uh, CT for $1 says, contentious question of the night. When you get pizza, do you get dipping sauce? If so, what kind? Now then, come up with a Pokemon right now, a type and a name. I want to draw them. I I like the Polynesian dipping sauce. What's that one? Polynesian. It's like sp yeah. sweet and spicy. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it is awesome, yeah. I don't want to get that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Uh, I mean, I can go with dipping sauce. It just all depends on what the sauces are. Oftentimes... When it's available, it's like shitty dipping sauce. I don't even bother. Yeah. But of course, this is when I ate pizza, which I don't eat anymore. So, God, that's so hellish. All the like pizza hell in Florida, not all of it, most of the pizza in Florida is sh dog shit. Oh, that sucks. Because of the water. There's like this whole thing about you have to use good water to get the dough to mm. rise properly or something. And apparently, right. for whatever reason, the water in Florida is very bad at making pizza. So. Right. It's all basically just sewer water. <laughs> I don't think that's it. But, uh, though there was a chain. What was that chain called? That pee pee water, good. basically. Um, Uno's. Uno's Pizza. Mm -hmm. They had like deep dish pizza that was pretty good. So Deep pee pee water? Yeah, <laughs> deep pee pee water pizza. <laughs> It's not pee-pee water, it's Adam, it's alligator water. Okay. Pee pee water pizza it's, would be a good, a good name. Pizza. If you were open to a pizza place. I don't in think Florida. I would name it pee pee water pizza. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> I don't think <laughs> pee pee water pizza. I don't think I'm anyone's gonna you. come to pee pee water pizza. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
Trust my gut. My gu- I, have a, I have a nose for marketing. Okay. Well, I know. Here, here you go. It, it won't be just a pizza place. It'll be like Chuck E. Cheese's. It'll be like a kid's like uh-huh. activity center. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Pee Pee Waters Pizza, where <laughs> the kids will play pee pees. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Might, and the logo be will be bad. a worm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It'll be an awful visual pun. There you go. Terrible. Pee-Pee's Pizza. <laughs> There's a place called like CeCe's Pizza, which is terrible, mm. but that's a different story. Um, come up with a Pokemon and type in a name. Mm-hmm. Uh, woke type. Mm-hmm. Called Cody. Angelfish. <laughs> there you go. Adam came up with Angelfish. I came up with Cody. There's your it's your the woke type Pokemon. It lectures other Pokemon and puts them to sleep and then attacks them while they're knocked out. Yes. Uh Dr. Diddler for one dollar says, Sitch, do you want to talk about the assault on geese I saw on your Twitter timeline earlier today? Rally the troops. There was right, there was a video I posted. Yeah, of what was a all woman about? sexually yeah. grinding on a goose. Basically sexually assaulting a goose. She yeah. was, yes, yes. I did and not I said hear the that, goose give consent. And I said that uh, because of this travesty, me and the ducks and birds have have united forces to fight off a greater foul foe. Mm-hmm. Those that sexually yeah. assault <laughs> birds. Yeah. There you go. The truce between Sitch, S-Class, and the geese and ducks continues. Has finally been called. Uh, under nonsense for four dollars says S class constantly overdraws their checking account at the sperm bank. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Oh my god! Uh, a team uses a sperm credit union to support the local economy. <laughs> that that world would be a dream if you were a team. There you go. Oh my god, go. that is pretty funny. Oh my God, guys, it's PSA Sitch for $1. Mm. It's me. Mm. Says, hey, now it's PSA Sitch here. I'm A team. That's it. That's all I have to say this week. There you go. Wow. There you go. That sounds I'm coming out as A team. Like yes. getting pounded in the butt by your own butt. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, and oh my God, Adam friended. Adam, why are you donating to the stream? I'm what? So uh, says, wow, Sitch, that's super surprising. I really appreciate appreciate you saying that. I have a confession myself. I'm also a team. Ha ha. Well, thanks again. Totally real, Sitch. Looks like we're both a team now. Oh wow, that's there great. There I'm you go. Breaking news. A-team. Breaking news. Since I said something I would normally say anyway, I I'm I'm signing off on that being actually being mm-hmm. me. Uh oh. It's quack. It's qu- it's quack branchman. Oh no, quack branchman for five dollars says, the hollow bone duck collective will never be defeated. You can't stop the revolution. The dirty solid bone ducks have been the oppressing class for too long, and it's time they give up their power. I agree. There you go. I disagree. I'm on the side of the solid bone ducks. Okay, all you hollow bone ducks. You're going to get the boot if you don't tag along, okay? The treaty ended very quickly. Oh, it's already over? It's already over. Uh, Vagabond for $1, at least with the hollow bone ducks. I'm still still solid with the solid bone ducks. Can't trust the hollows, okay? You're so mean. They don't have any principles. They're hollow. Uh, Vagabond for $1 says, Every German institute in the 1940s agreed that something should be done about the Jews. It's an appeal to authority, not an argument. You're correct. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, CT for one dollar oh, says so fucking gross. What? All the authorities were like yes. something has to be. That's yep. like fucking evil incarnate. Uh, CT for one dollar says so. I was doing polls on Twitter as you do, and I was asking people what I'm about to ask you. What is the best artificial flavor, and what is the worst artificial flavor? Give examples of each. I think best is banana. So I'm going to say the worst is banana. Okay. <laughs> the Typical. best is usually either orange or lime. 
the the worst i is there a worst actually i, don't, I, don't I know. do know you know what the worst artificial flavors i don't know why i love french vanilla ice cream back when i used to be able to eat ice cream god, french can't. vanilla ice cream was delicious okay? oh my god i can't believe that's like hell so but here's the thing french vanilla coffee is the most disgusting thing i've ever had in my life so oh, i don't yeah, know what's true i don't yeah. know what the fuck the difference is i don't know it's what happened there close to it's french horrible it yeah it's like, anything like french oh my vanilla. god it, it tastes like like pb water okay how having french vanilla in the taste like get your mouth ready oh some sweet french vanilla mm, can't wait yeah to, i'm like french vanilla like, that's awesome what the fuck who burned the coffee it's like what is this garbage this yeah. tastes like like alligator semen like what the fuck am i drinking here hmm. so i'm gonna say that you when did you do the side by side alligator <laughs> semen test i'm just curious. at your mom's house <laughs> so i'm gonna say that the nice worst artificial save. flavor <laughs> nice save <laughs> she was serving it uh i'm gonna say that the and i didn't want to be rude you know i didn't want to bang and, and leave without trying something <laughs> oh my god um, terrible <laughs> So I will say that the worst artificial flavor is French vanilla coffee. Uh, okay, that's I'll 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 sign off on the French vanilla okay. coffee. I don't really know what else to say. Uh, Vagabond for one dollar says regarding Chuck Tingle, the sad slash rabid puppies nominated him to demonstrate how ridiculously woke the Hugos have become. Blessed pipe man read some oh, Chuck Tingle on hilarious. a few episodes of the Great British Podcast. It's funny as fuck, but not very erotic. That's oh. fucking hilarious. That is pretty funny. That is so hilarious. basically it's basically they so, so it is a troll. Hugo, yes. That's funny. That's great. Right. Sounds like they deserve it, the fucking wokesters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Little bastards. Uh dun dun dun. Dun, dun, dun. Lucifer the Doberman for another five Canadian says I made 30 kilograms of bacon recently Jesus that's a lot of fucking bacon sounds delicious I'm so hungry it right does, now though. what are your favorite kinds of prepared meats bacon. I mean bacon's always good right yeah no bacon's delicious yeah. I'll take some bacon's bacon always good what a I weird question like, I do like honey ham mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do you like yeah uh, honey ham's always good yeah uh, I used to get like spicy. There's like the spicy chicken deli meat I used to get back in the day. That was really good. Mm-hmm. That sounds delicious. Uh, Sir Zirconium for 199 says, "Did you ever see the new uh, Ava film, Sitch?" No, I did not. I did not see it. Ava. No. That's the robot from. That's the robots. Wasn't Ava the name of the robot in? Eva Ex in Wally. Oh. Ex Machina too. Was it Ex Machina? I Wasn't it, it was. in Wally? Wasn't it Eva? It, it no, was e- Eve. I'm sorry. It was Eve. Yeah. Ex Machina. Was it also Eve and and? I it was Ava. It was Ava. 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 I wonder. I wonder if that was like a reference. I don't think it was though. I assume it wasn't. I did. I did like that movie. I never saw that movie, so. That's like the cautionary tale about simping. I think 90% of the love of Evangelion is just because everyone likes the song. Oh my God. Speaking of songs that, as you kids say, slap. Mm. Did you hear the new JoJo song? Holy shit. No. Sounds awful. Oh, it's so good. Was this you like it. Sing it? You like it because it's obviously been inspired by the Wonder Woman theme. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I love that. I know you do. It's great. Jo- they're saying it's Jolene's theme. I'm not sure if it actually is, but we'll see. Uh, Jojo Part 6 coming out on Netflix in December, I believe. Really? Yep. Is it already out in Japan? No, I said and... in, 
Oh, I don't know the answer to that question. Oh, I mean, I read the manga like nine years ago. I don't know if the, I don't think the I don't think it's out New uh, at all. Theme. I think it's coming out in America and Japan at the same time. Stone Oliver. Jolene Stone Ocean theme. Stone Ocean. Oh, yeah. Guess where it takes place. Full version. Guess where it takes place. Uh, the Florida. Song? Really? It takes place in a in a all females prison in Florida. Hmm. So there you gay. go. There I you can't go. think of a more gay place than an all female prison. That you would want to read about, you mean? Mm, most of them are kind of butchy. Well, it's JoJo though. Oh, okay. They'll all be butch. You'll love okay. it. Okay. Butch okay. for days. Okay. Joseph's Anyways, bizarre adventure. That's it. Oh my god. Anyways, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for your incredibly generous donations. Yes. Thank, thank you for making it through this horrible, horrible Cody Johnson some more lies video with us. All you guys, all you true believers that stuck through, you got to witness. At the very end, the surprise twist where Cody let the mask slip and revealed this true Marxist plot beneath. Oh. Thank you all for supporting our comic. And hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Bye-bye!